Hello all, welcome to part one of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain what is Cucumber. So let's get started. So what is Cucumber? Cucumber is a framework or tool which supports the implementation of BDD. That is behavior driven development. Okay. So what is Cucumber? Let me write down. Cucumber, okay, is a framework similar to test engine. Test engine also we call it as a framework, is, okay, which can be used for uh, building uh, different frameworks like data driven framework, hybrid framework, and so on. Okay, similar to test engine, okay, Cucumber is also a framework. And it can also be called as a tool, guys. So some people call Cucumber as a tool, okay. So Cucumber is a framework or tool which supports the implementation of okay which supports the implementation of BDD. BDD stands for behavior driven development okay behavior driven development. So what is this BDD if you understand you can easily understand what is Cucumber. Cucumber is just a tool guys which supports the implementation of behavior driven development. After you understand the difference between behavior driven development and traditional development, then you will understand what is Cucumber. Okay. In the upcoming sessions, I will show you how to install this Cucumber tool in Eclipse IDE. Okay. We can call this Cucumber as a framework or tool which supports the implementation of BDD that is behavior driven development. If your projects, okay, if you are working on a project and that particular project follows the development practice that is known as behavior driven development practice. In such cases, to support that behavior driven development process, we have to use some tools like Cucumber. Cucumber is not the only one tool available in the market to support the implementation of BDD. There are other tools also, other frameworks or tools also available in the market. Based on the support of different programming languages, we have different tools or frameworks available in the market to support the implementation of BDD. If your project uses Java, let's say, we can easily use Cucumber. Cucumber is famous for Java. Okay, if your project is need to be implemented in Java programming language, Cucumber is uh, can be selected first. Okay, we can select first. So if you are using uh, C sharp dot net, let's say dot net C sharp dot net kind of uh, thing as part of implementing your project code. Okay, and if you are following the behavior driven development, in that case you may prefer to go with SpecFlow. Even the Cucumber is also suitable, but you may prefer to go with uh, more convenient one. Uh, convenient framework or tool we support the implementation of BDD in .NET, uh, C sharp .NET uh, kind of implemented projects that is SpecFlow. Okay, I'll explain more about the different tools. Okay, I'll explain more about different tools available in the market. Tools or frameworks available in the market we support the implementation of BDD in the projects. Okay, behavior driven development in the projects. So we'll go step by step, guys. For now, at a high level, understand what is Cucumber. It's simple terms. Cucumber is a framework or tool which supports the implementation of BDD and it's kind of famous guys. Okay. Compared to other frameworks or tools, we support the implementation of BDD. Cucumber is kind of famous in the market. Everyone prefers to use Cucumber. If not, then only they will go for other frameworks or tool for supporting uh, the implementation of BDD in our projects. Okay. Behavior driven development in our project. So in the next session, I'll explain the different list of tools available in the market. The frameworks or tools available in the market, we support the implementation of BDD apart from Cucumber and in the upcoming session, after that session, I'm going to cover what is BDD. Okay. So understanding BDD is very important to understand Cucumber. Later on, we'll go for installing Cucumber and all those stuff later. Guys, okay. So practical stuff will come later, but for now to get started, you have to understand what is Cucumber. It is a framework tool which supports the implementation of BDD behavior driven development. Okay. In the projects. So in the next uh, two sessions, I, in the next session, I'll cover the different BDD tools and uh, in the, in the, in the next, next session. I'll cover what is BDD. Okay. And then the sessions will keep on going. Okay. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part two of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to show you the different BDD tools that are available in the market. So what are the different tools that are available in the market, which support the implementation of 
behavior driven development in the projects let me show you so there are several tools in the market guys and the famous the most popular and most widely used tool okay is nothing but cucumber is a out of all these BDD tools, okay, all these tools which support the implementation of BDD, behavior or driven development in your projects, okay, these frameworks or tools, whatever you call, out of all this list of frameworks or tools, which one is famous or mostly used in the market? Cucumber is mostly used in the market, okay? Cucumber can be used in the projects, okay, to support the implementation of behavior driven development, okay, when those projects use Java as a programming language or Python as a programming language, .NET framework programming languages, PHP, JavaScript, Perl, and more, any many more programming languages are supported by this Cucumber. That's why we can say Cucumber is more widely used tools when compared to other tools which support the implementation of PDD in the projects. Apart from Cucumber, okay, we have other tools like Specflow, which also support the implementation of PDD in the projects. Specflow is mainly used for .NET guys, okay? So whenever you have a chance of uh, uh, working on .NET projects and implementing the BDD in those projects, right? We prefer Specflow or Cucumber guys. Most people prefer to use Specflow, okay? If you're using Visual Studio Code or something, we generally use Specflow, okay? To work with .NET projects, to implement the BDD in the .NET uh, framework projects, okay? Then we have Behave, which supports the Python, Jasmine, Jasmine, which supports JavaScript, okay? If you are programming in JavaScript as part of the project, to implement the BDD, we have to use Jasmine as a tool. J, J Behave for Java, J Behave Web also for Java. We have Behat, PHP, Kahlan, PHP. Many tools are there, guys. So many tools are there in the market. These are the complete list of tools. You don't have to memorize because you just have to remember few major ones like Cucumber, Specflow, Jasmine, okay? J behave okay these are the famous ones okay and the other things are like you just don't have to remember them okay so kahalan is also for php daspec is for javascript cucumber j is for javascript okay and there are other things also like other tools like bean spec concordian fitnessy let use test left squish ui tester spock yada okay and may, many more may be there but uh whatever dara and they have done I came across these tools, guys. In this, Cucumber is the famous one, and you can even remember Specflow, Jasmine, JBehave. Okay, remaining all you don't have to remember much, guys. Okay, and Cucumber is a mostly wide, uh, most widely used tools. Okay, uh, when compared to other tools which support the BDD implementation, behavior-driven development implementation, the projects. So that's all for this session, guys. In this session, I just wanted to list down. Okay, list out the different BDD tools that are there in the market and which one is a famous one. As I already mentioned, Cucumber is a famous one. In the next session, okay, uh, we'll be learning about what is BDD, guys. Okay, this is very much important, guys. Without understanding what is BDD, learning about the Cucumber tool and different B BDD tools all, uh, available in the market is not worth. Okay, we have to first understand what is BDD, behavior driven development and how it is different from the traditional development. After that, only you have to start learning Cucumber and practical demonstration of Cucumber can be done. So first, in the next session, we are going to see PDD, behavior driven development. I'm going to explain in detail and I'm going to explain you how it is different from the traditional development so that you can understand PDD better in the next session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part three of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain what is BDD. So let's get started. BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. So what does BDD stands for? BDD, in short, okay, it's short form, okay? It actually stands for Behavior Driven Development. Behavior driven development okay development bdd stands for behavior driven development okay so in the previous sessions i covered what is cucumber and uh, the cucumber i mentioned as a framework or tool which will support us to implement bdd that is behavior driven development in our projects and i told you that apart from cucumber framework or tool we have several other tools which i covered in the previous session okay for 
implementing or supporting BDD in the projects. Now, I am covering what is BDD. If you don't understand what is BDD, you, can under, you cannot understand what is Cucumber and the other BDD tools. Okay. First, you have to understand what is BDD. First of all, BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. To understand this Behavior Driven Development, we need to compare this BDD with traditional development. So let me compare the BDD that is behavior driven development with the traditional development. Okay. So that you can understand what exactly is BDD and all those stuff. Okay. So on the right side, so on the right side, I'll write down behavior driven development. Okay. And on the left side, I'll write down traditional development okay on the left side i'm writing traditional development and on the right side i'm writing behavior driven development so what is the difference so what is the difference between the traditional development and behavior driven development so coming to the traditional development first coming to the traditional development what happens is the client or the client side team business team will share some documents, okay? The BA from the client side or PO from the client side will be sharing some requirements, okay? Mostly in the form of BRS document or in other forms also depending on the project, okay? They may share a single document containing all the requirements, okay? This BRS, okay? Business requirements specification, okay? They may share. Now, this BRS, which containing the requirements given by the client, business analyst and uh, PO people, whatever, who are sharing this BRS will be shared to the project team where the project team contains developers and testers. Okay. In the project, who will be there? Developers and testers will be there. Developers will be developing the required or to be intended application using this requirement specified or given by the client in this BRS document. Whereas testers will use the same requirements to check whether developers have developed the application correctly or not as per the requirements or not. Okay, this is what is a general process. Okay, this is what is a general process. But here, if you talk about the communication between the client team or the client business team, whatever you can say, okay, client business team and the developers and testers, if you see the communication, this communication is only at the initial point of time. Okay, this communication is generally performed more in the beginning of the project when BRS document is shared, right? Then developers and testers will go through this BRS document. They may ask some doubts and uh, be this client side business team will clear the doubts of the developers and testers and that's it. The communication is ended. And during the development process, once the questions are asked and all, during the development of the project, during the testing, uh, during the project development and testing, okay? So this communication will not be so much, okay? Very basic communication will be there, okay? The client side business team will not be responding much. Only in the beginning, they will give you the KT, they will give you the requirements, they will, uh, they will clarify your questions, okay? But during the project, this communication will vanish over a period of time and developers and testers have to struggle a lot because they don't get much communication from the client side business team, okay? Here, communication is not given the here communication is there. I'm not saying that communication is not there in the traditional development. I'm saying that communication is there in the traditional development, but the focus is not there. The, the main focus is not on the communication, but rather what is the main focus in this traditional development? So basic initial communication will be there. After that, the developers, okay, will focus on, not on the communication, they'll focus on technicalities like, uh, which architecture, development architecture we have to use for developing the software, then which tools we have to use for developing, what are the skills required for developing the software that is uh, requested by the client in the PRS document as per the requirements, okay? How many resources, count of resources required, type of resources required, okay? All this stuff, timeline, in how much time we have to develop, okay? and all those stuff. Here, less importance is given to the communication and more importance is given to the architecture, tools, skills, technical discount of resources, timeline, etc. Okay, that's what is a traditional development. Mostly, 
if your project follows the traditional development because of this less communication less importance is given to the communication communication will be there but depending on the project to project here yeah, uh, communication is not enforced okay uh, communication is not enforced much communication is there but it's not enforced much because of this model what happens is there is a possibility that the client may not communicate something to the developers and testers or te te developers and testers may not communicate properly with the client business team because of which developers and testers may uh, produce a wrong product. Client may ask something, but developers and testers will produce something. That may happen because communication is not enforced much. Okay, It not happens in all the projects, guys. I'm again saying in traditional projects, there may be some successful projects also where right products are also developed and delivered. But since in traditional development, since communication is not enforced in the projects which are not, okay, in the in, in some projects, in tra some traditional projects, uh, in few of the projects, we can say when the client business team is not active and not doing the communication with, well with the developers and testers because of not enforcing the communication, there's a possibility that developers and testers may get these requirements in a different uh, format. They may, they may understand the requirements in a different way and they may produce their own product. There's a possibility. I'm not saying this will be compulsory. This is possibility I'm saying in traditional development projects. Okay, in the projects following the de uh, traditional development approach, there's a possibility of wrong product getting de uh, delivered. Okay, how? So for that, I'll show you one image, guys. Okay, I just have this image. Uh, just see what the client is asking and what the, the project team, that is developers and testers have developed to the client, delivered to the client. You see what the customer wanted, what the client or customer wanted the business team or the client or customer wanted to develop this, okay, this one. As you can see, there is a tree and to this tree, the customer wanted to hang a uh, rope and then a tie so that people can play with this, okay? They can swing and play with this. But how the developers and testers have understood the requirement because of the poor communication? In few of the traditional projects, there may be a possibility of poor communication because uh, communication is not enforced in the traditional projects and rather other technical stuff like uh, technicalities like tools, architectures, etc. are given importance, more importance than the communication. Because of that, the these requirements uh, by the customers are not properly understood by the developers and uh, testers, okay, in some cases, in some projects. And uh, because of that, the developers and testers may produce this kind of product, okay? They asked for this and they delivered this. Okay, here also they are tying something to the tree and here also, um, uh, someone has to sit, they may have said, and uh, they have put something to sit. But here, can you swing here? Can you swing here? No, this is just for sitting. But uh, this one is for swinging. What the customer wanted is uh, the children can swing and all those stuff. But here, the uh, team, project team has delivered this one. So which is nothing but a wrong product, okay? The requirements are fine, but uh, communication was a problem because of the proper improper communication, you see? The children cannot swing uh, and uh, this is just for sitting okay that's not the intended product this kind of things may happen in the traditional development okay in the traditional development this kind of things will happen but coming to the behavior driven development how the behavior driven development is going to overcome this problem in the behavior driven development okay communication is enforced communication is given the hash one priority now, compared to other stuff, other technical stuff, the developers generally think like architecture, tools, skills, count of resource, timeline, etc. But here, in behavior-driven development, communication is given the H1 priority. That is, behavior of the application is given the number one priority. Behavior of the application, how the application have to uh, have or has to behave, okay, has to work, is communicated as a number one priority. That's why the name name for this development approach is given as behavior driven. Here behavior, uh, here development is dri driven by behavior, not by other technical stuff, okay? So number one priority is given to the, okay? How the application is going to behave, okay? So here business team, client side business team, the developers, and testers, everyone, okay, every, these three people, okay, these three people have to communicate, have to communicate on this behavior of the application throughout the project, these guys are going to communicate, guys, okay, throughout the project, the business team, not just in the beginning of the project, but the business team, developers and testers are giving because communication is enforced, okay, 
communication is enforced here on the top of the other stuff, technicalities and other stuff. Hence, business team will communicate the behavior of the application well. Developers will communicate. Okay, what they are developing, they have to communicate in a in the form of behavior format. In that, even testers also. How this will happen, I'll explain. Okay, how this communication uh, can happen on the behavior stuff and everything. I'm going to explain, guys. Okay, I'm going to explain in depth. So here, business developers and testers have to communicate. Here, it's not about uh, uh, how good you are writing the test cases, how how uh, how better code you are writing. It's not about that. It's more about how much communication you are having. This business team, developers and testers, if they are not communicating, so that is against the behavior driven development approach. If they are communicating, then it's it's according to the behavior driven development approach. These three people have to communicate and that too they have to communicate in plain English language. Okay. They have to communicate in plain English language guys. Okay. All these three people have to communicate in plain English language. Here also English should be there. Business team testers, business team developers, developers, business team, developers, testers. Everyone has to communicate in which language? English language. You see, developers write the code, application code in which language, Java, Python, something like that, that business team will not understand. But here, testers also will write the automation code in some, uh, using some programming languages like uh, Java and so using some automations, automation uh, libraries like Selenium, etc. But here, testers also have to communicate in English. Whatever the automation scripts they have to write, business team need to understand to which uh, to which uh, behaviors the testers are automating, to which behaviors the developers are writing the code. So the communication should be open in English format. How this is all possible? How this communication is given the more importance than other stuff? If the communication is given the hash one priority and if the business team developers and testers are communicating everything in English, then is there a possibility of delivering a wrong product? No. Here, the possibility of Delivering a right product is high than delivering a wrong product. Here, the possibility of delivering a wrong product is high when compared to delivering the right product. Okay. But in behavior driven development, since the communication is communication of the behavior of the application is given more importance. Okay. And it's uh, the communication between business developers and testers will happen throughout the project because of the in, in, uh, enforcement of the communication throughout the project. Right product will be developed, delivered. Right product will be delivered. So how the business team, testers and developers can communicate in English, okay? How these three people, okay, here business, fine, English communication means these requirements are also in English, that's all, okay. But developers and testers, how they communicate in English with the business team, that is possible with the help of something known as feature files, okay? I'll cover more about feature files, okay? I'll show you how to create a feature file in the next session, okay? There are a lot of th th things that you have to understand, guys, feature files, Gherkin, Cucumber, BDD in Agile that you have to understand to get more clarity. But since this is just a high level topic of what is BDD, I'm not going depth here, but I'll show you a high level glimpse of a feature file here. Okay, this URL will lead us to the feature file. So where you can see how the, how the requirements are communicated by the business team in English, how the developers are going to communicate in English, how the uh, testing team are going to write the test cases or going to write the automation scripts in English. If you can see this one, this is called as a feature file, guys. Okay, feature. What is a feature file? Search feature file. Searching of various categories should be possible along with product search. Who will, who will write? Who will create this feature file? Testers will create this feature file. Okay. More details I'll cover in the next session, guys. Okay. How this process will happen between the business team, developers, and testers? I'm going to explain in next session. But uh, for now, just understand at a high level how the communication is happening over English. This is a feature file we call, and here you see whatever that is written is in the English format, right? And in a more structured format using these keywords like feature scenario given when I and then and all the connection. It's not like a paragraph. The English is not in a paragraph format in a proper structure format. You see here, you can easily understand. Feature search, description of the feature, searching of various categories should be possible along with the product search. Okay, this, this feature file is related to Amazon, for example. Okay, first scenario. This is like a test case, guys. Okay, the testers will write this kind of test case. Search for the products under books category. Using such functionality, users should be able to search for books. Okay. Uh, this is a description of the scenario. And uh, given these are the steps, like test case steps, these are steps written in English. Given I visit the website as a guest user, when I select the books option from the drop down and I click on the search icon button, like test cases, then I should see the books page loaded and I should see books at Amazon as adding. Okay. This is one test case. Okay. In Amazon application. Second test case or second scenario, you can say in the feature file. 
search for a product under baby category using search functionality users should be able to search for baby products okay if the testers are writing the test cases like this can the business team understand yes if automation scripts are also written in the same fashion the automation scripts are written where feature file is there behind every step some code is written that code is not visible to the uh, is hidden from the business team uh, rather business team can simply run the scripts using this feature file if they want okay you see that will be more good right the the code that uh, technical code which need to be written in java and uh, selenium need to be written bis, uh, behind every line here but the front facing is the steps you see automation is also in the steps you see how much communication we are doing right you will understand more guys in the upcoming sessions when i go deep into the uh, technicalities like practical demonstrations of this cucumber tool feature files jerkin language uh, gherkin language selenium automation java and all the stuff then you will understand clearly okay till then try to understand at a high level this is how the communication happens whether the testers are writing the automation scripts they are going to create the feature files and beside every line behind every line they are going to write the actual automation code but front facing is this text so that business team can understand what automation scripts you guys are working on so uh, such kind of communication is enhanced here here enforcement is on the communication even though you are writing the automation scripts communication is given the in uh, kind of uh, high priority so that business team can understand what testers or autom uh, automation testers are actually writing the code for okay so they are not worried about what technical code you have written on the background but front facing these are the scenarios you are writing you are automating these scenarios the communication is happening in a english guys business team is communicating in english to the developers and testers testers are communicating in english to the developers and uh, business team and so on okay given i visit the guest as a guest user i select the baby option from the drop down i click on search icon you see the steps are also proper in english i should see the baby, uh, baby page loaded i should see the baby store has heading and more scenarios okay so how the detailed process i'll cover later guys but for now understand that you have to clearly understand what is bdd guys behavior driven development here development is driven by the behavior of the application communication is given more importance than only uh, development can be driven by okay behavior fine so behavior driven development coming to the traditional development as you already seen the communication is not given behavior of the application is not given the hash one priority but given uh, importance is given but not the hash one priority is there in traditional development as i already covered okay here more importance is given to the architecture tools technicality skills count of resources timeline and all those stuff technical challenges and all the stuff are given more importance than the behavior uh, communication of the behavior of the application but in behavior driven development behavior of the application is communicated as a hash one priority over the other stuff and business testers and developers have to communicate more not just in the beginning of the project throughout the project they are communicating 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 because communication is a hash one priority communication of the behaviors is a hash one priority over the implementation okay so here most more probabilities for uh, de delivering the wrong product here less possibility for wrong product and more possibility for right product okay this is what is behavior driven development guys nothing much okay so hope guys now you understood what is behavior driven development from from this session so in the next session uh, i'm going to go into more reality okay where nowadays bdd is mostly used in the agile project nowadays most of the projects are agile and uh, how the bdd works in agile how the process happens okay what the testers will do in this bdd in agile process what the developers will do all those stuff i am going to cover along with the feature files gherkin and cucumber related stuff also in the next session okay so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 4 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i am going to show you the official website of cucumber so let's get started so what is the official website of cucumber the official website of cucumber is cucumber.io okay you can go to the browser and type cucumber.io and browse you will be taken to the official website of cucumber cucumber is currently supported by smart beer company okay so what exactly uh, this uh, official website of this cucumber contains you see the first thing that i see in this cucumber web official website is the documentation guys if you want to learn about cucumber if you want to learn about bdd and uh, okay all those related stuff like gherkin and uh, feature files and all so this is a proper website we have okay 
So the, if you go to the official website of Kokumbar, you will find everything, guys. As you already know, Kokumbar is a tool, right, uh, to support the BDD. Okay, so the related stuff like feature file, Gherkin, okay, all these things will be available in this documentation of this website, guys. If you go to the tools here, Kokumbar uh, has a lot of tools. Uh, we'll go with the Kokumbar Open. This is a free tool, whatever we are using now. And coming to the documentation, this is what I'm talking about, Kokumbar Open Docs. Here we have installation, Gherkin syntax, API docs, and uh, third party, okay? So those things are there. And here, learn, PDDs, uh, resources are there. A lot of things are there, right? A lot of things are there. Let's go to the one of the uh, part. Let's say Cucumber Open Docs. Let's click on that. Let's see what it is uh, taking us to. You see, if you go to this uh, Cucumber Open Docs, you have a lot of options, guys. If you want to learn about uh, some basics of Cucumber and all, Okay, you have, you have an option like guides option. Click on the guides. Okay, and you see introduction new to Cucumber start here. So like just go to that introduction. You will have a lot of documentation guys to understand what is Cucumber, what is Gherkin, what, what are step definitions. A lot of terminology is there that we have to really know. Okay, I'll be explaining also guys. I'll be explaining this terminology for you in the upcoming sessions anyhow. But uh, I'm just explaining about the Cucumber uh, official website. What does it contain and all. If you want to learn about BDD, you can click on this. Okay, uh, then uh, they have some kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, webinars kind of stuff where you can join and learn it, okay? But uh, you don't have to learn so much, guys, okay? But I'm just giving an overview of the Cucumber uh, official website. So we have case studies, webinars, ebooks, and blogs on Cucumber, okay? So here, uh, who are the sponsors of this installation? If you have to install Cucumber, on which platform you want to install, based on that, you have this documentation available for Cucumber JVN, JVM, okay? the dependency that you have to add in the Maven. You can get it from here if you want, or you can go to the MVN repository and get it also. Okay, multiple ways of getting it out. Okay, so a lot of things are there here, guys. Okay, but uh, you don't have to spend so much of time on this website, guys, okay? So in the upcoming sessions, I'm going to come to this official website. That is the reason, guys, before I uh, explain this BDD in Agile feature file jerkin and uh, Cucumber related topic. So I started this official website of, website of Cucumber because in this session, I have these links provided off from the official website of Cucumber that I'm going to show you for uh, explaining this stuff, okay? So it's better that we know uh, the official website of Cucumber before we start with this topic. That is the reason I provided this uh, topic now, okay? I covered this session now. So that's all, guys. You don't have to dig deep into that uh, official website of Cucumber. Uh, at a high level, it contains some information about the Cucumber tools and related stuff, okay? That I'll be showing you in the next session, okay? So that's all for this session, guys. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part five of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to cover the BDD implementation in Agile projects. And also, I'm going to show you practically how to create the feature files and how the Kirkin language is used in feature files and what about the role of Cucumber in case of this feature files and Gherkin? All these things I'm going to cover in this session. This is a very important session, guys. So you have to focus properly. So let's get started. So in one of the previous sessions, I already covered what is BDD and how it is di uh, different from the traditional development where behavior-driven development is giving uh, hash one priority to the behavior of the application to be developed, where by improving the communication between the uh, business developers and testers, Whereas in traditional development, less communication is given for what need to be developed, okay? Rather, how to be developed, technicalities of the application are given more importance in traditional development, but in BDD, more importance is given for the behavior of the application. What actually should be developed, okay? Need to be developed is given more importance than the technical aspects, okay? Now, let's dig deep into this BDD, okay? Let's dig deep into this BDD where Nowadays, almost all projects in the market are using Agile SDLC model. And in that model, there are a lot of methodologies. In Agile SDLC model, there are many other methodologies like a Scrum, Kanban, and all. While Scrum is the top one. Now, in such kind of scenario, I'm going to take one kind of case study, you can say, okay, which uh, I already have experienced in my experience, okay, where uh, there is a project and the project is uh, using Agile SDLC model in that Scrum methodology is being followed. So in that project, what is the role of BDD? 
I am going to cover in this session. Okay, this is a real time experience, guys, that I am trying to share here so that you will all get benefited from this. Okay, so BDD means behavior driven development. If in an agile project following a scrum methodology, if behavior driven development approach is followed, okay, then what will be the scenario like? All these things I am going to cover now. Okay, so guys, let's take there is a project and uh, we have a client. Okay, so that project is using which SDLC model? Agile SDLC model. Agile SDLC model. In that, which methodology it is using? Per se, Scrum methodology it's using. Okay, it's famous one, so I am taking Scrum. Okay, Scrum methodology is being used in that Agile SDLC model project. Okay, so how the process will be there? So first of all, there will be PO guys. Okay, product owner. Okay, in Agile, we'll be having a product owner who will be maintaining maintaining a bucket of product backlog. You can say. Okay, the product owner will be maintaining a bucket of product backlog. So here each and every item in this product backlog, okay, is nothing but a user story. User story is nothing but a small chunk of requirement, okay. So unlike a traditional development approaches or models, uh, instead of uh, the client sharing all the requirements by putting in a single document known as BRS at a go, in, in agile projects, it will not be like that, guys, okay. A product owner will be maintaining a list of requirements, okay. Uh, list of small chunks of requirements and uh, where each and every requirement is called as a user story. Okay. So now in traditional development, the entire requirements will be shared at a go in a document to the development and testing team. But in case of agile SGLC model, okay, the product owner maintains a full, uh, good, good list of, uh, these small chunks of requirements known as uh, user stories. Okay. List of user stories will be there, which are nothing but, uh, small chunks of requirements, but the product owner or the business will not share all these user stories at a go. Rather, the product owner will do one thing known as the product owner will create something known as sprint. Okay. It's called a sprint. Sprint is nothing but a duration oriented guys. It a sprint duration can be, it's like an iteration guys. Sprint is nothing but an iteration. Okay. Which is having a duration of one to four weeks. Okay. It can be a, anywhere between one to four weeks. For example, we'll take four, uh, two weeks. That is 10 working days. Two weeks means how many working days? 10 working days. So in 10 working days, all the stories cannot be completed. So product owner based on the priorities will assign some user stories. Okay. From this bucket, some user stories, let's say some four to five user stories got assigned to this sprint. Okay. In 10 working days, the development team and testing team need to finish up this, uh, finish up the development and testing of this five user stories. Okay. Out of this hundred user stories, let's say in the product backlog, this called as a product backlog, which is maintained by the product owner. Okay. Now, product owner will not assign all the 100 user stories. Let's say there are 100 user stories. He'll not, he or she will not assign all the 100 user stories to the sprint. Uh, rather, to this five star iteration, having a duration of two weeks for say, 10 working days, only five out of this 100 based on the priority got assigned to this sprint. By the end of this sprint, all the stories need to be completed. That means completely developed and tested. Okay. Now, let's take one of the user story here. One of the user story, let's take. Uh, an example I will take for a user story, guys. An example I'll take for a user story. This user story may be like this, okay? It may be related to login functionality, okay? So user story is written something. Uh, as a user of the application, as a user of the application, uh, as a non-registered, okay? As a non-registered user, Okay, as a non-registered user, uh, non user in the application, in the application, something like this, okay? I want to uh, otherwise as a registered user, okay? As a registered user in the application, I want to log in to the application. I want to log in to the application. One example of the user story I'm giving is this, is, this will be the like a you know, user story title may be like this, okay? Or a description may be like this. As a registered user in the application, I want to log into the application so that, so that I can access my account. Like this one user story, this is nothing but a requirement, okay? Small chunk of requirement. What is a user story? User story means small chunk of, it's not complete requirement of the application, small chunk of, uh, chunk of requirement in the application. Now, this user story will be created by whom? Product owner will create that. Okay. Product owner has created this user story and assigned to the sprint so that developers and testers will start working on this user stories. 
That means developers will develop this user story, testers will test this user story. That's the requirement. User story is nothing but a small chunk of requirement. Okay. Now using this requirement, so how the process will be there in uh, if BDD process or uh, development approach, okay, behavior driven development approach is followed in this agile SDLC models from methodology projects, implemented projects, then what will be the process or approach? In this case, this user story, okay, once assigned to the team, there will be developers and testers, guys. Okay, there will be developers and testers in the uh, in this sprint. Who will be working? Developers will be working. Testers will be working. Together we call them as agile team. Okay, so developers will developers and testers both. Okay, developers. Okay, developers will try to understand user stories. Okay. Developers will try to understand user stories, even testers also, okay, will try to understand user story. Who has provided this user story? Product owner has provided this user story. And uh, now the team need to understand this user story. Okay, there will be a lot of things, guys. This is just a title. In this user story, there will be some attachments may be provided, some description will be provided, a lot of information explaining how the application, how this particular functionality of the application to be developed will be there in this user story. Okay, acceptance criteria will be there in this uh, user story which contains all this stuff. Screenshots also if required will be there. Acceptance criteria will be there in this uh, user story. And once this user story is received to these developers and testers, both will try to understand this user stories. And while trying to understand, if they don't understand something, they may, some, they may get some questions. Okay, developers and testers will get some questions. These questions need to be uh, asked to whom? These questions need to be asked to whom? The questions need to be asked to whom, guys? Product owner will create the user story with this acceptance criteria and detailed information, this title and detailed information, whereas developers and testers will try to understand the user story and will get some questions. And these questions to be should be shoot, shoot out, shooted out to whom? To the product owner, okay? Will be asked to the product owner. Uh, who need to clarify these questions? Product owner will clarify this question because product owner is the one who knows the business well, okay? So developers uh, will try to understand and as part of that, they make uh, developers and testers will get some questions and so product owner need to clarify. Okay. PO need to clarify. PO business, PO means product owner who knows the business well, need to clarify or give answers, give answers, give answers for these questions. Okay. PO need to clarify or give answers to these questions. Now. Once the PO need to clarify or give answers to these questions, once the PO does that, now the testers and developers understand the user story properly. Okay, that means if the PO is answer, uh, has answered and uh, developers and testers understood the user story means, the user story is now understood. The uh, developers and testers have reached a state where there are no more questions. In such kind of cases, testers will do something now. Okay, the next step is testers. What testers will do? Testers, okay. For the user story, for the understood user story, understood user story will create a future file. Okay. You see, the, for, for the first time, you are get, hearing the term known as feature file, guys. Okay. This is very important. Testers for, uh, testers, testers for the understood user story will create a feature file. Okay. After the questions got clarified from the PO, that is a business. Once the testers understand, uh, testers understand the entire story and developers also understand the entire story. Now testers will start creating something known as a feature file for this user story. What the feature file will contain? Feature file will contain scenarios. Okay. What does the feature file contain? Will contain the scenarios. Okay. So these scenarios will be created using the Gherkin keyword. Okay. Gherkin keywords. There, there is something known as Gherkin language. From the Gherkin language, there will be some keywords. Using the Gherkin keyword, the scenarios will be created. The feature file will be created. Who understands this feature file scenarios and Gherkin keyword? Cucumber understands it. Okay. So all these steps for uh, later. But for now, so let's say this is the user story. As a registered user in the application, I want to log into the application so that I can access my account. How the testers will create the feature file, I'll show you. Okay. For now, let's understand. For this product, uh, for this uh, user story created by product owner, after the developers and testers have understood the user story after clearing their doubts and questions, then finally the testers need to create a user uh, feature file 
So how the feature file will be created by testers for this particular user story, I'm going to show you guys for that. I'll open a Word document, guys. I'll open a Word document. I'll launch this Word document, guys. Let me write down WRD. I'll open this Word app. The Word document is getting opened, guys. I'll show you how blank document I will take. And here I'll write a feature, something known as a feature. Okay. There's a feature file, guys. I'll write something known as feature. Feature and uh, there's some underline selected. Okay. I'll remove that. So, feature, what is the feature all about? Login feature. Okay. Login functionality of the application. Login functionality. Let's say login functionality, the feature. And in the description, uh, description for this feature, I'll write down. Okay. This, this feature is a keyword guys. Okay. Feature is a keyword here. Uh, from which language this feature keyword came. Okay. You see, while, while creating the feature file, I'm using some keywords from which language I'm getting this feature keyword from Gherkin language. You can see here, I have written something known as while creating the feature file, I have to create the scenarios under the feature file. The feature file and scenarios need to be created with the help of which which language? Gherkin language. In Gherkin language, there are some keywords like feature and all, using which we have to construct this feature file and we have to create the scenarios in the feature file. Okay, Gherkin keyword language. So feature is one of the keywords from the Gherkin language. I'll explain more about the Gherkin language later. Login function. And here I'll write the description of this feature, guys. Okay. User uh, should uh, user should be able to access the access is uh, access account the access account able to access his or her account his or her account okay using login functionality like this, some description i will be writing okay while creating the feature file and uh, then now scenarios will come scenario colon okay this is a keyword again guys okay the scenario is a keyword from Gherkin language. Okay, here what is the scenario? Login with valid credentials. Okay, login with valid credentials is a scenario, first scenario. So for that, steps will be there. For every scenario, there will be steps. The steps will be also using here scenario and feature are from the Gherkin language. Okay? These are two keywords, whatever I have uh, highlighted in, uh, you know, kind of bold, bold format, right? They are keywords from Gherkin language. So for steps also, there will be some keywords given. Okay. Given is a given here. Colon symbol is there for feature. Colon symbol is for scenario, but given colon symbol will not be there. Okay. Given user has navigated to login page. Okay. Given user has navigated to login page and and uh, otherwise when okay when navigated to login page when user enters email address enters valid email address enters valid email address and user enters uh, enters valid email address, enters valid password, valid password. Here, when is also a keyword from Gherkin and and is also a keyword from Gherkin. When there are, uh, here, instead of using when, when like this, okay, here, when user enters email address, when user and en en uh, enters valid password, instead of writing when, when two times, you can, you can, uh, okay, you can extend that with and. So when means uh, this is all when now, okay? But and also can exist with given, okay? Given user has uh, navigated to the application user, uh, application, uh, I will write something. User has opened the application. Given user has opened the application URL in any supported browser or something. I navigated to uh, login page. Like this also, and can exist here also. With given also, we can write and, okay? Given, when, okay? Given. Given is a precondition, okay? The precondition. Whereas when is the action, action taken by the user? When is action? This is a precondition. Precondition is to 
test this login with valid credentials scenario, the preconditions are user has to open the application URL and navigate to login page. Okay. Then this is the action guys. What the user has to take after going to the login? What are what is the action that user has to take for login with valid credentials? User has to enter valid email address and user and and enters user enters valid password. These are the actions. And this is not enough. Action is not completed. Clicks on here. I'll say enters otherwise. Enters. This is not old. Okay. You and Clicks on which button? Login button. And clicks on login button. Then what should happen? This is the result. This is the result of these actions. Okay. Preconditions, actions, and result. Then we'll have the result. Then user should be able to successfully log in. Okay. User should be able to successfully log in. Then is another keyword. Here, different keywords are coming. Uh, feature, scenario, given, and when, and then. Okay. These are all keywords. These are all the keywords from which language? Gherkin language. In feature file, when you are creating the scenarios, okay, and uh, when you are creating the feature file, to construct the feature file, we need Gherkin language. Okay. Gherkin language. You will not be writing the scenarios in English paragraphs like that. Okay. You will be using the Gherkin keywords. Okay. To create the feature file. In this feature file, using the Gherkin keywords, you have to construct the English. English uh, scenarios and all those stuff, English statements. Now, another scenario is second scenario. Like this, you can create any number of scenarios, guys. I'm creating some, one sample scenario, uh, sample feature file having multiple scenarios. You can have any number of scenarios, good number of scenarios for login functionality, right? But I will be, for sample, I will be writing three to four uh, just to make, uh, make you guys confident. Login with invalid credentials, okay? Login with invalid credentials. Credential. Okay. Here scenario is a keyword. Scenario colon is a keyword. Whereas again, I'll be writing this copy paste. I don't want to waste time. Just copy paste. Given user has opened the application user URL and navigated to the login page, then user enters invalid email address. And user enters invalid password and enters invalid password and clicks on login button. User should not be able to log in and get a warning message. Get a get a proper warning message. Okay. Instead of uh, logging in, user should get get a proper warning message because with invalid credentials, no user should be able to log in. Rather, a, in a proper warning message should come saying that. Uh, you are not allowed to log in or whatever it is, email and password doesn't match or something, you should paste, you should give, okay? Okay, now another scenario, guys. Let's create one more scenario. I'll copy paste this entire scenario. Third scenario I'm writing. Login with valid username and invalid password. Login with, okay? This is the third scenario. Like this, any these are like test cases only, guys. Okay, feature file will contain test cases, the form of scenarios, okay? So in Agile, that if you are following this BDD, behavior-driven development, this instead of creating the traditional test cases that we generally create using the Excel sheets and all those stuff, in this Word document, we'll be creating a feature file and this feature file will contain the scenarios instead of the test cases, okay? All the scenarios, possible probable scenarios for this login functionality, we have to keep on writing. Okay, it may be 100, 100 also, we have to write all the scenarios, guys. Okay, so 10, 20, 30 is also fine. Okay, There's that many number of scenarios also exists. Okay, all the scenarios related to this particular story, user story, uh, here that is mentioned here. Okay, that is as a registered user in the application, I want to log into the application so that I can access my account. For that, all the scenarios possible, test cases are scenarios we have to write in the feature file. Okay, that's how the feature file will look like. So I'll save this feature file, guys. Okay, into the onto my desktop. No, not here. More locations, I'll say. And uh, I'll just go to the location and say on my desktop, I'll save. Here I'll save, guys. Okay. I'll just give the name as a login. Login feature. Login feature. Dot dot x. Okay. I'm done. Save this. I'll create one more. Here, uh, here, login with valid username, invalid password. 
user enters valid uh, valid username but enters invalid password okay username is email address is valid but uh, password is invalid clicks on login button user should not be able to successfully login even though one one is invalid it should not allow get a pro uh, and should get a proper warning message okay and you should not be able to log in and get a proper warning message. Copy this part. Uh, one more scenario I'll write. Two more scenarios I'll cover now. Uh, let's go to the next page better. Uh, login with invalid username and valid password, guys. Okay, invalid username and valid password. User has opened the application URL, navigated to the login page. User enters invalid email address and valid password, enters valid password, clicks on login. Should not be able to log in because username is invalid. How can the user be logged in? Fine, get a proper warning message. Same. Now, last and final scenario as part of sample I'm creating. I can create even more scenarios, but uh, I'll I'll stop with these five scenarios. Login without providing any credentials. Okay, login without providing any credentials. User has opened the application, navigated log user. Don't enter any username or email address. Don't enter any email address. And uh, don't enter and don't enter any password. Clicks on login button. When user email and uh, password is not entered, what will happen? User should not be able to log in. You should, you should get a proper warning message. These are the uh, five scenarios I created as part of this uh, feature file. You can create even more scenarios. But due to the time constraints, I'm not creating all the scenarios of this login functionality. If this particular application if I am talking about this application, I mean, if I'm talking about the login functionalities of this application, I can get a lot of test cases or scenarios that I can create in the feature file. But for now, a sample, let's say for this uh, user story, for uh, if I create a feature file for login functionality, for example, I created five scenarios. Let's assume that these are the total scenarios, uh, okay, that we can create as part of the login functionality. Now, after creating this kind of feature file, after creating this kind of feature file, who has created this feature file guys? testers that we have, we as software testers have created this feature file uh, containing all the scenarios for testing this uh, user story. Okay. Now, now is this feature file approved? Not it. This feature file need to be attached to the user story and sent to the product owner. Okay. Sent to the product owner for review. Okay. Who need to review this user story? The one who knows the business well. The testers have created this based on the understanding of the software testers. Software testers have created these scenarios for the user story in this feature file. But we cannot go with the software testers, right? Software testers may not be aware of something and they may have done some mistakes while creating these scenarios in the feature file. So who need to correct, review these uh, scenarios, whether they are written correct or not correct or not, okay? So in the next step, the software testers will share this, will share this feature file with product owner. So product owner, the one who knows the business, okay, PO product owner will review and provide feedback on the feature file, okay, feature file which is attached in the story. If any more scenarios need to be added, or if scenarios are written wrong, or any updates need to be done to the feature uh, scenarios in the feature files, the product owner will give the feedback. Based on this feedback, testers have to update. Next, once the feedback has come from the product owner, okay, this will go through a lot of iterations, guys, if required. Product, uh, testers will keep on writing the, uh, uh, I mean, feature files and scenarios and product owner has to keep on reviewing and approving. Once approved, once this uh, feature file is approved by the product owner, till, till then, this process will continue in this uh, story, okay? As part of the story, uh, the feature file will be reviewed by the product owner and all the stuff, okay? Once product owner feels that these scenarios are 100% correct, okay, and then approves, okay. Finally, the product owner has to approve, either feedback or approve. If feedback is uh, given, then testers have to update the uh, the feature file and again attach it to the uh, user story and product owner has to review again. Finally, the product owner has to approve. Why the product owner need, need to approve? Product owner is the one who knows the business well, not the software testers, okay. To be in line, you see the communication is happening very happening very well here. Okay. Once the product owner approves this feature file, then only the developers will start working. Okay. This is an example I'm not giving uh, on a vague manner, guys. Uh, this happened in a project that I have already worked in one of my uh, previous companies. Okay. Where I was used to work. 
uh, with its BDD agile process and all the stuff. So where we used to do the same thing, okay? We used to uh, create, uh, get the user stories, create the feature files containing this, uh, all the possible possible scenarios for the user story and share it with the product owner. Once the product owner has provided the feedback, we would have updated that and finally send it back again. And finally, product owner has approved. Then, then, uh, then developers, developers start writing or developing functionality of the application. Functionality uh, for the user story that is specified in the user story. Okay. So developers will uh, start developing the user story based on the feature file created by the software testers, which is approved by the product owner so that uh, it will be intact. Okay. The communication is intact using the what need to be developed is given more focus here as part of this process. Once the developers develop this uh, functionality according to the feature files and scenarios created by the testers, which is approved by the product owner, then developers once completed, what the developers will do, developers will again give it to the testers. Software testers have, have to test this functionality of the application, right? What the software testers will do, what the software testers have to do, testers have to, have to, <coughs> testers have to test the, the developed functionality for this user story with the help of feature file scenarios only with the help of approved feature file scenarios. Okay. Again, the same scenarios will be used by the software tester or testers to test the developed functionality. Okay. Whether it is, uh, uh, whether the developed functionality is according to the scenarios, which are approved by the product owner or not, testers will check. And once everything is okay, the story will be released into the story will be approved. Okay. will be sent to the review of the product owner and, uh, given demos by the developer and tested to the product owner and product owner has to approve, then only it will be marked as completed. Story need to be marked as completed finally, once the product owner, okay, is okay with the developed and tested story, okay? Like this, all the stories will come. Here only one story I talked about, next story will come, developers will try to understand, testers will try to understand, clear their doubts, you need to clarify the doubts, testers will create the feature file, okay, containing scenarios, and the scenarios and feature file will be using this Gherkin keyword or testers will be using the Gherkin language keywords for constructing such feature file and scenarios and need to be that feature file need to be approved by the PO and the developers are, once approved only developers will start developing the user story and testers will use the same approved feature, uh, feature file for testing the user story and then uh, demo it to the product owner so that the uh, product owner will once again confirm and complete the story. Okay, like that the stories in the Stories assigned to the sprint will be approved like this, okay? Will be completed like this. This is the process that will be followed in the Agile HDLC model kind of thing, guys, okay? This is what um, I came across in my real-time experience, okay? From my real-time experience. Now you got an idea like BDD in Agile, okay? So let's go to this link which has some information about BDD, guys, okay? So now you understood the process I done, but let's from let's go to the official website of kukumba.io. Uh, this particular page of official website of Kumar IO, where we have some documentation on BDD. BDD stands for behavior driven development as I already covered in the previous sessions is a software development process. It's one of the like uh, traditional development is one software development process. Behavior driven development is a software development process that Cucumber was built to support. Okay. Which tool will support this uh, BDD? One of the tools in the market, famous tools in the market will support BDD is Cucumber. Apart from Cucumber, we have other things like Specflow and all those stuff, J Jbehave. Okay, and all those stuff. Okay, a lot of things were there as I covered in the previous session. So, what is BDD? Is a way of software teams to work that closes the gap between the business people and technical people. Okay, so communication will be improved, guys. If if the focus is on what to be developed, what to be tested. Okay, what need to be produced into the market. If it is if the project development pro progress uh, is based on behavior, then BDD process or approach will be followed in the projects which reduces the gap, communication gap between the business uh, business team that is product owner, uh, if you talk about Agile and then uh, product owner, BA, whatever you can say, and technical team that is developers and testers, okay? To reduce the gap, the communication is at most important and this kind of approach is followed, okay? For that reasons. And uh, working in rapid, small iterations to increase feedback and the flow of the value. In BDD, generally BDD is used in Agile, SDL, uh, Agile SDLC, Scrum methodology kind of projects where uh, the work will be done done in iterations iteration basis like uh, we are here we are calling that as a sprint one to four weeks of duration two weeks in general okay 
working in rapid small iteration to increase feedback and the flow of the value okay the feedback is given already as you can see right for every story the feedback is given by the product owner business people okay producing system documentation that is automatically checked against the system behavior okay so here testers are producing the feature file which is nothing but the system documentation this feature file is nothing but a system documentation that is automatically checked against the system behavior right we are using the same feature file to test it okay the one uh, feature file that is uploaded by product owner is uh, used by testers to test it even developers are using the same feature file to develop the software functionality so here collaborative work is there guys okay developers testers and product owner business everyone is working collectively okay so work done by someone need to be reviewed by someone and uh, reviewed by someone is developed by someone developed by someone is tested by someone tested by someone is again approved okay developed and tested by someone is again approved by business like that collaborative work is there guys okay that's what is bgd in bgd and agile i covered it every iteration so you don't have to dig deep into this but at a high level uh, you understood right what is bgd and all okay here what to be built is more important than how it, how to be built how to be built means technical stuff okay architecture technologies tools skilled resources timeline how to build but what to build means requirements behavior of the application is given more importance okay so that's all about bdd guys and uh, coming to the feature file i just now showed you how to create a feature file and what is the situation where the testers have to create the feature file and send it to the review of the product owners you got it clear but uh let's understand in the feature file we have used some gherkin uh uh gherkin keywords right uh let's uh let's understand that gherkin keywords guys okay let's uh see some gherkin keywords that are used in the feature file let's go to this and see uh this is the gherkin reference and then uh, this is the feature file guys you see this is an example of the feature file scenario when then i and get and all the stuff okay even there is one a uh, lot of other keywords are also there guys i'll show you these are the list of keywords we have main major keywords that we generally use in uh, uh you'll use while creating the feature file are this one guys apart from this we have few more uh, keywords are there but these are the primary ones you see feature already we have used a feature keyword from gherkin language okay gherkin is a separate language that cucumber can understand guys cucumber tool can understand and that we generally write in the feature files in the feature file we will write feature keyword okay this is from gherkin language and a rule okay we, we don't generally use rule but that's okay let's uh example example i'll explain okay whatever the uh keywords i have not uh covered here i'll be covering that in the upcoming sessions guys okay example is another one there is something known as scenario apart from scenario we have scenario outline also with scenario outline we generally use example and I'll, I'll i'll explain about the example later given when then and but have not covered so here and means a positive construction on the then or previous statement but but means reverse one okay user should uh, should not be able to log in successfully but a warning message should be displayed like that we can write okay but a warning message should be displayed something should happen but something should not happen in that case, instead of and, you have to use but, reverse statement, okay? I'll, I'll give you some examples for that later, okay? Background is one thing. Scenario outline, just now I told you, right? Scenario outline, scenario template, examples, scenarios. So like many things, many uh, Gherkin keywords are there. Gherkin language keywords are there, guys, okay? Gherkin uses a set of specific keywords to give structure and meaning to the executable specifications, okay? So it can be translated in many spoken languages. In reference, we'll use English now, okay? So, yeah, what else? Here you see feature, the purpose of the feature keyword. Okay, each and every keyword they're explaining is feature keyword is to represent something, descriptions. Okay, we can write description, rules, examples, steps. Okay, given, when, then, each and every keyword they have explained. We don't have to go so deep for now. For now, this much is enough. At a high level, I'm explaining. Okay, the feature file and the Gherkin. The language keywords that are used in the feature file. Okay, Gherkin, as already mentioned, let's uh, let me explain more about Gherkin here in this link. At this link, I already covered all this stuff, guys. BDD in Agile feature file, Gherkin. You got an idea. Okay, Gherkin is a set of grammar rules. Okay, it's a separate language, guys, which con contains like English. Gherkin is also a language. Okay, it contains a set of grammar rules that makes plain text. Instead of writing in a paragraph, we are writing in a more structured format here, right? This can be written in a paragraph format, but that doesn't look good. Okay. Gherkin is a set of grammar rules that make plain text structured enough for Kumba to understand. Who can understand by writing this structure? The scenarios, if you have you, uh, written the plain English instead of writing in paragraphs, if you have used Gherkin keywords like this feature, given scenario, and all those keywords, you have structured this particular English text. So who can understand after structuring? Kumba tool can understand it, or BDT tools can understand it. Okay. 
So very to tool like Cucumber can understand this uh, structure, which is a uh, English structure or plain text created in feature files with the help of the Gherkin language keywords. Okay. Everything is connected together, guys. Okay. Okay. Fine. So what else? What else we have here? Gherkin. Okay. And then Cucumber. Cucumber, I told you right already in the beginning itself, I told you Cucumber is nothing but a tool. Okay, it's nothing but tool or framework which can understand this Gherkin language and uh, can recognize the feature files and can understand the Gherkin language that is written in the feature files. Okay, so who can understand the feature files and Gherkin language? Feature file and Gherkin language, Cucumber. Cucumber can recognize the feature files and also can understand the Gherkin language which is written inside the feature files. Okay, let's understand about this uh, Cucumber now. So what is a Cucumber? As you already know. So Cucumber. What is a Cucumber? Cucumber is a tool that supports behavior driven development. Okay. So it's just a tool guys, which uh, can understand, uh, which can understand this uh, Gherkin keywords and the feature files, recognize the feature files. Okay. Now guys, there is one more thing that happens in this uh, agile uh, scrum methodology, BDD process and all that is. So here testers have to test the developed functionality apart from manual testing here, apart from the testers testing it manually, what the testers will do is Testers will also write the automation scripts. Okay. Automation scripts testers have to write. So how the testers will write the automation scripts? You see in the front end, the front foreground or front end, uh, this feature file will be there for every step that is written by the software tester here in the background. Okay. In the background, for example, user has opened the application URL. Okay. This text will be linked to some code guys. Okay. In the automation projects. Uh, based on Cucumber BDD, okay? Cucumber BDD automation projects. I'll be showing that practically in the upcoming sessions, guys, okay? This is just the beginning. I'm explaining more theory now. Uh, front end, the cover will be like this. The cover will be like this. For each and every step provided here, in the background, there will be some code attached, Selenium Java code attached, for example, okay? It may not be only Selenium Java code. Many other automation tools also will support this Cucumber thing and all those check-ins and uh, feature files and all. So if you talk about an example of Selenium Java that I'm going to show you in this session, series of the sessions at the end of the sessions, okay? Every step will have, will call a method case, okay? We'll call a method. This step will have a method in the background. That method will contain some Selenium Java code, which has to open the application URL. For example, this step, navigate to login page. This will call another method, okay, in Java, which will have the code for, Okay, uh, Selenium Java code for navigating to the login page. Like that, guys, every step will have a, in background some Selenium Java automation code in, written inside the appropriate methods associated with the steps. Okay, so all those methods related to the steps will be there in the step definition file. Step definitions we call. I'll cover more these guys. Okay, I'll not give, I don't want to give you all these terminologies now itself, but uh, when we see these things practically, it will be more clear for you. Okay, more, more clear for you. But uh, whatever I, whatever I covered in these sessions is all already good. Apart from this, there is something known as step definitions and all, which I'll be covering practically. The step definitions will contain the methods for this each and every step here. Okay. So Gherkin, you see, these are the step definitions, guys. Steps in Gherkin, uh, which are part of the feature file, and uh, every step will have a step definition. Okay. In the step definition class will be there. In that every step will have a associated method in this. Okay. In the background of this uh, feature file, which is the friend ground is this feature file, which is which looks like English language, uh, having the Gherkin keywords and all to create the structure to for so that the cucumber can understand. And in the background, there will be step definition Java file. You can say in the Java file, will there will be separate methods for each and every step here, which contains Selenium Java code internally. Okay, in the background, we'll be hiding it. Okay, we'll, in the background, we'll be hiding it. When when I show you all these things practically connected, then you will understand everything good. So Cucumber is a tool which can understand this Gherkin language and also can recognize the feature file. Okay. After recognizing the feature file, Cucumber tool will understand the Gherkin language and understand the scenarios you have written and all those stuff. Okay. So fine guys, this is all about BDD in Agile, feature files, Gherkin and Cucumber uh, that I wanted to cover in this session. So to begin with, you have to know all this theory guys. Okay. Then only you can understand the upcoming uh, sessions. Okay. So for understanding the practical sessions that are going to come up in this, uh, series. Okay. You have to understand uh, what is BDD, what is Cucumber. Okay. Uh, then what are the feature files? What is Gherkin? What is a uh, Cucumber? What is BDD? Uh, what are step definitions and uh, how they are associated with the feature files and all those stuff in automation and all here as part of automation, this feature file will be automated in the background of the feature file. 
some step definition file will be created in the automation projects where which contains the methods for each and every step containing the selenium java automation code to perform that particular action or scenario steps so guys this is all about a bdd in agile and all those stuff so that's all for this session guys in the next session i'll be covering other topics of uh, cucumber bdd so that's all see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 6 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain about BDD and three amigos. So let's get started. What are these three amigos? It's a terminology, guys. Okay, that we generally use while working with BDD and all. So what is this terminology? Is all I am going to explain in this session. Three amigos means business developers. and testers case okay three amigos in bdd are nothing but business developers and testers okay without this three amigos okay this bdd approach is not possible you see bdd is all about behavior driven development okay so the main focus is on the behavior so what need to be developed is more important than how it is going to be developed okay so what need to be developed is all about behavior right so the behavior has to be communicated properly between these three amigos then only this bdd approach that is development approach or process will be successful that's why we call this business developers and testers as a three amigos in bdd okay business developers and testers have to communicate well okay coming to business it can be po or ba product owner or business analyst developers you already know they develop the application code by writing the application code and testers have to test the application and the communication between all these three amigos need to be good in bdd for the bdd to be successful and for the right product to be delivered into the market so guys hope you understood the terminology what is three amigos three amigos are nothing but business developers and testers coming to business it's po and ba so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 7 of cucumber bdd training series In this session, I am going to show you how to create a Maven project in Eclipse IDE. In order to work with Cucumber BDD, okay, we have to first create a Maven project, okay, in Eclipse IDE editor. I already have this Eclipse IDE editor in my machine, okay. So let me launch my Eclipse IDE editor, and here I'll click on File, and I'll create a new. I'll select a project, and then here I'll search for Maven. When I search for Maven, I'll get this Maven project option. I'll click on Next. Okay, we just need to select that Maven project option under the Maven folder in the previous screen and click on Next. And here you should not select this checkbox option. Okay, we should not be selecting this checkbox option and simply click on Next without selecting the checkbox. Now here it is retrieving the archetypes. Okay, different Maven project templates it is retrieving. Here we have to filter these templates with just type Maven. Lot of templates came in that we need quick start template. For that we have to filter by using Maven hyphen archetype hyphen quick start. Just type quick start here. You will getting this three quick start Maven archetype quick start things. And let's go with the Apache one. Okay, we we got GitHub and all the other stuff. But let's go with Apache one. Whatever the version we have with Apache Maven quick archetype quick start, we have to go with the template. Click on next. And here we have to give the project name. Okay. I'll give the project name as uh, the project application that I'm going to automate is Tutorials Ninja application. So I'll give the same name Tutorials Ninja as a project. Okay, Tutorials Ninja project. I'll give project. Okay, and here I have to give the group ID. So I'll just give some short form of this or any unique group ID. You can give TNP or something, and uh, just click on finish, guys. Without doing anything, just click on finish. So you see the the arc type. Maven archetype quick start template Maven project template is getting created. Okay, the project with this uh, selected template is getting created, but it is target thirty three percent, and this is happening in the new uh, new uh, mm, as per today's date and all. It's happening, guys, where the progress is not moving forward. So you should wait for this screen, guys. Okay, you should wait for this screen. Okay, after a while, it will ask for yes, uh, why kind of thing. You have to enter why, guys. Okay. just wait this is running still 
you'll get something like y here okay you have to type y here okay in the previous uh, in the previous days right uh, uh, like uh, one month or two uh, two months before this uh, december month right uh, this was not happening with maven okay it's now struck at 33% if you are facing this problem that is struck at 33% uh, you should click on this or you should get this panel and uh, the building process should complete and you have to type y here okay if if this progress is completing no need to type y here but uh, this is a case in your case you have to type y here and press enter and once you get build success the progress will complete you see the progress will proceed and it will complete once the complete progress is completed let's wait it's building and all so let's wait once the complete progress is completed the project is ready for our use it is a maven java project at this moment it's not a cucumber java project Okay, it's not a Maven Cucumber project, rather it is a Maven Java project. As you can see, M and J symbols are there on this project. It's not a Cucumber project, it's a Maven Java project. So what I will do next is, I'll go under SRC main Java and delete this uh, package and file. It's not required. Right click on this package and delete this. Similarly, expand this SRC test Java and delete this package and file. Right click and say delete. Okay, click on OK. Now, SRC test Java, right click on this SRC test Java and create a new package. I'll just name some package guys. Okay. Just to get started. Okay. Just name pa some package like this package I'll create for now. Okay. This is not the final package. We'll be modifying this project uh, according to our needs in the coming sessions and all. For now, I'll say test package. Click on finish and under the test package, I'll create a new class. Just to see if this Maven project is working on or not, I'll just create a new class, say demo class, and I'll say public static void main, click on finish. And uh, once this demo class with the public static void main is created, you see the font size is not good. Okay, let's increase the font size, guys. How to increase the font size? So just go to window and select preferences. Okay, and you'll get this general, expand that general. You'll get appearances, select the appearance and expand, and you'll get colors and fonts. In the colors and fonts, you just select basic, expand that. In that basic, you select text font and click on edit option. Okay. And in that edit option, you select 18. Okay. You will get the font size. Say okay. Say apply and say apply and close. Now, remove this comment. Remove this comment and write some sample print statement. Okay. We are not dealing with the uh, cucumber. Okay. We are just uh, checking whether we have created a proper Maven Java project and we are able to run this code in the from the main method or not, okay? So I'll write my name here. And uh, to run this file, to run this demo.java file, either I can right click on this file or right click on this demo.java file or right click on this code and say run as, you'll get, you will get Java application, guys. Java application option, click on that, okay? Once you say Java application, you see, the output is printing in the output, it's working fine. So this is how, guys, we have to create a Maven project Okay, we have to create this uh, Maven project in Eclipse ID and uh, we'll go to the next session guys. Okay, so we'll slowly configure this Maven project with Cucumber stuff and all those stuff. We'll create the feature files and all those stuff in the next session. Okay, in this session, I just wanted to show you how to create a Maven project in Eclipse ID to get started with this Cucumber VDD. Okay, framework or project. Okay, so that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part eight of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to show you how to create feature files in our Maven project and how to run them. So let's get started. I'll switch to Eclipse ID. Here, we have already created the Maven project in the previous session. As you already know, in the previous session, we have created a Maven project in Eclipse ID and we have run some sample class file here, demo demo class file having this code and it has printed around motory as we have seen in the previous session. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the feature files and try to run them similar the way I have run the demo.java file. I would like to run the feature files. Okay. So I'll, I'll close this uh, demo.java and delete this file guys. Okay. It's no more required. I'll delete this file from the project and under this test package, this package name can be anything guys. I just created the test package under this package. I'll create the feature file. How to create a feature file? Right click on the package under which we want to create the feature file and select new and select file option here. Once you select the create new uh, file option, create new file dialog will come here. You have to give the name of the feature file followed by the extension of the feature file that is dot feature. 
So I would like to create the feature file for the login functionality. Okay. So I'll say login dot feature. Okay. For example, this is application guys. In this application, for this particular functionality of the application, that is login, login functionality of the application, I want to create the feature file. And in this feature file, I would like to create the uh, scenarios. Okay. And all those stuff. And uh, so I'll say login dot feature here. Click on finish guys. Okay. The moment I say click on finish, it's saying application not found. Login dot feature file got created, but it is saying that this feature file for using this feature file, there is no application. Say okay. Okay. Editors available on the marketplace. Show ID extension for this file type and let me install them. Okay. I'll say cancel for no. Okay. I'll try to open this login dot feature file. You'll get the same error guys. It's very important. Uh, just double click on this. You will see again, it's saying application not found. The reason behind that is, as I already have explained in the previous sessions, feature files are only recognized by Cucumber tool. Okay. This Eclipse IDE by default will not come with the Cucumber tool. You cannot even open. How can you run it? Right click run as you will not get any option to run it. Okay. You will not, you are not able to open. How can you run this file? Okay. You have not done, you have not written the feature file. You didn't do anything. So how can you run this feature file? To recognize this feature file, Cucumber tool is required. Otherwise, feature files are of no use. Even though you create this login dot feature in, inside the Maven project, it's not of no use because for, for recognizing this feature file and for opening this feature file, for running this feature file, we need to have a plugin installed in this Eclipse IDE editor that is called as Cucumber Eclipse IDE plugin. Okay. That plugin will not come by default in this Eclipse ID. So how to install that Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin and how to work with this feature file, how to run this feature file, I'll cover in the next session. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. Here I showed you how to create the feature files, and but we are unable to run it because Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin is not installed in this okay, Eclipse ID. Okay. In the next session, I'll show you how to install Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin and thereafter. Uh, work with this feature file and run the feature file and open and work with the feature file and all other things. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part nine of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to practically demonstrate how to install Cucumber Eclipse IDE plugin. So let's get started. So how to install this Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin? If you remember the previous session, okay, we created a feature file without having this Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin and we got some error, right? We are unable to open the feature file that got created in Eclipse ID and we are getting an error while trying to open application not found kind of error we are getting in the previous session. So we are going to overcome this problem, okay, of opening and running this feature file Okay, that happened in the previous session because of an error by installing this Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin in this session. Okay, here you can see the login dot feature file. If I try to open application not found error is coming. The reason behind that is that Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin is not available. Okay, the Cucumber tool is required to recognize this feature files. Okay, for installing that Cucumber tool, we have to install that Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin in this Eclipse ID. Eclipse ID doesn't come with this Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin by default. We have to install it manually. So how to install in Eclipse ID? The simplest way to install Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin in Eclipse ID is click on help and select Eclipse Marketplace. And in this display dialogue of Eclipse Marketplace, just, okay, just give it some time and uh, you'll get a search box field here. And in the search box field, search for Cucumber just search for simple Cucumber guys. Okay. You don't have to do much. Just search for Cucumber. And in the search results of this Eclipse uh, marketplace, you'll get this Cucumber Eclipse plugin. Okay. And you see, you, you are getting this install button because this plugin is not coming by default. You have to install it manually here. Okay. And just click on install guys. In a while, Cucumber Eclipse plugin will get installed. Okay. Installation pending and it's getting installed. Let's switch. Yeah. So it's asking there are no licenses to review. Either the software does not specify a license or the license has already been reviewed or approved, whatever it is. Uh, if you are getting some license agreement, select agree to the license agreement. Otherwise, click on finish, guys. Okay, that's it. You see the software is getting installed. It's asking us whether you can trust or not. Always trust all content you have to select and select. Yes, I accept the risk. 
and click on trust selected. The software will complete installation now and uh, it may ask you to restart your Eclipse ID, okay, after it is done. Let's wait, it's almost there. Yeah, now it's asking you to restart the Eclipse ID. Click on restart now. In a while, the Eclipse ID will get restarted. And uh, after restarting, we'll, we'll be able to see some difference in the feature file that we have created earlier. We should get an icon of Cucumber to resonate that uh, the Cucumber tool is now recognizing the feature file, okay? So let's see what will happen after we launch the Eclipse ID, okay? Fine, Eclipse ID is launching, guys. Eclipse ID is launching. Starting Eclipse ID. So it has launched, okay? Eclipse ID has launched, guys. Uh, now let's expand this project to see. One minute. It's taking something. Let's wait. Sometimes it happens. Once it is done, let's open this. You see this time the login.feature file looks a bit different and it comes with a Cucumber icon. You see, this is the logo of the Cucumber plugin, guys. Okay, Cucumber logo. Okay, a cut piece of Cucumber, you can say in real time, real world. Okay, so that is our actually logo of that logo or icon of the Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin tool. And Cucumber is now recognizing this login.feature file. Earlier, before we have installed Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin, uh, there was no this, this kind of icon was not there, okay? This kind of icon was not there. So just double click on this login dot feature. And this time you are not getting error and you are getting some text guys, okay? Some text you are getting by default, okay? Some feature keywords are coming from Gherkin language, okay? All these things are coming. So I'll remove all this stuff, okay? So at least uh, we have installed Eclipse, uh, uh, Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin in this session. I'll remove all this content guys. In the next session, I'll, I'll show you how to, okay, uh, I'll show you how to create the feature files and then run, okay? After installing the Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin, then how to write the uh, scenarios into the feature file that I'm going to show or provide practically in the next session, okay? Creating scenarios in feature file and run, run them. This is what I'm going to do in the next session, guys, okay? We'll go step by step, guys. Every session, I'm explaining something new. Okay, step by step, we are learning the stuff. In this uh, current session, I have shown you how to install Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin. Uh, after installation, you can clearly see that. Okay, I'll not. Uh, let's see. Oops. Okay, you see, it's still there. We'll we'll clear this in the next session and then write our own feature file. Okay, that I'll demonstrate in the next session. Okay. So at least in this session, we have installed the Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin and uh, which was recognizing after installing. You see, the Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin is uh, recognizing the login.feature file, uh, which uh, how can we be sure? Here, the icon is coming, Cucumber icon is coming. That proves that Cucumber Eclipse ID, Cucumber is able to recognize the feature file, okay? Fine. So that's all for this session, guys. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 10 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to practically show you how to create scenarios in the feature file and run them. So let's get started. In the previous session, I have practically demonstrated how to install Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin. With the help of that, we are able to recognize the feature files, open the feature files and work with them, right? Now, with this capability of working with the feature files, opening them and working with the feature files. In this session, I'm going to show you how to create the scenarios in such kind of feature files and run them, okay? So I'll go to the Eclipse ID. Here, we already have the feature file created as part of the previous sessions. If you want it to be there, that's fine. Otherwise, you can even delete, guys, okay? Delete and let's create it again. Let me right click on this uh, login feature and delete this file. I'll show you how to freshly create the same file, okay? Just for the sake of freshly creating, I'm just doing that. Okay, you can either continue with the same feature file or you can delete and uh, create, no problem. Uh, right click on this package and select new and you have to select file guys, okay? And here, in this create new file dialog, you have to give the name of the feature file. Let's say login is the name of the feature file and the extension should be dot feature, okay? You should not forget, dot feature is the extension. Click on finish. 
the moment you click on finish guys you see cucumber tool is identifying this feature file that's the reason you are getting this icon and you can see some auto generated comments and uh, feature file content some scenarios are also coming by default okay auto generated feature is coming by default i'll remove all this stuff i'll clear all this stuff guys i'll freshly create so for which uh, uh, user story or something i'm creating this uh, login dot uh, scenarios in the login dot feature file so let me write down here okay let's say there is a user story or requirement okay as a, a registered user as a registered user i want to log into the application this, this is a requirement guys okay log into the application so that i can access my account okay so that i can access my account so that i can access my account or check my account details or whatever you can write down here okay so that i can check my account details okay or access my account details whatever it is okay this is a requirement guys this kind of uh, requirement may come from the client uh, side po business team okay and uh, by looking at this requirement we created this uh, feature file in the feature file for this particular requirement we'll be creating a lot of scenarios guys okay so how to do that how to do that i'm going to show you so i'll say so i'll take this uh, application as an example guys okay visually also you can understand this is the application i'm trying to use for uh, you know uh, kind of uh, writing the scenarios this is a login functionality assume so here i am writing the feature file so i have to say feature colon you see the moment i type feature colon the color got changed from black to some light greenish color okay this means that cucumber is able to identify this keyword this keyword is from gherkin language as we already have covered in the previous sessions there are different uh, gherkin keywords gherkin language keywords that we'll be using for structuring this particular text and to make the cucumber uh, identify and uh, run the scenarios and all the stuff okay feature the name of the feature we have to give guys okay so user login okay this is the name of the feature let's say some description you can give under the feature guys okay some description okay user should be able to uh, registered user should be able to log in okay to access account details like this some description this is optional guys this second line is optional guys if you want to write you can write otherwise you can ignore okay this is a feature and this is a description of this particular feature and in this uh, feature i'll create some scenarios guys okay scenario colon the moment i say scenario colon you see this is converted into the gherkin keyword and the cucumber is identified by this gherkin keyword okay uh, <coughs> so what i will say is uh, scenario i'll say login with login with valid credentials so scenarios are like kind of test cases only guys okay so the requirement uh, can be tested in multiple ways okay with valid credentials invalid credentials invalid username valid password valid user valid username and invalid password and without credentials and many other test cases exist as you know okay but i will be writing some only few test cases here only few test cases here so we'll do one thing uh, scenario login with valid credentials i'll write uh what i will write uh, here i'll write given space when you say given space automatically this got converted into green color this is also a gherkin uh, language keyword given i open the given user has opened uh, user opens the application url i okay given user opens the application url or you can even say uh given user uh, navigates to login page given user navigates to login page and i not i uh when after log navigating to login page when user enters email address okay so i'll give the email address here guys i'll give the email address as a valid email address okay i'll say user enters valid email address and here i'll give the valid email address i can give i can pass this data from here guys okay from the scenario step itself i will pass the data this is the data i am passing okay 
this is a test data i'm giving in the same scenario uh, given when user enters valid email address and enters valid password valid password and clicks on login button then user should get successfully logged in okay user should get successfully login otherwise user should log in successfully should log in successfully whatever you feel convenient you can write in your way in your way okay you can create any other uh, any a uh, lot of scenarios guys like uh, the number of test cases you can like uh, that are possible for this particular feature okay you can keep on writing a second scenario again scenario colon scenario colon and uh, login with uh, invalid credentials i'll write a bit fast now okay given user navigates to login page when user enters uh, invalid email address i'll give some invalid email address okay this invalid email address and enter uh, invalid password enter invalid password then i clicks on login button then user should not get otherwise i'll say then user should get a proper warning message you should get a proper warning message okay uh, user login should not be successful otherwise user should okay user should get a proper warning message okay that is enough okay that's fine i'll not make it complex as a scenario plan login with valid email address an invalid password it's third scenario like this keep on creating the scenarios guys user navigates to login page when user uh, enters valid email address and enters invalid password and clicks on login button then user should get a proper warning message okay like this scenario login with invalid email address and valid password okay valid password given user navigates navigates to login page when user enters invalid email address the invalid email address i enter senders enters valid password okay and clicks on login button then user should get a proper warning message okay like this i'll write and one more scenario i'll write scenario login mm, without providing 
any credentials given user navigates to login page when user enters invalid email address that is this invalid email address and enters sorry login without uh, providing any credentials right uh, when user don't enter any credentials and clicks on login button then user should get a proper should get a proper warning message like this i'll write so how many scenarios have written one two three four five scenarios so you can write any number of scenarios guys uh, five is not five is just uh, you know right few sample count you can say for this uh, a demonstration or explanation you can say so this is how we have to create the feature file guys feature and uh, description of the feature scenarios given when and then but also can be there okay in uh, opposite uh, and is a positive format whereas but is a uh, kind of negative format okay so but uh, whenever there is a requirement we'll write but otherwise uh, it's not required for now let's write like this uh, just to get started this much is good five scenarios as a sample i created i can create few more feature files for other functionalities like restart.feature i can create i can create uh, such dot feature all the functionalities for every functionality i can create a separate feature file okay for now just to get started guys uh, because we are not in a hurry we'll be going step by step i have just created a feature file only for the login functionality here so now i want to run this right click on this login dot feature and select run as you are getting an option like cucumber feature guys okay just select that option cucumber feature option let's see what will happen is there anything happening does it uh, it doesn't look so okay i cannot see something happening okay i'll right click here also and say run as cucumber feature you see could not find or load cucumber dot api cli main class not found cucumber api some some kind of error is coming i'll do one thing i'll just check one more thing guys right click uh, run as uh, run configuration okay just say run configuration guys here project is selected as tutorials ninja and in that feature path is it there correctly login dot feature is there okay everything will run click on run what will happen still the same error is coming guys class not found uh, the exception is coming okay so why we are getting this kind of exception known as class not found uh, exception the reason may be different guys you see we have installed cucumber eclipse id plugin but uh, we have not installed okay but we have not installed uh, we have not configured this project with the cucumber libraries okay so uh, in the next session okay in the next session i'll be showing you okay i don't want to cover everything in the same session so these are short sessions i just showed you in this session how to create the uh, how to create scenarios in the feature file but when you are trying to run them, you are getting this class uh, not found exception. To resolve that, we have to add the libraries to this project, guys. Okay, we have to add the libraries. By default, this Maven Java project is coming with only the Java library. So apart from that, we also have to add Cucumber related libraries. Okay, so that we can run this uh, feature file and then get some something out of that. Okay, that I'm going to show you in the next session. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. In the next session, I'm showing I'll I'll show you how to add the libraries of Cucumber, okay, to the project. And then I'll show you how to run them and how to proceed further. Okay. We are going step by step based on our requirement only. We are moving our steps. Okay. So in this session, we mainly covered how to create the scenarios in the feature file. When writing trying to run them, we are getting some class not found exception that we are going to resolve in the next session. Okay. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 11 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to practically demonstrate how to add Cucumber libraries to the Maven Java project and thereby run the feature files. So let's get started. So in the previous session, if you remember, we created the scenarios in the feature file 
But when we try to run the Cucumber file having this uh, scenarios, we got some exception. That is class not found exception, okay? So how to overcome that problem and uh, how to run the feature files having the scenarios that I'm going to cover in this session. The problem in the previous session was this particular project, okay? The Maven Java project we have in this Eclipse IDE is coming by default only with the Java library, but doesn't have the Cucumber libraries, okay? Though Cucumber Eclipse IDE plugin is installed in this Eclipse IDE, but still this project is not configured with Cucumber libraries, okay? That's the reason when I right click and run as Cucumber feature here, when I try to run the login.feature file, we got this Cucumber, uh, I mean, we got this class not found exception, right? So how to overcome this uh, exception? You see, it's coming from this, okay? It's trying to find Cucumber API library, and but it's not finding. So it, hence it is giving class not found exception. How to overcome this uh, exception? To overcome this exception, to this project, we have to add Cucumber libraries. How to add this Cucumber libraries, I'm going to cover now, okay? Let's open this form.xml file and go to the dependencies section, okay? By default, when I created this Maven Java project with Maven Architect Quickstart template, okay? With the help of the template, all these things are coming by default in the form.xml file. I don't have to do much hard work. Okay, but along with that, I'm getting this dependency tags of JUnit also. Okay, I'll remove that dependency tags of JUnit, guys. Okay, when I click on save, okay, you see here Maven dependencies uh, option got uh, removed. Earlier it has the uh, JUnit library. We don't need the JUnit library, so I have removed the dependency. Now I need the Cucumber libraries to be added to the project. I have to add the dependency tags of Cucumber uh, under these dependencies. For that, I'll open the browser and go to mbnrepository.com. Once you go to this mbnrepository.com, search for Cucumber. When you search for Cucumber, you will get this Cucumber JVM Java from IO Cucumber. Okay. There are info cubes also. This is the old one. The latest one is IO Cucumber. I'll go with the, I'll stick to the latest one, IO Cucumber guys. Okay. Cucumber JVM Java, Cucumber Java from IO Cucumber. Okay. First take this, click on that. Uh, take the latest version. 7.9.0 as per uh, today's date when I'm recording this session. So if you have any other latest version available, you can take that also. Okay, Cop uh, just click on this, copy. it will be copied and paste that dependency. It's not the end guys, we have to add few more dependencies for Cucumber. Click on save all. And after that, again, go back to the uh, Maven, MVN repository and search for Cucumber. Same way, search for Cucumber. Here, along with Java, you will also get Cucumber J in it, okay? Cucumber J in it. So you should not take from info so you have to take this Cucumber uh, J unit from IO Cucumber. Oh, IO Cucumber is latest, whereas info is older. Go with the latest IO Cucumber for J unit. So just go with Cucumber J, uh, J unit IO Cucumber, okay? Click on this, click on this and copy this and come back here and paste it here, okay? So whenever only, whenever we need the dependencies, then only I'll add the dependencies, guys, okay? Uh, otherwise, I'll remove and add if required, okay? JUnit, uh, it was not required at this moment, but it may be required for us later. But till it is required, I don't want the dependency to be in my project. I'm only adding the dependencies that are really required at this point of time in my project, okay? That's how I follow the stuff. So here, Cucumber Java is added. Cucumber JUnit of the same version is added. But one more dependency of Cucumber I need to add, that is Cucumber Core. Again, I'll uh, go to MVN repository and search for Cucumber here. When I search for Cucumber, apart from Java, JUnit, we'll also get something known as Cucumber Core. Okay, Cucumber Core from IO Cucumber, we have to go. And again, take the same latest version, 7.9.0, as per today's date and uh, year of the recording, and paste it here, okay? Three items from Cucumber, we have to add, okay? And click on Save All. The libraries of this Cucumber Java, Cucumber JUnit, Cucumber Core will be added. Now, after that, what we have to do is, what we have to do is, so once it is added, right click on this feature file and say run as Cucumber feature you just write, uh, select. You see, this time you will not get, uh, you will not get class not found exception, rather the Cucumber file got executed and uh, in the output console, okay, the scenarios got executed and uh, when the scenarios got executed, it's saying that five scenarios are there in the login.feature file and five scenarios are undefined. You have not provided the code for this, any of these scenarios, okay? In the background of this scenario, some code need to be written. 
there are 24 steps and all this 19 got skipped, five got undefined, okay? It's saying that you can implement missing steps with the snippets below, okay? This is the code you have to write. These are the methods for each and every, for each and every step in this uh, scenarios of this feature file, you have to write the appropriate methods, okay? So it's giving you the suggestions of the methods that are missing for each and every step in the scenarios of the feature file. So these steps will copy guys and uh, we'll create the step definition class for this feature file and all those things I'm going to cover in the next session, okay? In this session, the main intention was to overcome that uh, class not found exception and uh, we should be able to run this feature file. Now the feature file is running, though there are errors and all those stuff, uh, though we are not getting the appropriate results, but still we are not getting an exception, okay? We are able to run the feature file, okay? Using the Cucumber, okay? By adding the Cucumber libraries, we are able to run it. In the next session, uh, whatever the output it is suggesting, it's saying that uh, you have to implement this, okay? You have to create this methods, it is saying. This creation of these methods to overcome this uh, uh, problems and all those things, I am going to cover in the next session, okay? So guys, that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you, bye. Hello all, welcome to part 12 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to practically demonstrate how to create step definitions and run the feature files. So let's get started. So how to create the step definitions and run the feature files, okay? So here guys, we already have created this feature file having some scenarios. So in the previous session, we resolved an error. Uh, earlier we are getting application not found and we have added the Cucumber libraries in the pom.xml file. And thereafter, when we run this feature file, by right clicking on the feature file and selecting the run as cucumber feature option in the output console, we are getting some output. Okay. You see, it's running the scenarios. We are able to run the scenarios in the feature file with the help of this option. Okay. With the help of cucumber, we are running, right? All the five scenarios got run. And it's clearly saying that these scenarios are undefined scenarios. You have not written any code for this scenario. This is the front end, right? For each and every line here in the scenario, there should be some method in the background, okay? Undefined scenarios are there. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Undefined scenarios. Login with valid credentials. Login with invalid credentials. Login with valid email address and invalid password. Login with invalid email address and valid password. Login without providing any credentials. These are five scenarios. And those steps of the scenarios are not defined. That means you have not implemented any code. Okay, for, uh, for running those scenarios. There are 24 steps and or 24 out of 24 steps got either skipped or undefined, okay? Fine. So now here Eclipse ID is clearly stating that you have to implement those steps of the scenarios with these methods, okay? it's it, You don't have to do the hard work, is, okay? Eclipse ID output, okay? Output which is coming in the Eclipse ID console is giving us this list of uh, steps, okay? Just copy all this, uh, this uh, steps which need to be implemented. You see, for every step, user navigates to login. There's a method created. You see, public void user navigates to login page and some write some code. Like that, for each and every step, these methods are missing, it is saying. So let's copy, let's not do the hard work. Let's copy this, whatever I selected from the output console. Now here, let's, under the same package, let's create a step definition file. That is a class you have to create. I'm right clicking on the test package in this project and select new class. And the moment I say new class here, I'll just give the name as login guys. Okay. For login feature associated step definition file is login. Okay. It is better to give the same name. You can give a different name also, but better to give the same name. Click on finish. The moment I create this login.java inside this login.java, whatever the methods I copied from here. Okay. Which came in the output. Suggested by Eclipse ID output console, right? I'm pasting here. You see, this is how the methods are coming. Remove all this stuff. Okay, remove all this stuff. This is not required. The two lines, a comment and a throw statement, which is coming in this individual method, see how to remove first. Okay. We don't require that steps. So let me remove all from all the places. Okay. Okay, fine. Actually guys, uh, here we have these methods. Let's see, 
from first method to give a given user navigates to login page here user now given user navigates to login page here error is coming over the mouse on this at the rate given since we already have the added the library in the previous session for cucumber now this annotations are from cucumber only over the mouse on at the rate given you see we can import this given from io cucumber import that okay similarly at the rate when also you can import from same io cucumber you see two statements you see if you observe these statements guys this given when and all those stuff if you observe this Okay, just this last statement is different. So provide asterisk here. You don't have to provide multiple import statements. You see, everything will get imported. You see, all these keywords got imported. Given user navigates to the login page. Here, inside this method, I have to write the Selenium automation code in general. Okay, for each and every line here, this method, uh, this line will invoke this line in the feature file. We'll call this method guys. Okay, automatically in the step definition file and user navigates to login page means here i have to write the automation code selenium automation code for navigating to the login page but since we are in the beginning of the sessions i'm not going to write the actual selenium code but instead i'll mimic this with sample print statements okay for a while okay for a while until we learn all the cucumber bdd concepts right uh, i'll go with the sample things okay later part of the sessions right we'll go with a full-fledged selenium project okay where i'll be writing the real selenium automation code okay for now in this session, I'll say uh, some some difference uh, difference I'll create in this uh, statements. Okay, uh, you see the name of this uh, method should differ kind of thing. So I'll say a user got navigated to navigate user got navigated to login page. Okay, just to make this as a print statement, I'm just writing some symbol. Guys, you can write any symbol here. Okay, just uh, see the difference in the output. I'm adding this uh, two greater than symbols in the beginning. Similarly, this one also. Second one, when user enters valid email address, okay, is, is the same one when user enters a valid email address. And here you see this uh, cucumber expressions are coming here, okay. In curly braces, string is coming. Why? Because here email address is mentioned in double quotes, okay. This is treated as in this step, okay, we are passing some argument. So that argument will go into this parameter string and here string. Okay, so one more thing, guys. For example, here, uh, what I will do here is uh, just go to the login feature. User navigates to login page is there. So, but by default, this steps not got implemented, right? If uh, before I implement any of these steps, if I remove all these steps, guys, okay. If I remove all these things from the login and uh, just see what is happening, when I click on save button, none of these steps got implemented actually. Okay, there is no code for this particular step. In this case, the Eclipse ID should highlight this particular line in yellow color, okay? But it's not doing so. So what we can do to make that happen is, let's see what we can do. Right click on the project, guys, okay? This is currently the Maven Java project, guys. This is currently the Maven Java project. I'll right click. I'll say, uh, there is something. Where is that option? Okay, configure. Configure option, guys. Okay, we have to go to configure option and uh, convert to Cucumber project option will be there. Okay, right click on the project, say configure and say convert to Cucumber project. You have to say, okay. Now, the moment you say that this project will be converted into the Cucumber project. Okay, this one step you have to do, guys. Okay, as during the process, you have to, you see, now once you convert this project from Maven Java project to the Maven Cucumber project, you see all the steps are getting highlighted. Earlier, this was not the case. Okay. Earlier, this was not the case. When the project was Maven Java project, these steps are not getting highlighted. These steps are not implemented, actually. Okay. These steps are not implemented. So, those steps which are not implemented will be highlighted by this Maven Cucumber project. It's not no more Maven Java project. It's Maven Cucumber project, guys. And these steps are not implemented. To implement them, we already got the output saying that these methods need to be implemented. Copy these methods and uh, go to the login.java and paste it here. Okay, for the mouse, import this given and uh, here provide asterisk symbol. You don't have to import each and every step. And here I'll just replace these two statements with sample print statement. I'll write instead of writing the real Selenium code. Okay, so here I'll simply write down user got navigated to login page. Okay, user got navigated to login page. <clears throat> then here dot user enters valid 
email address. Okay, user enters valid email address and here spring is there. Okay, here I already told you right in this particular, uh, just save this and uh, okay, it's going off again. Okay, it's going off again. So this happens. So what you can do is right click on this and say Maven update project. Okay, and say okay. The moment I say Maven update project, what's happening? Let's see. It's updating the project, it's taking some time. No, just close this uh, login dot feature. Sometimes you have to close and open. Okay, the same thing. It's not highlighting the steps. Okay, I just uh, uh, created, you see the cucumber option is coming here for each and every step. You see there's a cucumber option. This uh, These steps are now implemented. Okay, these methods are there, right? That's the reason you are not getting that yellow things. Okay, so if you remove all these things from this login, then you'll get yellow color things. Okay, user navigates to login page and here you got the cucumber icon. Okay, instead of uh, yellow color highlighting, you are get, getting the cucumber option here, a kind of icon here. That means this step is implemented. User navigated to login page is already implemented here. This method will be called. When this method is called in the output, user got navigated to login page will be printed. And coming to the next step, when user enters valid email address and with this particular uh, text. Okay. This is an argument, guys. If you are providing that in double quotes and all, this will be passed as an argument to this method. So that argument will be received by this parameter here. Okay. This string parameter uses string will come from here to here, this single parameter. So what is the relevance of this particular, uh, you see, after the at the rate given annotation or at the rate when not annotation of cucumber, you see there is some uh, circular brackets inside circular brackets. There is a matching expression here. Okay. So for that, I'll explain, guys. You see, for example, here user navigates to login page is there. This is matching exactly with the user navigates to login page step. So what if I change the name here, login page X Y Z? If I say, then what will happen? You see here, the step name is user navigates to login page, but I changed this matching expression in the step definition method to user navigates to login page X Y Z. Is it now matching? Up to here is matching, but X Y Z is not there in the line user navigates to login page is there but uh, user navigates to login page xyz is not there click on save all button and now go here you see user navigates to login page is highlighted in yellow color that means this particular step is not implemented the reason behind that is the step this particular step is not matching with this uh, this kind of uh, matching expression okay this is an expression guys okay this is an expression at the right given it got auto generated so that's fine so user navigates to login page XYZ is coming. Okay. So remove this XYZ and again click on save all, save all button. Now come back here. You see now it's added. It's got uh, removed. That means this method is implemented. This step is implemented here. It's matching with this method, uh, method expression. Okay. Cucumber method expression. This is fine. That's how important it is. Here also user enters valid email address and uh, to match this argument, this kind of syntax is coming in the method uh, expression, okay? Matching expression. User enters valid email address and uh, whatever the argument you are passing, that is provided in the form of a string, okay? In curly braces. And uh, this will be termed as a parameter. String, string, string is there. Here I'll say email address, okay? I can change the name. Email address text or something I'll say. And here user enters valid email address, I'll say plus this email address text I'll say, okay? Done. Next. Then we have ind guys, but here what is coming? Enter valid password. Okay. Enter valid password is there, but here instead of ind, we are getting when. We can change it to ind if you want. Okay. It's okay. It doesn't matter, but uh, still we can change it. Ind enters valid, uh, valid password. Here argument is termed as this kind of stuff. A cucumber expression. This is in the method ex matching expression. We have this cucumber expression to match this uh, argument. That is uh, this one, two, three, four, five value password that is passed as an argument to this parameter. And here we can say that is nothing but the password text, password text. And here we say system dot out dot print DLN. System dot out dot print DLN. User and uh, enters valid password colon. Just write the plus symbol line, they say password text. Okay, done. Now, okay. Now the next one, and clicks on login button is there. Okay, and clicks on login button. 
So if you want to identify this, okay, so you see sometimes what happens in this step definition file, there is a lot of methods, guys. It's not possible to identify the uh, step which is matching with that particular uh, met uh, method inside the step definition file in the login step definition file. So whatever you can do is for the mouse on this step, just press control key. You see, this is getting highlighted as a link. Click on this, you'll be directly taken to this method. Okay, this is one, uh, one way to go directly. Okay, here again, I will say, instead of at the rate, when I will say at the rate and clicks on login button, system.out.println. And here I will say, user clicks on login button. Okay, user clicks on login button. Then next, user should, should log in successfully to go to the step for the mouse. This is a then keyword is there then gherkin keyword is there for that then uh, at the rate then cucumber annotation with this is a gherkin keyword but in the step definition class file for respective to this then gherkin keyword there will be at the rate then cucumber annotation okay this is a gherkin keyword that is cucumber annotation okay let's come back here you see we have at the rate then here it is a cucumber annotation guys okay there in the uh, feature file we have then gherkin keyword now write down system.out.println system.out.println user should log in successfully okay user got logged in user got logged in successfully like this i'll write now come back to the feature file now let's see this one user navigates to login page is already create uh, already this is a duplicate step Okay, so already the method is there, which is already implemented. You see, we already have written the step. So no need to worry. User enters invalid email address. This time user enters invalid. Okay, so click on this. This is the one. Here, remove that step and uh, write down system.out.println. User has entered invalid email address and give that invalid email address, invalid email address i'll say plus invalid email address here okay done the next enters invalid password click on this you'll go here stem.out.println user has entered invalid password plus uh, invalid password this is you see you are getting this as an argument and that invalid password i'll be printing here done the next one clicks on login button already we have created this implemented the steps click on this you see it, it will be shown as implemented already you see and clicks on login button is already there we need to implement again. Then user got uh, user should get a proper warning message. Click on this, and user then user should get a proper warning message. This is a step. This is a method representing the step. The friend ground we have the feature file in the background of the feature file. Every step we have a method. Okay, where we are writing some code. For now we are not we are writing some dummy code guys. In the upcoming sessions I will write the Selenium code here in place of the print statement. Okay, just to understand the cucumber concepts, I am not going into Selenium now. It will be deviating for you otherwise. User gets a user got a proper warning message. Then what next steps are there? Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> login with invalid email address and valid password. User, user navigates to login page. This is same. User navigates to login page is same. User enters invalid email address already implemented just now. Oh, sorry. Valid email address is in, user enters invalid email address is implemented here. So which is implemented here. You can click on this and just confirm. Yeah, it's there. Then uh, enters valid password. We can click on each and every step and uh, confirm guys rather than, okay. Sometimes what happens is uh, because of some spelling mistakes or something, uh, some random extra methods will be created. So it's better to verify each and every line. Enters valid password. Here step is implemented. Clicks on login button. Implemented. 
user should get a proper warning message implemented already as part of the previous scenario, so which is repeating here. Login without providing any credentials. Next scenario. <clears throat> okay, user navigates to login page. Implemented. User don't enter any credentials. This is not implemented. This is a new one. Here I'll write down. Dot 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 India then. User has not uh, entered any credentials. Yeah. Fine. Save it. Back here. Clicks on login button is same. And finally, user should get a proper warning message is also same. Okay. Fine. Close all this stuff. Now we created a step definition file associated with this feature file. Okay. For this login dot feature file, we created a step definition file where the logic need to be implemented. Selenium Java code has, has to be actually written. But for now, we are we are writing print statements to see whether uh, for each and every step in this feature file in the scenarios, the appropriate uh, step definition methods are getting invoked or not, we have to see. This time, we should not get this kind of output. Okay, in the output, we should get a different output this time, guys. Uh, we should get proper, uh, okay, five scenarios. It should We should not get undefined and skip and undefined kind of things we should not get. Rather, we should get a proper output. Let's see how we'll get it. So again, right click on the login dot feature file, say run as cucumber feature now. You see, you should get a different output this time. Scenario. Okay, it got executed. This particular scenario got executed. So here on the right side, it is saying that uh, login dot feature at the fourth line, it got run the fourth step in the feature file. For that, this is a scenario. User got navigated to login page. You see, this got print statement, okay? For, this is a step in the feature file. For that, we got this output. You see, double uh, double greater than symbol, I intentionally provided the print statement to separate this from the this statement. You see, given user navigates to login page is the feature file step, whereas this is the print statement output. It got invoked. That's why it got printed in the output console, okay? When user enters value name, this is a print statement, okay? And this is a feature file step. This is a print statement. And clicks on user got logged in successfully. Okay, that's it. For every, for every statement in the feature file, scenarios, we got this print statement got executed. The methods got invoked. This proves that the method got invoked. Okay. On the right side showing uh, we, which which method got invoked and all those stuff. Okay. So more details are getting coming here. Okay. The feature file, which is at the 11th step. Okay. Uh, under the login dot feature, 11th uh, line is there. And here, which methods are getting invoked are coming here. Okay. You see, user navigates to login page got invoked. User enters invalid email address got invoked. Like that methods which got are coming here on the right side. Keep on going. You see, five out of five scenarios got passed. It's saying that five out of five got passed. Earlier we got undefined step, but this time it's saying passed. And out of 24 steps, 24 got passed, it is saying. Okay. And uh, that's it, guys. This is how we can, uh, okay. This is how we can create the step definitions for uh, uh, the feature file and by implementing the steps in the scenarios of the feature file with the methods in the step definition classes. Okay. And we can run that and we can get a proper output. But here, ultimately, we have to write the Selenium automation code, guys. Okay. Here, ultimately, in the login.java, in these methods, we have to write a proper Selenium automation code. But here, just to understand the concepts, to understand the relation between the feature file and step definition methods and all those stuff, step definition and all, we just created the print statements here to see how the methods are getting invoked for each and every uh, statement inside the scenarios of the feature file. So, guys, that's all for this session. In the next session, I'll cover other topics on this uh, Cucumber PDD. Okay, we'll continue with the things. Okay, so see you in the next session. Thank you. Hello, all. Welcome to part 13 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to practically demonstrate how to create multiple feature files and associated step definitions in the project. So let's get started. In the previous session, we have created the feature file, okay? Uh, that is login feature file. And also, we created the step definition class containing the methods for each and individual steps in that scenarios of the feature file. And we have run the feature file, login feature file, and uh, we were able to get the print statements printed in the output, right? In the previous session. Now, what I'm going to do is, 
I'm going to create additional feature files. Okay, only one feature file we have created so far. Now I'm going to create multiple other feature files and their associated step definition classes containing the methods for each and every step of the feature file. So let's get started. So here I'll take a manual approach. In the previous session, I have run the feature file and the Eclipse output console has given me a list of uh, methods that need to be implemented for the steps in the step definition class of the feature file. Okay, but now I'm going to do that manually, guys, so that we'll get some more clarity on that. So here, if you see the Eclipse ID, guys, here only one login.feature file is there and it's associated step definition class login.java is there containing the methods for each and every step in the feature file. Okay, but these methods we have auto generated in the output console when I run without this step definition methods, the Eclipse output console has given me suggested me to implement all these methods. I just copy pasted, but now I'm not going to copy paste, rather, I'm going to create a feature file and manually create the step definition methods. Okay. So that we'll get more clarity on this feature files and step definition classes and its methods. I'll right click on this test and say new and uh, I'll say file. I'll just name this file as uh, I'll take one more functionality of this application. Guys. This is the application I'm taking. Okay. Uh, I completed the login. Uh, for example, I, I created five scenarios in the feature file for login. Similarly, uh, this time I'll go with the register functionality, register account functionality. I'll go with some four scenarios for this uh, register account. As sample, you can have more than four, but just for demonstration purpose, since I cannot take each and everything, that will take a lot of time. So I'm just taking only four sample scenarios for this register account. Okay. So what I will do here is uh, when I right click and say new and then file, here I'll say register dot name of the feature file is register and extension is feature. You can't finish. You see, register feature file got created with all this auto generated text. I'll remove all this auto generated text, guys. I'll make it simple. I'll just type feature here, colon. Okay. So, user registration, I'll say user registration. Some name you just give to the feature. And you can give the description. Description is optional, guys. In the previous thing, if you see user login, I mentioned and gave the description here. But here, I'll skip the description uh, just to show that it is optional. I'm not writing the description here. It's not compulsory to write the description. But it is a good practice to write the description here. Anyhow, I provided the description under the feature file here. I'm not providing for sample case. Okay. Here I'll write the first scenario. Scenario. So I'll write uh, register with mandatory <coughs> fields. Register with only mandatory fields. Okay. Here in this application, only we have to provide the details of this mandatory fields while creating an account. Okay. In the application. So I'll again say given I navigate to register account page. Okay. Given I navigate to, you see, you know, by default, you will be there on the home page, right? On this home page, you will be there. So we have to navigate to the register page by clicking on my content select register option. You'll be taken to the register account page. Okay. That's what I'm writing here. After going there, I have to fill the mandatory fields, right? Given I navigate to register account page when I enter first name okay first name i'll write the first name i'll give the first name guys like arun okay into the i enter first name arun into the uh, uh first name field first name it's like this you can write okay i enter first name into the first name field then uh, i okay a lot of things i i enter Give, uh, you can write I or user, anything is fine, guys. User navigates to a given user navigates to register account page when user enters, okay, first name, run into the first name field and enters that is a uh, last name. What is the last name? Last name Motori, my last name I'll give as a this is the argument I am passing from this step. I'm passing this as an argument. So into the into the last name field and enters email address I give some email address arun dot motori at the rate gmail dot com okay my email address into the email field and enters after entering this okay and enters and enters telephone 
that is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero into the telephone field okay that is this one then enter password and enters password uh, i'll show you a pro uh, way to optimize the steps guys see multiple and statements are required here because this is not a uh, it's not a simple form like login where username and password are only required but here we have first name last name email telephone password and all those stuff more details we need to enter so these steps we can optimize i'll show you that process later guys it's not the right time okay we'll go with the general process and later i'll optimize this uh, so that we can reduce the number of steps here okay first we'll go like this enter password say one two three four five into the password field and enters password in one two three four five same password into the password confirm field okay here one two three four five i'm writing here also one two three four five after that i'll say select privacy policy and Selects privacy policy policy field and clicks on and clicks on continue button and clicks on continue button. Then what should happen? Then account should get successfully created. Then account then account should get successfully created okay when you click on continue account will be created right that's what is the thing this first scenario i have created guys similarly i'll create one more scenario uh just to uh i'll type it otherwise okay let's go manually better i don't want to take shortcuts scenario colon okay register with all fields this time given this is the same step user navigates to account page okay when user enters this one arun into the first name field user enters arun into first name field and enters la, uh, mo, uh, last name motor into the last name field and enters email address into the email address field and enters telephone into the telephone field and enters password password in the password into the password field and password confirm field and uh, and up to here, I'll copy paste better. After this, I have to provide all the details. That is, this is not newsletter is not a mandatory field, but uh, since I am mentioning all fields, means all these fields, including the newsletter, also should be selected. Then I'll select the it's radio option. Okay. And selects yes. For and select yes for newsletter. Okay. And selects uh, is for newsletter and remaining steps are same and clicks on and selects privacy policy field clicks on continue button and then account should be created successfully okay the result should be account should get created successfully as we already know so two scenarios i created guys now sometimes what happens it will take time to you know kind of uh, identify the steps which are not created when you say save all or something right or if it is not coming you can say right click and uh, you know uh, right click maven update project you say means uh, it will update and then it will highlight the steps which are not implemented you see these steps are getting highlighted you are getting a warning message here saying there is no step user navigates are does not have a matching blue code so you have not implemented any method associated with this particular step in the feature file okay step definition class you have to create for this register like register.java in that we have to create a method for this matching this step until then, all these steps will be highlighted. That means these steps are not implemented. If you go to the login dot feature here, instead of getting uh, the orange background, uh, that is yellowish background, you are getting this cucumber icon. That means there is a glue code attached. To, okay, there is a glue code attached to this particular step in the step definition uh, class. There is a method which matches the step definition. I mean feature file step. That is the reason cucumber icon is coming instead of the this kind of uh, yellowish orange uh, kind of background. Okay. Anyhow, don't worry about that. We are going to do that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to generate the methods for this and all those stuff. So multiple ways are there, guys. I will teach you a lot of stuff. Okay. 
So here I'm trying to create multiple feature files. Apart from login, I'm creating the register.feature. This is the second feature file we are creating. For every feature file, I'll, I'll use a different approach so that you learn a lot, okay? The different ways you are going to learn to create the step definition methods, okay? Fine, now the next thing is, register with all fields is over. Now, the third one, what I will do here is uh, register without providing any fields. I don't want to provide any fields, guys, okay? I don't want to provide any fields and try to register, okay? Third one, third scenario. Scenario, colon, okay? Register without providing any fields, okay? I'm not going to provide any fields, but I'm trying to register. Given user navigate, this step is same. Given user navigate, so you see, uh, when I click on save all, it's getting highlighted. Till I click on save all, it's uh, not getting highlighted. Once I click on save all, it's uh, trying to find the glue code, the implementation code, which is not there yet. So yellow color background is coming, okay? Or yellow orange background is coming for now. So given when, here we are not going to enter any fields, right? So directly we can say, when user don't enter any fields, okay? Don't enter details into any fields and clicks on continue button, okay? Without entering any details into this field, just clear all this stuff without uh, filling any fields, okay? Then uh, clicks on continue button and clicks on continue button. What will happen? Warning messages will come. You see, all the warning, associated warning message should come, okay? And clicks on continue button, then uh, then then warning messages should be displayed for all the mandatory fields. Okay? Should be displayed under all the mandatory fields. Okay? Warning message should be displayed uh, for the or under. Okay? For the mandatory, should be displayed for the mandatory fields. Simple way I'm writing here. Okay? Save all. All these steps are not implemented, so they will be highlighted in yellow. Once I click on save one. Last scenario I'll create, guys. Okay, the three scenarios I created. The more scenarios you I'll create, more knowledge you're going to get, guys. Okay. So because this is just basic structure I'm creating first. Later, uh, I'll uh, you see in the previous session itself, we are using the print statements instead of Selenium Java code. Slowly we'll migrate to the we'll we'll take this project to the next level where instead of the in place of the print statements, we are going to write the Selenium Java code and all those stuff. Lot of things we are going to learn on the way, guys. Okay, okay. So in the uh, in the first feature file, uh, in the first feature file, uh, I have run this without implementing, and uh, in the output console, I got the suggestions for the unimplemented methods. Like this methods you have to implement like that. We copy pasted those methods into the login dot Java step definition class, and we have implemented the methods uh, for this uh, steps in the login dot feature. But here in the register dot feature, I want to write these methods manually. I'll, I'll show you how to write the the glue code. Okay, methods in the step definition class for this individual steps manually, I'll show you, but not all. It will take a lot of time if I uh, create a uh, manual methods. Okay, if I start writing the methods manually, creating the methods for all, each and every step, that will take a lot of time. For sample, I'll show you. Later, we'll see. Okay. So, different ways I'll show you anyhow. So, step by step, I'll show you. Uh, for this feature file, I'll show you. And in the next session, I'll show you another way of generating the um, step definition methods for this individual step. In this uh, second feature file, I'll show you one way where you can write it manually, okay? You don't have to depend on the Eclipse output console. You can do it manually also. I'll show you that, okay? Last scenario I'll create for now before uh, going to that step. Scenario, register with duplicate email address, okay? Register with duplicate email address. Already existing email address, if you try to create an account, it will give you an error, guys, okay? Given. The same step user navigates to register account page. Then here, when user enters first name, all these details are same. When user enters first name, enters last name, enters email address, all these things I'll copy paste guys, okay? Otherwise I'll copy paste from here. From here to here I'll copy paste for now. I'll just modify the steps, okay? Given user navigates to register account page, User enters first name, Arun enter the first name field, enters last name, motor into the last name field, enters email address, existing email address I'll give you guys, okay? So already an existing email address is there. 
uh, for which the account is already created. This existing email address I'll give here as a value. Okay, enter the email. That this is a duplicate email address. Okay, enter email address, which is a duplicate email address. Enter telephone number, password. Select S for newsletter, privacy policy option. Click on continue button. Then, then. So here, if you try to create like this, you will see the error message, guys. Okay. I'll show you what kind of error message you will get. So, so like this, click on continue, you will get warning email address is already registered is coming. Okay. Warning email address is already registered is coming, guys. Okay. Warning message informing the user about duplicate email address. Email should be displayed. Okay. Like this one step, I'll write. You can write in your own words, guys, no problem. Okay. So everyone writes in a different way, but ultimately people should understand. Okay. That's the only thing. Just click on save all. You see, all these steps are not implemented. As I mentioned, guys, in the beginning of this session, that for user, user registration, I'll create four scenarios. I created four scenarios, guys. Okay. But uh, the steps for these scenarios are not implemented. We are getting the warning icon, and uh, you see the high the background is getting highlighted. That means these steps are not implemented yet. Okay. There are no steps. Uh, uh, these steps doesn't have associated methods. Okay. So to create the associated methods for these steps, we have to create a step definition class. Okay. In the front ground, guys, you see, as I already mentioned, BDD and Cucumber, this is all around the communication, right? The behavior of the application is given more importance. You see, by writing these steps in the form of feature file, we are giving more importance to uh, what is getting uh, tested or what is getting developed or whatever it is. Okay. So here, how it is not a problem? What is the problem? We are solving the, we are giving more importance to the behavior as explained in the previous session where communication between the three amigos that is a product owner business, I mean, product owner, BR business, whatever you can be business, you can say, or developers and testers, all these three amigos, you know, right? They have, their communication should be good as part of the automation. Also, the communication should be good and the business team and development team should know which scenarios we are automating and all those stuff in the. These people can understand by looking at the scenarios by uh, because they are in English format. The business people also can un uh, understand which uh, automation scripts we are automating. Okay, which scenarios we are automating and everything they can know. But we are hiding the implementation of the steps behind this feature file. Okay, in the background of the feature file, we are creating a associated step definition classes uh, having the methods and uh, the code written for each and every step in that methods. Okay, so hope you got the idea. So now I'll get the under the test to overcome this uh, warning messages and all highlighted uh, things and all background to remove that. You see, for, for now, user navigates to restart on pages having a this particular step is having a background, right? Color that will go off now. I'll show you the way. Right click on this test and create new class and name this class as you can give any name. I'll just give restart. Okay. The same name, whatever I gave to the feature file, if I give the same name, right? It will be easy for me to. Identify tomorrow if I have to identify the, uh, the associated feature file, uh, step definition class of this feature file. If uh, I'll try to associate with the same name, that will be a better approach, right? Register like this. I'll create a okay. I'll create this register class and I'll take the first step, guys. I'll show you manually, guys. Earlier, what I did, I auto generated, right? I auto generated the methods. So here now also you can auto generate, guys. Right click on this and say run as Pumbar feature. You see the Eclipse output uh, console will auto generate the methods for you see all these methods got auto generated right you see given user navigated to register page everything got automate uh, auto generated it's because it's saying clearly that uh, you know they are undefined and you have to implement like this it is saying but for now i don't want to go with this uh, eclipse output console i want to create my own methods okay manual i will show you how to create the methods so go to the register.java and open the register feature and the user navigates the register account page is there copy this line guys copy this uh, right click copy this line Okay, given user navigates to register account is there. What we have to do here is just say public void, paste the statement here, paste the statement here. Since there are multiple words, method can, cannot have multiple words, right? I'll attach this, I'll connect these words with underscores. I'll copy this underscore and uh, paste it here. So all the words will be connected. Okay, all the words in the step will be connected and it will be easy for me to uh, give a single name for the method. Okay, this, this will become the name of the method now. Uh, and provide the curly uh, circular brackets and starting and ending curly braces. Okay. So method I created. Now click on save, save all. Still, you see it's still in the dilation is not gone, right? The dilation is not gone even after clicking on save all after creating this method also because 
there is no connection still established between the step and this uh, uh, method in the step definition class. So what we have to do is on the top of this method, okay, we have to give cucumber annotation. That uh, which cucumber annotation we have to give that depends on which Gherkin keyword we have in the feature file. In the feature file, which Gherkin keyword we have given Gherkin keyword is there. For this given Gherkin keyword, there is an associated annotation in cucumber known as at the rate given. Okay, here on the top of this method, you have to write at the rate given annotation from cucumber. This is an annotation from cucumber. This is the keyword from Gherkin. Okay, the feature file will have Gherkin keywords where in the step definitions associated, okay, annotation from Cucumber will be there. Over the mouse and at the rate given and import this given annotation from Cucumber. Okay, done. So, you see it's saying missing attributes. So, we have to provide circular brackets, okay. In the circular brackets, provide double quotes. You see the error is gone. Now, click on save. You see, still, this step is not connected with this uh, method. So, how to make it connected? To make it connected, guys, you can copy this step as it is. You just copy this step as it is, guys. Copy this step as it is, okay? And paste it inside of the double quotes. Now it will be connected. This is a matching text, okay? The method is connecting to this step definition uh, um, feature file step with the help of this matching. This is a matching expression. Now click on save all, guys. Now click on save all. You see, the highlation has gone. The background color got gone. That means, there is a method. You, you can even click on control and click on this. It will take you to the appropriate method, which is matching. Okay. So uh, uh, optionally, you can also give some symbols here, guys. Okay. Cap symbol. Here, optionally, you can give cap. It's not compulsory. You can give cap means starts with. Okay. The step, the step which starts with user, something like that. Okay. Starts with this part and ends with a dollar symbol. You can write. This is optional, guys. It's not compulsory that you have to provide cap symbol and dollar symbol here. It's optional for you. Okay. It's up to you whether you want to create or not. User navigates the register account page. And uh, inside this, I'll for now I'll write the print statement guys. Okay. I don't want to write the real selenium automation code here uh, till we understand the all the cucumber concepts. Okay. Naturally, we'll go step by step. For now, since we are getting started, I'll only write the print statements so that you will understand the high level things first. And later we'll we'll replace this print statements with the real selenium automation code. Here I'll say user got navigated to got navigated to register account page. Okay. Like this, we can manually create the steps, guys. Okay. You see, you don't have to auto-generate every time. So one more step I'll show you guys. One more step I'll show you. User enters first name Arun into the first name field is the step, right? For that, what I will do? Here I'll write public void. I'll copy this step. Okay, I'll copy this step. And write down here. I'll provide underscores here to fill up the spaces between the words and to create a single name for the method. Okay, so like this, I'll write down. First underscores I'll write down. I'll just change this method. Here, Arun cannot be there, guys. I'll remove Arun, okay? That is not a word, right? The better to remove it, okay? User enters first name into the first name field is fine, okay? It's not compulsory to have everything in the, okay? This should be a uh, unique name, that's it, okay? And on the top of this, I'll write which which Gherkin keyword is there when Gherkin keyword is there. So we have associated at the rate when from Cucumber. Hover the mouse on at the rate when and import this, okay, from Cucumber library and provide the circular brackets, provide double quotes. And inside the double quotes, you copy this same thing again. User enters first name or into the name field. Okay, like this you can print. Optionally, guys, you can provide cap symbol here. You can provide cap symbol here. At the end, you can provide dollar symbol here. That is optional for you. And here, in place of Arun, you just replace this. This Ar Arun is an argument, right? Arun is an argument. Replace that and provide curly braces and say spring. That's it. Okay. I think this is the thing. We can see that. We can see how it's cucumber expression we are creating. This is spring. Uh, it should be in short form, guys. Okay. I just uh, provided a spring in capital letters. Better to provide in lowercase. Okay. Spring. String kind of data we are getting from the here, this is a string kind of data we are getting. Okay. So we also have in time all those stuff. If you are passing some number uh, without double quotes, if you are passing a number, right, that should be in the form of int. Okay. So for now, this string is enough, guys. I'll explain more about this string in time, all those stuff later. Okay. So step by step, we are going to learn. For now, string is enough, guys. Uh, here, just string. And for this string, we have to create a parameter here. You see, manually you are creating means so much of uh, energy you have to put. You have to think in all directions. Okay. So parameters of string type string. 
that is first name text okay first name text like this i'll write and here i'll say system dot order 20 then for sample i'm writing the print statement i'm writing down double greater than user uh enters first name into the user has entered has entered e n t e r e d entered first name into the first name i'll say here something okay first name what is the first name the user has entered i'll write down here colon plus this first name text i'll do some concatenation here into the first name field first name field like this i'll write a sample print statement that okay similarly so it will take a lot of time click on uh, i clicked on save all you will see that uh, you see user enters first name okay so it's not matching it so what is the problem here there is some problem here let's see okay this is the one that is a problem over the mouse cannot use anchors dollar or okay here in this case we cannot use so what is the problem here is these are regular expression guys okay so this uh, cap symbol and dollar symbol belong to regular expression whereas this belong to cucumber expression okay there are two things we have that i'm going to make you uh i'll give you more clarity in the upcoming sessions guys okay so there are two things for matching for matching the method we have to we can either specify the regular expressions or we can specify the cucumber expressions but in a single step we cannot provide both okay when a cucumber expression you see here cucumber expression is not there user navigates to register account page doesn't have this cucumber expression like string okay in curly braces in that case you are allowed to use cap and dollar symbol that's fine but in case of you using both cucumber expression and this kind of uh, starts with and ends with regular expression which is optional okay you cannot have both okay in a single statement if i remove this you see it will be fine okay if i remove this and click on save all the error will be gone because in a single step there is a rule like in a single step you cannot have both regular either you have to use only cucumber expressions in a single step or you have to use only regular expressions in a single step here only regular expressions are there cap and dollar whereas in this cucumber expression is there okay both are different guys okay but in a single step you cannot use a combination of cucumber expressions and regular expressions in that case you'll get an error okay so that rule is there so anyhow that is covered now okay fine now come back here you see this st statement is now you see uh, the background color is gone so like this we have to uh, manually create steps for each and every methods okay methods for each and every thing that will take a lot of time right so to uh, reduce the amount of time what we can do is instead of uh, creating the methods like this like uh, typing the methods and all those stuff let's run this okay let's right click and say run as a cucumber feature so the first two lines will run guys you see the here you can if you see for this uh, for this line for this statement in the cucumber feature file you see this print statement got printed the method got invoked and the print statement you see the double r uh, double greater than i mentioned clearly for print statement user got navigator register account page got printed here for the second statement also in the feature file this print statement the method got invoked and this is a proof that method got in invoked because this print statement got printed user has entered first name arun into the first name field got printed but for the remaining all steps or statements in the feature file you see nothing got printed this kind of things are print statements are not getting printed okay so you see only for these two things okay the, they are coming so here clearly saying that what, there are four scenarios and four are undefined there are total 36 steps in that seven steps got passed okay only seven steps got passed why because seven steps you see one two three four already implemented here as part of the first scenario only these two steps got implemented here also here one step okay one two three four five six seven total seven steps okay that's why it's saying seven steps got passed four are undefined the remaining all will be skipped because if one step is in the scenario is undefined the remaining all steps will get skipped they are indirectly undefined only so now the eclipse output console is suggesting you to implement all these steps okay i don't have to do the hard work you see by default it is auto generated for me okay copy all these uh, methods okay this is uh, this is the use of the cucumber eclipse id uh, uh, eclipse id output console uh, output so i don't have to manually create which will take a lot of time right for each and every step if i keep on creating manually creating this kind of step that will take a lot of time rather i paste it you see it will be very easy for me right you see underscore everything is coming automatically why i have to spend a lot of time right so click on save all and uh, go here you see 
Mm, there are still, still some steps which are not uh, generated or something. Let's uh, let's uh, think about that later. Okay, we'll try a different approach for that. Okay, there are some uh, here at the rate then import import then. Okay, now let's go back and save one. Save one. Now see everything is imp uh, implemented. Every every step has an implemented method. Okay. Now, but here till here we implemented it properly, but but uh, here enters last name is not implemented. Just press Control and press enter and you will be taken to the appropriate method because there are a lot of methods now so it will be very difficult to find uh, just scroll and find the appropriate method so it's a better way to hover the mouse control and click you will be taken to the appropriate method remove this uh, auto generated code inside this method and simply write down the print sample print statements for now which will be converted to the selenium java code later okay user has entered entered last name colon uh, I'll say this is last name text. Okay. I'll say last name text. I'll say last name text plus into the last name into the last name field. Okay. Into the last name field. I'll say now uh, click on save all and uh, here email address. This is the method for email address. Okay. So it's very easy to. So here I'll say email text, email text I'll say. Now I'll say system.out.println user has entered, has entered email colon that is email text into the email address field. Okay, email address field. So let's try to implement all the methods, guys. Okay, the, that is for this session. Okay, in the next session, I'll create one more feature file, guys. Okay, I'll, uh, in the next session, I'll uh, apart from this uh, uh, two feature files and associated uh, step definition classes, I am going to create one more feature file where I am going to show you another way of auto generating these step definitions okay. methods. Okay, so. Either you can write this step definition methods manually, or you can auto generate using the Eclipse ID console from uh, Eclipse ID console without having implemented methods. If you run them, uh, run the feature files automatically, it will give you the list of methods that have to be implemented. You can copy paste here. That is one way. Second way. Third way is that there is one plugin guys that I'm going to cover in the next session. Okay. So for that, I'll create one more feature file. And for that, I'll use a plugin to show you how to auto generate the methods okay methods in the step definition classes for the steps in the feature file okay so here i'll write down uh telephone text telephone text okay i'll write down telephone text and here i'll say system dot order print ln uh user has entered telephone colon okay plus this telephone text uh, text okay into the telephone field done next step telephone is done password i'll go this is a password one i'll say password text here okay this this uh, cucumber expression uh, cucumber parameter is there here okay as part of cucumber matching expression uh, we have an associated parameter here. So whatever the value argument that is being passed here, okay, from the feature file step will be passed to this matching expression. From here, it will be passing to this uh, parameter. Okay, that's what is the thing. Okay, system dot order print here. Then. Greater than, uh, double greater than. User has entered password that is plus password text into the password field. Okay, into the password field, I'll say. Then here, remove this part. Here also password text only, guys. Password text, password confirm field. This is okay. So this is the step we are, okay, let me close, save.
This is a step test. Okay, user enters password into the password and pump it. Let me open here. I'll write down. You can you can also see something, guys. When I and I and I and, I and, I and all all are coming with when, guys. Okay, when you can change it to I and or you can keep it when also not a problem. So you see here, user enters when and uh, if you want more clarity, you can write and also not a problem, guys. Okay, hover the mouse and import this and from Cucumber. Okay, now you can say and user enters telephone and and enters password and enters uh, password into the confirm password field system dot order print ln and here double quotes double greater than symbol user has entered password colon plus password text this is the text okay this uh this parameter you have to provide here into the password confirm field into the password confirm field okay in the password confirm field let's go down still uh let's uh, privacy policy field guys okay these steps most of the steps will be repeated in the other scenarios guys so it is a one time effort for first scenario if you write most of the steps will be covered okay so here privacy policy field click on this will be taken here system dot order printl here I'll write down user has selected the privacy policy field. Okay. Then come back here, click on continue button. This is the one. System dot out dot print DLM. Double greater than user has clicked on continue button now the last the account should get successfully created okay here i'll write down system dot out dot print dln some dummy print statements you are writing okay user account got successfully created user account got successfully created or registered whatever the text you want to write you can write it okay done Second one, user navigates to register account page, enters first name, last name, email, telephone, password, everything is done. This step is not implemented yet. Click on this. Come back here, write down. System.order.println. User has entered, uh, selected, yes for newsletter. Okay, yes, user selected as for newsletter. Then next one, privacy policy field is done, click on continue button is done, account should get successfully created is also done as part of the previous scenario. Now, register without providing any uh, details, any fields, user navigates the register account page is already implemented, user don't enter any details into the fields. Okay, so here I'll write down, user has kept all the fields blank okay has not in, indirectly user has not entered in, uh, any data into the fields okay fields blank done then click on continue button and finally warning message should be displayed uh, okay here i will say system.order.println warning messages under all the Mandatory fields, okay, for all the mandatory fields got displayed. For all the mandatory mandatory fields got displayed. Like this, I'll write and click on save all. Now come back here and uh, this is done. User navigates to and this all the steps are already implemented. Till here, last step is there. I'll go to that last step. Only last one, only one method is there. You see. Here I'll write on the print statement saying. Warning message informing the user about duplicate email is displayed. Okay, done. So we implemented all the steps in the feature file in this methods in the step definition class. So now things will be good. Save all.
and uh, now right try to right click and run uh, this feature file either you can right click on this or you can right click on the register dot feature and say run as cucumber feature all these steps will invoke that methods in the step definition class of the register dot java and they will be running in the output Looks like it's not running from here. Right click run as cucumber feature is not running. So I'll run from here, guys. Let's see. Sometimes it will not, uh, you know, kind of attach. You see now it's running. So next time onwards, when you run, right click run as cucumber feature. Still, it's not working. From here, it is not working, guys. Okay. From here, it is not working. Sometimes it will happen when you can right click here and say run as cucumber feature. That's okay, guys. Okay. Right click on the feature file and run it. Okay. Uh, you see, for this particular uh, step in the feature file, this print statement got printed. Okay, so you see, for every step, some print statement is getting printed. Double, double, uh, double greater than symbol is uh, representing the print statement. That's the reason I provide double greater than so that you can identify the difference between the normal step in the feature file and the print statement. Okay, this print statement is coming means this particular step in the feature file is invoking the methods in the step definition class, appropriate associated methods in the step definition class, and uh, in the step definition method uh, class um, of the class step definition class in the method implemented method of the step definition in class we have this print statement it is getting printed okay so this proves that this step is invoking the method having this code associated with this step definition okay fine no next one for this scenario second scenario also you see for every step there is a print statement and for third scenario also for every step there is a okay for every step there is a kind of thing and you see four scenarios, four got passed, 36 steps are there. Nothing got skipped, nothing got undefined, 36 got passed, okay? Like this we got. Okay. So a lot of things are coming up, guys, okay? The, uh, in this session, I, I just created multiple feature files. One more feature file I also have to create, but uh, I'll take that in the next session, where I'll show you another way of uh, auto-generating the uh, methods inside the step definition class, okay? I would like to auto generate that. I will show you a different way of auto generating the methods in the step definition class. Okay. So for the another feature file, okay, for the scenarios in the another feature file. So using a plugin, I'll show you which plugin and all those stuff I'll cover in the next session. Okay. So I'll cover that in the next session, guys. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 14 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to practically demonstrate how to use ID Gherkin plugin to auto-generate the step definition methods for the respective feature file scenarios and their steps. So let's get started. In the previous sessions, I showed you how to auto-generate the step definition methods for the respective feature file scenarios and steps using the default Eclipse ID output console, okay? When you run the feature file, which doesn't have the implemented steps, okay? Automatically in the Eclipse output console, you are going to get some recommendations saying that these are so and so undefined steps and they have to be implemented with the help of these methods. You will get some message in the output console and we can copy paste that methods which are coming in the output console and then we can implement the steps. That is one way. Second way is we can do it manually, guys. Okay, you can copy paste the statements, okay, from the feature file scenarios and steps. You can copy paste the statements and you uh, create the methods out of the statements by providing underscore, uh, by filling the underscore between the gaps and creating a method and uh, annotating that method with uh, different annotations like at the rate given when and all those stuff, okay, and creating a proper matching statement. All this stuff I covered in the previous session, but in this session, guys, I'm going to show you the third way where you can use tidy Gherkin plugin. Okay. So this plugin way is going to auto generate your methods that need to be implemented for the steps in the feature files. Okay. So let me show you right away. Okay. So here, if you see, this is a project we are following. Let me give me a second. Let me expand this project here. Already we created two feature files, login and register feature files for the respective login and feature register feature files, we created the login and register step definition classes, okay? And which are already implemented, all the steps inside these uh, two feature files are already implemented as part of the step definition classes. Now let's create another feature file, guys, okay? So for this, uh, to create an example, I'm creating another feature file. I'll select 
uh, uh, I'll right click on the package and say new and say file. And here I'll name this file as search. Okay, search functionality I'm taking it. You can, you can create any number of feature files. Right? For example, I'll be creating only three feature files. So this is the last feature file I'm creating is. Okay, click on finish. Cucumber tool is recognizing this. Uh, Ecl Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin is recognizing this feature file and it's auto generating all these things. I'll control A and remove, clear all the stuff. I'll say feature. Okay, I'll say search functionality. Okay, search functionality or something I'll write as a feature. Here, description is optional for the feature file. Okay, uh, under the feature, you can describe it. We have done that in the login node feature. I'm not going to do here. Directly, I'll start creating the scenarios. Okay, so what is the search functionality here? I'll show you the search functionality in the application. I'll, I'll go to this application, guys. This is a search functionality. Okay, here, I can type some valid product name and click on search button. In the search results, you'll get the product name. Or if I give Honda, which is uh, not uh, or invalid product or which is not there in the website. If I click on search, it will clearly say that there's no product that matches the search criteria. There is another scenario I'll try to create a scenario. I will not provide any search term and click on the search button. Still, you will get there is no product that matches the search criteria when you don't give the product name. These three scenarios I'll try to. Okay, there are more scenarios uh, that we can write as part of the search functionality. But for sample, I'll take the these three, this three scenarios that I've explained in the application. Okay. Uh, search for a valid product. Okay. Search for a valid product is a scenario given I given I navigate, uh, I, I open the application. When I open the application, I otherwise when I enter valid product into search field search field okay and i click on search button then okay then valid product should get displayed in search results okay like this i'll create one scenario uh, similarly another scenario i'll create scenario search for and search for a non existing product like Honda or something, which is not there on the website, given I open the application. Okay, when I enter valid product into search field, sorry, here a non existing product, I'll say non existing product into search field. When I and I click on and I click on search button, then okay, what should we get? Then there is no product that matches the search. Okay. Uh, then proper, then proper text informing the user report. The user report. Here better write user guys. Okay. User opens. It's better to write user opens. Anything is fine. You can even write I also. That's there's no rule in that. User enters. It's uh, I just get got habituated to write like this. Okay. So enters because the other feature files also I use user format. So I'm going to use here also user user clicks. Okay. Okay. User opens. User opens the application. Uh, user enters. User enters. Enters non-existing product. And user clicks on search button. Then proper text informing the user. There's no product that matches, okay? That there is no product matching. Proper text informing the user about no product matching. No product matching should be displayed, okay? I'll copy paste this scenario and create third scenario now. Search for search without providing any product. Okay, user opens application, user enters, user doesn't enter, user don't enter, don't enter any product into search field, user clicks on search button, proper text informing the user about no product matching should be displayed. Okay, these are three scenarios guys. The moment I click on save all, you see, I'm getting these warning messages and these steps are getting a background color, they're turning into the background color yellow. 
that means the steps are not implemented okay here login and register feature file steps are implemented in the login and register classes similarly we have to create one more step definition class for such okay so right click and select new and uh, create a class i'll give the same name guys like such so that i can refer it easily i can find out uh, in which uh, step definition class the steps of this particular such feature file got implemented such dot java i'll create now in the search dot java once it is created here i have to implement this steps I have to implement each and every step that is highlighted in background color yellow okay so how to implement i should i already showed you two ways by uh, by running this uh one way is like uh you can open the search dot feature right click and say run as cucumber feature always save resources so auto save will happen from now onwards okay save okay in the output you will see that in the output console you will see the Eclipse IDE in the output console is suggesting all the methods that need to be implemented. Okay. You see, these are the undefined steps. See how to implement them using this method. This is one way. You can copy paste these methods into the search.java and then implement and then that's one way. Second way is you copy paste this line. Okay. This already uh, done in the previous sessions. Just say public void, give the name of the test and uh, fill up these spaces with underscore. Okay. Fill up these spaces with underscore and create a method out of this. Okay and uh, create a method out of this and then provide the uh, for uh, respective Gherkin keyword. Okay, here you say at the rate given, okay? Cucumber annotation you give and in the uh, circular brackets, import this from, you have to import this from Cucumber and then here you have to give the matching expression. This is manual way. This I already explained in the previous sessions. Now what I'm going to do is uh, neither I'm going to use Eclipse ID output console nor I'm going to use uh, this manual way of creating. Rather I'll do one thing guys, I'll copy paste all this feature file code okay copy paste the entire feature file right click copy and you have to install a plugin that is known as tidy Gherkin plugin how to install that here you search for id Gherkin okay id Gherkin and you will be taken to id Gherkin chrome extension chrome store of id Gherkin you will get like this uh tg okay tg symbol is coming this is the ui it looks like okay so click on launch uh, here already installed guys uh, this is this application is already installed so i'll go to manage extensions i'll remove it from my machine and then i'll show you how to install it again okay i removed it so i'll do one thing i'll just uh, close all this stuff and again open the browser and again i'll search tidy Gherkin. tidy Gherkin. this time again chrome store is coming chrome.google.com tidy Gherkin. okay extension page is coming just click on that link and you will be taken to the Chrome web store having the tidy same thing. And uh, if it is not installed, you'll get add to Chrome. If it is installed, you'll get launch app. Okay. So click on add to Chrome. So this plugin will get installed in your Chrome browser as an extension. Okay. In a while. Is it installed? No. Still, it's not installed. It seems like I'm not getting any pop-up message. I, again, I'll click on add to Chrome. This time I got this add tidy Gherkin. Sometimes uh, there will be some issue. Then you can click on it again. You'll get this kind of pop-up. Say add app in a while it will be installed guys you'll get launch app option here this button will change to launch app uh, you see tidy Gherkin got here okay either you can say chrome colon double slash apps to find this or next time when you have to launch this you can launch from here guys okay so next time you have to launch tidy Gherkin, what you will do just search for tidy Gherkin in google since the extension is already installed okay it you will not get this extension here guys in this list okay so just uh, google search for tidy Gherkin and uh, you'll get this chrome dot google dot com uh, from where you have installed you go to the same page guys go to the same page and you will uh, if it's already installed you'll find an option like launch app click on launch app it will be launched okay this is the easiest way to launch guys okay better way to launch here guys what you will do here is you have to copy copy all this feature file content of this uh, such to which you have to generate the step definition methods copy all this feature file and uh, paste it here guys okay enter your get in here is there right paste it there right click and paste or whatever it is okay paste it like this paste it you can paste it okay right click and paste okay so all the all the three scenarios got pasted here okay and the complete feature file text got pasted here now next thing that you have to do is in this plugin here by default id preview is there but i'll say java steps you have to select java steps guys okay when you say java steps you will get this complete class okay you see this complete uh one class will be created guys inside this class you will see that at the rate given and all the stuff is there okay right so do one thing 
I'll just say, I'll just copy this and see if I'm, you see, these are the auto-generated methods. Okay, here, instead of cucumber expressions, this tidy Gherkin plugin is generating the regular expressions, guys. Okay, here, here regular expressions are there rather than, uh, you know, cucumber expressions. Okay, so copy this, copy all these methods. Oh, sorry. I'll just copy all these things. Right click and say copy. Copy all these methods which are which got auto generated by this tidy Gherkin plugin. We should not be depending on plugins, guys. But uh, uh, if the plugin is there, if you want to save time, that's okay. Otherwise, you know the other ways, right? Eclipse ID output console you can use or you can use manual way. There's a, already there on the top of that. If you want to save time, you can go with this plugin. Okay. Tomorrow, if this plugin is not there, don't worry about that. Okay. The plugin is there. You use it. Okay. So the plugins are not in our hands, okay? The Chrome, these are third-party plugins, okay? It's not, not ever sure that uh, this plugin will be there all, all time, okay? So, but if the plugin is there, then you are good, okay? Fine. So what I will do next is, what I will do next is, I'll go to the search.java and right-click and paste whatever the methods that got auto-generated by the tidy getting plugin, I pasted it inside the search.java. And now for the mouse and edit the rate given, import this given from Cucumber, okay? Right. Uh, over the mouse, import this when from like this. And if you don't want to import each and every step, what you can do, provide hash trick symbol, that's enough. And you have you can remove this. You don't have to individually import all this annotation from Cucumber library, okay? Now you see matching statements are automatically generated and these are regular expressions, right, guys? Okay, regular expression starts with ends with are from regular expressions. I'll, I'll take another separate session on regular expression. These are the very basic regular expressions. We can go deep into the regular expression that I'm going to cover in the upcoming sessions, okay? Okay, how to work with the regular expressions. I'm going to take a separate session for that, okay? In the upcoming sessions. So remove this throws, guys, okay? This throws is not required, okay? Unnecessarily, we should not uh, remove this statement and remove that throw statement, okay? So remove this uh, statement and remove this uh, throw statement, okay? It's not required. You see, there is a problem here uh, because of the statement matching expression is unable to match. So mm, hyphen symbol is a problem. So here I wrote non-existing. Okay, at uh, here when I copy paste it, it's coming like this. What if I remove this? That's gone. Okay, this fine now. Okay, so maybe when I copy paste it, it came like that. Okay, so here you see there is a problem. Sometimes there will be some problems with the plugins, guys. You see hyphen symbol is coming with the uh, backward slash hyphen. But uh, if I remove that here, the error is gone. Okay, it's better to remove that. Okay, some some small tweaks you have to do, guys. Otherwise, everything will not be ideal. Okay, we have to use our brain sometimes. We cannot blindly depend on the tools, okay? And make sure how to resolve the errors, fine. Now let's remove all this stuff. Rem let's remove this throw new and uh, throws, uh, throws throwable kind of stuff from each and every method, okay? Since there are only three scenarios and most of the steps are repeated, we got less number of uh, step definition methods here. Click on save all, the errors are gone, okay? Now let's go to the search dot feature and uh, user opens application. Just click on this user opens application and here let me write down system.out.println. Okay, now uh, here instead of writing the real Selenium Java automation code, I'll be writing some sample statements, guys. Okay, print statements. Okay, user, uh, user uh, application URL application got opened. Okay, otherwise I'll write application got opened. Okay, then Here I'll write uh, user enters valid product into the search field. User enters valid product into the into search field. Okay. So next step, what is the next step? User enters valid product into search field. Click on control and click on this link. Uh, it's already already the method is there means you'll be going to that method. Okay. User enters valid product into the search field. System dot out twenty Valid product got entered into search field. Okay, search field. Okay, done. Next. Then what is the next one? User clicks on search button. It is here, guys. Okay, it's uh, it's kind of here. User clicks on search button. Here I'll write system dot order twenty ln. User clicked on search button. Search button, and here I'll write just to segregate this print statements. See whether print statement got executed. I am giving double. Greater than symbol here also double greater than symbol you give so that you can identify in the output. Okay, it's not compulsory to give double greater than just to see the difference between the steps and uh, print statements. We are doing that. Okay, then valid product should be should get displayed. Okay, valid uh, valid product should get displayed. Okay, system dot out dot print and I'm just writing uh, 
valid product got displayed in the search results. Okay, valid product got displayed in search results. I'm writing. Okay, now save all and uh, come back here. Now search for non existing product. User opens the application, it's already implemented. User enters the non existing product into the search field. Let's go there. Okay, this is the one system.out.println. Non existing product. Okay, non existing product got entered into search field. The search field. Okay, then then what is the next one? User clicks on search button already done. Proper text informing the user. Okay, this is the one. Okay, system.out.println. No product matching message got got displayed. Okay. Got displayed. That's it. Say one. Instead of writing the real Selenium automation code, I'm writing some sample print statements uh, because we are just getting started. Okay, this in a, this step, this uh, sessions are all about uh, making you guys comfortable with Cucumber. So in the later sessions, we'll go with the Selenium Java implementation. The same project we'll use, guys. We'll convert that into a proper framework kind of stuff. Okay, proper hybrid Cucumber framework. We'll convert this project into. Till then, we'll just go with this process. User opens application is already okay. User don't enter any product. This one is not there. This one is not implemented. Here is the step. Okay, system dot dot print here. No product is entered into search field okay this method is also implemented this step is also implemented user and user clicks on search button it is already implemented and then proper text informing the user about no product matching should be displayed is also implemented let's see finally finally let's see guys you see proper annotations are also coming with that what is the advantage of this tidy gherkin is it will generate the uh, exact uh, exact annotations you see for given given is coming for when when is coming uh, for I and I and is coming for then, then is coming earlier for when also for, uh, for I and also we got at the rate when or at the rate then, but this time we are getting exact annotations we are getting. Okay. That's one of the advantage of tidy gherkin and it's also save times. Okay. You don't have to run the feature file. Just copy paste this one into the tidy gherkin and uh, the select Java steps option. You see it got auto generated with proper regular expressions and all. Okay. That's the advantage of the tidy gherkin. Okay. So to some extent we can use tidy gherkins guys. Okay. This is a third way of using. I showed you all the ways. Uh, now uh, we got uh, the search dot feature and ap appropriate methods implemented for each and every step in the feature file in the step definition class here. Close all. Now, now right click on the search dot feature file uh, or open the search dot feature file and right click on this uh, search dot feature and say run as cucumber feature. Let's see whether these methods are getting invoked or not. All the methods should get invoked. You see, given user opens application, application got opened, got printed. When user enters valid product in search field, you see the print statement got printed. Double greater great than symbol is a print statement, right? For each and every step, you see print statements are getting printed means the, the, the respective methods in the step definition class got invoked successfully. Okay. So three scenarios, three pass, 12 pass, 12 steps. Everything is fine. Everything is fine, guys. Okay. Everything is coming fine here. Good. Okay. So, so guys, uh, we have used uh, successfully used tidy getting plugin to auto generate the methods for the steps in the feature file. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, there's more coming up. Okay. So we'll be learning more uh, about the next steps like here. In the next session, what I will try to cover is, uh, I just write down that uh, thing here. What, what I'm going to cover in the next step is, uh, next scenario is, uh, next uh, session is, sorry, next session is, I'm going to cover uh, like uh, running multiple feature files together. Okay, using runner class, okay? Running multiple feature files together using runner class. I'm going to practically demonstrate this for you. Demonstrate. Okay. So this is the next topic, guys. Next session, you can say. So, guys, what we are doing is, for example, uh, in this uh, uh, currently, this project has a problem. That is, uh, you see, if I have to run these three feature files together, there is no way. So either I can I have to open the login dot feature. Okay. You see, login dot feature steps are already implemented, but uh, still they are getting as highlighted. Okay, that means they are not implemented. It's saying, but here it is already implemented. Sometimes it happens, guys. Okay, uh, let's open the restart dot feature and uh, sorry, uh, let's open the restart dot Java and see whether sorry, not restart dot Java, restart dot feature. I'll say. You see, they are also shown as not implemented. Such dot feature, it is implemented. Sometimes this kind of uh, 
behavior we will see guys okay where already implemented steps are show, shown as not implemented already these steps are implemented in the register and login right as part of the previous sessions we have done so do one thing close all and right click on the project when this happens right click on the project and say maven update project you have to say update project whenever you get this kind of problems say update project the project will be updated. This is a common problem that people face. They will say that they'll complain that, okay, I've already written the, fe written the feature file steps and uh, step definitions also implemented. But again, this uh, steps are being shown as uh, uh, shown as no implementation done. In their cases, just update the Maven project case. Okay, after the updating of the Maven project is done, now open the login dot feature. You see, now the problem is gone. They are not highlighted. That means they're implemented actually. But sometimes what happens is after a time, the steps will get highlighted even though the step, defini uh, step definition methods are existing okay for each and every step so open the register.java search.java now everything is fine okay now everything is fine but the problem statement i am talking about is if i open this login dot feature and right click run as cucumber feature only the scenarios in the login dot feature will run only the scenarios in the login dot feature will run right only five scenarios in the login dot feature got run what if i have to uh, have to run the register feature files four are there okay four scenarios right click run as Cucumber feature, four, four, four scenarios will run, okay? You see, four scenarios got run, that's also fine. If I open the search dot feature, three scenarios are there, right click run as Cucumber feature, three scenarios will run. You see, three scenarios got run. But here, what if I have to run this login, register and search together? What if I have to run login, search and search, uh, login, register and search? That is uh, five scenarios plus four scenarios plus three scenarios, that is two, uh, total 12 scenarios if I want to run together. Okay, what is the process that I'm going to cover in the next session, guys? Okay, so running multiple feature files together using runner class, I'm going to cover in the next session. Okay, so that's all for this session. So see you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 15 of Cucumber BED training series. In this session, I'm going to practically demonstrate running multiple feature files together using runner class. Okay, we are going to create a runner class using which we are going to batch run the combination of feature files or multiple feature files together, batch running of the feature files together. So let's get started. Till the previous session, we are running the feature files individually or separately. Okay, so we so far in the project uh, from the previous sessions, you know that in that project, we created three feature files. One of the name is login, login feature file. As you can see, login feature file we created in the project and register feature file we created, search feature file we created. So if you have to run these scenarios from this uh, feature files, you have to go with only one feature file at a go. I have to open the login.feature file and run that, okay? All the five scenarios from this uh, login feature file will run separately. Then if I have to run the scenarios from the register, I have to, I have to run it separately. I have to run the search the scenarios in the search. I have to run this search feature file separately using Cucumber option, right? But now what I'm saying is I want to run all the scenarios from all these three feature files, whatever the multiple feature files currently have in this project together. As a batch, I want to run. For that, we need to create a class. As mentioned here, we are going to run the multiple feature files together using a runner class. We have to create a runner class to make this batch running of this multiple feature files together possible. Okay. So how to create that runner class and right click on the same package uh, where this uh, step definitions and feature files are available under same package and create a new class guys. You can name this class anything, but I prefer to give some name like my runner. You can give any name guys. Okay. You can even give normal runner only my runner, whatever the runner you want to give. Some people will give test runner and all the stuff. I, I prefer giving my runner for now. Click on finish. And here the class got created. On the top of this class guys, I have to provide an annotation from JUnit guys. Okay. That is run with annotation from JUnit. Okay. At the rate run with annotation from JUnit. But in order to import this annotation, this project is not configured with JUnit H. Okay. It came by default with JUnit, but in the previous sessions, one of the previous sessions, I removed the JUnit dependency tags from pom.xml file. Now, if you go to the pom.xml file, under the dependencies, if you see, only the dependencies for Cucumber are there. These three th dependencies are from Cucumber library only, okay? But now, I would like to add JUnit dependency also so that I can import that annotation from JUnit. For that, I'll open the browser and search mvnrepository.com and here, I'll say JUnit, okay? And when I say JUnit, I, I'm getting the JUnit option here, JUnit, JUnit, click on the JUnit. So I'll go with the latest version available here. Okay, under this JNIT, whatever the latest version is there, 4.13.2 is there, I'll click on that and I'll copy this and uh, paste it here. Okay, I'll paste it here and I'll organize the dependency tags and click on save all button. Done. 
let's see whether it will work or not so once the progress is done progress is still going as building and all those things are happening let's wait until the progress is done once the progress is done close the format xml file now hover the mouse on at the rate run with and now you are getting an import statement import run with from org.jnit runner or you can even add this jnit for library to the build path that is also fine guys okay i'll go with the first option better because since we already have added the libraries it's better to import it from the run with okay if this is not working i'll go with this okay import this from jnit okay run with is done so at the rate run with uh, importing is done but uh, it needs some arguments guys okay missing arguments it is saying if you say this uh, circular brackets you can give guys to give the missing arguments here in the circular brackets you have to say cucumber dot class okay you have to say cucumber dot class what is this cucumber dot class this at the rate run with is from jnit whereas cucumber is from cucumber library guys already we have added the libraries of cucumber so we don't have to do much Simply, guys, hover the mouse on Cucumber and uh, import this Cucumber from Cucumber library. You see Cucumber JNIT, uh, from Cucumber JNIT, we are getting this. Okay, that's it. This is purely from JNIT, you see, from JNIT library, whereas this Cucumber class is from Cucumber JNIT. You see, if you see the dependency tags here, one of the dependency tags is uh, JNIT Cucumber will be there. Uh, you see, Cucumber JNIT will be there. From this library, we are getting that uh, Cucumber class. Okay, so that's it, guys. We don't have to do much. So now, once this, uh, once this runner class is created like this, now, if you run this runner class, all the feature files that are there in the project will be running, not the only one feature file. Okay. Login feature file will run, register feature file will run, search feature file will run. All the three, if, if, even though you have 100 feature files, all the 100 feature files will run with the help of the runner class, guys. Okay. That's the power of the runner class. You have to create the runner class where the feature files are available. Okay. Now, if I run this, using which option I'm going to run this? At the rate run with is from JNIT, right? So I'll get an option from JNIT, guys. Okay. If I right click on this, uh, code and say run as you will get jnit option okay jnit is a unit testing framework similar to test ng in one of the previous sessions i covered uh, i mean I, in other uh, playlist guys okay i covered this jnit thing okay so in a separate uh, you know kind of course i covered the jnit okay so you don't have to have the knowledge of jnit i'm just simply saying jnit is a unit testing framework okay you can wa watch my other videos on jnit okay for that but uh, it's similar to test ng Testing is more powerful than JNIT, but JNIT is also used in some places. Okay. So for now, we are getting JNIT, guys. Okay. Select JNIT test. Instead of Cucumber option, you are getting JNIT. This class will run with the help of JNIT. And uh, you, you are getting another uh, tab known as JNIT tab. And in the console, you see you got the output already. Okay. All the steps in all the feature files from 12 scenarios, uh, which are uh, separated by three feature files, got printed. You see, you can see everything got all the print statements got printed. Okay. Login page related uh, statements got printed, then uh, register page related statements got printed, then search related statements got printed. That means all the all the feature files, all the three feature files got run together. You can see the JNE tab here and in the my runner, you can see user login. Okay, these are the five scenarios from the first feature file. And then you, this is a feature name we have given, right? User login is the name of the feature we have given. Under user login, we got these five scenarios. Okay. And uh, for the registration feature, register dot feature file, user registration is the name we have given, feature, feature name we have given. So from that four scenarios got run and such functionality, three scenarios got run. Everything got passed. Everything is in green color. So everything is passed. So this is the thing, guys. This is the thing. Okay. This is the thing. This is how we can run all the feature files together. And if you see the output console again, you see everything looks good, right? Everything looks good. And uh, we got a proper uh, box and all. And the print statements, all the methods in the step definition classes got a... Uh, uh, invoked and the, all the print statements got printed. Okay, all the three feature files, uh, all the three, uh, all the scenarios from the three feature files got run in a batch. That's the main thing. Okay, as a batch they got run. As a batch they got run. So fine. So one one thing is that this output is coming good. The reason may be already in this Eclipse ID, I may have installed one plugin, guys. Okay, so if I go to Eclipse Marketplace. Okay, by default, you may not get the same output, guys. Okay, maybe I have installed one plugin here. Okay, it will not come by default, but uh, I may have installed it already. That's why the output is coming properly. But let me check. Uh, ANSI, if I search for ANSI, let's see if I get a plugin like this. Uh, escape, escape, uh, console. Okay, let's see. I'll search with different terms. Let's see. Let's wait. The progress is still going on. It's searching something. 
it's taking too much of time that's okay yeah this is the plugin guys and see escape in console it's not there but still the output is coming fine okay then no, not required though okay this box is coming fine means uh, and uh, if this plugin is not uh, installed it means that's okay and see escape in console plugin install option is coming means it's not there but still the plug but still it is working fine okay then no no need of this plugin guys okay earlier we need to we have to install this plugin uh, to get a proper output in this console okay but uh, this box is coming fine and there are no issues here i don't think uh, we have to go with that uh, plugin now okay that plugin is not required anymore it seems okay we can ignore that fine i just wanted to check that before going to the next session so for now uh, the main focus of this session was to uh, show you how to run this uh, multiple feature files as a batch using this runner class okay with the help of jnit annotation and a cucumber dot class from cucumber jnit library by creating this kind of class all the feature files got run together okay instead of running them separately we are able to run as a batch so guys uh, that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 16 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i'm going to practically show you how to use background gherkin keyword in the feature files so let's get started let's switch to this eclipse ide where we have different feature files like for example login dot feature file is there in this project which we have created in the previous sessions right login register and search three things are there let's open the login dot feature file and here you can clearly see there are scenarios there are five scenarios scenario one scenario two scenario three scenario four and scenario five so now observe the prerequisite steps which are common across all these five scenarios. Okay, let's read the first scenario from given step. Okay, given user navigates to login page. Okay, you see this is the first step. Is this step common in the next scenarios? Yes, given user navigates to login page, same. Given user navigates to login page, which is same. Given user navigates to login page, which is same. And given user navigates to login page, which is also same. Five in, a, five, uh, in five scenarios, first step is common. Right, first prerequisite step is common. What about the second step? When user enters valid email address, so and so. When user enters invalid, which is not same, enters valid is different from enters invalid. So we cannot treat that as a common one. Okay, valid email address, here invalid email address, it's not kind of same. User don't enter any credential. So only one step, one step is can be considered as a prerequisite here. From second step onwards, uh, it's differing in all the scenarios. So what we can do is we can reduce the number of steps here. Okay, by creating a Gherkin keyword here known as background, put a colon, and now get this given and uh, paste it here. That's it. Okay, you can actually write this under this also. Okay, this is also fine. Background given. And this line you are reducing, right? Here you don't have to write the same step. Okay, this is a common step, common prerequisite step. From second step onwards, things are changing in the scenarios. But first step is common across all the scenarios. So this kind of common preset steps you can put under the background. And this background will be executed before every scenario base. For every scenario, background step will be executed, okay? So remove this uh, common step. We, we This is for reducing the number of lines, guys. Nothing much, okay? It's optional if whether you want to do this or not, up to you. Whether you want to use a background keyword is up to you, guys, okay? If, if that is uh, uh, kind of uh, reducing the number of lines in your feature files, because in feature files, there will be hundreds of scenarios. And you create this single background, it will save a number of lot of number of lines, right? So in less number of lines, you can uh, complete the scenarios. That's the purpose of the background keyword. Now go to the register dot feature, and here let's see what is happening. Register with mandatory fields. User navigates to register account page. 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 Four scenarios having the same step. User enters first name. User enters first name, which is same. Uh, what about this one user uh, don't enter is that that is not common second step onwards it's not common guys okay only first step is common here user enters first name so in one of the scenario the second step is not common so i'll take only one step here also copy this okay prerequisite step prerequisite common step guys okay from the beginning up to which part it is common across all the scenarios you have to see okay if i compare all these four scenarios in this feature file only the first step is common remaining all are not common okay again background colon Right down here, remove this step from all the scenarios. Okay. This is a common step, common pre excite step, you can say. Okay. Remove this. Remove this. That's it. Four scenarios. You will use the same background step. Okay. Now go to search dot feature. 
Here also, let's see, user opens application, user opens application, user opens application, which is same. User enters valid product into such field, user enters non-existing product, which is not common. User don't enter is not, again, not common. Only one step here also. Okay, one quick side step. If you have multiple steps, which are common in any of the feature files, you can write that multiple steps under this background keyword, get in keyword. Okay, that's okay. But here, as per these examples or as per the examples of feature files that I have taken, only one step is coming as common. But here you can have multiple pre set steps if, if they're common across all the scenarios. From second step on or onwards, it's kind of not common. So I'm not taking the second step under the background. Okay, like this three uh, feature files I updated, close all. Now, mm, in the previous session, we created this runner class, which will run all these feature files as a batch. Let's run this and see whether all the things are running or not. Run as JNIT test. Let's see whether it is running all the feature files or not. Okay. Simply go to the JNIT tab. It will be more clear for us. You see, expand this user login. All the five scenarios got passed. Okay. All the four scenarios got passed. All the three scenarios got passed. Everything is working fine. And you can see the console also for the print statement. You see user got navigated to login page is coming. User got, this is a common step, right? Which is under the background now. User got navigated login. Five times it will be there. User got navigated login page last time. User got navigated to login page. After login, then restart. Also one step there. Okay, use, uh, user got navigated to restart account page. Uh, user got navigated to restart account page. Then uh, user got navigated to restart account page. Like that, multiple times it is coming. Okay, four times it is coming. User got navigated to restart account page. Coming to the search also. Uh, application got opened is a common step. Application got opened. Application got opened. You see, every time it is coming, that means uh, the background keyword is perfectly working fine. Okay, background keyword is perfectly working fine guys okay so i think one console is closed let me see if the console is coming again or not yeah console is coming done fine guys uh that's all about the background keyword there's nothing much okay we have to use a background keyword like this uh to uh, to segregate the common preset step from all the scenarios in the same feature file okay so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 17 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use scenario outline and examples gherkin keywords okay as part of data driven testing so let's get started so in our previous session we have used this uh, background gherkin keyword okay now in this session i am going to cover the other two keywords like scenario outline examples keyword okay keywords which can be used for implementing data driven testing in this projects cucumber projects so for that i'll open the eclipse id here is the project we have i'll go to one of the feature file guys that is login.feature file here we have a scenario login with valid credentials user enters valid email address this is a valid email address and user enters valid password this is a valid password clicks on the login button and you then user should login successfully here how many sets of data are there only one set of data is there that is one username, one password, okay, for which is useful for login for one user, okay, for one set of data is there, okay, this scenario will run only one time. So what if I want to implement data driven testing? First of all, what is this data driven testing? Okay, let me explain here. Data driven testing, okay, if you want to implement data driven testing in this Cucumber projects, okay, maybe in Cucumber project, then, so, we have to first understand what is data driven testing is let's say there is a login okay login test there is a login test okay this is a login test let's assume that this is a login test login test with valid credentials kind of test now you have multiple sets of users okay admin user teacher user uh student user let's say this is a school application where login well, login functionality is there there are different type of users are there or you see there are a good number of teachers good number of admin users good number of students a hundreds of collections of data is there. So now, if you have to test the login functionality for these credentials, okay, this login test need not be written this many number of times. The same login test we'll use for all the credentials. Here, who is driving the testing? Here, data is driving the testing. Here, username, password of this particular admin user or some user, username, password of teacher, username, password of a student, of an admin, a teacher, a student like that all the list of users uh, which can access this application need to be tested we have to test whether this all these credentials of these users are working or not for that i don't have to write this login test this many number of times 
Rather, I'll implement this login test only one time and supply this multiple sets of data to this single test, single scenario. I will pass this many sets of data and output should be for each and every set of data output will come. Okay. That output should be login should get successful. Okay. Login should be successful. Login should be successful. Login should be successful. Okay. This is one example I am taking. Okay. So here data is driving this test instead of writing each and individual test for each and every set of data login with admin user one credentials, one test. If you create login with, okay. Admin user two credentials. If you create one more test, that is not a good practice. Rather you have to implement the same login test only one time and pass multiple sets of user data to the same test. That means this single test will run the number of times the number of user data is available. This data is available here. Data is driving this testing. Hence we call this testing as data driven testing. Okay. Only one test, but multiple sets of data need to, okay. This, based on the sets of data, this login test, same test need to run that many number of times and give the output corresponding output. This is called as data driven testing. Right? If you have to implement this data driven testing in Cucumber, okay. So here we have a scenario. So here we are passing only one set of data. So what I will do is I'll update this scenario guys. I'll update this scenario. I'll convert this scenario into a data driven test scenario. It's very simple guys. Scenario space outline like this. We have to convert the scenario to scenario outline keyword. Okay. Normal scenario, scenario, uh, scenario keyword. We have to convert to scenario outline. And at the end of the scenario, we have to write examples without any space or something. You just write examples. Guys. Okay. Here you should not give any space immediately. 12th line should be example. 11th line is the last 12th line should be examples. Okay. Now here, this I will change this. This I will change as less than and greater than symbol. And here I'll write email. Okay. Here also I'll write password. Okay. Now, whatever the names you have given here in the less than and greater than symbols, you are, they are, they are getting uh, displayed in some highlighted in some orange color or something in this uh, current version. Fine. Here, I'll get a pipe symbol. I'll copy the same email here. Okay. Email and colon and password. Also here, pipe symbol. Okay. Now, first set of data I'm going to pass. Pipe symbol. First email address I have to pass. What is the first email address? I'll go to this application. Tutorialsinja.com slash demo. Go to the login. And here, give the email address. This is the email address I have to give. One valid email address I'm giving. This is a login with valid credentials. I can pass multiple sets of valid credentials. Okay. So press tab here so that you can organize it well. Tab and here tab and say type. And here I have to give the password. Guys, password is one, two, three, four, five. Press tab. Let's tab here. That's it. Okay. Password. Email is this one. Password is this one. Now, second set of data. Here only one set of data I'm not giving, guys. I'm giving multiple sets of data. This scenario. Okay, should run multiple times. This test should not be a normal scenario. It should be a data driven test. For that, we are using scenario outline keyword and examples keyword. And here under the examples, okay, we are giving multiple sets of data. Same data I'll copy paste here and uh, change the value here. I'll say three. And here I'll copy paste. I'll say one. Okay. This, these are the three valid sets of data, guys. Okay, three valid sets of data. So what will happen here is this email will refer to this email. So there are three sets of data. So this particular scenario outline or scenario will run three times because three sets of data are there. This data will pass to the email, which is matching here. Okay. This password will pass it to the password. Okay. When the step arrives. Now let's run this scenario. This is the only thing that you have to do guys in the step definition. You have to change the, okay. We have to go to the step definition and change it. If you say save all, you see, these are not implemented. It is saying these two steps are not implemented earlier. They were implemented, but now I change it to email and uh, password thing, right? They are not implemented. So I'll copy these two things. I'll go to one the plugin that I have explained in one of the previous sessions that is tidy Gherkin plugin. So I'll search in Google tidy Gherkin. It is already installed in my browser and go to this link of Chrome store. And here you will get launch app option. Click on launch app and you will get this tidy Gherkin open. Just copy paste the two lines. So when user enters valid email, email and enters valid password, password. Java steps. See what's happening. You are getting some steps. These are the methods you are getting when user enters. These are the steps you have to take. Copy them and replace the exist earlier steps. Okay. Go to the login.java. And earlier we have written user enters valid email address and uh, valid password. These two lines I'll replace with the latest. I'll copy paste the latest ones. Here I'll remove this. And throw throws I'll remove. 
from the tidy gherkin i generated this why i auto generated from tidy gherkin means uh, till now i have not explained about the regular expressions guys you see tidy gherkin is creating some regular expression here this is a regular expression guys okay this part is a regular expression before i explain this regular expression i am auto generating it from tidy gherkin in the upcoming sessions i am going to explain this regular expression for you in detail okay so this is a parameter we are receiving guys uh, this parameter will go into the email and this parameter will go into the password okay uh, and here I'll write down system dot out dot print ln. System dot out dot print ln. Okay. User has entered valid email address. What is a valid email address entered by the user? I'll say plus email. Similarly, I'll write down system dot out dot print ln. So converting a normal scenario to data driven. Scenario guys using the scenario outline and examples and here in the step definitions also we have to replace the existing step definition methods to the uh, auto generated uh, tidy gherkin auto generated this kind of regular expression step methods okay and here I'll say user has entered valid valid password what is the valid password for all the emails the same password is there so I'll just uh, write this same password. Okay, now that's it guys, click on save all and go to the login dot feature. You see the steps got implemented now, okay? The steps which are highlighted again got implemented now. So I'll run this login dot feature file and see whether this scenario, the first scenario is getting executed how many times? Three times the same scenario should get executed. First with the first set of data. The same scenario should get executed second time with the second set of data that is a motory cap three. Third time the same scenario should be executed with a motory cap one at the right gmail.com. For that I'll run this, right click, run as, Cucumber feature, we'll see three times the same test should run with multiple sets of data. Here we'll see guys, log, uh, scenario outline got run, login with valid credentials. You see again, login with valid credentials got run. Again, login with valid credentials got run. Three times it got run. Given user navigated to login page, user has entered valid email address. You see, a motory cap nine. Okay, here, one, two, three, four, five is the password. In the second, second time when the same scenario got run, as part of data driven testing, a motory cap three is the data. One, two, three, four, five is the password. Third time when the same scenario has run, a motory cap one at the rate gmail.com. One, two, three, four, five is the password. And remaining scenarios got run only one time. The remaining scenarios, normal scenarios, login with invalid credentials got executed only one time. Login with valid email and invalid password got executed one time. Login with invalid email address and valid password got executed one time. Login without providing any credentials got executed one time. Total seven scenarios it is saying, but our test. But our test has only one in uh, only five scenarios, I guess. One, two, three, four, five scenarios. But where, where, from where seven scenarios came? Because the first test got executed three times. That's why it's counting as seven. Three plus first one only executed three times. Three plus four, five, six, seven. Okay, instead of five, seven. Because the single test, single scenario got executed how many times? Three times because of the scenario outline and examples. And we have achieved data driven testing with this process, right? We have to use, if you have to implement data driven testing in Cucumber projects, okay, we should be using scenario outline and examples, okay? We should be using scenario outline and examples. So, fine guys, I have demonstrated the scenario outline and examples getting keywords and how to use them for implementing the data driven testing in the Cucumber projects, Cucumber Java projects, okay? Maven Cucumber projects. Fine. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 18 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to generate Cucumber HTML report. So let's get started. So in this session, I am going to generate a Cucumber HTML report by running the feature files inside our Cucumber project okay so for that we have to write this code in the runner class so i'll quickly switch to this eclipse id where we have this cucumber project okay and here you can see we have the feature files we have the step definition class files and we have a runner class which will run all these feature files right i'll open the runner class and here this is a code we have written so far in the runner class and just before this class okay just before this class you have to create an annotation known as you have to write an annotation known as Cucumber options annotation. Okay. This Cucumber options annotation is from Cucumber JUnit. Okay. If you go to the pom.xml file, here we added Cucumber JUnit library. 
Okay, you can see Cucumber JEdit library added here. Cucumber JEdit library is added here. So from this library, we are going to import this Cucumber options. Okay, import this Cucumber options from Cucumber JEdit library. And here, provide the circular brackets. Okay, provide the circular brackets and write down this code that is plugin is equal to curly braces you provide. Inside the curly braces, you provide the double quotes and type this text that is which type of report you want to generate html report okay then provide colon symbol and say where you want to generate this report after this colon symbol you have to provide the location where you want to generate the this cucumber html report let's say i want to generate this report under the target folder for now under the target folder of this project there is no report generated so what i'm going to write down here is i'll write the path okay that is target under the target folder I would like to generate this Cucumber HTML report with this name, okay? Uh, Cucumber HTML report, okay? Like this, you can give a name for the report and say dot report, dot HTML, okay? You can say Cucumber report also, it's also fine. Cucumber report dot HTML, okay? Cucumber results report or report dot HTML. Whatever the name you want to give for the report name, you can mention here and give the extension as dot HTML and target is a folder under, under which this report will be created with this name and extension, okay? And we have to use this plugin attribute of this Cucumber options, which we have imported from the Cucumber JEdit library. Okay, now run this runner class, which will run all the feature files, and at the end, it will generate the Cucumber report for us. Okay, right click, run as JEdit test. All the feature files will be running in a while, and we'll get a Cucumber HTML report. You see, everything got run, guys, and you can go to the JEdit tab and see that all the three, okay feature files got run and all the tests under the feature files got executed. Now refresh this project guys, refresh this project and under the target folder, you will see a Cucumber report. Okay. With the given name Cucumber report and with the extension HTML, a report got generated. Right click on this and say open with web browser, open with web browser. Now you will see that this Cucumber HTML report will open and it's saying hundred percent passed. 14 test got executed and everything, every test got passed. And the test code executed on Windows 11, automatically it is detecting the Windows operating system in my machine. And the version of the Java in my machine is also automatically detected. And the Cucumber version also is automatically detected. And uh, it took 20 second, uh, 27 seconds ago, the test code executed and it took 1.74 seconds of duration to run the test, okay? And these are the results, okay? This feature file, this login feature file, you see uh, this, uh, Login with valid credentials got executed with all the three sets of data. Then other scenarios got executed. Okay, total five. And then uh, in the register feature file, you see these are the four scenarios which got executed. And every step in the every feature file got passed. You can see the tick mark here, green color. That means everything got passed. And here the search fun search feature file, all the three scenarios got passed, and all the scenarios of the all, all the feature files got passed. Now, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fail the test. Okay, and um, intentionally I would like to fail it. So I'll go to this search dot Java one of the Step definition class, I'll go. And here, uh, in one of the when, that is when user don't enter any product in the last scenario, I guess. Okay, here, I intentionally write in A is equal to 9 divided by 0. So 9 cannot be divided by 0 in Java, guys. It will not give any compiler error, but when this code is run, it will give an arithmetic exception, okay? It will give an arithmetic exception, guys. So because of this exception, the test will fail, okay? Because of this line, the test will fail. And uh, we'll see the report in a different way, okay? We'll see some steps getting failed and uh, some other steps getting skipped because of this failed step. If a particular test, uh, step is failed, automatically the remaining steps will be skipped from execution. They will not be executed, okay? So now we'll see a different report, guys. Again, I'll go to the runner.java and uh, my runner.java and say run as JNA test and you will see the, you'll see the report generated this time also, but uh, with the results of the failed test and uh, failed results and skipped uh, steps will be generated, okay? You can go to the JNA and you can see that you see this particular last scenario got failed, okay? The JNIT, you can see the last scenario in the such feature file got failed. And the same thing you will see in the report, guys, refresh this project once and you'll get this Cucumber report uh, open with a web browser. You will see the report like this. You see 93% only passed out of 14, one, one got failed and remaining 13 got passed and uh, remaining all you know. And the first feature file, everything is fine. Second feature file, register, everything is fine. But in the third feature file, the research, the third scenario got failed, guys. Okay, first scenario everything is passed. Second scenario everything is passed. But in third scenario, this when step got failed. Okay, the background step got passed, but when step got failed, and because of this exception, it got failed. 
and also you can see the remaining steps got skipped because of this previous fa failed step the remaining following steps got skipped okay blue color means skipped red color means failed green color means passed okay so this is how guys this is how we can generate the cucumber html report in our projects okay just to make sure that this will not be repeated i'll just uh, remove this uh, what do you say i'll go to search.java and remove this exception guys and they're intentionally failing but uh, they are not really failing so i'll remove this so the next time onwards so you'll see all the tests getting passed okay fine i'll close this uh, search.java and uh, all these lines so from now onwards uh, this report will be there in our project okay the cucumber html report will be generated the, every time we run this my runner.java file okay so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all Welcome to part 19 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, as a predict site for the next session, we are going to learn about the regular expressions in Java. So let's get started. Okay, this is the predict site session, guys, for the next session. So without this knowledge, if you directly jump on to the next session, you will not be able to understand. So let me explain this regular expressions in Java as part of this session as a predict site for the next session. Okay, fine. So what are these regular expressions? They are shortly known as regex, okay? Are used to check whether the search pattern is available in the given string text, okay? There are two items, guys. One is pattern, okay, which is a regular expression. Pattern is nothing but a regular expression and the text. So by using this pattern, we have to match this text, okay? If pattern is matching with the string text, then it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false, okay? I'll show you some practical demonstrations, guys, okay? So... I'll open this project and here I'll create a new package, uh, just a temporary package, guys. I'll delete this package afterwards. Okay, learning, temporary learning purpose. Okay, I'll create a new class here. I'll just name this class as demo class and I'll say public static void main. Okay, so a class with public static void main code will be auto generated. Now, inside this main method, I'll write down Okay, I'll write down a predefined class in Java known as pattern class. Okay, this is a predefined class in Java, guys. Pattern dot. When you say pattern dot, you'll get a lot of methods. I'll go with matches method. Okay, this is from Java, guys. Okay, this code is from Java. Matches, you see the regular expression, regex, and here the string text. Okay, the pattern should match the string text, given string text, like that. Okay, put a semicolon here. In now, firstly, provide the double quotes here and provide a regular expression here. And here, this side, you have to provide the string text, okay? For example, if I say, my name is Arun Muthuri, okay? This is the string text. So to match this regular expression, uh, to match the string text, we have to create a regex or pattern kind of stuff, okay? So we should match. So what is that regex I'm going to write here is, okay? Uh, dot asterisk. That means dot asterisk. Uh, it can be zero or one. Okay, this dot means single letter, guys. This zero, uh, this letter can be zero or any number of times. Asterisk means this letter can be repeated any number of times. Okay, this can be anything. It can be a letter, symbol, or number, or whatever it is. Okay, it's a kind of single blank. Okay, if yum can fit it or something like that, it can be any number of zero to any number of. And here I'll write Arun. Again, I'll say dot asterisk. After Arun, there can be zero or any number of characters. Okay. Before Arun, zero or any number of characters. After Arun, zero or any number of characters. Okay. So this is a regular expression or regex or pattern I have given to match this text. So this matches has to return some Boolean value. Okay. So Boolean value. So I'll say matching, uh, matching status, matching status. Okay. Over the mouse, the return type of this matches method will add as a declaration for this matching status variable. Okay. Boolean, Boolean, nothing but Boolean. Okay. Now here I'll write down if I'll write down if matching status, if this is true, if the matching status is true, then the pattern has matched. Okay. System dot out dot print then matched. Okay. I'll say simply say I'll print out matched. That means this pattern is matching with the text. Okay. This pattern is matching the text. Else I'll write down if it is returning false, if this boolean is reading false and system dot out dot print and not matched i'll simply say not matched okay this is one example guys this is one example so i'll take a lot of other examples guys to get started i have taken this example guys but uh, there is a huge list of uh, patterns and uh, okay patterns that i'm going to use 
to explain about these regular expressions in short regex. Okay, there are a lot of examples I'm going to take as with this, you'll get complete knowledge of regex or regular expressions. Okay. So just to get started, I'm taking this example of dot star Arun dot star. Okay. So here now is this pattern matching this text? Now it will be revealed. Okay, if I run this code, if it is match this being printed, that means it is matching. You see, match this getting printed, guys. I'll just uh, move it to the left side so that you can see matched. It got matched. Okay. What if I put only Arun and remove all this stuff? Is Arun matching with this? My name is Arun. No. Okay. Just Arun is only part. But here, my name is Arun Motori is there. Before Arun, after Arun, nothing. No pattern is mentioned. That means it will not match. It will print not matched. Just for the example, I'm taking this guy's not matched. Okay. Now let's start learning about this patterns, different pattern patterns, different regular expressions or regex. Okay. So let's get started. So first I will go with this Java example. So guys, if here, if I type Java here, okay. And here in the string text also in the pattern, I type Java in the string text also have type Java. If this is this pattern matching with this, uh, Text, yes, it is exactly matching, right? Java is equal to Java. Okay. So it, it will say matched. You will get matched in the output. Okay. What if I give capital J in place of the lowercase J, if I give capital J, now it will not match here. Lowercase J is there, here upper J is there. So it will say not matched. Case also should match. Okay. Not matched. Then, so to overcome this, Either it may be lowercase Java or uppercase Java, whatever it is, the first letter can be capital or lower for that. Instead of giving a letter here, single letter here. Okay. The remaining three letters, A, V, A is same, but the first letter I'm going to give as capital J or lowercase J. Either capital J can be there in the first letter or lowercase J can be as part of the first letter. So now, is it matching with Java? Yes, it is matching. Either, either this or this should be there as a first letter. So J is there. So J is matching in the square bracket, whatever the two letters you put, either this one or this one will be taken to match this text. You see capital J is matching with Java. So it will say matched. It will get matched. What if I give lowercase Java? Will this particular pattern will match this uh, Java? Yes, it will match because lowercase J is also there as part of the first letter. Either capital J or lowercase J it will say matched. It will get matched. What if I give Python here? Completely no match. Okay. This is Java, this is Python. How can they match? Okay, there's no possibility. Not matched will be printed. Okay, not matched will be printed. Now let's move on. This this expression, okay. Uh y e here I'll say in the square brackets is the last letter, last letter of this uh, pattern I'm giving in the square brackets. Either it can be last letter, can be yes or p. So if I give y es, it will match. Okay, it will return true case because. Y E is matching with Y and the last letter can be either S or B. Here S is there, so it will say matched. You'll get matched. Okay, when I run. If I say Y E P, yep. Y E P, it can be S or P. Yes, it will match. Matched will come. Okay, matched has come. What if I give T? The last letter can only be S or P, either S or P, but here T is there, so it will say not matched. Not matched. Then this one, I will take this regular expression, reg x pattern or regular expression. And here, the first letter can be either S or F or K. The first letter can be either S or F or K. It can be anything of these three letters. So if I give S I T, it will match. The first letter is S and remaining letters are I T. Okay. It will match. If I give F I T fit, yes, F is also part of this. It will match. If I give K ticket, yes, K is also there, either S or F or K, it will also match, match will be printed. If I give another thing other than S, F, K, okay, P, A, T, pitch, okay, you see, it will say not matched. Either S or F or K should be the first letter. If not, you'll get not matched, you'll get false. So here dot A, V, A, okay, and the next one is, next regular expression is dot A, V, A, I'll explain you. Here in place of dot, it can be anything, guys. It can be a number, it can be a symbol, it can be a letter, it can be uppercase, it can be a lowercase, it doesn't matter. The dot is a filling blank kind of thing. Okay, remaining AVA should match. But if I give Java here, yes, it will match. Okay, Java will match. J is an alphabet, it can fill up here. You see, matched. 
Capital Java. Yes, it will match. AVA is same. It can be anything. Dot can be anything. So it will match. Done. Okay. So apart from this, if you give some dollar symbol, it will match. Dot can be anything. If you give a number, it will match. But only one, one should be there. Okay. One feeling should be there. Okay. What if I give 99? It will not match. The last three letters are fine, but here only one dot is there. Here two nines are there. Okay. Here only one should be there, but here two are there. So it will not match. Okay. So L A V A lava. Okay. L can this also will match. Only one letter. That can be a symbol or uh, that can be a symbol or anything, guys. Okay, let's run it. Matched. Okay. This is called as dot case. Okay. The dot for single character or anything. And this is the next regular expression. Copy paste. First letter can be first position. Uh, thing can be first uh, single letter can be it can be either zero or nine. Okay, it can be anything from zero to nine. It can be anything from zero to nine. Okay, it cannot take alphabets. First thing cannot be an alphabet. First thing cannot be a symbol. Okay, first thing can only be a number from zero to nine. If you give any other thing other than this zero to nine, you will get a problem. Okay, so if I give nine a.m., it will it will match nine a.m. zero to nine. You see first letters. First thing is matching zero to nine number. Okay, nine a.m. will match. You can give zero, one, two, three, four, five. Anything will match. Five a.m. also will match. Matched will come. But if I give some alphabet, okay, S A M Sam, that will give not matched. It, it should, the first thing should first letter should be only number case. Okay, you see it's not matching. If you give any symbol hash a m hash a m if I say that will say not matched. will say not matched okay so it should be only from 0 to 9 you can give any number from 0 to 9 okay the next one this is the next regular expression so here if you see guys the first letter should be the lower case alphabets from a to z it can be any alphabet guys okay so if i give j e t z okay it will match z is there okay matched if i say s e c z it will match s lower case letter from a to z is there so it will match it will say matched. If I say capital S, it will not match because A to Z is lowercase only. Okay. Any lowercase letters from A to Z can be given there, not matched. If you give any um, dollar symbol or something, it will not say, it will say not matched. Okay. Not matched. Okay. So hope you are able to understand. Now A to Z ED. Okay. The next uh, regular expression here, it should be capital letter, guys. If you give small S E T, it will not match. You have to give capital. Capital letter from a, uh, any any capital letter from A to Z you have to give as a first letter. Okay, not matched. If I give same S C T set, it will match. S C T set, B T bed, anything will match. It should be capital though. If you give lowercase letter, it will not match. If you give numbers, it will not match. If you give symbols, it will not match. That's common. Okay. Now let's take the next regular expression. It should be the first letter should be any alphabet which can be lowercase from A to Z or capital A to Z from A to Z capital letters it can be or it can be numbers from 0 to 9 okay so the first letter can be lowercase letter from A to Z it will say matched it can be a C T set capital letter also it will match okay or it can be a number from 0 to 9 yeah 980 980 it will match you think pattern will match the text okay matched but if uh, but if you give symbols, it will not match. Okay, hash it, it will not match because only lowercase alphabets or uppercase alphabets are zero to nine number. But if you give uh, symbols, it will say not matched. Next one, <laughs> this one, guys. The next regular expression is this one: not of zero to nine. Okay, the first letter cannot be a numeric value. It cannot be numeric value from zero to nine. It should be an alphabet or symbol. Okay, if I give S C T set, it will match. Because S is not an alpha, uh, it's not a number. Here cap stands for not. Not should not be first letter should not be zero to nine. So set will match. Only when you give this number, it will not match. Okay, capital S C T will match. Symbol symbols will match. If I give dollar here, it will match. Matched. But what if I give a number like uh, five, which is in the range of zero to nine? It will say not matched. 
not matched. Okay, done. The next one, the last letter can be any letter from A to Z that should be also in lowercase. Okay, if I say ACT set, yes, A is in the range of A to Z and it is a lowercase, so it will say matched. And if I give capital T, it will say not matched. Capital T means it's a not matched. Should be lowercase only. Last letter should be lowercase. Okay. Not matched. If I give any uh, number, it will say not match. Any symbol, it will not, it will say not matched. Okay. Numbers or symbols, it will say not matched. Okay, done. Then we'll go with this next one. Next regular expression is this one. Yes, T. And in middle, middle letter should not be any of these letters. It should not be any A, E, I, O, U letters. Okay. Other than A, E, I, O, if you give any letter in between, that's okay. If you give set here, it will say not matched because the middle letter should not be part of A, E, I, O, U. E is there already here. So it should not be E. So it will say not matched. Okay. If I give S, A, T, set, here A is there. It should not be A. It should not be A. It should not be E. Middle letter should not be A, E, I, O, U. It cannot match. Uh, SFT, if I give SFT, F is not part of any of these A, E, I, O, U letters. So it will say matched. You can give any number, you can give alpha, uh, you can give capital letters and all those things. Okay. Okay. But it should not be lowercase a, u, i, o, u. Then hash t is nothing but hash t is a short form of 0 to 9, guys. Okay. Instead of giving 0 to 9, for example, here I have give, given 0 to 9 am, right? The same thing here you can give 0 to 9 am. In place of 0 to 9, you can give slash t, guys. Okay. If you are getting error, just give double backward slash. Okay. This is, uh, if slash t is not working, give double backward slash t. Okay, so this is nothing but equal to zero to nine. Okay, the first one should be a number case. Okay, should be a digit, not matched. If I give something like pi of t, it will say matched. Okay, so what is the problem? Where is that slash t zero to nine? It means zero to nine. Sorry, it. Uh, Sorry, this is a uh, AM, right? I have to give AM, guys. That's why it's not matching. If I give 9 AM, it will say not matched. Sorry, matched. Okay, because it should be a number, right? 0 to 9. Okay. If I give an alphabet, SAM, it will say not matched. Okay. Say not matched. This is short form of 0 to 9. Okay. Square bracket 0 to 9. Not matched. Okay. You have to give some number. Pi AM, it will match. Then, next one capital slash T. It is not of, it is an opposite of 0 to 9. It should not be 0 to 9. Okay. You can try this. Guys, okay. You can try this. Uh, if you give slash capital D, it is opposite of slash T. Okay. Lowercase G. That is 0 to 9, not 0 to 9. Okay. You give double backward slash if this is not working. If I give numbers, it will say not matched. Other than numbers, it will be matched. Okay. If I give SAM, it will match. If, if I give capital SAM, it will match. If I give some other thing like uh, uh, a symbol, it will match. Okay. This is an opposite of this one. Okay. It, it, this is 0 to 9. This is not of 0 to 9. Okay. Now, similarly, we have slash W, which stands for this part. Okay. So, in place, instead of write, if you are getting a situation where you have to write like this, okay. Capital A to Z, lowercase A to Z, 0 to 9, underscore any of these things. Okay. So, it will match like this. For example, cap, capital SAM, it will match. Capital A to Z is there. So, it will match. Uh, lowercase letters A to Z. Okay. S is part of that. So, it will match. If I say 9 a.m., it will match because 0 to 9 is also there, it will match. And apart from that, we have also have an underscore, guys. You see underscore, extra underscore is there. If I give underscore here, then also it will match. Matched. But what if I give some other thing other than if any other symbol, if I give hash a.m., it will give not matched. It will give not matched. Okay. The same thing, this regular expression, whatever uh, shortcut, if I have to write, I have to give slash w. Double backward slash W. Okay. If this is giving error, just say double backward slash instead of single backward slash. Now the same thing applies. It will say not matched. Okay. The same thing. Okay. We have, we create not match. Okay. If you give SAM, it will say matched. Capital SAM, it will say matched. It can be capital letter A to Z or lowercase A to Z or numbers from 0 to 9 or underscore also. Okay. If I give 9 AM, it will match. If I give underscore also it will match. Okay. Uh, lowercase uh, slash back, backward slash lowercase w is nothing but is equal to this one. 
if you want to go opposite of this part, you have to give slash capital W. Okay. It should not be, it should not be any of these things. Okay. It cannot be first letter cannot be a capital letter. It cannot be a lowercase letter. It cannot be a number. It cannot be an underscore. It, it, it can be any other symbol. Maybe under, apart from underscore, it can be any other symbol. That is, you can try this on guys. Okay. Slash S means slash T slash N back. Uh, these are uh, escape characters. Okay. If you, if you want to represent escape characters, Okay, it is a short form for this one. Okay, any of these escape characters can be given as part of the things. Okay, here capital S means not of opposite of this one, guys. Okay, apart from escape characters, can be anything. Okay, here starts with my. Okay, the next one. Okay, this this you can try it, guys. Okay, I'll go with this one. Starts with my. If I give something like this, my name is Arun Motori. So do you think it will match or it will not match? It will not match. You see, it starts with my is fine, but after my, there is a lot of text, which is not mentioned in the pattern. So it will return not matched. It will return not matched. If I put only my, then it will match. Starts with, yes, it is starting with my, right? So if you want to say my name is Arun, something like this, my name is uh, Arun Motori, if you want to give, and if you still want it to match, it is starting with my and should end with anything, dot star. You have to give dot star. It can end with zero or any number of characters, okay? Or symbols or numbers or anything. You see, it will match. Okay, this is how we have to write. Starts with, cap means starts with my. Dollar means ends with Arun, okay? So here, if I write something like this, up to Arun, my name is Arun. And if I write uh, Arun dollar, do you think it will match? No. You see, definitely it is ending with Arun, okay? Arun dot, you have to give. Otherwise, I'll, I'll remove the dot. Okay, it will pass confusion. Arun dollar is there. Okay, Arun dollar is there. So here it's ending with Arun. That's fine. But the problem is, what about my name is? This is not matching, right? This pattern is not matching with my name is. It's only matching with ending with Arun. Okay, so it will say not matched. So I'll write down dot asterisk. Okay, it can be any number of zero or any number of characters before Arun. And it should end with Arun. Okay, now it will match. It will match. Okay, that's it. So this next uh, uh, regular expression, a dot dot n. Okay, two dots are there. If only one dot is there, one one letter or one number or one symbol can be filled here. Okay, but what about this one? This is also another. Okay, two letters should be there. Two letters or two numbers or two uh, symbols or two uppercase, two lowercase, whatever then can be. For example, if I give Arun, it will match. You see the two two. Uh, filling blanks have been filled with RU. Okay. A and N are matching. The before and after letters are matching. So it is called matched. Okay. If I give only A R N, it will not match. Because here two letters should be there. Two things should be there. Okay. Your only one is there. If I give 99, it will match. If I say A dollar dollar N, it will match. Okay. Like that is. Okay. Now this is the part already I covered, I guess. Uh, okay. This one I'll take it. I'll tell you what is this. It should start with my. In between, it can be anything, zero or any number of characters can be there, and but it should end with Arun, okay? So if I write something like this, my name is Arun, if I write down, so it will match. You see, it's starting with my, yes. In between, it can be any characters, zero or any number of characters, and it should end with Arun. Yes, it's ending with Arun, so it will say matched. What if I give something like this, uh, my name is Arun Motori, if I write, then it will not match, because one of the rule is breaking. It's starting with my, it's starting with my guys. In between, it can be anything. It can, in between, it can be anything, but it should end with Arun, but it's not ending with Arun. It's ending with Motori, my last name. Okay. So it will say not match like this. Then the next one, if I use this regular expression, what will happen? Let's see. Okay. So here dot plus earlier dot asterisk was there. Dot star was there. Now dot plus is there. Dot hashtag means zero or any number of times. This thing can be repeated zero or any number of times, but dot plus means one or minimum one. Okay, minimum one or any number. For example, if I say hashtag here, okay, I can write my Arun, I can write no problem. Okay, you see, it's starting with my ending with Arun, ending with Arun, and in between there can be zero or any number of characters. So here in between my and Arun, there are zero characters, so it will match. To match case, okay. But if I give plus here, there is a problem. Plus means one or more number of times. Dot star means this dot is repeated 
star means zero or any number of times, but dot plus means if you are putting plus after the dot means this dot is repeated one minimum one to any number of times. That means here at least one letter should be there in between my and Arun. It starts with my, it ends with Arun, but that's okay. But here at least one letter should be there one or any number of times. Right click run as Java application. You will see not matched. If I say my space Arun, it will match. At least one thing should be there. It can be space or number or alphabet. Should be it's okay. If I say my name is, it will match. It can be one to any number of okay, but it cannot be zero, guys. Okay, it cannot be zero. Okay, it's matching. Hope you're able to understand the difference between dot hashtag and dot plus. Dot hashtag means uh, zero or any number of times. This dot is repeated zero the before thing. Okay, if you provide dot before something, that dot or whatever the character or whatever you provide it should be repeated zero or any number of times dot can be a character dot can be a symbol dot can be a letter anything you can put it here in place of dot also you can put something and say plus means one or any number of times okay for example here guys if i put uh, my a star arun okay so here if i write like this my arun will match this a can be either zero or repeated any number of times okay zero times is matching right so match will come if i say my a one time yes it will match Match will come. If I give one more A, it will match. This A can be zero or any number of times. Okay. So zero to any number of times. What if I give A plus here instead of dot plus? If I give A plus, this before character, it can be a dot or character or symbol or anything, need to be at least one or more than one number of times. So here, zero times is there, you will get not matched. No A is there in between my arm. So it will say not. At least one A is there, it will match one or any number of times, okay? Again, one more A. So dot and asterisk, uh, asterisk and plus you have to understand, guys. Asterisk means the before character should be either zero or any number of times. Plus means the before character or any symbol or any dot or anything should be one or any number of times. That's what is the main panda you have to understand. So you have also have one more thing known as question mark, guys, okay? I'll give you the question mark thing here. I copy pasted the regular expression. Here, before thing is dot, guys. This question mark means either zero or one time. Okay, if I give my own, this dot is treated as anything that is zero times, okay? Zero or one time. Question mark means this, this dot is repeated zero or one time matched. If I give my space, it will match zero or one only, okay? If I give one more space, it will not match. Two is not allowed. Only zero or one is allowed. You see, not matched, okay? Like that. Then let's go with this regular expression. The more you practice the regular expression, more better you will become, guys. Okay. It should start with my yes, it is matching. And in between, the dot should be repeated in, inside the curly braces. You mentioned two times. That means the dot should be two times. Okay. If I give five means five dots. If you give two means two dots. Okay. So here, if I give my Arun, there is a problem. Starting with my, ending with Arun, that's okay. But in between, there should be two dots, two letters or two spaces or two, anything should be there. Okay, it's mandatory. Okay, two times it should be there, but here not matched is coming. If I give space here, no, it's compulsory. Two times compulsory, two things should be there. If I give run as my, oh, this is only one time, so not matched. If I give one more space, now it will match. Two, okay, two times it's, if I give my 99 Arun, it will match. If I give my 399 Arun, it will not match because this dot is only repeated two times, okay, in the regular expression. So it will say not matched. Okay, like that case. Okay, so this one type symbol is coming now. Either low uh, Java or Java. Here we can either give Java. It will match because it should be either Java or Java. Okay, so if I give Java, the first letter is lowercase. It will match. If I give capital Java, yes, the left side of this pipe symbol is Java or Java. Okay, so it will match. But if I give any other thing other than this Java Java, it will not match. Okay. If I give Python or something, it will not match. Okay. Either it should be Java, the left side one, or if you have a group of regular expressions, you have to divide this with the five symbol. Okay. That's what I mean to say. Either left side regular expression or right side regular expression. Not matched. Then we have this one. So this uh, this means a single character only, single thing only. Either it can be in the range of A to D or M to B. Okay. If I give A, it will match. A is in the range of A to D, right? A, B, C, D will match. Okay. Only one character only. A, B, C, D will match. So if I give C here, it will match. Which C is in the range of A to D. It will match. Then if I give D, it will match. 
If I give yum, it will match. If I give o, it will match. If I give p, it will match. Either this range or this range should match. Okay, yum and op, anything will match. Either a, b, c, d or yum and op. If you give any other thing other than, you see t is not there in a, b, c, d. T is not there, there in yum and op. Okay, t is outside both the ranges, so it will say not matched like that. Then this one, and 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 means both the conditions should be satisfied. It should be one of the letter from D, E, F, and it should be in the range of A to Z. Okay, like that. Okay, both the conditions should be matched. Okay, both should be match. Both should match. That means if I give uh, again, if I give uh, if A to Z means T should match, right? But it will not match because this part is matching, but T is not part of D, E, F, so it will not match. You see, not matched. I have to give, for example, if I give E, E is part of A to Z, and D, E, F also it's part of, E is also one of the letter of the D, E, F, so it will match. It will say match like that, okay? Both the conditions should match. Here, A to Z and not B, C. It should be A to Z, but not B, C means, apart from B, C, you can give anything. Not of B, C means it should not be B, C, okay? Single letter only, except B, C, any letter from A to Z you can give, okay? So I'll just uh, go a bit fast. It, it can be, it should be A to Z, but it should not be in the range of M to B. M and OP, you should not give. Apart from M and OP, you can give any letter, okay? B question mark, it means this B can be repeated zero or one times. You can write it, you can write BAT, zero or one times only, okay? This B can be repeated zero or one times, okay? Either bad or it will match. B plus means one or many number of times. B A T B B A T B B B A T will match. Okay. B hashtag means this before letter should be zero or any number of times. That it means it will match. B A T will match. B B A T will match. B B B A T will match. B B B B B A T will match. Or kind of so on. Okay. These are already completed, guys. So I'm just going first. B of two means two is compulsory. Okay. If you say A T or B A T, it will not work. B B A T only will match. Two times B should be there in the beginning. If you say B, this this one I'll explain. If you say B in the curly braces, if, you, if I say two comma, anything means minimum two to any maximum. Minimum two should be there and maximum can be anything. So that means B, A, T, this will give not matched because here minimum two is there, here only one I am giving, so it will say not matched. If I give B, B, A, T, two times B is there, A, T is there, so it will match. Minimum two, two Bs should be there. It will match. If I give three Bs, it will match. Three Bs or four Bs or five Bs, everything will match, okay? Minimum two Bs should be there. Here B two comma four, it means minimum two times two, maximum four, four times of B should be there. Bs can be two times, three times, four times, kind of, okay? So if I give B80, it will say not matched, okay? If I say 80 also, it will not match. This B should be minimum two times or four times repeated. So if I give B here, one time, so minimum is two, maximum is four times. B80 will uh, match, will not match. If I say BB, two times it is matching. Minimum minimum range is minimum times is matching, so it will say match. If I give three times, it will match because it is in the range of two to four only, it will match. And if I give BBB80, four times B, yes, four times is also fine, it will match. But if I give five times, it will say not matched. Okay, up to four, four times only, it can be repeated. Minimum two times to four, maximum four times, it will say not matched. So this is all about the regular expressions, guys. Okay, this much of a regular, a regular expression knowledge in Java is more than enough for the next session. Okay, so you have to understand that in Cucumber, uh, if you see here, guys, if you go to this uh, uh, here, for every feature file we created the step definition class, if you go to one of the step definition class, like this login or something, you can see some regular expressions are there. You see dot plus is there. You are, you'll not be able to understand this dot plus without understanding this regular expression, okay? You see, starts with, ends with, okay? This is nothing but a regular expression, guys. This part is a pattern or regular expression or regex. Whatever you are providing before the method, okay? This portion is nothing but in the double quotes, whatever the thing you are providing is nothing but a pattern or regular expression or regex okay we should match with the feature file step okay this is a string test that this particular regular expression should match with for example uh, if you go to this uh, login user enters valid email address email is there okay to match with that okay user enters valid you see starts with user yes it is starting with user this text is starting with user and ending with what uh, ending with something that's okay enters valid email address is there is it matching? Enters valid email address is matching. And the last part is, it can be anything. It can be anything. So here, anything is treated as dot plus. 
why the circular brackets i'll tell you later okay circular brackets i'll tell you later guys okay that's a different story dot plus you have to consider okay dot plus means what it can be any character any symbol any number which is repeated one and more number of times one or more number of times if you have the knowledge okay dollar means ending with okay you see it's ending with this uh this part only so dollar is coming okay dot plus dollar is coming that's the reason okay now you will be able to understand how we are writing the regular expressions in the step definition before the methods before every method okay in the step definition class you are writing this regular expression beside this at the rate given or at the rate when then and kind of cucumber annotations okay so how to write these regular expressions and all to understand that i have explained about these regular expressions as a prerequisite topic in the next session uh, i will demonstrate uh, some examples of uh, using this regular expression knowledge to write the matching uh, patterns or regular expression to match the feature file statements in the feature files okay so guys that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 20 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i am going to practically show you how to use regular expressions in cucumber projects so let's get started in the previous session i covered how to use regular expressions in java okay this is a prerequisite knowledge required for the current session okay so if you have not gone through the previous session i recommend you guys to watch the previous session so that you can understand how i am going to use regular expressions in cucumber projects okay so for this session the previous session is required guys okay where i covered all the regular expressions in java the same regular expressions in java we are going to use in cucumber project fine so with the knowledge of the previous session i am switching to this project okay where i have already created the login dot feature file and here we have the scenarios all these uh, steps are already implemented guys okay the login dot uh, java file the methods are already implemented i'll clear all these methods okay i'll just clear all these methods so that i can type them manually now Control shift o okay now login class is there it has to implement the methods for each and every step in the each and every step in the login dot feature file okay so first step is here guys okay now click on save all the moment i click on save all nothing is happening even though i removed this okay there may be sometimes it will be happening guys okay there is no connection but still it is happening uh, what you have to do is right click on the project in that cases select maven and say update project and say okay You'll get the appropriate result now. So let's wait. You see, now they are getting highlighted. These steps are not implemented. I removed the implemented already implemented steps from this login dot Java for this login dot feature file. Okay. Now let's implement one by one step. So this is a, this is a string text, guys, and for that we have to write a pattern to match this step. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll copy this step. Okay, given user navigates to login page to implement that i'll go to the login.java here i'll create a method public void i'll create a method like this i'll fill this spaces with underscore symbol okay i'll copy this underscore symbol and paste it here everywhere till the end of the method name and uh, i'll provide circular brackets and write like this now still the error will not be gone still it is not high still it is highlighted means this step is not implemented okay so what i have to do here is i'll copy this I'll copy this and then here we have the given annotate given uh Gherkin keyword in the feature file for that we have to write here at the rate given annotation from cucumber okay over the mouse and at the rate given and import it from cucumber java thing okay once it is implemented it uh, requires an attribute guys so provide the circular brackets then in that provide double quotes in the double quotes you have to copy this statement user navigates to login page for that i have to pr provide the regular expression okay I have to provide here the regular expression for matching with this statement. Okay. So how to provide the regular expression? This is the text. And here I'll mention it is starting with user and ending with page. This is one thing. Okay. So if you have seen my regular expression session in the previous session of this series, you will know what is starting with and ending with. Okay. This is, a, this is what we have to do. Now you see, now save all. And you see the step is now recognized. Okay. It's now detecting this particular thing with the help of this regular expression. The matching is happening with this step. Now here I'll write some code, in, uh, some dummy code I'll write uh, with the print statement. User has navigated to, user got navigated to, user got navigated to login page. Here as part of the regular expression, we are using 
cap symbol and dollar symbol. These are optional guys. This is not compulsory. So without them also, it will match. Okay. But if you write here, it is a better approach. Okay. So here starting and ending symbols. Okay. As part of the regular expression. Done. Now let's go to the next step. And uh, user enters valid email address email. Okay. I have to write the code for this. Okay. So I'll copy this. I'll copy this till email. Copy this. And here I'll write down a method. I'll say public void. I'll paste the name of the name of the statement. And here I'll fill this gaps with user enters valid underscore email address. Here I'll remove this uh, last part. It's not required. I'll say under uh, circular brackets and starting and ending braces of this method. And here on the top of this method, what is a, a Gherkin keyword? We have when keyword. Okay. So I at the rate when I will say when at annotation from Cucumber Java I'll use. I'll import this from Cucumber.java. And here I provide circular brackets and provide double quotes here inside the when. And here I'll go to the login.feature file and I'll copy this statement as it is and paste it here. Okay. So again, it, it is starting with user and ending with this email thing. Okay. So now if you go to the login dot feature. Click on save all. You see, still it is not matched. You see, highlighation is still there. The reason here is with the email, guys. This cannot be represented like this. Okay. So what I will do with the email is to receive some data. Okay. We are going from this email. We are going to receive some data. That is maybe string data or numerical data or whatever maybe. So that data I will represent in this form. I'll say I'll provide square brackets. Okay. It can be A to Z, capital A to capital Z. It can be some numbers from zero to nine. Okay. This is a regular expression I'm writing guys. Okay. To for the pattern matching purpose. It can be anything. Uh, and uh, it can have symbols also, right? It can have some symbols. Okay. Uh, how can we write symbols? That's the thing. That's the matter. So here I'll write down this for now and uh, provide hash fix symbol. Okay. This is any number of times. It can be repeated zero or any number of times. Okay, I'll say zero or any number of times. Let's go to the login dot feature and see whether it is getting accepted or not. Still, it's not working out. Okay, here less than greater than symbols are there. Okay, maybe it's not working out. So what if I do something like this? This part is not working out. I'll say dot plus and click on save one. Let's see what's happening. Still, it is not working. I'll provide the circular brackets surrounding this and click on save all user enters valid email address email okay it's not working out okay dot plus and uh, i think this should work but this is also not working dot plus is also not working mm, up to valid email address is fine after the space is there and ends with okay maybe ends with is uh, causing the problem click on save all yeah, it's accepting. Okay, it's accepting. Maybe the space. I'll go to the previous one. Uh, I'll say asterisk symbol here and say A to Z, capital A to Z, and uh, zero to nine. Okay, this letter can be anything. It can be an uh, uh, lowercase letter, capital letter, or zero to nine, and it can be repeated zero to any number of times. Okay, now it's not accepted. It's not accepted. Okay, the email part is not getting. This part is not getting accepted with this approach. Maybe symbols are there. Okay. Mm, maybe symbols are there because of which it is not accepting. Uh, I can write uh, cap. Okay. Cap other than this one. Okay. Let's see what will happen. Is it accepting or not? It's not accepting, guys. It's not accepting. You see, that's the reason we cannot write this part. So we will write something like this. Okay. Dot plus. Say one. Is it accepting? Yes, it is accepting the dot plus. Okay. Dot plus is getting, getting accepted. What about dot star? Let's see dot star. Say one. Yeah, this is all dot star is also accepted, guys. Dot plus is also accepted. Okay. It's better to use dot plus, guys. At least one character will be there. So dot plus is one and more. If you if you have gone through my previous session, you will understand what is dot plus. Okay. Here for this email part, okay, where this uh, e uh, this email address and all those things are coming, right? Okay. This email address can be having anything. Okay. It can have anything. It can have a alphabet, it can have a number, it can have a symbol, it can have a upper uppercase dots, and anything it can have. So I have to represent that uh, regular expression in the form of dot plus and it's matching the expression. Okay. 
This for what we have to learn the regular expressions in the previous session. I covered it this. Now, this one I have to receive as a parameter here. Okay, as a string email. But there's a problem. The problem is, you see, from where we will receive the email, you see it's getting highlighted. That means it's not going to work. To make this particular thing pass as a value to this uh, parameter of this method, I have to surround this with circular brackets. This is why we need circular brackets. You see, now dilation is gone. So it will work fine. So this is how we have to learn the regular expressions, guys. Okay. So user enters valid email address dot plus and which is surrounded by circular brackets means it will be passed to this parameter. Now here I'll write down system dot. If you know the regular expressions, you can construct your own methods. You don't have to depend on tools like tidy get and all to generate this uh, uh, step definition methods and all. Okay. Now, since we know this uh, regular expressions concept, we are able to build our own. The, like this kind of regular expressions, we can use starts with ends with and everything we are able to write by our own. Okay, user has entered valid email address. What is the email address the user has entered? Plus email, this is the email, okay? So plus email, okay, done. This step is also done guys, click on save all and go to the next one. User enters valid password is a step and same approach we have to give that here also, okay? So here I'll write down public void, public void, paste this uh, enters valid uh, password thing fill the gaps with the underscore symbol and here this part is not required okay so for this and here write at the rate i think that is at the rate and i guess and okay at the rate and annotation go to that and write at the rate and annotation provide circular brackets for the mouse import this from cucumber java here write on double quotes starts with ends with in between starts with and ends with uh, try to copy paste this uh, text okay enters valid password okay password thing you just copy paste here in between and here in in place of the password you write down dot plus okay and surround uh, not dot plus if you have to receive this as a parameter here for right string password you see you'll get a problem here okay to overcome that you have to surround with circular brackets and only this this uh, password data will be passed to this parameter because of circular brackets only it is recognizing as a parameter okay so system dot out dot user user has entered valid password colon i'll say plus password plus this password done now click on save all and go here and see enters valid password now clicks on login button copy this public void Clicks on login button. It doesn't mean need much regular expression. Just starts with an ends with is enough for this. Okay. Just provide this underscore and uh, provide the circular brackets. And here, which annotation we have to give? Let's see. Here, and is there. So at the rate and annotation we have to give from Cucumber. At the rate and it's already provide the circular brackets in that provide the double quotes. Say starts with the regular expression, ends with the regular expression. In between that, you copy paste this statement. Okay clicks on login button. Okay. The regular expression is starts with and ends with, uh, starts with clicks and in between this, this, this thing is there and button ends with. Okay. So now, uh, write down the print statement system dot order print DLN, the sample print statement I'm writing, uh, user has clicked on login button. Okay. Login button done. This part is also done. Now go to the login dot feature and see, click on save all. You see this step got high, uh, remove highlighted violation got removed and it got connected to the cucumber step definition class okay method now user got uh, user should log in successfully okay user should log in successfully is the last one copy this and write down here public wide public wide paste the method name uh, provide underscore 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 Okay, build this method circular brackets and here at the rate then you have to write provide circular brackets import this at the rate then from cucumber java and here starts with and say ends with and in between that you copy paste this uh, statement user should log in successfully normal text is there so you can paste it as it is done now write down system dot out dot user got logged in successfully okay user got logged in successfully okay we'll try different regular expressions in the next uh, statement for now let's see what will happen you see the first scenario outline and everything got 
Alation got removed, it is working fine. Okay. Now this one, user enters in invalid email address, this part I'll copy paste and I'll create a step definition method for that. Okay. Public void user enters underscore symbols you have to give here. Okay. We'll create the uh, email address. Okay. Invalid email address here. I'll provide a circular bracket here. Okay. Instead of the data. And here I'll write at the rate when. Okay. I think it's at the rate when only, when keyword only. So when getting keyword for that, you have to write at the rate when. And here double quotes you have to provide and starts with, uh, ends with dollar symbol. And in between that, you have to write this statement that is user enters this part. You just copy paste here. And, uh, Okay, user enters invalid email address. Automatically, you see for double quotes, you are getting uh, this part, okay? Slash, you keep that part. And here, this can be anything, guys, okay? This is nothing but string text, right? This most probably, this is a string text or having some numbers and symbols. Let's see what will happen here. I'll try different things. I'll say A to Z, capital A to Z, capital Z, zero to nine. Okay, hashtag symbol I'll provide. I'll see what will happen, okay? Double quotes are... Double quotes need to be represented with a backward slash and double quote. Okay. Here you see double quote should be represented backward slash double quote. Okay. Okay. Uh, since because already double quotes are there. So if in between double quotes are there means um, backward slash double quotes we have to provide. In between that, whatever the email text is there, is, is it recognized or not? Let's see. Say all. Well, it's not recognized. You see, this is not getting recognized. Okay. Maybe it has some symbols and all. It's not getting recognized. The pattern is not still matching. I'll say cap. Uh, not of some underscore I'll give. Let's see uh, whether it will take or not. Save all. It's not matching still, guys. Okay. It's not matching still. Uh, so, so this is hashtag is not working out. What if I say plus save all? Go here. No, it's still not matching. So, the same thing that will work for this one is also the same thing, guys. Okay. Here I should not give all this stuff. Here I have to say dot plus. Okay, dot plus guys, that's it. And go to the login dot feature and click on save all. Now it's got identified. Okay, dot plus is only dot plus means it's a high level thing, guys. Okay, it can accept anything. Okay, it can accept in anything. It can be a symbol, it can be a number. Okay, that's why it's working fine. And if I have to receive this as a parameter here, if I say string uh, invalid email, if I say, okay, string invalid email, I say uh, here it should be surrounded with circular brackets. Okay, otherwise. It cannot be received as a parameter, okay? Circular brackets you have to provide, then it can be received as a parameter. Now, system.out.println, okay? User has entered invalid email address. That is nothing but this invalid email, okay? Like this regular expression will help us while creating the steps, guys, okay? So what's the problem here? Why the problem is coming again? Save all. Okay, I just clicked on this. That's why it's coming. I click on some other thing. I'll close and open login dot feature. Yeah, now it's fine. Now let's go with the next one. That is a uh, enters invalid password. Okay. Let's see what will happen here. Public void user enters invalid password. At the rate in circular brackets. Double quotes, cap, dollar. In between that, I have to copy paste this one. Enters invalid password. As it is, you just copy paste. Control Z. Okay. Cap. At the end, dollar symbol should come. And uh, you see, uh, double quotes are represented with backward double slash when I copy paste it automatically. And this is a number which is there in between that. So for number, if I write something like this, okay, for let's see what will happen. Zero to nine. Hashtag, if I mention, let's see what will happen. I don't know whether it will accept or not. Yeah, it accepted, guys. You see, this uh, number part it is accepting because zero to nine I gave, and okay, this kind of regular expressions we can write, but it's better to write the dot plus only. Okay, this is more better. Okay, even though that's that regular expression is able to match it, but still better to write this uh, dot plus only, and uh, dot plus also will match. Okay, dot plus also will match. Say one, well, you see, dot plus is also matching. Uh, but the problem here is uh, here we have to receive this uh, password invalid password as a parameter okay string invalid password for that to happen we have to surround this with circular brackets okay then it will pass this value as a parameter okay system dot order print ln system dot order print ln here user 
has entered invalid password colon and write this invalid password here plus this one you copy paste and paste it here that's it done now this part is also done you can save all and go back here and only one step is there user should get a proper warning message most of the almost all steps are completed guys so you see they are repeated so user got a proper warning message we are going to write so the method is going to be very simple public wide public wide just paste it here underscore 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 and create a method here so if you are deciding to write this uh, step definition methods manually then this is the way guys okay then then circular brackets double code starts with ends with in between that you have to copy paste this statement you should, should get a proper warning message there are no nothing we have to parameterize or something parameterization is not required you directly the message it will match up okay so here i'll write system dot order and user has got a proper here double quotes i have to put proper warning message but displayed to the user like this i'll write click on save one and you see so you see almost all steps got uh, uh, implemented only one step is highlighted here this one we have to implement copy this this is also very simple guys okay it's also very simple uh public void when this is a when i guess when annotation we have to provide here when user don't enter any credentials is a activity okay underscore provide a circular brackets here at the rate when i'll write on the top at the rate when it okay, starts with ends with in between that i'll just copy paste this statement okay and uh, paste it here in between that's it and here i'll write a print statement uh, saying user has not entered any credentials okay like some sample print statement have written click on save all you see all the steps we have implemented so you see we have used a lot of regular expressions guys here we have used this regular expression if you have not gone through my previous session of the regular expressions okay where i covered all the different types of regular expressions in java the same regular expressions we are using here for matching this uh, uh match pattern with the the feature file steps okay here on the top of this method we are writing some regular expressions here this regular expression should connect this particular method to the appropriate step in the step uh, main feature file okay in scenarios of the feature file for that to happen we should have the knowledge of the regular expression java regular expressions so in the previous session, I covered all the Java regular expressions and we have to know how to write all these regular expressions wherever it is required, okay? So that's all guys, that's all for this uh, session and we'll run this login.feature file to see um, whether all these uh, steps are running or not, all these implemented methods are in getting invoked and running or not. So only one feature file I'm running and let's see whether what's happening. Okay, here you see, you see all the things got run. So all the thing, all the seven scenarios got passed and 34 steps got passed, you see, that means, and they have properly invoked, you are getting the print statements printing here, you see, double greater than symbol is for the print statements I provided. So everything is working fine, guys, everything is working fine till here, okay? So that means uh, we have written the regular expressions and matched the regular uh, step definition methods with the steps of the scenarios of the feature file in a proper manner, okay? If you don't know the regular expressions, you cannot do this activity, guys, okay? So go through the previous session and come back here. So you'll understand this session very well. Okay. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 21 of Kukumbar BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically show you how to use Kukumbar expressions in projects. So let's get started. So in the previous session, I showed you how to use regular expressions in Cucumber projects. Now I'm going to show you how to use Cucumber expressions in place of the regular expressions in Cucumber projects. So for that guys, we have this help documentation available for us to learn this Cucumber expressions, which is very simple. Okay, I'll open this, okay, this link. 
It is on the GitHub page. If you search for GitHub Cucumber Expressions, you will get this page on Google. Okay, after getting to this Cucumber Expressions of GitHub, you can scroll down here. You have a lot of documentation here, guys. Okay, we'll be using this documentation practically. I'll switch to this project. In this project, I, I have opened this register.feature file for which already have implemented each and every step of this scenarios of this feature file. So the implementation of these steps of the scenarios of this feature file are in this register.java file, step definition file. I'll go to this register.java. I'll remove all these implementations that I have done so far. Okay. I'll just clear it out. Now, after clear it, clearing it out, I'll say control shift O, the import statements will be gone. Now, come back to register.feature file and click on. You see, it's not, uh, okay, the implementations are removed, but it's not giving the current status. So, right click on the project and say maven and say update project. Sometimes it will not reflect, you have to update the project, guys, okay, often. After the updation is done, it will try to link this uh, step, uh, steps with the step definition methods, but uh, since they are not there, they will get highlighted like this, okay? So first, let's start with this first step, okay? Which doesn't uh, require much cucumber expression, but we'll write that. I have copied this, I copied this statement, given statement, and come to here, I'll create a method here, public void, just provide that method name and fill the gaps with the underscore symbol like this. Fill the gaps with the underscore symbol and put circular brackets at the end to convert this into a method and starting of the uh, method and ending of the method you write and provide a system.out.println statement. Okay. And inside that you just write double greater than symbol just for representation. Uh, user got navigated to user got navigated to register account page, okay? For sample, I'm writing this print statement, okay? But in real time, we have to write Selenium automation code or something here. In place of the given Gherkin keyword, we have to write given annotation from Cucumber. Over the mouse and at the rate given and import it from Cucumber library. And here provide the circular brackets and in the double quotes. And now copy paste this line. User navigates to register account page as it is. I'm not using any regular expressions like starts with or ends with. I directly copy pasted this text. This is a cucumber. Okay. By default, cucumber will be like this if you are not using any regular expression. Okay. Fine. Done. You see, once this step is completed, go back to the register.feature file and uh, click on save all. You, this dilation will go off. You see, dilation is gone off. That means the step is implemented properly now. Let's go with the next step. This is the next step, guys. This also will take the same. We have to do the same thing. Public wide. Uh, paste this. Okay. Here we are entering. Arun, okay. We are passing Arun, guys. Okay. So here I'll write user enters first name. I'll remove this Arun from here. I'll attach this underscore in place of that into the first name, first name field. Okay. I'll not be using the regular expressions. Instead, I'll be using wherever possible, I'll be using the cucumber expressions. Okay. Here it is at the rate when, guys. Okay. Because when Gherkin keyword is there in the feature file. So I have to use at the rate when annotation from Cucumber and here provide circular brackets, provide double quotes. Again, copy paste this statement. User enters first name. So to represent this, okay, here starts with ends with will not be there to represent this Arun. Okay. To represent this Arun, I'll be writing simply curly braces and string. This is what is a Cucumber expression. Okay. This is what is a Cucumber expression guys. If you see here in the documentation also, uh, for matches anything okay string we can use we can use string here guys okay string it will accept any string it, if it is a single word also we can accept okay if it is a single word uh this is only one word right there's only one word there are not multiple words so we can either use string here come back here and click on save all you see it's the highlighting is gone that means implementation is done uh, in place of the string you can also use a word word kind of thing a single word right any of this string is a single word you can either use word also and click on save one. If it is still not highlighted, that means the implement is working fine. Or you can use empty curly braces, click on save and come back here. You see still it is not okay. Highlighted. That means this implementation is working fine. Okay. These are all cucumber expression case. Either you can write string here, better to write string or word or empty curly braces. Anything is fine. You can understand this. Okay. Either you can write string. It will take single word is there. If multiple words are there in the string, better to use this one. If single word is there, either you can use this one or this one. I prefer to use this one only because it is more understandable. And if you if you want to receive anything, it can be a string, it can be an integer, it can be any other thing, then 
simply use empty curly braces. It can take anything. It may not be string. It may not be end. It can take anything, guys. Okay. So it's a universal thing. Okay. Instead of using respective double byte short int long float string like that, you can use this one, which, which can intake anything. Okay. That's what is the purpose. It's very simple, guys. Pokemon expressions are very simple. For now, I'll use strings since I am expecting string. Stem dot out dot print here. I have to write string first name. I'm receiving the first name, right? So first name is not coming here. So let's do, let's see what will happen here. Uh, double quotes, user has entered uh, first name colon, I'll say first name, okay? Plus, you see it's working fine, okay? This will be passed to this parameter, guys, okay? This first name will be passed to this parameter, okay? Done. Now let's see whether, at the end we'll see whether it is working fine or not, okay? For now, you see, we have implemented this step using the Pokumbar expression. Now let's go with the next expression. So motori is there, okay? We are passing motori there. Public void, paste it, and uh, fill the gaps with underscore. This part is a data. I'll take this data out with underscore, 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 underscore. Either you can use regular expressions or you can use cucumber expressions, okay? So here, and I guess. Okay, it will be mostly and, and yes, correct. And I'll give the circular brackets, double quotes, and I'll simply import this at the rate and from Cucumber library. And then I'll paste this step, the third step. I'll paste it here into this re step. Okay, done. Here in place of this uh, double quotes motory, I'll simply write string. Okay, that is more than enough. And I can receive this as a parameter here string, last name. Last name. I here, here I'll write on system dot dot uh, I'll write user has entered last name plus last name. User has entered the last name. Last name done. Okay, that is also done. Next, go into the next part. Click on save all. You see, this is relation got removed. That means it is implemented. Now let's go with this one. Email address. Public void. Paste it, underscore, underscore, remove this with underscore, 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 underscore. Convert into a method and say at the rate and here, at the rate and provide double quotes, provide double quotes. Okay. And you do what? You just copy paste this one. This part you copy paste. Come back here and paste it here, here in place of this, again, give string. Let's see what will happen. String, I'll say string, email address, email address, and I'll write down system.order.ptln. User has entered email address plus email address. Okay, plus email address. That's it. Done. It's taken in the email address is taken in the form of a string. Okay, done. Now come back here and see, click on save all and see whether it violation is gone. So it's working fine. For telephone number, guys, I'll just give in the form of a number, guys, and not give double quotes here. I'm directly passing the number here like this. Let's see what will happen. So I'll copy this. Without double quotes, I'm passing this number. So I'm just trying something. That's the reason I have removed the double quotes. Uh, enters underscore underscore. Remove this value and uh, give this underscore. In method names, you should not have the value, guys. Okay. Just make sure that you don't have any value. And here also in the space gap, you give underscore circular bracket, starting and ending of the method, and write at the rate and circular bracket. And uh, you just come here and enter, copy this part and paste into the this part. And uh, here, in place of the number, you give curly braces and mention int, guys. Okay, it is an integer, right? You just men mention int. Let's see whether it will work or not. String, telephone, number. Okay. System dot order twenty ln. Here I'll write down user has entered telephone number, telephone number plus this telephone number. Okay, plus this telephone number you have to write. Done. Now click go to the restart.feature and click on save all. Let's see whether it's using. Highlation is gone. That is working fine. For all the other numbers, I'll give, remove double quotes, guys. Okay. 
I'll, I'll remove double quotes for all the numbers in this uh, steps. Okay. And uh, okay. Here also I'll remove the double quotes so that it will be identified. Remove the double quotes. Remove the double quotes. Click on save all. So here password and all these things are not done. So here also I'll remove the double quotes. Most of the steps are already implemented as, as part of the first scenario guys. Remaining steps we'll implement based on our situations and all. So click on save all and uh, now let's take uh, this step enters password. Okay. So public void, public void, circular bracket, starting and ending, enters password, remove this underscore underscore, 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 either H, and I'll write, and here circular brackets, double quote, come back here, copy this part, and paste it here, uh, string, password, sorry, this is not string, eh? this is int actually, I have to write in here, Okay, integer telephone here also in uh, in the password so here in place of this i'll provide inch if uh, you see there are other possibilities also guys apart from int uh, string we have also float float and double are also there if you have decimal number you can give uh, 5.55 you can give double guys okay like that you can give double also okay these are the basic expressions guys that we have to use in uh, okay cucumber expressions that we can use nothing much Okay, if you want to receive anything, use this empty curly braces. If you want to receive only integer values, uh, write like this. Okay, I'll give some examples also here. There are some examples, guys. Okay, so you can see an example here. Uh, not this one. Maybe here only there are examples are there. Let me, you see, here are some examples are there. If, if your step definition, uh, if your uh, feature file step is like this, I have 42 cucumbers in my belly. This 42 can be represented as a cucumber expression like this in the step definition method on the top of the step definition method in the expression you can in place of 42 you can write integer okay if you have 42.5 then it cannot be integer right you have to write float you have to write float like this or double okay and if it is string you have to write string okay if it is single word you have to write word or if it is a single word or multiple words you can write string if you want to receive anything it can be integer floating point double point string word anything you can use this part okay it's so simple guys these are the few basic things that you have to understand nothing more than that but let's convert this okay here integer is password is in the integer format so i'm just uh, receiving the form of integer so here i'll write uh, double greater than user has uh, entered the password colon plus password i'll write plus password okay done this part is also done click on restart feature click on save all it will be highlighted, violation will be going off. Again, next step, we'll keep on implementing public wide, public wide, and paste this and uh, fill the underscores. This underscore thing will just generally take time as we there's no other way. Okay, so we have to write this underscores. So we should not always depend with uh, tools like tidy Gherkins and all tomorrow, they may not be there. It's better to, okay, better to stick to this, okay. Manual writing is always okay. After you know how to write it, or write the things manually, then you have to learn the tools and to save your time. Okay, that's how the tools need to be used. You should not be entirely depending on the tools like Tidy Gherkin or something that I have covered in the previous session for creating these regular expressions and all. Or even uh, you can get this uh, cucumber expressions in uh, when you generate this uh, when you run the feature file without the step definitions implemented in in the Eclipse output. Also, you will get this kind of methods, uh, which by basically will be using the cucumber expressions only. Okay, they will come with the cucumber expressions. Okay. Okay, here I'll write on user has entered the password. The pa uh, confirmed password. Confirmed the password colon plus here I'll say inch password I'll say plus password this is also done the next one I go here click on save all you see now selects privacy policy these are very simple guys okay it doesn't take much time they don't have any things to be passed so we can simply finish it out 
and here underscore just providing underscores is the only thing that we have to do. underscore 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 so this part is what this is also and guys so i'll write at the right and on the top of this at the right and and here i'll write down double quotes and paste this that's it you don't have to do much so system dot out dot print here then user selects user selects privacy policy field okay field that's it done this step is also done click on save all now click on continue button okay few more steps are there let's complete them uh, public void click on continue button fill the gaps with underscore to convert into a single word and the name of the method and uh, start the method and end the method and here write down at the rate and double quotes a sheet so here write down system dot order ktln user clicks on continue button okay user clicks on continue button okay user clicks on continue button then i'll write down the next one uh, uh account should get uh, uh, successfully created okay account should get successfully created then keyword is there that's fine here i will write public void give the underscore here give the underscores underscore 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 and here at the rate then over the mouse import this from cucumber circular brackets double quotes space it account should get created successfully system dot order print and con got created successfully got created got created is also fine okay so now here selects yes for newsletter option this is the method Yes. Public void selects yes for newsletter option. Yes for newsletter. So here I'll write and at the rate and double quotes selects yes for newsletter option. Some dot out print DLN. Okay. User selects yes for newsletter. This is also done. Come back here, click on save all, gone. And user don't enter detail, details into any fields. So only three steps are remaining as we'll implement them, okay? Then we'll be done, okay? With the Umber expression implementation in the step definition methods to match the steps in the feature scenarios of the feature files. This is how we have to work with the Kukumba expressions, guys, okay? So very uh, less number of Kukumba expressions are there in the curly braces, in curly braces, double curly braces, string, curly braces, uh, Okay. When here it is well, curly braces, empty curly braces, all these things. Okay. Curly braces string. When, okay. So underscore I'll give first. Don't enter details into any fields. Any fields. Any fields. Okay. So at the rate when is there and then user don't enter any details in the any fields. Okay. Copy this system dot dot print DLN. Here even starts with ends with also I'm not providing because these are cucumber expressions. Cucumber expressions will not contain starts with and ends with symbols. Okay. Regular expressions will contain that. Okay. So that you have to understand. User don't enter details into any fields. Whatever you are convenient, either regular expressions or uh, cucumber expressions, you can use up to your needs guys okay but these steps should match with the the steps should match with the, the step definition methods okay that's the only thing that you have to take care of okay yeah. public wide uh warning uh, then okay then it's almost then warning message means then paste it here and uh here underscores you have to fill up the errors will be gone underscore 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 here i'll write down system dot out dot print double grade ram warning message got displayed 
got displayed for the mandatory field. Okay, warning messages got displayed for the mandatory fields. Done. Save all. This is also done. This is the last one that we have to implement, which is a simple one. Public wide. Public wide, provide that. Circular brackets. So underscores, you have to fill up again. Underscore. 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 Let me fill up all the underscores here. Okay, done. At the rate, then test. That's it. System dot out print here. I'll write down just to segregate the greater than simple. Okay, print statements. I'm writing one message informing the user about duplicate email got displayed. That's it. Done, guys. Okay, click on the register dot feature. Save all. You see, we have implemented all the steps using the Cucumber expressions in this session, right? Now let's see whether it is running or not. Right click run as Cucumber feature. The steps are running, we are good. You see, let's see whether the steps are running. These are the print statements that got printed. User got navigated to the register account page. User has entered the first name Arun. You see it's coming. User has entered the last name Motori. User has entered the email address. Email address is also coming. User has entered the telephone int into Cucumber expression we have used in this case. User has entered the password into Cucumber expression. User has entered the confirm password into int Cucumber expression we have used. Select the privacy policy field, continue button, account got created. All the stuff is coming guys without any problem. Everything has come. You see, we are able to uh, create the Cucumber expressions. Okay. And then match the steps in the scenarios of the feature file with the step definition method expressions. Okay. So either we can use regular expressions or we can use Cucumber expressions to match the step definition methods with the steps of the scenarios of the feature file. So there's one more thing that is, can we use both? Can we use both regular expressions and cucumber expressions? That is a question, right? That I'll be covering in the next session. Okay. So in the pre in the previous session, I demonstrated how to use the regular expressions in cucumber. Okay. To match the step definition methods with the steps in the scenarios of the feature file, we have used regular expressions as part of the previous session. In this session, we have used cucumber expressions to match the step definition methods with the steps of the feature files, scenarios of the feature file. Okay. But I am asking, but my question here is, can we use both? Regular expressions and Cucumber expressions together can be used or not? That question, okay, for that question, the answer will be revealed in the next session, okay? Can we use both or not together? I will reveal that in the next session, okay? So that's all for this session, guys. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 22 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to answer a question that is, can we use regular expressions and cucumber expressions in cucumber projects together? Let me answer. So in the previous sessions, I have covered, that is in one of the previous sessions, I covered how to use regular expressions in cucumber project. Similarly, in another previous session, I covered how to use cucumber expressions in cucumber projects. Okay, regular expressions in cucumber projects I covered, cucumber expressions in cucumber project I covered. But now the question arises where can we use this both regular expressions and cucumber expressions together or not? The answer for this question is we cannot use this regular expressions and cucumber expressions for the same step. You cannot use them together, guys. Okay. For a single step, you cannot combine a regular expression and cucumber expression. I'll show you practically now. So I'll switch to this Eclipse IDE where we have this resta.feature file. Okay, so if I go to this uh, step definition class of this register.feature file, you see this each and every step is now connected with the register.java, right? It's now connected with the register.java. So as you can see here, guys, for example, I'll drag this here so that you can see the steps. I'll update the project also to see whether whatever we are seeing is uh, on the right page or not. Simply update the project once. So just to confirm whether these steps are really connected with the step definition methods. It will be clear once the progress is completed, it will be clear. Okay, once the building is done here on updating the project. After the updating of project is done, you see still the steps are connected to the step definition methods. You see none of the steps are highlighted in yellow color. Okay, that means the steps are now connected to the step definition methods. Now let's go with one of the step here. So let's go with one of the step. 
that is a uh, user enters first name arun okay so this is a step guys this is a step i'll just minimize this part so that you can see most of the content user enters first name arun okay so user enters first name in place of arun we have used a cucumber expression right in place of arun we have used a cucumber expression while the cucumber expression is already used in this particular step okay for this particular step already the cucumber expression is used as, as part of the step definition method on the top of this in the method matching statement the expression statement we have used so along with this cucumber expression if you are also using regular expression let's say starts with okay starts with is a symbol from regular expression it doesn't belong to the cucumber expression okay whereas this uh, curly braces string belong to the cucumber expression whereas starts belongs to the starts with belongs to the regular expression and here i'll write ends with so here in the same step I'm using cucumber expression at the same time. I'm using the regular expression, this cap symbol and the dollar symbol from regular expressions. So this particular step definition method is using both cucumber expression and regular expressions. Now click on save all and you see immediately there is a problem. Okay. There is a problem. You see this step is highlighted. That means it's not implemented. So why? And also you are getting an error, error here, guys. You cannot use these regular expressions when cucumber expressions are used in a particular step. That's the problem. Okay. You cannot use regular expressions when already the cucumber expressions are used in a step. Okay. That's the problem. So what I will do now is I'll remove this regular expressions. I'll put only the cucumber expression in this particular step definition method. Okay. So in this step definition method as part of expression. Okay. I'm only keep using the cucumber expression. I'm not using the starts with and ends with. Okay. I'm not using starts with and ends with. So cap symbol and dollar symbol are not there. Okay. So my next question is in a single step, we cannot use a combination of regular expressions and cucumber expression. That is already clear. You see, once I remove the regular expression and only the cucumber expression is there when I click on save all, you see the step is now the background color of the step is removed. That means the step is properly implemented in the step definition method. My next question is. So here, anyhow, we have used cucumber expression. So I cannot use regular expression in this step, right? What about the first step? For example, given your user navigates to register account page is a step, guys. Here, no cucumber expression is used. Okay, there is no cucumber expression used. Can I use the regular uh, the regular expressions? Yes, we can use. Okay, if there are no cucumber expressions used in a particular step, then you can use your you can feel free to use the regular expressions without any problem. Just just click on save all. You see, there is no problem here. But you cannot use in a single step, you cannot use a combination of regular expressions and cucumber expressions. But okay, but you can separately use regular expressions in a step, separately use cucumber expressions in a step. That's no problem. So, so the answer for this question, okay, the rules for using regular expressions and cucumber expressions are expressions are for a single step, okay, for uh, you which is implemented using a step definition method. On the top of the step definition method, you have to either use regular expressions for matching with the step of a particular scenario or you have to use the regular expressions okay for matching the step of the scenario of the feature file but you cannot use a combination of regular expressions and cucumber expressions in a single step implemented method okay for for its matching so guys hope you got the idea okay we can use for a separate step you can use the regular expression for a separate step you can use cucumber expression but not both for a single step okay that's what is the answer so that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 23 of Cucumber PDD training series. In this session, I'm going to show you how to mention pretty plugin in Cucumber options of runner class in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. So guys, here we have this Cucumber project in that as part of the previous sessions, we already created this runner class okay i just named it as my runner you can name it anything guys and also we are added a plugin already okay this is an existing plugin uh, in one of the previous sessions i covered about this plugin okay that is cucumber html report plugin so to generate the html report cucumber html report but now in this session i'm talking about this pretty plugin okay so what will happen if pretty plugin is not there i'll show you first okay before adding the pretty plugin to this cucumber options of this runner class if I run this runner class, it will run all these feature files. These feature files will run the step definition methods in these classes. Okay. Let's see what will happen. It has run. And you see, 
we just got the print statements printed okay from the step definition methods all the print statements got printed guys these are the print statements okay this is this many print statements got printed okay so if you go to this login.java here in each and every step definition method i provided print statement just to segregate this print statement i added this symbol double greater than so that you can understand from the output that these are all the print statements okay so the runner class has invoked this feature files feature files have invoked this uh, step definition classes step definition classes have invoked the steps and inside the steps we have provided the sample print statements they got invoked and the print statements got printed here that's it but you see the output is not colorful if you want to make this particular output in the eclipse id output console a better what you have to do is go to the runner class and in this cucumber options apart from this plugin you add one more plugin guys okay you can add one more plugin here just put a comma here and uh, double quotes and put, provide the plugin here the name of the plugin is pretty plugin okay just mention the pretty plugin inside this cucumber options of this runner class now run this you will see the difference in the eclipse out id output console okay so now the same thing guys we are running the runner class runner class will invoke this feature files feature files will invoke the step definition classes and its methods and you will see that okay the output is a bit different now you see you are getting the scenario names and the print statements for you see steps are also coming uh, the steps of the feature file scenarios okay the steps that are there in the feature file scenarios for example login dot feature what are the steps here user navigates to login page step is there okay that is coming here you see you given user navigates to login page and because of this step this particular method got invoked and print statement got printed okay for this step this print statement for this step this print statement and so on okay you see all the things came in a beautiful color that is green color okay if they are working fine they are coming in green color what if there is a failure okay if a particular step is failing okay one of the step is failing uh, some violations are coming that's okay you just uh, whenever you get such kind of things even after you have the step definitions just have to right click and say maven and say update project guys once the project is updated all this uh, uh, improper uh, violations will go you see now it's working fine so guys i will do one thing i'll go to one of the uh, feature file i'll open the search dot feature file in the last scenario i'll take and uh, one of the step like let's say user clicks on search button i'll try to fail this step guys okay i'll click on control and click using the mouse it will take you to, uh, take you to that particular method okay this is a method and uh, i'll i'll just fail this method intentionally in a is equal to 9 divided by 0 you'll get an arithmetic exception in java okay if you try to divide a number in by 0 in java you'll get an arithmetic exception because of which this particular step will fail and after this step there's another step that is then proper text informing the user okay this particular step will be skipped since then since this particular step is failing because of an ex exception the next following step will be skipped so now we have enough things to represent in the eclipse id console like the uh, what color it will be displayed okay if every step is passing you see all the steps are coming in green color what if a particular step is failing it will come in red color with the trace okay trace where tracing where exactly the the problem came and what is the reason behind the failure of the test which kind of exception came all those things will come here in red color and if any particular steps get skipped they will come in blue color okay let's see that okay i i am intentionally failing one of the step in the feature file now right click run as JUnit test, you will see the difference. Okay, not all steps will come in green color. You will see the most of the steps in feature file will come in green color. Okay, from the beginning, if you see, uh, this is a login related test. You see, everything is in green color. Steps are coming in green color, green color, green color. And you go to the last one, search feature file. The and last scenario in the last scenario in the search feature file. This is the one. You see, first two steps got passed, and third step, user clicks on search button got failed. You see, the red color message is coming and user clicks on search button is coming in red color and the stack trace is coming okay where exactly it got failed because of which exception arithmetic exception at which line everything is coming you see feature file 18th line okay it's failing and because of this step the next step got skipped you see the last one is coming in blue color this particular step got skipped guys this is coming in blue color because of this previous step got failed the next step didn't get executed and it's coming in blue color okay it's coming in blue color for skipping the skips test will come in blue color, whereas the fail test will come in red color. The pass test will come in the test which got run successfully will come in uh, green color. Okay, so guys, uh, I'll just remove this uh, changes. Okay, which are failing the test. Okay, I don't want that. And only when it is required, I just go there and you know fail the test and all. Otherwise, I'll remove it. Okay, so just to show you guys like how the uh, pass test, pass steps, fail test, and uh, Skip test will come in the output Eclipse ID con uh, Eclipse ID output console when you provide this pretty plugin in the 
runner class. Okay. I just wanted to show you. So that's all for this session, guys. Okay. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 24 of Kukumbar BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate one exception that you may face while working with Cucumber projects. That is duplication step definition exception. Okay, duplicate step definition exception. Okay, so when do you get this kind of exception? I am going to show you practically, guys. So let's switch to this uh, Eclipse IDE. And here already we have some three feature files which are already created. I am going to create the fourth feature file. This I'm not going to continue guys. This feature file I'm going to delete immediately after this session. Okay. This is this uh, this feature file is only for dummy purpose. Okay. So I'll select this uh, file and uh, name this file as uh, forgot password dot feature. Okay. Feature extension. This feature file I'm not going to continue guys. I'm going to delete after. Okay. This session. Okay. The purpose of I creating this feature file is only for demonstrating this duplication or duplicate step definition exception, okay, feature. So I'll write the feature as a forgot password, okay. User should be able to, for uh, forgot password functionality or something I'll write, okay. And here I'll write some scenario, I'll write, mm, user, uh, I mean, forgot, reset password, reset password, one forgot when uh, on forgetting it okay forgetting it or something okay reset password and forgetting it is some scenario I'm, some dummy scenario i'm writing given i open given user opens given user opens the application url okay if you see this particular step may be matching with the previous uh, feature file step you uh, given user opens the application is there here given user the open application url okay so here given user opens the application which step is matching here you see given step is matching okay with this uh, step in the search dot feature file just uh, be aware of that okay and remaining steps doesn't matter uh, okay i'm trying to produce that exception guys okay i'm trying to produce an exception by creating the same step which is there in the search dot feature file it's a separate feature file right this forgot password is separate feature file so uh, unknowingly, you may try to write some steps which may already for, for which you already have created in step definition. For example, here in the search dot feature file for this step, uh, step given user opens application in the uh, search dot uh, Java step definition method, you already created a method here, guys. You already created a method. Okay, application got opened. User opens the application. Okay, already it is created. This method is already created. User opens the application is already created. But unknowingly, what happened with was uh, when you are creating this another feature file, again, you got the same step, but you didn't remember that this particular step you already have implemented as part of another feature file in the step definition as a step definition method. But without remembering that you are writing this step assume. Okay. Given user opens the application user uh, application URL. Okay. And uh, when user clicks on my account and selects login option and clicks on forgot password forgot password option okay then and clicks on forgot password option and enters enters valid email address okay enters valid email address and clicks on and clicks on this is the scenario i'm trying to automate and trying to write okay tutorials.com slash demo clicks on my account then select the login option here forgotten password link this is forgotten password forgotten password option and after that user has to enter the valid email address and click on the continue button. That's it. Okay. And clicks on continue button. What should happen after the user clicks on continue button? Okay. If, uh, for example, here clicks on continue button. User should get this warning message. Okay. A, a kind of message should come. Okay. An email with a confirmation link has been sent to your email address. Okay. Proper confirmation, proper confirmation message should be, okay. Should be displayed. Okay. 
this is what is the scenario I have written. So, and, uh, you see, it's already implemented, right? You see, this is not getting highlighted. That means it's already implemented as part of another step definition method. So, but without, uh, you see, without understanding that this step is already implemented, what you did was, okay, what you did was you created a new class and name this class as per got password, okay, forgot password dot Java. In this, you created the step definition method for that particular step, okay, for this particular step, okay, without noticing that. So just to save time, guys, I'll copy paste and I'll go to the tidy gherkin, okay. Uh, in the previous sessions, I showed you how to do it manually. Just to save time, I'm just uh, going to the tidy gherkin, guys, okay, which will generate the steps for us uh, in a quick manner, okay. We just have to modify the default things, okay. Just open the tidy gherkin, paste the Tomorrow, this tidy gherkin may not be available. So already have teach you how to create your own step definition methods. You can follow that approach. If this, you see, these are the methods generated, auto-generated, or you can even run using Eclipse ID also. This feature file you can run, guys, and it will generate, okay? So anyhow, I'll copy from here for now, okay? So I'll go to the forgotten, uh, for, forgot password, uh, okay? So there is some problem. I'll copy it properly. Till here, I'll copy and, uh, I'll paste it. Okay. After pasting it, hover the mouse on edit the rate given. Okay. And import this from IO Cucumber and remove this part and uh, throws throwable. Okay. Here also throws throwable. Here also throw throwable. Hover the mouse and uh, import it from when. Okay. Here also throw throwable. Hover the mouse on edit the rate then and import this. Import this and and remove this throw throwable and also remove this statement. Okay. You see the generation, if you generate these methods, it will not take much time. You just have to write the print statements as we already have done in the previous sessions. Okay. Just remove these steps. Okay. Just remove this. Okay. Fine, guys. Now I'll write the print statement system.out.println. Okay. So I forgot that this particular step is already, okay. This step is already implemented as part of another step definition method. So in case of, in case of, uh, you know, uh, this Cucumber project, right? Uh, any of the step of this feature file can be part of any of the step definition classes. It doesn't mean that login step should only be in the login.java. Uh, register should be only in the register.java such dot feature should be only in the search dot. It's not like that. It can be anywhere. Okay. The cucumber is cucumber tool is very intelligent that it can identify anywhere. So without understanding that I am trying to duplicate this method in a separate class. This method is already implemented as part of the search dot Java, but again, the same method I'm implementing in the forgot password dot Java step definition class. So here is a problem that will arise. This will result in an exception. Okay. User has opened okay otherwise application you are has uh, application application you are all got opened like this i'll write okay here i'll write system dot out dot here double quote and here double greater than symbol just for identifying the print statements in the output console i'm writing this double greater than symbol otherwise it's not required user clicks on on my account option User has clicked on better. Okay. Has it's already done. Okay. This step is as you did. System dot out dot print here. And here I'm writing proper confirmation message got displayed. Okay. Then here I'll write down system dot out dot print here. I'm just writing randomly. Okay. So I'm not following a proper uh, a step one step to like that. I'm just trying to fill all these methods. That's it. Okay. From starting to beginning. A user has selected, user has selected login option, user has selected a login option. And then here I'll write uh, system.out.println. User has clicked on uh, forgotten password link. Okay. Then here I'll write user has entered the email address. User has entered valid email address. Then here I'll write system.out.println. Dot 
Okay. User has clicked on continue button here and right. User has clicked on continue button. Okay, like this I'll write. Now save all. So I I implemented all the steps of this uh, you know kind of thing. You see this step is enters valid email address is not coming. Let me try to update the project once and see if this is going or it's still remaining. Update project. Say okay. If the step is still there as highlighted. Then you see it's got removed. Okay. Sometimes it happens there will be there will be some temporary glitch. You have to update the Maven project. It will be gone again. It came there. That means there is a problem. So enters valid email address. Uh, okay. Forgot password. Maybe I have not implemented or something. Yeah, it is there here now. Maybe this space, okay, is causing the problem. I am guessing. Just remove that space and uh, again update the project. Mm, Maven small space also will cause a problem sometimes. Okay, you have to be aware of that. You see now it is properly implemented. Looks like. Let's see after after the progress is done here. Let's see the this uh, feature file. If it, nothing is getting highlighted, then everything is implemented. That's all good, guys. I'll go to the runner class now. And if I run this uh, runner class, this time we'll get an exception because you see the search dot feature file given user opens the application is already implemented as part of the search dot Java. The same method is implemented again in the forgot password dot Java. Here again the same method got the same step got implemented. It is a duplicate step. So whenever you have a duplicate step, your scripts will not run. Okay, when you run this runner dot Java using JUnit here, right click run as JUnit here. You will get that exception immediately in the output console in the Eclipse ID output console. You see, none of the steps got executed. Instead, you got duplicate step definition exception. It's not duplication, so it said duplicate. Okay, duplicate, duplicate. Okay, that's what I'm wondering. It said duplicate is okay. I'm just writing it wrong here. Okay, so fine. So I'll just uh, open this here. This is a duplicate step definition exception. Okay, I updated this name here. Duplicate step definition exception. Okay, so you will get this duplicate uh, step definition exception. To overcome that, what you have to do? You have to go to the forgot password and remove this step. It's not required. It's already implemented as part of the previous steps of the other feature files. Why to implement it again? Okay, and simply say Control Shift O. Unimplemented uh, import statements will be removed. Non-used uh, import statements will be removed. Now run this runner Java and see what will happen. This time we should not get an exception, okay? And but there is a problem. What is the problem here? Let's see. So reset password is running first. It seems okay. Reset password and forgetting it. Application got opened is open. Given user opens application URL. When user clicks on my account and selects login option and clicks on forgotten password and enters valid email address and uh, clicks on continue button. Ambiguous step definition exception is coming here. Some other exception is coming. Okay. Here we are getting another exception known as ambiguous definitions exception. Clicks on continue button matches more than one step definition. More than one step definition. Okay. Clicks on continue button matches more than one step definition. Uh, so more details I just need to find out. Another exception is coming, guys. Okay. We'll try to resolve this exception in another. Uh, Video, okay. I'll try to resolve this uh, in the next video, guys. Okay. I'll resolve this in the re next video, runner Java and all. So, feature file 28. Uh, no, 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 this is not the one. Sorry. I should go in the proper way. We'll first find out where exactly it is coming from. Mm, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. I'm not able to find it. Yeah, the proper confirmation should be displayed. And this is the step it is coming with. And user uh, and uh, and clicks on continue button and clicks on continue button is giving that problem, guys. Is there any class having that? Okay, let's see that from login or and clicks on con and clicks on login button is there. Okay, and here. Uh, okay, register dot feature. We'll see. Clicks on continue button. You see, this is ambiguous, right? Uh, this is already there. Okay, clicks on continue button is already there. We already implemented here. So clicks on continue button is there. What about uh, this one in the forgot password? Clicks on continue button is there in the forgot password. And also in the register dot Java, also we have that uh, clicks on continue button, maybe. Okay. 
user clicks on where is that method yeah clicks on continue button is matching but the problem why we are getting that ambiguous uh step definition exception there is a may there may be a reason guys here you see you are following cucumber expressions whereas in forgot password you are following regular expressions that's the reason it's not giving a duplicate uh duplicate step definition exception you are not getting instead you are getting ambiguous step definition exception i'll explain more about this ambiguous step definition exception in the next session anyhow it came for us so i'm going to resolve that in the next session and i'll continue this session with the next session where i'm i'll be resolving this ambiguous step definitions exception so that's all for this session guys we are able to resolve this duplicate step definition uh, definition exception anyhow we are getting another exception that i'm trying that i will resolve in the next session so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 25 of cucumber pdd training series in this session i am going to solve another exception that is ambiguous step definitions exception which may occur in the cucumber projects so let's get started so while i was demonstrating uh, the solution for resolving duplicate step definition exception we suddenly got this exception in the previous session that is ambiguous step definitions exception okay ambiguous step definitions exception so why we are getting this kind of uh, ambiguous step definition exception instead of duplicate step definition exception we are getting ambiguous why we are getting here is there small reason guys okay you see in the forgot password.java i have implemented all the steps of this feature file that is forgot password.feature file i implemented i implemented one of the step that is click on continue button okay this is the step i implemented here i am using regular expressions this cap symbol and dollar symbol are part of the regular expressions so the same step is already implemented as part of other feature file step definition classes so where i have implemented the restart.feature file if you see one of the step we have the clicks on continue button the same step is there in the restart.feature file which is there in the forgot password.feature file so how this particular step is uh, i mean implemented click, clicks on continue button if you go to the restart.java you can see that this click on continue button in the restart.java is not using any regular expression that means it by default falls into the cucumber expressions category if no regular expressions are used in this expression statement that is nothing but a cucumber expression okay so in the forgot uh, forgot password the uh, the same step is implemented using the regular expressions in the restart.java the same step is implemented using the regular uh, i mean cucumber expressions so that's the reason instead of giving the duplicate step definition duplicate step definition exception it's giving you the ambiguous because it's unable to figure out okay it looks like similar but regular expressions and the cucumber expressions are different that's the only reason we are getting this exception guys okay so what if i remove this uh, regular expressions okay i'll go to the forgot password.java and remove this regular expressions and make it a cucumber expression now will it give me a duplicate uh, step definition ex exception or not let's see okay this time we should get duplicate step definition exception rightly run as jane test we should not get ambiguous rather we should get duplicate you see now it is coming as duplicate step definition exception it's not coming as ambiguous step definitions step definitions exception is not coming okay the reason here is now both in the restart.java the step is implemented using the cucumber expressions and also in the forgot password.java also the step is implemented using the cucumber uh, cucumber expressions only okay here we are not using regular expression somewhere and cucumber expression somewhere so we are we uh, since both both the statements are implemented in duplicate manner using the same cucumber expression we are getting this duplicate even though you use this uh, regular expression for example i'll use this regular expression here cap symbol and uh, dollar symbol here and and in another step definition class also that is in the restart or java also i'll do the same thing i'll put cap here here also i'm using the regular expression okay instead of cucumber expression everywhere i'm using the regular expression okay in both forgot password.java for the same step i am implementing regular expressions in restart.java i am using the regular expression. in this case also you should get duplicate step definition exception okay you should not get ambiguous step definition exception guys okay to see here you will get duplicate uh, step definition exception right so what i have to do to overcome this problem so i have to remove this guys okay in one of the steps i have to remove this okay so from here i will remove this guys okay only one place that uh, that expression is uh, that uh, that step, uh, statement in the feature file got implemented okay it will be useful for both restart and forgot password functionalities once i remove that duplicate method 
Okay, the ambiguous step definitions exception will not occur. Now the scripts, now the all the uh, steps will run without any problem. You see, all the steps are running without any problem. Everything is coming in green color, no exceptions, nothing. Okay, so this is how guys we can resolve this ambiguous step definitions exception, which is nothing but similar to the duplicate step definition exception. Only the difference is methods having the same name, but they are using different expressions. One implemented method is using regular expression, other same duplicate method is implementing the cucumber expression. That's what is giving this exception. If you put the same into a cucumber expression or regular expression, then you are getting duplicate step definition exception. And if you remove one of the method, duplicate method, then you are overcoming both these exceptions. Okay. Then all the exceptions are getting resolved and you are getting a proper output in the out Eclipse ID output console. And you can see all the tests got run properly here. Okay. So as I already mentioned, guys, forgot password functionality, I don't want to implement as part of this project. So I'll delete this forgot password.java, guys. Okay. And uh, here also, uh, forgot password.feature also I'm going to delete. Okay. So yeah, let's rightly kind of say update project, uh, Maven update project uh, to see if anything is going wrong after deleting. Okay. In login dot, everything is implemented. I'll check each and every feature file to see. In uh, restart.feature file, you see everything is implemented. No problem. I'll close all this stuff and then open the finally search.java and see everything. And here, search.feature file and see if everything is implemented. Yes, everything is implemented. So everything is intact. So that's all for this session, guys. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 26 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to practically show you how to write comments in future files. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you how to write the comments in Cucumber feature files. Okay. With a practical demonstration. So I'll open this Eclipse IDE. I'll open this Eclipse IDE where we have this project and expand this project guys. And here we have the feature files. Let's take any of these feature files guys. Okay. Let's take any of these feature files. So let's take this search dot feature file. I'll take this search dot feature file. So it's not, it's highlighting some steps. Maybe I need to update this project using Maven. Okay. It's often required you for you to update the Maven project. Okay. So that, uh, the steps are already implemented sometimes, uh, due to technical things, uh, it will highlight the steps, but after updating the project, you see the highlights may go off. Okay. Let's wait until this progress is done. This thing you have to do often guys. Okay. Whenever you see some highlighted steps, but uh, if these steps are already implemented, then you have to update the Maven project. Okay. So fine. Now I would like to show you how to write the comments in the feature file. Okay. So here I'll write a comment comments in feature file starts with as symbol. Okay. In Java, if you have to write a comment, if you have to provide a comment in Java, for example, in login.java, if I have to write a comment here, I have to use double forward slash for a single line comment and uh, forward slash asterisk and uh, asterisk backward slash for multi-line comments. But same thing, if I have to write comments in the feature file, I have to use a symbol. Okay. So here I'll explain. Okay. The below statement, below statement demonstrates, okay. The use of, the use of background keyword. Okay. Background Gherkin keyword you can write if you want. Okay. Gherkin keyword. That means. The below statement demonstrated the use of background Gherkin keyword. That means, you see, this is a comment, guys. This will not be executed. Okay. This is only for making the other users or yourself after a period of time to understand what is written here. Okay. To, un to understand the, in Java also, same thing, right? We write the comments to understand the underlying code. Here in feature files also, we write this kind of comments, which starts with hash symbol to understand the below things like uh, scenarios and all those stuff. If you want to, okay give more details and make the users understand what we are doing here. We can write this kind of comments here and there, and these comments won't be executed. And if you provide this comment, okay, if you uh, put hash here, okay, hash here, this particular statement, okay, which need to be run using Cucumber will be converted into a comment and will not be executed. Okay. So there are two purposes of a comment. Comments will help us in understanding the underlying things or we can, if you don't want to run some steps in a particular 
iteration or on a particular day you don't want to run any of the steps you can put hash symbol before the step only that particular step will be commented out and will not be executed okay these are the two purposes that we can use comments for okay for making the others understand the underlying things that you have written or to disable the steps from execution okay temporarily disable the steps from execution also we can use we can comment them out by writing that hash symbol okay tomorrow again if you need you can remove that hash the step will be enabled and you can run the step okay this how instead of deleting and removing the step and tomorrow again adding it you can disable it for a while for a few days and then you can enable it by removing uh by uncommenting okay commenting to disable uncommenting uncommenting to enable okay some kind of thing so hope you understood how to write comments in feature files in cucumber projects okay so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 27 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i am going to show you how to use tags in cucumber so let's get started so i am going to demonstrate how to use tags in cucumber okay with a practical demonstration let me quickly switch to eclipse id where i am going to explain or practically demonstrate all these examples i mentioned here these are the things that i am going to cover in this session guys one by one okay so let me open the feature files first, login.feature file. You see here in the login.feature file, there are a few sample scenarios that we have created as part of the previous sessions. So what I'm going to do is uh, before this uh, scenario, I'll write at the rate, okay? So this is login related scenarios, right? All the scenarios are login related. I'll write at the rate login. These are user defined tax case, okay? These are not predefined tax. Any name you can write here. You can even write user login also if you want. Okay, at the rate user login also you can write. These are user defined tags. To make it simple, I'm writing at the rate login. And to make this uh, kind of scenario unique out of other login scenarios, I'll just find out something from this scenario which is kind of unique. That is valid credentials is unique. So I'll write, I'll write all these things in lowercase guys so that I will not forget, uh, okay, the tags. Each and every tag I will provide in the lowercase, okay, so that I can remember the stuff. Otherwise, it's case sensitive guys, okay. It's better to provide in either lower or upper case so that I'll provide lowercase so that I can remember, okay? Valid credentials is another unit tag I'm giving here. And here, at the rate all. At the rate all means all scenarios. For all the scenarios, I'm going to provide this tag, okay? For all the scenarios in this feature file, in other feature files, I'm going to provide at the rate add tag. And apart from that, I'll mention this as smoke test, okay? You see, login with valid credentials. Uh, this is a basic test, right? So it will falls under smoke and also it falls under the regression also as part of regression suit also we have to run. And also you can have any number of tags here, okay, before the scenarios uh, representing, maybe the scenario is related to a particular user story or anything guys, any test case ID you want to give in the form of a tag you can give. Okay, for now I'm not giving them, okay, for now whatever I'm feeling I'm giving here, but in real time projects, people also give the tag names as uh, user story IDs and uh, test case IDs, okay, depending on the projects. Now I'll go to the second scenario guys, okay, at the rate, okay, in the second scenario I'll write at the rate login and uh, this is invalid credentials, this scenario is unique as part of invalid credentials, so I'll write invalid credentials. Then I'll write at the rate all, at the rate, uh, this is also smoke guys, at the rate regression I'll write, okay, regression. Now I'll go to the next scenario, I'll quickly write the tags here, login scenario, and here, this is valid email and invalid password, okay, valid email and invalid password, at the rate all, at the rate regression, I'll not write at the rate smoke here, I'm writing at the rate regression here. Here I'm writing at the rate login again, at the rate invalid email, and valid password, then I'll write at the rate, all at the rate regression, okay? At the rate regression. Now in the last scenario, I'll be writing at the rate login and I'll write at the rate, no credentials, no credentials, at the rate, all at the rate regression, I'll write. So there is a common act here for all the scenarios. That is at the rate login is common and at the rate all is also common. So I can move this at the rate all to the top of this, uh, Feature guys, okay, at the top of this feature, I'll write at the rate all. So when I write at the rate all on the top of this feature, at the rate all will be applied for all the scenarios in this feature file. I don't have to mention it everywhere, okay? That's another thing that we can learn from the tags, okay? Learn about the tags. You don't have to provide at the rate all for all the 
scenarios in this feature file. Simply put that at the rate all on the top of the feature, it will be applied for all the scenarios in this feature file. Now let's move on to the next one, register.feature. Here also we have a lot of scenarios on the top of the feature. I'll write at the rate all as usual. And here I'll write at the rate register, at the rate mandatory, mandatory fields I'll write, okay? At the rate, uh, this is all smoke, at the rate uh, regression I'll write, okay? Now here this scenario I'll write as, at the rate register, at the rate all fields, okay? At the rate, uh, uh, this is uh, also smoke, uh, sorry, this is also smoke and this is also regression, okay? I'm writing this as regression also. Now, third scenario I'm writing at the rate register, I'll say at the rate, uh, uh, no, no details, at the rate, uh, regression I'll write, okay? So it's not a smoke. And here I'll write at the rate register, uh, register, at the rate duplicate email, duplicate email, some unique uh, unit tags I'm writing as these are all user defined, okay? Not predefined at the rate regression. Like this, all the scenarios I completed in the register.feature file. I'll go to the search.feature file. Here also, I'll, before the feature, I'll write at the rate all tag, which will be applied for all the scenarios. Here I'll write at the rate search, at the rate valid product. I'll say valid product here. Uh, here I'll say at the rate smoke, at the rate uh, regression, okay? Only one scenario, I'll make it smoke, guys, in this uh, feature file here this one at the rate search at the rate uh, non existing product at the rate regression okay uh, at the rate search here at the rate no product no product at the rate regression okay done like this i'll keep on writing guys okay so all the scenarios in all the feature files have provided the respective tags guys now i'll open my runner.java and now with now I know that which tags are mentioned for which scenarios I know. So I'll go to the my runner and here I'll add one more attribute in this cucumber options known as comma tax. Tax is equal to here in double quotes, I can provide the tax. So to improve the readability, I'll just press enter guys and just press tab here so that you can understand. Okay, this cucumber options, these are all cucumber options only. Okay. So I can write in a single line or multiple lines, that's up to us. Okay. I can organize this in the tags. If I say at the rate all, what will happen is all the scenarios in all the feature files, because everywhere for all the scenarios, for all the features I provided at the rate all tag. So all the scenarios in all the feature files will run. So let's see. Five plus four plus uh, three, that is 12 and uh, two data driven test uh, extra, uh, that is 14, total 14. Uh, should run 14 test, uh, 14 scenarios should run okay first one in the login is a data driven so along with that we should have 14 runs okay so you see a lot of uh, scenarios have run to actually find out the count you can go to this uh, JUnit uh, JUnit tab my test runner you can see under user login first scenario got run three times because this is a data driven scenario okay scenario outline one and remaining scenarios one two three four got run only one time under user registration, register with mandatory fields, register with all fields, register without providing any fields, register with duplicate email address one one time, and uh, such functionality such for valid product, non-existing product, and without providing any product. You see, all the fourteen out of fourteen scenarios got run and they got passed. That's fine. Now again, I'll go to the myrunner.java. This time, I'll not provide at the rate all. I'll only provide at the rate login. That means only the login feature related scenarios will run. Okay, right click run as. JUnit test, only the scenarios from the login.feature file are going to run. That is, uh, uh, there are around seven, I guess, okay? Seven scenarios will run. First, first scenario is data-driven, so three will be counted, and remaining four are four scenarios, okay? Four plus three, seven. Seven should run. You can go to that. You see, everything got passed, and you can go to this uh, JUnit, uh, my test run, my runner, and you can see here, one, two, three, data-driven test, and uh, remaining one, one time, okay? Remaining scenario, four scenarios, so only one, one time. First scenario, three times. Total seven out of seven. Now, if I want to run uh, register related test scenarios, register scenarios, there are four register related scenarios in the register.feature file. You will see that using the runner class with the help of this tags attribute and value uh, as a tag, okay, you will see only four scenarios will run, okay. You can clearly see here under user registration, all the four scenarios got run, okay, and everything got passed. Now, from search, I want to run three scenarios. So, here at the rate search, I'll provide because I provided this tag name before every scenario in the search.feature file to segregate this feature file scenario from the other feature files. You will see the three scenarios from the search.feature file will run. 
you see the three feature files got run here and you can come here and see that and such functionality three scenarios from the such functionality got run again i'll go here this time i want to run the uh smoke related only smoke okay out of all these feature files, uh, the first feature, uh, first scenario and second scenario are smoke here. In the register also, first and second scenarios are smoke. And in the search, only one scenario is smoke. Total five, but because of the data-driven test in the first scenario, it will be running three times, okay? Three plus one, four, five, six, seven. Total seven tests should run as part of the smoke. Only smoke tests. Uh, four from login, two from register, and one from search will run now, okay? Just go here on the JRU test, you can see. Four from login. You see, first scenario got run three times because of data driven, and the second scenario got run only one time. So this is second registration. Two smoke tests are there in such functionality. We have only one smoke test. All the smoke tests got run. This is the flexibility we are getting. If you want to run only the smoke test, only the recreation test, okay, we can provide all those stuff here. Okay. Let's say I want to run a, a specific scenario from the login dot feature file. Uh, that is a valid credential scenario. Okay, valid credential tag name if I have given right. A unique uh, tag name I have given for one of the scenario. So only that particular scenario from the login dot feature file will now run. In J unit test, you will see only one scenario running from the login dot feature file. Okay. Uh, there is a problem here. You see, uh, maybe uh, valid creden. You see, there is a spelling mistake. Okay. If there is a spelling mistake, there no scenarios will run. Okay. So I have to write the proper uh, uh, without I have I have removed the spelling mistake. Now it will run. Okay. Right click run as J unit test. It will run one scenario from the login dot feature file that is having the valid that is a data driven scenario, guys. Data driven scenario. So login with valid credentials with the first set of data. Login with valid credentials with second set of data, with third set of data. Okay. Done. Only that uh, feature file has run. Now I'll say no credentials. Only no credential scenario from the login dot feature file is going to run. Okay. Only one scenario is going to run from the login dot feature files. You see that only one scenario will run. Okay. From the you see, only this scenario got run uh, from the user login that is login without providing any credentials. Okay. So now I want to run two scenarios. Okay. This scenario at the rate no credentials one and at the rate uh, what you call invalid credentials one. Okay. Two credentials. Creden. I have to be good with the uh, spelling mistakes. So I should not make any spelling. Valid credentials. Okay. So at the rate, no credentials, at the rate, invalid credentials. There is one scenario in the login dot feature file with uh, invalid credentials. There's one scenario with no credentials tag in the login dot feature files. So here or means both will run. Okay. Only one tag name is enough. Okay. If a particular scenario has at the rate, no credentials, it will run. If a particular scenario has invalid credentials, that scenario also will run. Okay. Like this, you can, you can give any number of uh, tags here or, or, or like that. Okay. So the scenarios having any of this uh, tags will run. Okay. Any of this tags will run because we are using OR operator here, okay? You will see two scenarios running. One scenario, you see two scenarios got run here. One scenario that is uh, saying login with invalid credentials. Other one is no credentials without providing any credentials, okay? That's what is the thing. So two tax related scenarios got run. What if I put IND, no scenarios will run. There is no particular scenario having both the tags, right? You see, in the login dot feature file, we don't have a single scenario having both the tags, right? This combination tags are not there. So no scenarios will run. No scenarios will run. Zero scenarios. You can see, you see no scenarios got run. If you go to JNIT, you see, you will not see any scenarios running here. Okay. So fine. Now that is the IND. Okay. So IND combination, a proper combination I'll give you. Uh, that is at the rate login, I will say at the rate login. Okay. IND. Uh, I'll write at the rate. Uh, uh, otherwise, I'll write at the rate register. At the rate register. At the rate. Register tag should be there and also at the same time at the rate smoke should be there. Okay, smoke tag should be there. So the combination of scenarios are there in the register.feature file. There are two scenarios having the smoke tag and register tag in the register.feature file. So two scenarios will run now. Okay, the combination, a scenario having the combination of these tags will run. You see two tags, two scenarios will run. First scenario, second scenario. How? You see here, register with mandatory fields, register with all fields. These two scenarios in the register.feature files have register tag at same time smoke tag. That's why they got run. Now I'll go to the runner here and uh, I'll write one more thing. That is, uh, I'll write uh, not of, okay? Not, not operator I'll use. Not, at the rate, no credentials. Except no credentials. 
run all the remaining scenarios in all the feature files. Okay, if you see any feature file scenario having no credentials, don't run that particular scenario. For that case, you have to use not run this. So 13 scenarios will run. Only one scenario will not run that is no credentials tag related scenario. We'll see 13 scenarios will be running guys. Total 13 scenarios, you see 13 out of 13. In the user.login, no credential scenario has not run. And remaining all scenarios in the other feature files, in the login feature files have run, okay? Now I'll do a combination here. Uh, I'll say at the rate smoke, I not. Okay, this is another combination. At the rate smoke means here uh, we uh, here we have uh, what you can say three scenarios, uh, data driven scenarios three uh, plus uh, another one invalid. This is this four are smoke, and they are having no credentials. Okay, so this four will run in the register. Also smoke are this first two. Okay, four plus two six. They don't have no credentials, okay? So it will not run. And uh, third one, uh, only first scenario having smoke and no, uh, it doesn't have no credentials stack, okay? So like this also we can write guys, okay? And run the runner class. This not can be used with one of the sites, okay? So you will see uh, this thing, okay? From the login, four will be running. From the user registration, two smoke will be running. From search, one smoke scenario will be running. They doesn't have no credentials, okay? They doesn't have no credentials tag. Or if I write at the rate, at the rate, uh, login, and not no credentials, except no credentials tag one, remaining all scenarios in the login will run, okay? Right click run as the unit test, except no credentials scenario, remaining all scenarios in the login will run, okay? You see only login feature file related scenarios, which doesn't have no credential scenario. You see, no, no credential scenario has not run. So guys, this is how we can use tags to customize the running, okay? Tags are very useful, okay? Suddenly the client comes and asks you to run only the smoke test. What is the, uh, what we have to do? We have to go with the tags in Cucumber to make that simplify, okay? Just mention the tags, appropriate scenarios will run. Cucumber is so sophisticated that so easy that you can run any uh, customized running of the scenarios from any of the feature files that is possible with the help of tax in Cucumber. Tax in Cucumber will make it so easy for us to run the client requested scenarios, okay? Sometimes client will ask you to run all the scenarios. Sometimes client will ask you to run only smoke scenarios. Sometimes client will ask you to run only, uh, let's say, register and search. What do you have to do for register and search? At the rate register, you would say, and at the rate, uh, and at the rate, uh, at the rate search, I'll say, okay? Only the scenarios from register and search will run. Login scenarios will not run. Uh, here and uh, I I should not mention and guys. No, this is not the correct way. Okay, no scenarios will run because I mentioned and there. That is a mistake. I have to mention or okay at the rate register or at the rate search. That means both the scenarios from both the feature files will now run. Okay, that is a uh, four scenarios from register, three scenarios from search will run. Four from register, three from search will run. But if I say uh, run all the scenarios except uh, uh, except login. Okay, so not of at the rate login I can say. Okay. That means all the remaining feature files, there may be uh, hundreds of feature files, all the feature files will run. And uh, from the login feature file, none of the scenarios will run because all the scenarios in the login feature file are mentioned with at the rate login tag. Okay, hope you are able to get how much customization we are getting in running the scenarios. Okay, so at the rate and uh, not at the rate login means uh, register and search will run. Okay, both register and search related scenarios. That is four plus three, seven scenarios got run. So guys, hope you understood how to use tags in Cucumber and how to customize running of the scenarios based on the client requirements and all. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 28 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to practically demonstrate how to use hooks in Cucumber. So let's get started. So in Cucumber projects, we can use hooks okay uh, there are two hooks guys mainly that is at the rate before and at the rate after so we are going to use that hooks in cucumber now so how to use them for that i'll go to eclipse id where we have this cucumber project already created as part of the previous sessions now i'll go to one of the step definition classes here okay you see here we have three feature files login register and search go to any of these step definition classes you don't have to go to only login or only register or only search 
you can go to any of these step definition classes okay so i'll i'll go to search guys okay just for uh, showing you i'll go to search okay i'm not going to log in or register i'm going to search you see you can go to any of the step definition classes and write the hooks methods here one time you don't have to write the hooks in each and every class okay only write only once that is public void i'll say setup okay setup and here i'll write uh, at the rate before annotation i have to write okay this is from cucumber guys at the rate before annotation is from cucumber and it's called as hooks okay at the rate before and hover the mouse and import it from don't import it from jnit guys you have to import from io cucumber java okay once you have imported this this method will become a hook okay setup hook which will be applicable not only for the search feature file but also the scenarios in the login and register also this particular hook method will be applicable okay even though you are writing this in, under the search step definition still it is applicable for all the step definitions and all the feature files only one time in one of the feature uh, one of the def step definition class you have to write this hooks method that is at the rate before hook method okay now the next thing is here i'll write on something system dot out on print l and i'll write okay opening the browser browser got opened otherwise okay browser got opened i'll write here i'm writing the code i assume that here i'm writing the selenium code for opening the browser that's it okay before every scenario we have to open the browser right that's the reason we have to write setup okay and similarly i'll write one more hook method that is public void you can either say tear down or closure whatever the name you feel convenient okay in the industry people use tear down so i'm using it you can use closure or any other name also you can give no problem here also setup name or any other name you can give no problem i'll write at the rate after guys okay this particular hook will run after every scenario in every feature file even though you are writing this hooks methods in one of the step definition class of the feature file but these are going to be applicable for all the feature files all the scenarios in the feature file okay feature files that is though you are writing in such dot java it will be applicable for login register and search all okay only one time you have to mention in one of the step definition classes of the feature files here import this after hook from okay io cucumber java again okay system dot out dot print and i'll write uh close browser got closed got closed okay assume that here i'm writing the selenium code or any other automation code for closing the browser now only one place in the search.java I have provided is now let's see how this is going to work. I'll go to the runner.java, my runner.java and run this and see. Here I'll remove the tags. I don't no more need tags here. Okay, I want to run all the feature files, all the scenarios and all. Let's see how it will work. Okay. So here I'm going to right click and say run as JUnit test case. All the feature files, all the scenarios and all the feature files will run. And in the output, you will see that before every scenario, okay, before every scenario, browser will be opened. You see, the browser got opened, browser got closed, browser got opened, browser got closed. This is a login scenario. First scenario of the login, which is data driven scenario, browser got opened and browser got closed. And for second scenario in the login, browser got opened, browser got closed. Third scenario in the login, browser got opened, browser got closed. Fourth scenario in the login, browser got opened, browser got closed. Fifth scenario in the login, browser got opened, browser got closed. And finally, restart scenarios have started here also, you see, browser got opened, browser got closed. Second scenario of the restart got opened, got closed. Third scenario got opened, got closed. Fourth scenario of the restart got opened, got closed. Okay, and search scenarios, browser got opened, browser got Close. Second scenario of the search got opened, got closed, got opened, got closed for the third scenario of the search also. You see, only one time you mentioned in one of the step definition classes of the okay project and it is running, those hooks methods are running for all the, all the feature file step definition classes, even though at one place only you just mentioned that, okay? So this is what are the hooks guys, okay? If you want to run something before running a scenario, if you want to do something before uh, running a scenario or uh, if you want to do something after uh, running a scenario every each and every scenario before running and after running then we have to go for hooks guys like this we have to create the hooks before and after okay 
So that's all for this session, guys. It's all about the hooks and how to use hooks in Cucumber. But there are a few more things that I need to explain about hooks that I'm going to cover in the next session. So we have something known as tagged hooks. Okay. One more concept is there known as tagged hooks. Okay. That I'm going to cover in the next session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 29 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use tagged hooks in Cucumber. So let's get started. So in the previous session, I covered how to use hooks in Cucumber. And in this session, I am going to cover tagged hooks in Cucumber, which is a continuation of the previous session. Okay. If you have not gone through the previous session, then you may find it difficult to understand the current session. So I recommend you guys to first watch my previous session where I covered how to use hooks in Cucumber and then follow this current session where how to use tagged hooks in Cucumber and how the tagged hooks are different from the normal hooks in Cucumber. So let me quickly switch to this Eclipse IDE and this is a project we have created so far from the previous sessions and in the previous session as part of demonstrating the hooks in Cucumber, I went to one of the step definition classes. I don't have to go to each and every step definition classes to create the hooks. You have to choose any one of the step definition classes of any of these feature files. So I have chosen, if you remember, I have chosen search.java in the previous session and I created this hooks. Only one time I created this, okay? I have not created this before and after in login and reset, I have not created. Only one class I have chosen, step definition class, in that I created this at the rate before hooks and at the rate after hooks methods, that's it. So what will happen as explained in the previous session, when you run this uh, feature files, okay? So using the runner class, when you are running it, automatically what will happen is this before and after hooks will be running for each and every scenario in each and every feature file. Though you have created it only once in the search.java step definition class, okay? But now for a change, I'm going to cover tagged hooks and show you how the tagged hooks are different from the normal hooks. So guys, simple. What you have to do is after this at the rate before Cucumber annotation, you have to provide the circular brackets and in that provide double quotes and in that provide a tag name. For example, if you go to this, uh, 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 let's say, let me go to register guys. Okay. Let me go to register. Okay. Register in the register, take one of the tag guys. Okay. Just copy this tag name that you have used before the scenarios. There are four scenarios in before them at the rate register is used and come back here and give that tag name along with the at the rate symbol here, okay? That's it. Now here also for provide circular brackets in the after hook and then convert that into tagged hooks by providing the circular brackets, double quotes and in between the circle, uh, double quotes you have to provide this tag that is at the rate register. Now you are, you are tying this hook methods only to the register feature file, only the scenarios of the register feature files having this re at the rate register tag. So, now this before and after will not run for all the scenarios of the, all the feature files. Rather, these tagged hook methods will only run for the scenarios which are specified with at the rate register tag. That is only the four scenarios in the register feature file are going to run. Okay. For this, uh, I mean, this hook methods are going to tag hook methods are going to run only for the scenarios in the register dot feature files and other feature files. Uh, this tagged hooks are not going to run. We'll see that. Okay. I'll open the my runner.java, okay, and right click and say run as JNIT test. We'll see that live, okay? You'll see that what's happening and all. All the scenarios in all the features file will run, but this tagged hooks will only run for the uh, register scenarios in the register.feature uh, register file, which are mentioned with at the rate register tag, okay? Let's see here from the beginning in the output. You see for the login, browser got opened is not there anywhere, okay? Uh, let's go to the register. These are all login scenarios, guys. Nowhere uh, browser got opened and closed is not there. But here, if you see the register having the iterate register tag, you see browser got opened is coming. Browser got closed is coming. Browser got opened is coming for second scenario of the register and uh, closed is also coming. The third scenario got closed, got got opened, got closed. Fourth scenario of the register, browser got opened, browser got closed. And for search, again, it's not coming. You see, for search also, it's not coming. So these are what are the tagged hooks, guys, okay? These are what are the tagged hooks. You can stick the uh, hook methods to the particular tags. Only for that particular scenario, that before and after tagged hook methods will be running before and after, okay? So these are how the tagged hooks are different from the hooks that I covered in the previous session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye.
Hello all, welcome to part 30 of Kukumbar VDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use before step and after step hooks in Kukumbar project. So let's get started. In the previous sessions, I covered how to use hooks in Kukumbar project. At the same time, in the next session, followed by this session, I covered tagged hooks. Okay, how to use tagged hooks in Cucumber project. So in this, as part of this hooks in Cucumber, I covered at the rate before and at the rate after hooks. Okay, in this previous sessions, in case of hooks and tagged hooks, I only covered at the rate before and at the rate after hooks only. Now we have few more hooks available in Cucumber. That is, we can also use, apart from using before hook and after hook, we can also use at the rate before step hook and at the rate after step hook okay so these hooks that is before and after will run before and after every scenario but this before step and after step hooks runs for each and every step before each step after each step okay before uh, step hook will run before each step before the step before each step okay after step hook will run after each and every step in the future files okay so that's what is the difference guys in a theoretical fashion so let me practically demonstrate. You can even apply the tagged hooks to before step and after step as we have done with the before and after hooks. Okay, similar fashion. No, no difference. So guys, let's quickly switch to this uh, Eclipse ID project. Uh, here, if you remember in the search.java, we have added this uh, before and after hooks. I'll remove these guys. Okay, you can have them, but uh, you can have both before and uh, before step. Everything you can have together, but uh, just to avoid the confusion, I'm removing, removing that. Okay. Just to avoid the confusion, when I'm explaining this uh, before step, after step, I don't want to have this uh, before and after. We can, they can work together also, okay? You can, in a, in a single step definition, you can have this before, before step, after, after step hooks. Everything can be together, but just for demonstration purpose, I'm removing that before and after hooks, okay? So here I'll write uh, a method, public word. I'll just name this as uh, before every step, okay? You can give any name for this method. I'm just giving some random name before every step. And I'll annotate this uh, method with uh, before step hook, okay? Before step annotation hook for the mouse and import this before step from Cucumber. And this particular method will become before step hook because of this Cucumber annotation. And this method will be running before every step in the feature file, okay? Here we have three feature files and in each and every feature file, we have scenarios. In each and every scenario, we have steps. So in for each and every step this before that particular steps get executed in each and every scenario of the each and every feature file this before step will be executed okay so i'll show you practically hmm? so here i'll write uh before every step hook i'll write okay or before before step hook or whatever it is i'm just writing some random text you can identify that so then I'll write after also at the same time i'll write after after every step okay after every step in the scenarios of the feature files this particular method will be invoked when you annotate this particular method with the uh, after step annotation from cucumber this particular method with this annotation will become after step hook and uh, whatever the print statement you are typing here for sample purpose will be printed after each and every step in the scenario of each and every feature file okay after every step hook okay after every step hook okay yes, okay that's it now so just to avoid confusion i have removed the editor rate before and editor rate after hooks okay uh, for now we only have the before step after step only they will be executed okay you can write this before step and after step in any of the step definitions case it's not compulsory uh, to provide this before step and after step hooks in each and every step definition any of these feature files related step definitions you select either register or login or search you select okay if you provide in one of the step definition classes of this feature files that's enough guys it will be applied for all the feature files okay so run this now go to the runner class open the runner class and run this all the feature files will be running and you will see that for each and every step in the feature files scenarios you see this before step hook will be executed before every step after step hook will be executed after every step. You can see that in the output console here, Eclipse ID console here, you see? So here one of the, this green color thing is, not, all the green color things are nothing but the steps, right? Steps of the scenarios in the feature file, okay? If you see you see this login feature file, you see this is a login feature file guys running in the first scenario. 
So you see, give a, given user navigates to login pages there, given user navigates to login pages there. So before this step got executed, before you see the step has printed here, user got name. Before this particular step got executed, before every step who got, before uh, before step who got executed, you see, that's the reason this print statement got printed before every step. If you want to give a different symbol, just to identify that before step hook and after step hook, I'll give some simple guys, okay? Uh, I'll say plus plus otherwise, okay? So that you can feel the difference. You can see where exactly this got uh, added and all the stuff in the Eclipse ID console. Let me run this again. This time you'll see clearly, okay? Before every step, the before step hook will be executed. After every step, after step, okay, hook uh, will be executed. You see, this is before hook. This is after hook, okay, plus plus symbols. This is a step, guys. This is a step which got executed because of this step got executed. This print statement got printed. You know that, okay? This green color thing is a step and uh, it has invoked this step definition method and the print statement in that particular step definition method got invoked. Before that particular step, before every step hook got uh, printed and uh, after every step hook got printed. You see, before step hook and after after step hook, okay? Again, for second, second uh, I mean, second statement in the first scenario itself, again, before and after are coming. Is it third statement before after like that for every every step of every scenario of every feature file this before after before after you see everywhere it is same before after before after okay before after before after before after before after you see till the end you can say the last uh, uh, such dot feature file also if you see guys you see the last step also if you see this is the last step Okay, which got executed before that step got executed before who got it before step who got executed and uh, after the step got executed after step who got executed. Okay, so this is how the before step and after step before step and after step hooks methods will be executed. Okay, and we can combine this tagged hooks with the before step guys. Okay, tagged hooks is not only specific for the before and after it also can be applied for before step and after step hooks also. So what we have to do here is small change we have to do guys go to the same uh, step definition class where you have added this uh, before step hook and after step hook so here what i will do is beside this i'll add the i'll just add a tag here okay circular brackets here in the double quotes provide a particular tag for example here i'll write uh, let's say register tag only okay only register tag i'll write so only what will happen here also double quotes and at the rate register you just write down at the rate register you write down click on save all now uh, go to the my runner and run this this time this before step hook and after step hook will be only applied for the uh, steps of the scenarios, okay, uh, which, which are related to at the rate register. You see here, register feature file has the scenarios mentioned as at the rate register. Guys. Only these four scenarios have, are mentioned with the at the rate register tag. For all the steps in this uh, uh, register feature file having this at the rate register tag, the this particular uh, before step hook and after step hook methods will be applied okay so i'll update the project guys you see when i'm opening this you see there's some warning messages are coming here that means the steps disconnected from the step definition methods okay so uh, right click on the project and say maven uh, you have to do this often guys so that uh, this issues will be resolved okay before you run the scripts and all the stuff run the things uh, you see after uh, this building process is over let's see you see the uh, the warnings have been gone you see now if you open you see the proper okay you don't see any violations okay step violations are not coming now okay so now guys i'll go to the my runner here i'll go to my runner and run this okay right click run as a j unit test let's see this time only for the at the rate register tag scenarios for each and every step before step hook will be executed after step hook will be executed you see uh from the beginning if you see guys the play, play symbols are not there you see for login related stuff because here uh, at the rate register tag is not there for these scenarios so it is not applied uh, and finally you come to the register guys at the rate register you see for the register only this before uh, step hook and after step hook are running because of the tagged nature okay we are tagging that uh, before step hook and after step hook methods with the uh, at the rate register tag so for only this at the rate register scenario steps only before and after every step this before and before step hook and after step code hook got executed okay uh, if you go to the search again, it will be, you see, the last three scenarios are search related. You see, it's not coming, you see, before step hook and after step hook are not executed for the uh, uh, for the search also, okay? Only got executed for the register because you mentioned register here, okay? I'll remove, I'll remove these hooks now. I'll remove these hooks, guys, okay? So, anyhow, that's all for this session, guys, okay? That's all for this session. Let me clear these hooks because uh, 
okay so whenever it is really required i'll be using the hooks for now i'll not be using the hooks guys okay so so that's all for this session guys uh there is one more topic uh regarding the hooks okay i'll be covering that in the next session so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 31 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use multiple hooks and how to decide their order of execution in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. So guys, in the previous sessions, I covered what exactly are the hooks with the help of at the rate before and at the rate after annotated hook methods. And then I showed you how to tag these hooks with the tags which are provided on the top of the scenarios in the feature files. Then I provided, then I explained other uh, other hooks that are available in Cucumber apart from at the rate before and at the rate after hooks, that is at the rate before step and at the rate after step hooks. Now I'm going to cover that we can specify these hooks in multiple, okay? It's not compulsory that only one hook should to be provided. For example, at the rate before hook is there, okay? That that at the rate before you don't have to provide only for a single method you can provide for multiple methods that will become multiple hooks if there are multiple hooks who will decide the order okay how to decide the order which hook need to be executed first is something we have to know that is possible with the help of order attribute okay i'll show you that practically in this session i'll switch to this eclipse id and uh what I'll do is I'll just uh, pick one of these uh, step definition classes. You can go to any of the step definition classes, guys. It can be either login.java, research.java, or search.java. So earlier I have created the uh, this uh, hooks in search.java. Now I'll uh, try to create in research.java, guys. Okay. Let's change a bit. Just change the place. Let's it. Okay. In the step definition class of register, one of the step definition class you just open and try to create the hooks, guys. Okay. So I'll say public wide public wide setup one i'll say setup one for now just a sample method here i'm demonstrating guys demonstrating how you can have multiple hooks okay i'll annotate this with at the rate before and this will become a before hook okay import this from cucumber library io cucumber.java and here write down just for the demonstration purpose i'll be writing here just to identify this uh, in the output console i'll just add some double place you see other statements are having double greater than symbol but this hook methods are having double place okay i'll say uh, setup one got executed okay setup one uh, before hook okay before hook method got executed i'll write down okay and at the end also i'll say double place so that we can identify that in the eclipse out output console and uh, you see there is no uh, rule that you should have only one hook okay you can copy paste the same thing okay either in the same step definition file or in another step definition file that's okay guys so what happens is you can have multiple hook methods okay multiple hooks you see at the rate before hook is duplicated here okay multiple multiple uh, before uh, hook methods can be there and which hook method should be executed if they, you have multiple hooks you can have three also okay again you can have three also i'll just say it as three and here also I'll change the stuff like uh, setup uh, two, I'll say setup three, okay? There may be some situations in real time where we, where you may have to use multiple before uh, hook methods, but uh, not generally possible, okay? But but if there is a possibility and uh, if that happens, if the situation comes, then what order in which this uh, before hook methods will be executed, we have to understand, okay? Before hook, as you already know, will be executed before every scenario in every feature file, okay? Even though it's specified only in one of the step, step definition class, but it will be applicable for all the scenarios in all the feature files. Before every scenario in every feature file got, gets executed, this before hook method will be executed. But here, we have multiple. You can have four, you can have five, up to you guys, okay? But I'll just, uh, uh, for sample, I'm taking only three here. So, Let's say this setup one I want because as a name speaks setup one, it should be run first. Setup two should be run second. Setup three should be run third before every scenario of the every feature file. So here uh, I'll write down order is equal to zero. I'll, st I'll start with zero. Okay? Zero means uh, for before zero means it will be executed first. Okay. Order is equal to one. 
it will be executed next second. Then if I say order is equal to two, it will be executed third. Okay, one, two, three like that. Okay, uh, uh, lower number to higher number, it will be deciding the order. So now let's go to the my runner and see how these before hooks are getting executed. Okay, uh, right click run as uh, J in it. You see multiple before hook methods are there. Okay, it it can be before uh, step also. Uh, you can have multiple before step methods also. That's okay. But I'm just demonstrating with at the rate before hook for now. Just see here, guys. You see three three times. Okay, setup one order order is equal to one. Okay, so we have provided order is equal to one for setup one. What is executed here? Setup two order is equal to setup three order is equal to three. Okay, and similarly here, if you come down for second scenario also setup one setup two setup three. Okay, for every scenario before every scenario gets executed, this uh, before hook methods. In the specified order are getting executed. Order zero is coming first. Order one is coming second. Order uh, two is coming third. Okay. For every scenario, you can go till the last scenario, guys. You will see that before hook methods, multiple before hook methods are getting executed before every scenario in every feature file. Okay. In the specified order. Okay. As per the order, given order. Now, what about the after hooks? Okay. Here we have given multiple before hooks in the register. Okay. What about after hooks? Okay. So if I say uh, public void uh, tier down one or closure one, whatever the name you want to take up, you just take up, okay? Tier down one, I'll say at the rate, after, import this from Cucumber, IO Cucumber Java, and write down here system.out.println, double quotes, just write down plus plus, uh, tier down, one after hook method got executed say plus plus or here we'll say minus minus for a difference minus minus okay just to differentiate from the before hooks i'm just writing minus minus into the after and here here down two i'll mention and uh this is another after hook method multiple after hook methods i'm creating two then here i'll give third one Tear down three. Okay, I'll say three. You see, here we have multiple tear down hooks. So, in which order they will be executed? Unlike unlike before hooks, where order zero represents the first priority, order one represents the second priority, order two represents the third priority, right? So, this one will be executed first. But here it will happen in a reverse manner. In case of after, it will happen in a reverse manner. So, the last one you provide, okay, you see, down three. Three you for three you provide order zero guys. Okay, this will be executed last. Okay, then order is equal to one. This will be executed last but one, and uh, order is equal to two. So after every scenario, first order is equal to two will be executed. Then order is equal to one will be executed. Then order is equal to zero will be executed. Okay, so it happens in a reverse order, guys. Okay, in case of before zero means first, but in case of after zero means last. Okay, in case of after zero means last, it will be executed last. Okay, that's what you have to understand, guys. Okay, you see, tear down three should come last, right? So I'm just giving order is equal to zero here. But in case of before, order is equal to zero means it will be executed first. Before the scenario, first it will be executed, then it will be executed, then this before will be executed. After the execution of the scenario, first order is equal to two, higher number will be executed first, then order is equal to one will be executed, order is equal to zero will be executed. This is how it is designed, guys. Okay. So don't get confused. It's how it works. Okay. We'll see that if everything is working fine. One, two, three, then one, two, three should come. Okay. You see here, plus, plus, plus thing. One, two, three. Order is equal to zero. Order is equal to one. Order is equal to two. After every scenario, you see, order is equal to two. Order is equal to two is running first. Okay. For tier down one, I gave order is equal to two. Order is equal to one is running second. R is equal to zero is running last. Okay. It's a reverse order. Here it's reverse, it's different. Okay. You can see that one, two, three, one, two, three, everything is working fine. Okay. Last scenario also we can check one, two, three, one, two, three. But here order is equal to zero, order is equal to one, R is equal to two. Here three, one, three, three is having order is equal to zero, two is having order is equal to one, one is having order is equal to two. Okay. Reverse order. So this is how, guys, uh, this is how if we have multiple hooks and uh, if you specify the order, they will be executed in that particular given order. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, 
I have one more session to take regarding the hooks. Okay, I have to explain about one attribute known as value attribute. Okay, I'll be covering in the next session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 32 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use value attribute in hooks. So let's get started. So in the previous sessions already covered a lot of information about hooks. That is what are hooks in Cucumber and how to use them. That is at the rate before and at the rate after hooks. And uh, I explained about tagged hooks in Cucumber then before step and after step hooks, then multiple hooks. Okay. Can we create, can we create multiple hooks and uh, can we specify their order? Okay. That I covered in the previous session. Now in this session, guys, I'm going to cover, okay the value attribute how to use this value attribute in hooks okay so let me switch to the eclipse id so in the previous session guys if you remember in the register.java file we created multiple hooks okay so i'll just uh, do one thing i'll remove all this uh, guys okay uh, i'll remove all this uh, hooks from this uh, register.java i'll just go to control shift to i'm just pressing so that all the warnings will go off okay so i'll close all this stuff and I'll just simply, uh, earlier we created the hook, hooks methods in search and I also have created hooks in register. Now I'm picking login, okay, just for the case, okay. You can create the hook methods in any of the step definition files as you already know from the previous sessions, right? So I'll create one of the method here, public void uh, setup method, okay. And uh, I'll just uh, annotate this method with at the rate before so that it become before hook. And here I'll write down system.order.println. I'll just mention plus plus, okay, before hook setup method got executed, okay, like this I'll write. And at the end also I'll write plus plus so that we can end the print statement properly. Public void uh, tier down I'll write down, okay, and I'll just annotate this uh, method with uh, at the rate after guys, at the rate after. Hook and hold the mouse on this at the rate after and import this uh, and write down system dot twenty ln. I'll write down double quotes. I'll just mention plus plus after hook set up uh, tear down right tear down tear down method got executed. Uh, I'll give minus minus here guys for uh, before hook I'm giving plus plus and for uh, after I'm just giving minus minus uh, just for the differentiation for the individual steps I'm giving double grade then okay so that's fine. So guys, uh, here, if you remember the tagged hooks, okay, if you don't want this particular hooks methods to be executed for all the feature files, all the scenarios in the, all the feature files, then what we have done, we can provide the tags here, right? I've already covered this in the previous, in double quotes, just provide double quotes here and just mention for only for the such scenarios, uh, at the rate such tag specified scenarios, which are generally there in the search dot feature file, this particular before hook should be executed before every scenario, okay? And here, after every scenario, at the rate search, okay. This, this you already know, guys. Okay, this you already know. If I go to the my runner and run this, you will see that this before hook and after hook will run for the scenarios in the search dot feature file, which are having that at the rate search tag specified. Okay, let's see that. You see, for all the other scenarios, uh, you will not see before and after. Okay, you see plus plus and minus minus symbols are nowhere any of for any of the scenarios. Only for such scenarios which are having the at the rate search tag, the last three scenarios, guys, you will see that before hook what is executed. And after hook got executed after the scenario. Before hook, before the scenario, after hook, after the scenario, before and after. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to explain here is I'll again go to the login.java where we have created the before and after hooks. Here, it is optional that you can provide value also. Okay. Either you can directly provide double quotes at the rate such inside the before hook to make this as a tagged hook, or you can also provide value attribute also. Okay. Value attribute is equal to like that also you can mention. Okay. Both are same guys. Okay. Uh, this value is optional when only one uh, one thing is there, okay? I'll show you guys what I mean to say. You'll get the same output first of all. Okay, when I run this, you'll get the same output for the scenarios in the search feature file which are specified with at the rate search tag, okay? This uh, before and after who's got executed. For remaining scenarios, you see, it's not executed, okay? Same output you got. See, for all the other scenarios, we don't have before and after. Only for search, at the rate search tag specified scenarios only before who kind of after who are coming. So it will be useful when you have multiple attributes here, guys. For example, if there are no other attributes apart from this tag, you can directly provide like this. There's no problem. But let's say you have some order is equal to order is equal to zero. You have okay, comma. 
in that case guys it is a problem so if you specify value is equal to then it will be okay this is the reason guys this is the reason behind uh, you uh, understanding about the value attribute when you have other attributes you can you cannot directly provide uh, uh, double quotes and editor it search for tagged hooks so in that case you have to provide this attribute known as value attribute this is the main purpose guys okay of providing the value attribute so if you have multiple uh, you know hook methods where you are giving order is called zero order is called one along with that you want to provide some tags also you want to make that hooks as tagged hook then you provide the value attribute okay these were the uh, hook methods uh, that is value attribute will come into picture okay so hope guys you understood what is the what is the use of value attribute and how to use that uh, in the hook methods okay any of the hook methods so that's all for this session guys uh, see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 33 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i'm going to explain and practically demonstrate about data tables so let's get started so, so far, we have completed a lot of topics on Cucumber in the previous sessions, like what is Cucumber and on. Okay. And finally, we came to this topic, okay, known as data tables. In the previous sessions, we covered a lot about hooks. Okay. So, refer those sessions, guys, we are not been to. So, otherwise, you can continue with this session without any problem. So, in this session, I'm going to cover about the data tables in a practical way. Okay. So, for that, I'll open Eclipse ID here. So this is a project we have created so far. I'll right click here and say close all in Eclipse ID. So everything will get closed. I'll expand this project, go to SRC test Java and we can see all this stuff here. So here guys, mainly where exactly these data tables will come into picture is something you have to think about. So we have created some scenarios in this Eclipse ID, uh, this project regarding the register.feature file. This is a place guys. Okay. In this particular scenarios of this uh, register.feature file, uh, there is a uh, there is a kind of situation where we can reduce the number of steps. Okay, you see, when user enters first name into the first name field, when user enters last name into the field, enters email into the field, telephone into the field, password into the field, confirm password into the field. Okay, so multiple, you see multiple line statements are there. Okay, if you have a big form to fill up, okay, when we have to use data tables in Cucumber, we have to use data tables. You see, for this login form, if you go to this login page, there are only two fields. For this kind of things, uh, we can simply write a user enters uh, uh, email address into the email field, username field, and password into the password field. We can write. But if you are trying to okay, automate this, uh, you know, list account page, you see many fields are there here, right? This is a very big form. So even a bigger size forms can exist, okay, other than this. But whatever it is, it's a uh, Kind of this much big then uh writing so many lines for filling up all these fields in this particular big form is not a good idea here in the in the scenarios of the feature file we should not be writing this many steps okay so how to reduce these steps for that we can use something known as data tables okay so what i will do here is user navigates through for, for example here the first scenario the register with mandatory fields is there okay so what i will do here is when user enters first name, Arun into the first name field, Motori into the last name field, email address, telephone, password. This many fields are there. So I'll simply write down here. Already given step is there in the background. So it will be repeated when user navigates the register account page. When user enters below details into the fields, below details into the fields. Okay, when user enters below details into the fields, and here I'll write down, I'll pipe symbol here. And this one is a first name, right? This value is for first name. So I'll write first name, hold on, I mean, pipe symbol, and I'll give the value here. Okay, this particular value I'll give here, guys. Okay, and like this first name, Arun. Okay, then uh, what else we have here? Uh, last name, we have last name, right? So, last name, I'll give this as a last name. Email, email, email or email address, whatever you want to say, give this email address.
Here you can remove the double quotes rights. They are not required. Okay. They are not required actually. I'm just copy pasting, right? So they are coming. I'll remove these double quotes. Let's see what will happen. Yeah. Then we have telephone. Here I'll write colon telephone type and give this telephone number. Okay. Then password. Password confirm password both are same. So let's give the password. Remove all this stuff, guys. Okay. We don't have to worry about all this stuff. Okay. Like this. We can remove the stuff. Okay. Now, here you can arrange these five symbols. Yeah. Okay. And select the privacy policy field. Click on continue button. Account should get created. You see? So multiple steps were converted into single step, guys. Then what we have to do? Then what we have to do, guys? Okay, I'll update this project once. Uh, so right click uh, Maven update project. Say okay. Yeah, the warning, uh, the highlights got gone. Anyhow, this step is not implemented yet. User enters below details into the field is not implemented. It's loading is still going on. It will highlight in a while. Let's wait. The progress is not done. You see, only this step is not implemented. Remaining all steps got implemented. So copy this. Uh, <clears throat> no need to copy this. Copy this part and come back to the restart.java. Here, somewhere, write down public void. User enters below details into the fields. Just create a method for that. Uh, here, underscore, you mentioned. Okay, keep on putting underscore. You already know from the previous session why we are doing this, right? You have to create a method out of the step. So, yeah, we'll try to replicate the step into the form of a method name as much as possible. That's fine. It don't have to be exact match of the step, but uh, it should be uh, kind of, you know, relevant. Kind of. At the rate when I will say, for the mouse on at the rate when, add missing attributes is saying, put circular brackets, put double quotes here. Again, space the same thing, guys. User enters uh, below details into the field. Space the same thing. That's it. Here, this part will match the step in the feature file, right? Step in the feature file. Simple, guys. In this, uh, here I'm going to put a parameter, guys. The name of the parameter is data table. Data table. Table. Like this, I'll write. Okay. For the mode on the data table. And you see, import this from IOCucumber data table, guys. Okay, import this from IOCucumber data table. You can mention data table also, not a problem. Yeah, after doing that, so how to get these uh, values and enter into the fields? So for that, we'll write down. We'll see how it goes. So here I'll write down. Sorry, I'll just move it here. Okay, so here I'll write down, just for the sake, I'll write down uh, this data table, copy, copy the data table, paste it here, the parameter uh, name I'm copy pasting, and say data table dot as map. You this one, guys, okay? You just go with this one, as map, string comma string it is taking. Let's see. So here I'll say string dot class, Whatever the key I am receiving will be in the form of string dot class, and the value also will be in the form of string dot class. Or if it, another data type, if you are providing, so depending on what you are passing from here, guys. If you are passing only integer values here on the other side, you can say integer dot class like that. Okay, here I am saying key as a string dot class, value also as string dot class. Okay, that's the reason I am putting string dot class, string dot class. This as map will return you map of string comma string. Okay. So I'll say map I, map is equal to for the mouse create local variable. Automatically it will be added as map of string comma string. Okay. Now I'll get the values with the help of this keys. Okay. Simply I'll say system.order.dll. 
Okay. Uh, first name is uh, first name is and uh, first name plus user has entered the first name. User has entered the first name as plus map dot map dot get get of key which key the key we have to provide in double quotes here okay what is the key name here first name is a key exact key name you have to copy paste from the feature file scenario okay like this you have to provide it will get you the value alone, okay and print in the output console similarly system dot order print Alan. user has entered entered the last name as plus map dot get off key which key last name key provide that here done this is also done then system dot order print ln user has entered the email address as plus map dot get off key that is this email address key the value or dot motor will be printed in the output console system dot out dot user has entered yeah entered the telephone as plus telephone that is map dot get off telephone okay and finally system dot out dot user has entered the uh, password as plus map dot get off password okay like this i'll write down so that's it guys you see all this uh, things got covered in a single step here it will be called automatically Click on save all and you see the highlighation is gone means it's working fine you can remove all the individual steps okay uh enters uh here from here onwards enters first name this this field is not required user enters the first name into the first name field is not required anymore and enters the last name is not required enters the email address step is not required telephone step is not required password is not required password confirm is not required okay you see we have reduced the number of lines of uh, code also, okay, with this approach. With the approach of the data table, we have done that. Fine. When I click on save all, you see the second uh, statement we have not replaced with this step, okay. So what I will do here is, here also, I'll write the same statement. I'll copy paste this one, okay. This part I'll copy paste, guys, okay, till password, right. Uh, this, this steps are not required anymore. The same steps you are going to provide, done. Then what about this one? <clears throat> So this one is register with all fields, so no problem. Uh, register with duplicate email address is there. Here we have to pass a duplicate email address, guys. Okay. Uh, so, so, so here is the problem. Enters the first name into the user, enters the last name into the last name field, email address into the email field. Um, enters the password into the password field. Okay. I think this also can be replaced. Uh, but we have to pass a duplicate email. That's the only thing that we have to do. So while passing the data, we have to pass a duplicate email case. Remaining all is fine. Okay. So okay, like this. User enters uh, below details into the fields. Here I'll write a motory cap nine something like that. Okay, a motory cap nine done. They meaning all are same and click on save all here. Let's see. Uh, the warnings have been gone. You see, number of uh, steps got reduced, and uh, here in the step definition file of this uh, register dot uh, feature file, 
lista.java of the lista.feature file, we have created this method where whatever the data that we are passing with the help of these uh, things right below the step, we are capturing them into the parameter known as, which is a parameter, which is declared with data table, okay, from Cucumber. This is from Cucumber, guys, okay? And then we converted this data table into a map, okay, where key is of string type and uh, value, uh, value is also of string type. And uh, after converting to map, it's very easy to get the values. Okay, map dot get of first name. If you say key means it will give you the value. Map dot get of here from here you are passing the data and and uh, from here you are retrieving the value of this uh, based on this keys. Okay, we have to give the exact key name uh, key names guys, and only we will get the exact values. Okay, that are passed from the scenarios. Fine guys. Now let me right click on this restart dot feature and say run as. Let's see what will happen. Okay, let's see whether it is running or not. We'll see if, if it is running properly, all these steps should be printed in the output console. Let's see what happened. So here you see, given user navigates to, then this particular step definition method got involved, user got navigated to register account page. Then you see, uh, all, when, this, when this particular step got, uh, you know, when this particular step got executed, then, this one, given user navigates to register account page, user has entered the first name as, you see, everything is coming fine, right? It's working fine. So only the difference is here, I'm not putting the double greater than symbol. So we are not able to feel the difference. For every print statement, you are providing double greater than, right? For this also will write double greater than, so it will be intact. So it's not compulsory that you have to provide double greater than. I'm just providing this in the print statement so that you guys can understand, okay, what's going on, okay? So the, which methods are getting <coughs> invoked are the methods in the step definition class are getting invoked or not. Again, I'll run this. I'm running the feature file separately, not using the runner class here. Okay, in the upcoming sessions, I'll show you how to run the uh, feature file separately with the help of runner class also. For now, I'm not there, so I'm not doing that. But for now, you can right click on the feature file and say run as a, okay? Say run as a Cucumber feature and it will run, okay, for now. but using runner class, how to run separately this feature file, I'm going to cover later, guys, okay? You see, for uh, for this particular step, th this particular method got invoked in the step definitions, okay? User got navigated to the account page. And when, for this particular step, user enters. These highlights are not happening in green color because we are not running this feature file with the help of runner class because we have that pretty plugin mentioned in the runner class as part of the previous session, I covered that, right? But here it is not coming because we are not running this feature file with the help of runner class, rather, Manually by right clicking on the feature file, we are running the class. Okay. So for this step, you see all these print statements. User has entered the first name as Arun. Okay. From um, using the key, we got the value. Okay. Tori and all the stuff. And uh, remaining steps got executed. All fields uh, without providing any fields. That's fine. Uh, then here, guys. Okay. Here you see duplicate email. Okay, also passed. You see, this is a purpose of the data table, guys, where if you have multiple values to be passed up a single step, you can do that, okay? So you don't have to write separate statements for each and every data that you have to pass, okay? And create a separate uh, step definition method separately for each and every value that is received, okay? So rather simply put a single step like this and in the parameter, you provide data table as a parameter and collect from there, convert that into map and uh, get the values of these keys from here and get the job done, okay? It will be more useful when I show you the uh, Selenium scenarios, okay? Here I'm not writing Selenium code, guys, dummy uh, Java print statements I'm using, but uh, how this will come into use in Selenium automation, I'm going to cover later, okay? Fine, guys. So hope, guys, you understood how to use data tables in Cucumber projects. So that's all for this session, guys, okay? See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 34 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to organize the Cucumber project. So let's get started. So let's organize the Cucumber project that we have created so far from the previous sessions where we have created a lot of feature files, step definition files, runner class, etc. But we have not organized them under different packages. So it's better when you are working with projects, we have to organize these files under our respective, okay, under respective packages. Now, let me quickly switch to Eclipse IDE 
where we can see the project that we have created so far in the previous sessions. You see, all these files I created under a single package known as test package. So I'm not going to put this package for all, I'm not going to put all these files in a single package, rather I'll right click on SRC test Java, okay? Okay, I'll right click on SRC test Java and uh, select new and uh, select package. I'll just name this package as features package, okay? Just make sure you're giving a proper spelling mistake, otherwise you will, things will go wrong, okay? F-E-A-T-U-R-E-S, click on finish. You can give any name here, I'm just giving the features as a name. I'll move all these feature files under this package, under this features package. You see, login.feature, register.feature, search.feature went into the features package. Now, next one. Next one is, uh, there are step definition files, classes, that is login.java, register.search.java. For that, I'll create one more package. I'll create, I'll just select this file, uh, I mean, right click on this SR, uh, SRC test Java and select new and select package here and just give the package name as step definitions. Okay, you can give any name, but I'm giving step definitions, uh, which will look good and understandable. Click on finish, make sure there are no spelling mistakes so that uh, things may go wrong. Step definitions, fine. Now I'll move this login, then register and search into this step definitions package. Click on OK. They're getting moved. Let's wait. Yeah, done. Now, feature files under features package, login register, step definition classes, or files under step definitions package. Now, my runner is under test package. I'll rename this package. Instead of creating a new package, I'll just rename the same package. I'll just say refactor, right click refactor, rename this package. I'll just name this package as runner, runner package. Okay, click on finish. Under runner, we have my runner. Okay. Under features, you can give any name for these packages, guys. There are no restrictions. So now I'll open this runner. I'll try to run all these feature files. Okay. But you are going to get an error. Okay. They're not going to run, guys. Okay. They are, they are not going to run. Or, or you will not get error, but uh, you will not see any output mostly. Okay. Right click run as uh, JNET test. You will not uh, see any output, guys. Proper output, you will see. No features, you see this kind of warning came. It's not an error actually, but no feature files have run. Okay, no features found at class path runner. It is saying, what is the reason behind this? You see earlier, this runner class, this feature files and this step definition, uh, Java files are part of the same package. So there was no problem for this runner class to uh, uh, fetch this feature files and for this feature files to fetch this step definitions. But now, they got organized under separate packages. Feature files got organized under features package. Runner class got organized under runner package. Step definition classes got uh, organized under step definition. So they are at a different path. So how to overcome this problem? How to make this runner class detect these feature files and how to make these feature files detect these step definitions and all the stuff. Further guys, here we have to go to this runner class. In the runner class, Okay, we have this Cucumber options. There's one, only one attribute and uh, two values are there. Spready plugin and uh, HTML, Cucumber HTML report plugins are there. Okay, I'll just press enter here. It will go to the new line. Okay, I can press enter here. Okay, here I'll press enter so that, uh, okay, one minute. Here I'll press enter. I'll just organize the stuff guys so that uh, it looks good. Okay. Now plugin is only one thing guys. Okay. Before plugin, I'll write one more thing. That is, uh, the, I will say features is equal to features attribute I'm giving guys equal to, I'll provide double quotes and put a comma here. Okay. Features is equal to where the feature files are available. F E A T U R E S. Okay. Where the feature files are available under SRC test Java under features package. Just give that path SRC test java slash under features package we have this give the name of the package that is a f a t u r e s f a t u r yeah features okay all the feature files are there under the features package like this we have to give the path now after putting the comma here press enter now say glue guys another attribute you have to give that as glue in the glue again give double quotes put a comma here in the glue, you don't have to mention 
you don't have to mention the step definitions from the SRC test Java guys. Directly, you can give step definitions, guys. Okay. Step definitions because these features and step definitions are under the same SRC test Java. So, feature files for feature files to detect this uh, step definitions again, you don't have to provide SRC test Java. Already, feature files are there under the features package of SRC test Java. So, here only give the package name under SRC test Java. That is step definitions. Okay, like this, you give that's it. Now, runner class is able to detect the feature files, and feature files are able to detect the step definitions package. Okay. So everything is intact. Now let's see whether these things are resolved or not. Okay. Now this time the feature files should run and we should not get uh, this kind of error, like no features found that kind of error we should not get or warning we should not get. Rather, we should get a proper output. Okay. And uh, now right click on this runner and say JUnit test. Let's see what will happen. This time it should work. You see, it's working fine. In the Eclipse ID, we got the proper output. Pretty plugin, everything got worked out, okay? You see, user got navigated and all the stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Everything is working fine, guys, okay? Everything is working fine. You can see all the scenarios got, all the scenarios in all the different feature files got executed without any problem, right? Then, you can see the JNIT also. Here also we got, you see data driven uh, tests. Then all the other uh, scenarios of the login register, four and such, three, everything got executed without any problem. And also we can see the report guys, HTML, Cucumber HTML report also we can say pretty also got worked out because you see if you're getting this green color uh, uh, steps means, steps in the scenarios means, scenarios of the feature file means uh, pretty got worked out. And what about the HTML uh, report, Cucumber HTML report? Let's see. It will be generated under the target folder, guys. Let's rephrase the project a bit once and uh, expand the target. And we got the report here. Okay. Right click, uh, open with and say web browser. Okay. It will open. You see, we got the report properly. We got the report. Everything is fine. Here, data tables we have used in the register scenario. Okay. All the data tables are displaying like this. Fine. Such functionality scenarios. Everything is fine, guys. Okay, everything is working fine. So this is how guys we have to organize. Okay, organizing the Cucumber project. Okay, we have to organize the Cucumber project like this. Okay, Fe feature files should be there under the fe features package. Runner class should be there under the runner package. You can have multiple runner class based on your project requirements. And step definition classes can should be under the step definitions package. And the runner class you provide this features attribute with uh, some value of the path of this uh, feature files. So in the next session, I'll show you guys how to run uh, specific feature files. Okay, here when I run the run this runner class, it is runner class is running all the feature files. But uh, I'm going to show you how to run a specific feature file in the next session. Okay, fine. This glue is actually attaching the feature files to the step definitions. Did you see? Step definition uh, feature files are now able to detect the step definitions and its uh, step definitions uh, which are created under the Okay, methods. Okay, we have created step definition methods in this step definition classes, right? The implementation of the each and every step has been done in this uh, step definition classes. Okay, these feature files are not glued with the, the step definition methods in the step definition classes of this step definitions package. Okay, that's also done. So everything is fine. So that's all for this session, guys. See you in the next session. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 35 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to run a specific feature file. So let's get started. So guys, in the previous session, I explained how to organize your Cucumber project. Okay. And thereafter run the feature files with the help of runner class. Now in this session, I'm going to practically demonstrate how to run a particular or specific feature file. Okay. So for that, I'll quickly switch to Eclipse ID where we have this runner class, okay, which is opened as part of the previous session. And here you see the path we are giving, okay, as a value for this features attribute in this Cucumber options, okay, that is features is equal to SRC test Java. And this is the package under which feature files are available. Under features package, all these feature files are available. So if I run this, you will see that all the three feature files will run, okay, right click run as you will see that under this package, under the features package, whatever the feature files are there and the scenarios are there, everything will run. 
Okay, here you can see the complete output. And if you go to JNode, you can clearly see that. So under login feature file, all this scenarios got run. Okay, under the register feature file, all these scenarios got run. Under search feature file, all these three scenarios got run. So this runner class is running all the feature files. What if I want to run only a particular feature file? Let's say I want to run only the search.feature file where three scenarios are available. For that, guys, here in this path, you just give slash, okay, forward slash, and just give the name of the feature file and extension of the feature file. That is search dot search dot feature. Okay, like this, you just give. And now save all and click on right click run as JNE test. Let's see what will happen. It should run only the search dot features related scenarios. You see only the three scenarios from the search one, two, three you can clearly see here under JNE test case, only the search dot feature related scenarios got run search for a valid product, search for a non-existing product, search without pro pro providing any product, only the search feature file got run. This is how guys we can run specific feature files. Okay. A particular feature file and its scenarios, if you want to run, you have to extend this. Otherwise, if you want to run all the feature files available in the project at a go, then you just provide the path till the package name where under which the feature files are available. So hope guys, you understood how to run a specific or particular feature file in the Cucumber project from this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. welcome to part 36 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to organize the feature files in Maven project. So let's get started. So how to organize the feature files in Maven project? In the previous sessions, I already have demonstrated how to organize the, okay, the files in the Cucumber project, like feature files, step definition files, and runner classes how to organize the basic organization I have covered in the previous session, right? Now, so whatever the organization I have done in the previous session is not the final one, okay? If you are using a Maven project, okay? It's better that we have to move the feature files to a better location, okay? So all these details I'm going to practically demonstrate in this session. So let me quickly switch to Eclipse IDE and you can see that as part of the previous sessions, we have uh, grouped the feature files into the features package and we have grouped the step definition classes into the step definitions package and we have grouped this uh, runner class into this runner package. This is the basic organization we have done and this is what is the runner class that is uh, currently open. Okay, so this is the situation. So, but is this the correct location where the feature files need to be there in the project? You can still have them there, it's not a problem, but it is recommended, okay, if you are using a Maven project, Maven Cucumber project, it's recommended that features package should be part of another source folder rather than putting the features under SRC test Java. It is recommended that you put this uh, features under SRC test resources. But if you see here, there are only two source folders. One is SRC main Java, other one is SRC test Java. So what I'll do is I'll right click on this project and create another source folder. Like here, you have to say source folder, select a, a source folder option in the new menu. Okay. Once you do that, you have to give SRC uh, test resources. Like this, you give source folder name, SRC test resources, R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E-S. -E okay, click on finish. Like this, you create another, okay? Once this is done, guys, now expand this SRC test Java and copy these features along with these feature files and uh, paste them under the SRC test resources like this. Okay, right click and simply paste them. Now it's done. Now features are part of the SRC test resources. You can delete these features from here. You can delete this package and feature files from here. And now you have the features files properly organized under, okay, the, the better way to organize this one, guys, okay? Runner, runner under the SRC test Java will be there here. Step definitions will be there under SRC test Java under the step definitions package. And, but features files, it's better place, okay? Even though we have, uh, we can have this feature files under SRC test Java, but uh, it is recommended that it's kind of optional though, but it's the best place, okay? If you have, if you ask me what is the best place for this uh, feature files, so it's nothing but under Maven project, under SRC test resources, we generally put the feature files, okay? Fine, now, some path has been changed for these features, right? Uh, this path is changed, okay? This, uh, this path got changed. Now, these features are part of the SRC test resources. So what we can do is, 
here src slash test instead of java you write resources r a s o u r c s okay just make sure you are not uh, doing any spelling mistakes here r a s o u r c s yeah done and features okay under the features package we have the feature file that's it guys there's a small change you have to do in your projects okay better to put all your feature files under the features package of src test resources okay that's the best place right click run as jna test you see everything will run properly you go to this uh jna thing okay just give me a second let me see yeah here jna thing is here expand expand you see all the scenarios of all the feature files have run successfully so that's all for this session guys hope you understood uh, what is the best place for putting feature files in a maven project that is under src test resources under that you create a package known as a features package under that you put all your feature files and update that path location in the runner class that's all okay so see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 37 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to run Cucumber tests using Maven. So let's get started. Till the previous sessions, we are running the Cucumber tests using the runner class, where the runner class is invoking the feature files and feature files are invoking the step definitions, right? But in this session, I'm going to show you how to run the Cucumber test in this Maven project using Maven. So let's switch to the practical mode now. So here you can see the runner class guys, which is actually invoking the feature files under this feature pa features package. And once this runner class invokes, with the help of JNIT, we are running actually, okay? With the help of JNIT, we are running the test. Okay, JNIT is invoking these feature files using the via this runner class and feature files are invoking the step definition files and step definition files are invoking the implemented methods inside them for each and every step of these feature files. Okay, that's how the tests are running so far. But what I'm going to teach you now is, or practically show you now is, okay, how to use Maven to run this test instead of uh, JUnit and all. Okay, JUnit or runner class. So for that guys, I'll right click on this project and select run as option. And when you say run as option, we'll get all these Maven options here. Okay. So why we are getting this Maven options? In Eclipse IDE, by default, Maven plugin is already installed. We don't have to separately install it. Okay? In the latest versions of Eclipse IDE, Maven plugin comes by default, guys. Okay. So that's the reason when you right click on this project and select run as, you'll get Maven options also. Okay. In Eclipse IDE. Now I need to select this Maven test. Okay. In order to run this uh, uh, test in the project with the help of Maven, I have to select this uh, right click on the project, run as, and select Maven test. But unfortunately, when I select the option, the test will not run. We'll see that none of these feature file scenarios will run now. We'll see that, okay? Just wait. So it says build success, but did you see any uh, feature file scenarios running? No, right? They have not run. So what's the problem? The problem is there are few rules. Okay, if you want to run this project with the help of Maven and uh, run the test in this project with the help of Maven, there are few rules. That is, uh, whatever the files, Java files that you want to run with the help of Maven should be having a test keyword either at the beginning of the Java file or at the end of the Java file name. Okay. So for example, if you want to run this login.java, okay, then test keyword should be there before the login or either after the login. Okay. Similarly, okay. So th there are four Java files here. As you can see in this project, we have myrunner.java, we have login.java, register.java and such.java test keyword should be there either at the beginning or ending of this file names. But here to run all this, to invoke all these feature files, which Java file we are using? My runner.java file we are using. So if you update this name of this my runner to either test my runner or my runner test or whatever it is, okay, add the test keyword, okay, instead of my, I just put test, that's also fine, okay, test runner or runner test, whatever you want to do, okay. Just rename this uh, class, guys, okay? Class name here. Instead of my, I'll write test runner, okay? So if the Java file name doesn't have the test keyword either at the beginning or ending of the test, Maven will not be able to identify, guys, okay? So hover the mouse on this test runner and rename the file to test runner.java. You can even put this test uh, keyword after the runner also. That also will work, okay? 
Now, simply I'm putting the test keyword at the beginning. Uh, the naming looks good. Test runner, okay, or runner test, any name you can give. That's all. That's okay until we have this test keyword in the beginning and ending of the file class file name. So here also the file name got changed to test runner. Whatever the class name I changed, the file name also got changed to test runner. Now I simply right click this time. And one more rule is there, okay? First rule is, uh, you see, you should have the, uh, this, uh, whatever the classes should run, right? The class should have the test as a keyword. Second rule is that go to com.xml file. Since we have created this project with the help of, uh, we have created this Maven project by using a Maven quick start, a Maven archetype quick start uh, template. So all these things have come by default. Most of the things in this form.xml uh, XML file have come by default, including this uh, this build and plugin section. Okay, plugin section. In the plugin section, under the plugins, there should be Maven Surefire plugin available. Okay, if not, Maven will not be able to run this uh, required Java file having the test keyword. Okay. So here you see there is something like Maven Surefire plugin. Okay, there's a Maven Surefire plugin. So if this is not there in your uh, plugins section of your form.xml file, you have to add it, guys. Okay, you can get it from online, guys. Just search Maven Surefire plugin. You will. Okay, you can get it from online. Okay, Maven Surefire plugin. Just search it online, guys. And uh, just go to this website and uh, scroll down. If you are not getting anything, uh, just go to other one. Let's see what is there here. This is a MVN repository. That's okay. Mm, POM. Okay. I'll say POM. I'll just click on this. Now it's coming. Uh, the moment I added this POM keyword to this Maven Surefire plugin, I'm getting this a different example. Guys. Usage uh, page is coming. In the usage page, as you can see, you see, you can copy this part. Okay. You can copy this part, guys. Okay. Or if you don't have this uh, Maven Surefire plugin in your uh, format XML file, you can copy from here. That's okay. You can copy from here. Okay. So fine. Once you have this Maven Surefire plugin in the, uh, inside the, uh, what do you call, or uh, the build, okay, plugin section of this format XML file. Okay. Once you have that, do one thing, right click on this project and select run as Maven test. Okay. This time it should run. Okay. This time we have the test keyword in the runner class. Only the Java files having the test keyword will be running in the beginning or ending will be running as this login register and such will be indirectly invoked. Okay. Because runner class will uh, invoke the feature files, feature files will invoke the step definition classes, step definition classes will, you see, tests are running. You see, here if you are getting this test option and uh, you see earlier only we got uh, build successful and all, but this time we got test and running the test, test runner. Okay. Test runner has run. Okay. Runner.test runner has run with the help of Maven. Because we have named the Java file to test runners, Java file to test runner. Okay. And once you run it, you see all the, all the, all these things got, uh, you know, so here it is clearly saying test run is equal to 14, 14 tests. Okay. From all these feature files, 14 scenarios from all these feature files have run with the help of Maven guys. So hope guys you understood how to run the test, uh, the Cucumber projects using Maven. Okay. In this session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all, welcome to part 38 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to override the tags that are specified in the runner class of Cucumber projects using the Maven command line command. So let's get started. Till the previous sessions, okay, in order to specify the tags, we have specified them in the runner class okay and appropriate scenarios in the feature files which are okay relating to that particular tag specified in the runner class were running right that happened till now now i'll show you how to specify the tags from the command line okay using the maven commands from command line also we can specify the tags okay all those things i'm going to cover in this session in a detailed manner guys so this is the command we have to use in the um, uh, for command line okay in the command prompt we have to type this command guys then it's going to work so anyhow i'm going to show practically guys till then uh, just follow my session let so i have quickly switched to eclipse id here as you can see we have this runner class if i run this guys all the feature files will run okay here login all the scenarios in all the feature files will run so what i will do is i don't want to run all the scenarios in all the feature files 
rather i want to run only the smoke test okay here you see in the login dot feature the first one is smoke second one is also smoke i'll do one thing guys i'll remove smoke for for scenarios uh, intentionally so that i don't want many scenarios to run only second one i am taking making it smoke guys that's okay and uh, remaining all are normal okay the first one is normal second one is now smoke okay Similarly, register dot feature file. We have this one as smoke and uh, this second one also as smoke. That's okay. Out of four, two are smoke. In search, out of three, we have one as smoke. In the login, we have one as smoke. In the register, we have two as smoke. In the search, we have one as smoke. That is total four scenarios are there across the feature files, which are tagged with at the rate smoke tag name. Okay. So if I want to only run that particular uh, scenario having that at the rate smoke tag, so what I will do here is here I'll add tags is equal to double quotes. I'll provide put a comma here, guys. Okay. So here at the rate, smoke you write. Okay. So now if you run this, now if you run this uh, runner class using JUnit or whatever it is, you will see that only only the four scenarios from across these feature files which are tagged with at the rate smoke will run. So the running has been completed. You can see this one has smoke. Whatever that has run has at the rate smoke tag. Only the scenarios having at the rate smoke has run, have run, okay, at the rate smoke. So we can see this uh, JUnit results also and uh, can see that, okay, under user login, only one scenario having the at the rate smoke tag has run. Uh, registration, restarted feature file, two scenarios have the smoke tag, they got run and search for a valid product has Search uh, dot feature file has one scenario having that uh, smoke tag. Okay, now I'll show you how to override this uh, tags that are specified in the runner class using the Maven command line. Okay, I'll specify one command. I'll write down some command in the Maven. Okay, command line, and I'll show you. So before that, we'll do one thing. Uh, that is, first of all, uh, in the previous session, I showed you how to run this. Uh, Kukumba test with the help of Maven from the Eclipse ID, right? Right click, uh, run as Maven test we have said, uh, and uh, it will it will run this uh, test runner which is having the test keyword, and uh, the test runner will invoke this feature files having the smoke tags, okay? And uh, respective step definition files also will be invoked internally, okay? That's what happened so far. Now what I want to do is, I'll, I'll go to the project location, guys. I want to do it everything from command line now. Okay, I don't even want to open the Eclipse ID. Without Eclipse ID open, I want to run the Kukumba test. With the help of Maven, guys, we can do that. Without Eclipse ID, with the help of Maven, we can run the Kukumba test. Okay, and also we can override this uh, tags also, okay, from the command line. I'll show you guys everything I'm going to show you in this session. So for that, I'll go to the location where uh, this project is available. I'll select properties, guys. This is the location where the project is available. I'll go to the location. This is the location. Over. Open the project folder, guys, where you will see this form.xml file. Okay, this is the location we have to run the Maven. Okay, so you can close Eclipse ID, guys. There is no issue. You can just close Eclipse ID. It's not required. And you can see that uh, before closing in that runner class, uh, tax is equal to smoke is mentioned. We are going to override the tag. That's anyhow. So for now, wherever the form.xml file is visible in this project, select that project path and type CMD, guys. When you type CMD, you'll get this command prompt. Okay, you'll get this command prompt where you will write MVN space test. Just simply write MVN test case, nothing much. Okay, MVN test. Press enter, you see, MVN is not recognized. That means Maven is not recognized. So just go back. I intentionally type this command, guys. Now if I say MVN hyphen version, you will not get the version also. You see, again, MVN is not recognized. Why? The command prompt is not recognizing the uh, Maven because Maven is not installed in this machine. Okay. Maven is available by default in Eclipse ID, guys. That's correct. But Maven is okay to, uh, to run the test using Maven from the command line. You need to have Maven software installed in your machine the way the Java is installed in your machine and configured. Okay. Same thing we have to do, guys. For that, I'll go to this uh, browser, open the new tab, and search for uh, M I mean, uh, download Maven, guys. That's it. Okay. Simply I'll say download Maven, guys. Nothing much. And uh, you will be provided this link, download Apache Maven. Click on that link, guys. You will scroll down. On this link, just scroll down, guys. Uh, here you see binary zip archive will be there. This bin zip folder will be there. Click on that zip file. A zip file will be downloaded into your machine. 
So we have to extract the zip file, guys. Okay, once it is downloaded, we have to extract the zip file. So still it is downloading, guys. I'll pause the video and resume once it is downloaded so that I don't want to waste your time. As you can see, guys, the uh, zip file got downloaded. I'll uh, just click on this option and say show in folder. It gets generally downloaded in the downloads folder, guys. This is the location where Maven software got downloaded. I'll extract this zip file, guys. I'll extract this zip file. Extract all. Click on extract. Okay. Uh, the zip file got extracted, guys. Uh, you see, we got this FHE Maven inside that again. We have these bin folders and all. Wherever the folder in which we have the bin and all these things, right? Uh, you just go to that, copy that folder, guys, which has the bin folder inside. Okay. Copy this. Don't double copy this Apache Maven. Copy the only folder inside folder which has a bin. Okay. Don't copy this uh, outer uh, Apache Maven. Okay. Inner Apache Maven you have to copy, which has, which directly has the if you open that, you should get this bin. That, that folder you have to copy. And come to the any location in your machine, guys. I generally prefer uh, going to C drive and paste it, okay? I just pasted it, guys. Uh, you see, it's getting pasted. You see, here we got Apache Maven. I'll open this folder, guys. I'll copy this path. I'll copy this path. This is a Maven home path. I'll click on the search and say edit system environment variables. I'll get this dialog, okay? Once I do that, I'll click on and that one's a tab. I'll click on environment variables and here I'll select new and uh, say maven underscore home. Okay. In capital letters with underscore I'll give and provide the path and click on OK and uh, select the path and click on edit. And uh, again, click on new and paste it, guys. I have to give the path till the bin folder, guys. Just say slash bin, guys. Okay. That's it. Okay. You have to give the home, home path. Under that, you have to go inside the bin folder slash bin you mentioned. That's enough. Say okay, say okay. So this bin folder path we have given in the um, pre-existing uh, path system variable in that environment variables. Okay, done. That's it, guys. So what now? What next you have to do now is again go to the project location, guys. Uh, just go to the Eclipse ID that project location. Now uh, just let me see where exactly that is there in my machine. Okay, let me go to the project because I don't have Eclipse ID open now. So I have to find that uh, place where I have that uh, pro uh, project available, okay? So uh, this Cucumber BDD is a workspace. In that we created Tutorials Ninja project. And this is the project, guys. This is the project we are working on. So I have not opened Eclipse ID, guys. Currently Eclipse ID is closed. Here now, earlier, when I uh, selected this path and typed CMD, the command prompt will open at this location, guys. Tutorials Ninja project location. I don't have to type. C drive, QFX and all those stuff. Automatically, the command prompt will open from this folder location. So it's a, it's a kind of a shortcut you can say or tip uh, where you can directly go to the folder, okay, in Windows. Now here we have the pom.xml file, guys. We have to see whether pom.xml file is visible. If it is visible, we can uh, write on MVN test, guys. MVN test uh, will invoke the, okay, MVN test. You see, from command line, we are running the test in Maven project, okay? Running the Cucumber test in this project with the help of MVN test case. This will invoke the runner class, as you already know, when the Eclipse IDO is open, uh, when you run the test using MVN, uh, Maven test, uh, right-click run as Maven test from Eclipse IDE, what happened? It was invoking the runner class. Runner class has invoked the feature files. Feature files have invoked the step definitions that happened. And if you see, before I close the Eclipse IDE, okay, before I close the Eclipse IDE, here, uh, if you go to this uh, SRC uh, test uh, Java runner, if you see that guys in the runner class, if you observe, we have specified the tax is equal to smoke guys. Okay. Tax is equal to smoke is there in the project. Again, I'll go back to the place where we have the pom.xml file and the command prompt is opened also at the, uh, where the pom.xml file is visible. I'll simply say MVN test, it will invoke the smoke test case. Only the smoke test will run because in the runner class, MVN, MVN test will invoke Maven. Maven will invoke the runner class. Runner class will invoke the feature files. In the runner class, what we have mentioned, tax as tax is equal to smoke we have mentioned. Okay. You see, uh, you see only four scenarios have run. That is a four smoke scenarios. Okay. All the four smoke scenarios have run, guys. You can see at the red smoke. Okay. Here also at the red smoke. Here also at the red smoke, at the red smoke. So I don't want a uh, smoke test to run. Uh, rather, I want to run uh, all, all the scenarios from the search file, search.feature file. So what is the tag name we have? At the rate search is the tag name. If you see here for the last one, 
at the rate such is attack only the scenarios which i have at the rate such i want to run there are three scenarios having at the rate such tag in the such dot feature file so what i will do now is here i will run a different command this time the, that command will override the tags in the runner class specified in the runner class the command will be a continuation guys mvn test will be saying hyphen d cucumber you have type like this okay hyphen d cucumber dot okay filter dot tags is equal to in double quotes you provide the tag uh, anything uh, any tags that generally you provide in runner class right same thing you can provide from the command line guys okay here i'll say search tag, okay such tag i'll provide and press enter if you press enter here this at the rate search will override the at the rate uh, smoke in the runner class okay and only the search related scenarios search at the rate search specified tag scenarios uh, in the Kumbar project will run okay you see here only three tests will run having the other it's such okay it's not working out uh, or okay it's continuing guys okay it started just wait wait here it is running actually okay that's the old output now we are getting it latest output you see what happened here four are there do i have four here let's see what's happening looks like it's not overriding at the red smoke is still coming guys at the red smoke is coming okay it's not overriding guys okay and that's uh smoke is still there so it's not overriding what we can do then i'll do one thing guys uh this part is not working out guys. okay this part is not working out so i'll just close this once and uh, try this again cmd mvn and test uh, hyphen d cucumber dot filter dot x is equal to i'll say at the rate search guys okay at the rate search C A R C H. let's see what will happen this time if it is still not working uh, then we have to go with another approach for that okay tests which tests are running let's see it's not take much time though again four are coming means it's not working fine okay only the tags which are specified in the only the tags that are specified in the runner class are running but not from the command prompt i'll do one thing i'll go to src test java and see if I remove this runner, I'll if I remove this, uh, you know, uh, tax is equal to from here. Is it working or not? If from the command line, is it working or not? I will see. Okay. If may not be overriding guys, but uh, is it working? Whether whatever the tags we are giving from the command line are working or not, I'll check. Okay. I'll just close this and again open CMD. Uh, here I'll say MBN test uh, hyphen D cucumber dot filter dot tax is equal to at the rate search run this let's see what will happen this time okay how many tests are running let's see okay looks like all the 14 tests are running that means this command line is not working at all okay this uh, command line thing is not working at all let me check once okay there is a small mistake that i have done guys okay uh you see you see here the d cucumber c should not be capital guys i just mentioned c as capital guys that's the reason it was not working so let me do one thing i'll go to the project again and uh, i'll go to the src test java and again put tags there okay because uh, i thought there is a problem with uh, it's not overriding, but uh, I have done the mistake where I, uh, instead of specifying lower, lower case C, I specified upper case C guys. Okay. Because of which it, things are not working here. Again, I'll mention tax is equal to the runner class tax is already there. Okay. This is not the problem. It's not the problem here. I'll write at the rate earlier. What is there at the rate? Uh, smoke is there. Okay. So smoke test should not run now because I'm from command line. We are giving a different option. Okay. Different tag that tag should override the tag in the runner class. That's what is expected. MVN test uh, here I'll say hyphen D here uppercase C I'm giving that's the problem you have to give lowercase cucumber dot filter dot x is equal to at the rate I'll give search and press enter this time only three should run if it is really overriding only three should run instead of four smoke only three search should run okay let's see what will happen Earlier, I was giving capital C because of which, of which uh, the problem happened, but now I corrected it. You see, only three has run, okay? The problem is with the command. You have to give the command properly, guys. 
even though I had uh, written here properly, but uh, I just mentioned capital C, which was causing the problem. So if you have given the command properly, you can see that clearly see that only three scenarios have run, only three scenarios have run, and all the scenarios will have the at the rate such tag, at the rate such, at the rate such, and at the rate such, okay? Tags are there, only the scenarios having at the rate such tag mentioned have run, that is total three scenarios, okay? Smoke is mentioned, four scenarios were there, but at the rate such has only three scenarios. So hope guys you understood uh, how to override the tax in the runner class using Maven. Though in the runner class you mentioned tax is equal to at the rate smoke, but from the command line, in the Maven command, if you have given the tax is uh, this, uh, okay? If you given a proper command and tax is equal to at the rate, uh, you know, search kind of thing, only the at the rate search, okay, were running because at the rate search tax were overriding the at the rate uh, smoke tax mentioned in the runner class. So how guys you understood this session on how to override the tax in the runner class using Maven command line command. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 39 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate the default tax in Cucumber. So let's get started. So in the previous sessions of this uh, training series, I've already covered about tags and uh, how we use tags and all, okay? Most of the tags that have covered in the previous sessions will fall into the custom tags category, okay? There are two types of tags in Cucumber, okay? That we use in Cucumber. One is custom tags, okay? These are your completely user-defined tags, guys. Any name you can provide. At the rate smoke, you can say. At the rate Arun, you can say, okay? At the rate color, you can say whatever the name whatever the thing that you want to specify, it's a completely user-defined tag. But what about the other type of tags that I'm going to cover in this session? That is default tags. The second category or type of the tags in Co that we use in Cucumber are default tags. Are they predefined tags? The answer is no case. Are they user-defined tags? Answer is yes. Okay, similar to custom tags, these default tags are also the user-defined tags, but they are widely used as a standard in the industry, okay? Though they the, though these default tags are user-defined tags, but they are commonly used in the industry, guys. That's why we categorize them into the default tags and remaining into custom tags. Default tags are also custom tags, but these are widely used as a standard in the market. So we have to remember this kind of tags, like uh, for this situation, what the industry standard tags are, okay? Instead of giving our own user-defined names, if we follow some user-defined, I mean, uh, commonly used uh, kind of tag names in the across the industry, that will be good, right? So these are like this, okay? It doesn't mean that there's no predefined stuff behind this at the rate div, at the rate ignore, at the rate w. These three are the most commonly used uh, default tags in Cucumber projects. These are user-defined tags only, guys. They can have any name, okay? Here, at the rate dev, at the rate development can be there, at the rate ignore, at the rate uh, work in progress can be there, and all those stuff. But these are commonly used as a standard across the industry, though they are user-defined tags. So it's better to have some knowledge about them, okay? So in what situation we use this default tags in Cucumber projects that I'm going to cover in this session. For that, I'll quickly switch to this uh, Eclipse ID, okay? So I'll go to this project, I'll expand this, and under SRT test Java, here, uh, here, where are the features? Under SRT test resources, we have the features here. I'll go to the features. For example, I'll take one example, guys. Here, I'll take something like I will write at the rate dev here. This is one of the, what tag? Default tag. It's a user-defined only, but default tag, which is commonly used as a standard across the industry, guys. So when the, general in general, uh, when this at the rate dev tag is being used in the industry as a common thing or a standard thing, you see, the tester has already written the scenario and the steps and all the stuff, but the developer has not developed this particular scenario. Okay. The real in the real application, the this particular functionality is not developed yet, but beforehand itself, the, uh, the tester has started writing the layout of that uh, test automation test for uh, testing that particular functionality for which the developer has not yet written the code or the development is written, uh, is in progress for that. Okay. It's not released into the tester. Okay. The tester has not received this particular functionality, okay, for testing purpose. Still, just to save time, tester to be in advanced mode has written this scenario. But tester is not going to run this test, okay? 
So this kind of situation where the tester want to write but don't want to run such kind of things, the tester will provide at the rate dev. This particular functionality is yet to be developed or in the progress of development. Anything. It's currently in the developer shoes. It's it, this functionality doesn't has not come to the tester's end. Okay. In that situation, we'll write at the rate dev. Okay. So now that's fine. What is the next one? Okay, I'll just uh, update this project. Sometimes you see already the implement steps are implemented, but uh, highlights are coming. Sometimes when it comes, just right click on the project, guys. And say Maven and say update project. Okay, the, uh, it will update the project. And uh, once it is mapped with the step definitions, it will again it will map this uh, steps with the step definitions and the highlights may go up. Okay, let's wait until this building process is over. So let the building process be over. Currently, we have marked one of the scenarios at the rate dev for now. Okay, so there are other default tags that are commonly uh, those are user defined tags only, but uh, commonly used as standard across the industry. Those other two tags uh, that I would like to explain are at the rate ignore. You say that may be some situations where you don't want to run one of the scenarios. For example, here the last scenario here you don't want to run guys. Okay, login without providing any credentials. You don't want to run for this time. Simply put at the rate ignore. Remaining all scenarios will run. It, still, it will not happen, guys. Okay, you have to change the runner code. Okay, here uh, he uh, still uh, just by putting at the right dev at the right ignore, nothing will happen, guys. These are user defined tags. Okay, this, uh, if you run this using runner class, all these uh, things will uh, still run. If, despite of putting at the right dev at the right ignore, I'm just explaining you the meaning why you're providing this at the right tags. Okay, at the right dev when you provide. Okay, when you feel that this particular scenario is currently under development or it to be developed. And tester, uh, it has not come to the tester end. Then we'll write at the red dev. There may be some situations where the tester don't want to test this particular. Okay, don't want to uh, run this as part of the automation suit. Okay, and remaining all want to run or what remaining scenarios which are not specified with at the red ignore the tester want to run. In that cases, okay, the develop development is done and testing. Uh, uh, the functionality came to the testing end, uh, end but due to some X Y Z reasons. The tester don't want to run a particular scenario in the particular run, whatever it is. Okay, then in such cases, uh, we generally provide it at the rate ignore, guys. This will not be applicable until you do some changes in the runner class, guys. Okay, this will not come to effectiveness. Okay, I'll show you how to make this uh, at the rate dev, at the rate ignore scenarios, uh, and uh, at the rate WIP scenarios to not run. Okay, I'll show you one way. Okay, so what's the other one? Let's take one more scenario, guys. In the same login, I'll take one more scenario, guys. Uh, here, I'll say at the rate WIP. WIP means what developers have completed guys. Okay. When you use it at the rate WIP as a tag for a particular scenario, developers have already written the code and uh, gave it to the testers. Now testers are still working off working on this particular scenario. Okay. So they are writing automation scripts for this particular scenario where the work to be done by testers is not completed. Okay. Testers are still working in automating this scenario. It's not, it's partially done. In such cases, it's not a good idea to run this particular scenario, right? Testers have not completed automating this particular scenario, though the, though the development for this scenario is completed. Okay. In the in such cases, uh, the testers will put at the rate WIP. So work in progress. Testers work is still in progress, like that kind of thing. Here, development work is not completed. Testers are waiting for the development uh, to be completed so that they can complete this one. But due to uh, to save time, they have written this scenario. In this case, WIP means developers have completed the work and gave to the testers the functionality as part of the build. And testers are still in the process of writing the automation. Okay, so automation scripts for this particular scenario, and they have not completed it. In the uh, till the automation is completed for this scenario, in automation implementation is completed for this scenario, they will not remove the at the rate WIP. Testers will not remove at the rate WIP. There may be some random situations where some scenarios. Testers will not decide to run as part of the suit or whatever it is. Okay, so to be run in that cases, uh, testers will put at the rate ignore. Okay, that is the reason. This that is the reason for putting at the rate dev, at the rate WIP and at the rate ignore in the real time as part of the default tags in this Cucumber projects. But these tags are of no use if you just provide them as it is like this at the rate dev at the rate W. They are of no use, guys. You have to go to the runner class. Okay, in the runner class, you have to mention here. Okay, here let's say at the rate all. And negation of I mean not of I not not what <clears throat> not of at the rate dev and not of at the rate WIP and not of at the rate 
What is the other one? Ignore. Okay. So run all the scenarios in this feature files. Okay. Run all the scenarios in this feature files except dev WIP. Except the tags which are except the scenarios which are marked with the tags at the rate dev, at the rate WIP, at the rate ignore. Then only this dev. WAP and ignore will come to use guys. Otherwise, there is no use of providing that names. Okay, they are user defined tags only, but are commonly used across the industry as a standard. So we have to remember few names. That's it. Okay, remaining all custom names you don't have to remember. Okay, now run this runner class and see whether uh, except that uh, dev WAP and ignore everything is running or not. Okay, let's see that. So out of 14, how many will run? Let's see, there is a problem here, guys. Okay, no class definition found error is coming. Class not found exception. Uh, what is the problem here? I'm not waiting. So let me close this. Here I'll right click and say run as JNET test. I'll see at, again if I'm getting the same problem, then I'll see. Yeah, it is working fine. I, I Something happened, I don't remember what I have done. Okay, I have not run it properly actually, okay? So maybe I have run using different option or something. Yeah, we have to run using JNIT from the runner class, okay, for now. You see, all, at the rate, all related scenarios and running, except the scenarios which are mentioned with, marked with tax dev, at the rate dev, at the rate WAP, and at the rate ignore, should not be executed. You see, out of, how many, out of 14, only nine got executed because one, first one is three times will be executed. Data-driven test is there, okay, for login. It's data-driven test is there. So we'll see the J in it. I'll expand this and see under user login, the first one is not run. Uh, out of five, one was at the rate uh, dev, one was at the uh, first scenario was at the rate dev. So data driven test is ruled out. So you have to minus three from 14, that will become 11. In that level, one is provided with, uh, one scenario is provided with uh, at the rate, uh, uh, I mean, uh, ignore, that is uh, with no credentials is not displayed here, you see. Okay, valid credentials is not displayed because the at the rate uh, dev is mentioned there and no credentials is not coming here because at the rate, uh, what is that? At the rate, ignore is mentioned. And one more scenario where uh, invalid email and valid password is also not coming because before that at the rate WIP is mentioned and here we clearly mentioned tags, not dev, not WIP and not ignore. So except those scenarios which are marked with dev, WIP and ignore, all the tags, okay, all tag related scenarios got executed. So nine out of 14 guys, okay, nine out of 14. So got executed, okay, hope you're able to get my point. The remaining all you see your registration, everything is working and search everything is working. In login only we marked all the stuff, okay. You see in login, first one is a data driven, right? In the login feature file, first one is data driven, three times it will done. So 14 minus three, okay, 11. And other one is uh, this one guys, okay, WIP. 11 minus 1, 10. Ignore. 11, uh, 10 minus 1, 9. So 9, 9 out of 9. Okay. Remaining uh, 14 get is good. Okay. 5 didn't get is good. Okay. So, how guys you understood uh, about default tax and what is their purpose and uh, how they are different from the custom tax, though they are uh, user defined tax. Okay. From this session. So, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 40 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to organize hooks in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. Till the previous sessions, we have put the hooks methods into the respective step definition files or Java files, right? So you can provide anywhere, okay? If your project consists of multiple step definition Java files, in any of the Java files, you can go and write or create the hook methods. Okay, at the rate before, at the rate after, annotated hook methods you can create, or at the rate before step, at the rate after step, hook methods you can create, or multiple at the rate before, at the rate after, hook methods you can create in any of the step definition Java files. Okay, but is it recommended? Yeah, it's okay if you remember that in so and so. Uh, step definition file you are writing, that's okay if you remember that. But as per the industry standards and all, like uh, the real time, how the people actually, where actually the people put the hook methods into, okay? They don't put into the respective or individual uh, uh, Java files. Rather, they put that into another separate Java file that I'm going to cover in this session, guys. And also, we need to update the runner class for doing that, okay? So let me uh, 
uh, quickly switch to this uh, Eclipse ID so that I can explain you and practically demonstrate how to properly organize the hooks into the in the Cucumber projects. Okay, so let me switch to the Eclipse ID here like this. And instead of going into any of the step definitions, either login or register or such as for this uh, project that I have created so far, instead of going into this and creating that hook methods, I have removed guys. Okay, in one of the previous sessions, I have removed the hook methods. Here we don't have any at the right before and at the right after anywhere inside this uh, step definition files. Okay, you see, nowhere it is there. Earlier we have put under such register kind of things. Okay, we have removed them. For now, we have removed them. So what I'm going to do now is here, guys. Instead of putting them into the respective or uh, in any of the uh, step definition uh, step definition uh, definition files, okay, step definition Java files. Instead of putting into them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate package. I'll just name this package as you can just name it anything, guys. I'll say hook simply, okay. And here I'll right click and say new class. I'll create a class known as uh, you can give any name, guys. Okay, I'll just I generally prefer to give my hooks. Uh, my, I mean, my hooks, I'll, I'll prefer to give, okay? My hooks. You can give any name, no problem, okay? Any package name, any name you can give, okay? So like this, you create and click on finish, guys. This uh, my hooks class will be created. In that, I'll create a method. Generally, we'll create a before and after uh, annotated hook methods for setup and tear down methods, right? I'll first create a setup method and uh, I'll annotate this with uh, at the rate before. Okay, at the rate before I'll annotate with, I'll import this at the rate before from iocucumber.java. Okay, here I'll write system.out.println and I'll double quote and say double greater than symbol. Here I'll write uh, opening, I'll say launching the browser. Okay, launching the browser or something. I'll write something guys here. Okay, then setup I'll say launching the browser. Okay, I'm maximizing it. Launching the browser and maximizing it. Otherwise, I'll write the browser got launched, browser got launched and maximized. Uh, then we can still write some more stuff like another print statement I'll write if required. Okay. Uh, application URL got opened. Application URL got opened in the browser. Okay. In the browser. Like this kind of setup steps I'm going to write in the uh, at the rate before hooks method that I'm providing the my hooks. Okay, it's a common place, guys. I don't have to provide this hooks method now in the step definition files anymore because I'm moving it in a proper place, okay? So we can now understand where this uh, before and after uh, hook methods are available, okay? You can convert this into tag hooks, whatever you want, you can do, guys, no problem, okay? You can come to this myhooks.java and create as many number of before hooks, after hooks, whatever I covered in the previous sessions related hooks, right, somewhere here. Uh, you see hooks, staggered hooks, before step, after steps, hooks, multiple hooks and their order, hooks and value attribute. All this knowledge you should remember, guys, okay? So that you can understand what I'm trying to cover in this section, okay? So here I'll write one more method, public wide tier down, I'll say, okay? Public wide tier down, I'll say, and I'll write at the rate after, guys, at the rate after. I'll import this at the rate after from iocohumbar.java, and here I'll write system.order.println. I'll say browser got closed. Okay. Browser got closed. Uh, we can also write one more step here if required, or we can separate this into multiple before methods. Okay. I'm right only writing one hook method here. You can have multiple before methods. And in one method, we can say browser got launched and maximized another before method. Uh, we can say application URL got opened in the browser. We can say, or we can put a single method and you can print it out. That's okay. For now, only one, one I'll take and not make it complex. Okay. So, uh, logged out from the application, logged out from the application. And finally, applicate brow uh, browser got closed. Okay. This is what are the after hook uh, steps. So, save all. Okay. Let's see whether this will be working fine or not. So, to make this hooks applicable for this uh, step definitions and all, the, for this hook methods to run before and every uh, after every scenario of this uh, feature files, what we have to do is we have to do small changes to the runner class. Open the test runner. And here, what you have to do is in the glue, we only provided the step definitions here. Okay. Along with that, just provide this, uh, what you can say, some curly brace you provide here, guys, curly brace here for this uh, attribute. For the value, provide this particular single value in the curly brace. Since we have to provide multiple values, just provide curly brace and put a comma and say again double quotes here. Provide the name of the package under which myhooks.java is available. That is hooks package. 
simply provide hooks, guys. You don't have to do much. Like we have provided a step definition package here, we are providing the hooks package. That's it, nothing much. Okay, feature files are already there here under resources, test resources, complete path is there. Okay, all tags. That means all the scenarios in all the feature files will run because of it, there it all and the pretty and all those things you already know. Okay, now the changes are here. Okay, comma hooks are the changes. And here in my hooks, we provided uh, this edit the rate before, edit the rate after, and linked it to the runner. Now, this before and after hooks methods will be running for each and every scenario of this feature file, guys. Okay, so right click uh, run as we'll see that. Okay, uh, if you want to give a different uh, symbol, otherwise, just to identify that, you can say plus plus here. Okay, just give plus plus, guys, so that you can understand. Uh, greater than greater than are coming from the step definition implemented methods, right? Step definition files implemented methods, right? So let's give uh, here plus plus and here minus minus I'll give so that you can identify after hooks also. Before hooks will contain plus plus. After hooks will contain. If if they if they got invoked means uh, this minus minus symbols along with this text will be printed in the output console. Just to make uh, a difference, I am writing these different symbols here. Otherwise, there's no need. And for the other other implemented methods uh, step in the step definition files. For the steps, we have double greater than symbol. So you can understand uh, which print statements are printing from where you can understand now. And I'll simply close all this stuff and uh, run this uh, runner class using the JUnit test. Using JUnit, I'm running, guys. You will see that what's happening. Uh, the main thing is output, guys. Output, you see, for every scenario, before every scenario, before hook methods will be running. You see, plus, 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 plus. Browser got launched and maximize application URL got opened in the browser. And then user got navigated to the login page, user has entered valid and all the stuff. Finally, logged out from the application, browser got closed. Same thing will happen for the next scenario, the next scenario, you see, the next scenario, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, every scenario till the last case, till the end. Even though you, you see the last scenario also, you see plus, plus, and minus, minus. This is all about the hooks, guys. So this is the perfect place for putting the hooks in your projects, okay? So whenever you have to provide hooks, you just provide the hooks in this, uh, okay? Um, hooks package or whatever the package separately, you just separate it guys. Okay. So it looks good. Don't, don't make the hooks part of this, uh, step definitions. Okay. So that's all guys. Uh, so hope guys you understood how to organize the hooks in a cucumber project. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 41 of cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to retrieve scenario names into hooks methods. So let's get started. In the previous session, I have organized the hook methods in Cucumber projects. Okay. We have created a separate package and under that package, we have created a separate hooks class under which we created the hook methods. Now I am going to show you how to retrieve the scenarios. Okay. Into the hook methods. Okay. So for that, I'll quickly switch to this uh, Eclipse ID. As you can see here in the Eclipse ID, if I expand this and all, okay, if I close all this stuff, if I expand this uh, SRC, test Java, you see I created separate hooks package under that. You can give any name here and any class name here. So I created the hook methods here, okay, hooks methods. You can have any number of hooks methods before, multiple before methods, you can have multiple after hook methods, you can have before step, after step, all those hooks related methods, you can put them here. That's okay. But what I'm trying to communicate here is, okay. What I'm trying to communicate here is, let me expand everything. So here I want to retrieve the name of the scenario for which this before hook method is running and after hook methods are running. Okay. So, uh, from the runner class, we'll run the, run the, uh, uh run the things using JUnit and, uh, that particular runner class will invoke this feature files and as per the details given or instructions given in this runner class, the respective scenarios in the respective features file will run. And accordingly, before each and every scenario of this uh, running uh, feature files, okay, this hook methods will be, at the rate before hook methods will be running, at the rate after will be running, after each and every scenario that is running as part of the feature files, okay? But now I want to retrieve the scenario name. Okay, here I want to say, system.out.println, okay? I'll write some different symbol asterisk asterisk I'll provide. Okay, just to make a difference. Here in the setup method, I'll say scenario. Scenario. Okay. I'll hold the mouse on this uh, scenario and uh, let me hold the mouse on this scenario and import this scenario from IO Cucumber Java, guys. Okay. Other don't import from other places, import it from IO Cucumber Java. That's it. 
Now this scenario using this, we can get the uh, name of the scenario, which is uh, before which this before hook method is running. Okay. So execution of execution started for scenario hyphen. I'll just provide that plus scenario here. Okay. So asterisk asterisk will okay just putting this symbol so that we can identify that statement in the output console here. You see here I'll write down asterisk asterisk execution ended for scenario hyphen plus scenario I'll write okay here also I have to write plus scenario but here scenario is not visible here because I have to write a scenario here okay scenario scenario done now it's okay. So this, uh, this is a predefined class from Cucumber, which will retrieve the scenario, okay, into the hook methods, okay? So now I'll go to the runner class, guys, and see what is there at the rate all is there. That means all the scenarios in all the feature files are going to be run, okay? All the feature files, all the scenarios in all the feature files, that is uh, here, uh, almost 14 scenarios, okay? From all these three feature files are going to run. That means this hook methods, before and before we'll be running, before every 14, okay, before each scenario means, before every for, uh, every of the 14 scenarios before will be running after each of these uh, 14 scenarios after hook will be running and as per that scenario also will be printed we'll see that in the output console how it will work out okay right click and run it with, with uh, jnit guys and jnit will invoke the feature files feature files will invoke the okay step definition and hooks and all those stuff okay so here you see 14 have run okay 14 scenarios we can see the output properly now uh, let's go here and see before scenario, before hook will be running. You see, execution started for scenario with scenario. IO Kukumbar dot Java scenario is coming, but this is not the thing that I am wanting, right? I want scenario name, guys, not like that. So, here, guys, to make that happen, you should not be writing only scenario, guys. Okay, you have to use this object reference and say dot get name of the scenario. Okay, you have to say get the name of the scenario here also dot get. If you don't provide get name, what's happening? It's giving it's printing the object, guys. Okay, it's printing the object. Okay, let me run this test runner again after putting that get get name there. Okay, right click run as JNU test. Now you will see the scenario names will be printed this time. Okay, instead of objects getting printed, just go to the top. You can see that execution started for scenario with scenario, login with valid uh, credential scenario. So browser got launched and all. Okay, this is before hook method. In that scenario, we have retrieved and scenario name we are retrieving and printing with the help of scenario dot get name. Okay, so like that, guys. You see, execution ended for scenario. This scenario name is coming. Same thing for each and every scenario that got executed. You see, scenario oh, name, scenario details got retrieved and printed in the output console. And as we know that uh, total fourteen out of fourteen scenarios from this uh, three feature files got executed for each and every scenario in the output console. We got this before and after hook methods with scenario details retrieved and printed. So hope guys, uh, you understood uh, how to retrieve the scenario names into the hook methods in this session. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 42 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to generate Cucumber XML and JSON reports. So let's get started. In the previous sessions, I showed you how to generate Cucumber HTML report. Okay. You see here Cucumber HTML report as part of the one of the previous sessions, I covered it. Okay. Now in this session, I'm going to show you the other type of reports that you can create. Okay. Apart from the HTML report, you can also create an XML report and JSON report. But basically, HTML report is enough, guys. As part of an additional topic, I'm covering how to generate this XML and JSON reports in this session. Okay. So let me quickly switch to this uh, Eclipse ID. And here we have the runner class, guys. You see, here we already have provided this statement, okay, which is going to generate the Cucumber HTML report. You see, extension is .html, okay? Let me run this. You will see that under the target folder at this moment, nothing is there. If I run this, right-click run as JNA test. Once uh, this feature files got executed and all, you see class not founder. Okay, so let me right click again. Okay, sometimes it happens uh, if I click on different option. I'll just click on. Okay, still it's coming class not found. So what's the problem? Okay. Did I do any mistakes here? Number options close. 
Sarsitas resources, features, step definitions, hooks, and the red all, ready, HTML, and all those stuff. Comma, 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 everything is fine. Okay. I'll update the project once, uh, otherwise, maybe update project. Sometimes things may happen where, you know, we have to update the projects. Okay. We'll get some kind of weird kind of errors like this. Okay. Sometimes. So it's better we update the project and try again. And see, even after updating the project using Maven, still the problems are coming means we have to investigate further. Okay, otherwise not required. Right click run as JNITS. Let's see now what will happen. You see the issue got resolved automatically. Sometimes it happens in Kumbar projects, guys. Okay, where you will get that kind of errors. Uh, even though everything is fine, also you're getting the error. Just update the project. Right click run as Maven update, that's it. Uh, sorry, right click run as Maven update project. That's it. Okay, it will be resolved. It got resolved, guys. All the uh, 14, uh, 14 out of 14 scenarios in all these features files got executed with the help of this run class. Now, you see under the target folder, okay, here HTML colon target is there. Under the target folder with this name, cucumber report.html with this extension, a report should be generated. Let's expand this and see. Let's refresh once, okay. Let's refresh once better. You see, let's expand this and see cucumber report.html got generated, guys, okay, with this. This I already covered as part of one of the previous sessions, guys. I'll open this HTML report for you. Right click open with the uh, web browser. It will open in the browser, guys. You can see this is the Cucumber HTML report, 100%. Everything is fine. So what uh, what Java version we are using, what Win operating system version we are using, and what uh, Cucumber version we are using, and uh, all the feature files are coming here, you see. Everything is fine. Everything got passed, and everything is working fine. Now I'll close this uh, HTML report, guys. So next, what I want to do is, uh, I don't want to generate this cucumber report dot uh, html file directly under the target folder. Rather, I want to put a folder name here. Uh, I want to create that folder name, okay? Cucumber reports, I'll say, because there are multiple type of reports you can generate with cucumber. So I'll say cucumber, cucumber reports, I'll say slash. That means instead of under the target folder, another folder will be created with the name cucumber reports. Under that, this cucumber report dot html will be created. Okay, in the next run, it will happen this. So what I will do here is I want to delete this cucumber report.html. So what we can do is there are multiple ways you can directly right click and say delete. That's one way. And other way is okay, right click on this project and uh, say run as. And here you will get an option like Maven clean. Just click on this Maven clean, guys. Okay. Automatically it will clear the target folder. Okay. After it is clean, automatically it will clear the target folder. Okay. Build success. Cleaning is done. Refresh this project once. You see. Under target, there's no Cucumber report now. Okay, now run this. Right click run as JNA test. Again, the same problem came, class not form. You know what to do, right? Right click on the project, select Maven and update project. Say okay. The problems will be resolved, okay? So now whenever you get that kind of class not found, you just update the project, guys, okay? Now right click, run as JNA after updating the project with Maven. Now it will run. So everything got run, guys. Now refresh this project once and uh, expand the target folder. You see Cucumber Reports folder is now created. Under the Cucumber Reports, we got Cucumber Report.html. You can again open the same thing. We'll get the same report, guys, whatever we got earlier. But this time we got under a folder, okay? Under uh, a subfolder we got under the target, under another folder we got this uh, Cucumber HTML report. This is how the HTML report will look like. But this session is all about generating the Cucumber XML and JSON reports. First, I will show you the JSON reports, then I'll show you the XML report. So I have to go here. It's very simple, guys. Uh, it's very simple. I can make it to the make it uh, this uh, multiple plugins can be provided here, okay? Separated by comma inside in curly braces. Okay, first plugin is pretty plugin. You know, I explained this pretty plugin in one of the previous sessions. Here, the second plugin is a Cucumber HTML report plugin. Now put another comma, guys. Now give one more thing, two more things also you can give here JSON. JSON colon. If you want to generate a JSON re report along with this uh, HTML report, if you want to have JSON report, you can write JSON target slash under the cucumber under the cucumber reports folder cucumber cucumber uh, report dot JSON. I'll okay. extension should be dot JSON guys. Okay, and if you want XML also, then in that case again comma and uh, you put another double code. Another plugin you have to give that is XML. Uh, instead of XML, you have to write J in it, guys. Okay, you should not write XML there. Okay, for XML, you should write J in it. Say colon target slash cucumber 
कुकुम्बर रिपोर्ट स्लैश कुकुम्बर कुकुम्बर रिपोर्ट डॉट एक्सएमएल यू टू गिव हियर एक्सटेंशन यू टू गिव एक्सएमएल एंड टाइप यू टू गिव एस जे इन बट इट विल बी क्रिएटिंग एक्सएमएल रिपोर्ट ओके लाइक दिस थ्री प्लग इन वी हेव वन वन प्लग इन इज फॉर एच टी एम एल कुकुम्बर रिपोर्ट अनदर प्लग इन इज फॉर जेसन कुकुम्बर रिपोर्ट अनदर प्लग इन इज फॉर एक्सएमएल कुकुम्बर रिपोर्ट लाइक दिस थ्री प्लग इन आर देर गेस ओके थ्री प्लग इन आर देर now you see before running this runner class i want to clear this target what to do right click on this project and uh, say run as maven clean once it is uh, once the build is successful for maven clean here it will start the maven cleaning process you see it's cleaning default clean and build success once it is successful refresh this project once and you will see under the target folder there is nothing now okay it got cleaned okay it's a very simple process to clean the target folder guys now right click on this test runner and say run as uh, jnetis You may get again um, if you see another class not found exception because we cleaned it but we have not updated the project with Maven. So for that we have to say right clicks and say update project Maven update project select okay okay. Otherwise you are not you are generally you know right uh, when you are getting that uh, class not found exception okay. So now after updating now run this right click on us generate test. This time it should run. and we should get all these three types of reports under the target folder okay refresh this project after running and uh, expand this under the cucumber reports now we will get three types of reports one is html cucumber report second one is json cucumber report third one is xml cucumber report you already know about the html report i'll open it one by one html report will look like this okay html and the in the browser it will open okay in the browser it will open what about this uh, uh, next report that is a uh, json report okay just double click on this it will open in the eclipse id editor in the form of J json here you can uh, drag it here so that you can see in a proper way or you can close this one close all this stuff this is a json uh, it's a uh, displaying in a single line guys okay so what we can do right click uh, so it's kind of displayed in a single line for me the json one Uh, right click uh, is there any option we have let me check so we can do one thing guys we'll copy this uh, json thing okay json content and go to the one website okay uh, json viewer json viewer or something kind of website or json beautifier or whatever online json viewer uh, let's see uh, this is not the one code beautify dot or this is the best one guys code beautify dot or json viewer you can go to this website here and copy that uh, json content here Sorry, I just pasted it two times. Control A, delete, and paste it again. Once pasted, it's taking some time to paste somehow. I copy this again. Control A, Control C. Is it pasted here or not? Yeah, it's pasted now. Okay, it took some time to paste actually. Okay, once it is pasted, you see on the right side you can see it in a proper format, guys. Okay. uh tree viewer also uh, tree viewer is there okay you are getting in a tree view because this much content you have to read means that will be very difficult okay or uh, is there any option to beautify actually um beautify option is also there guys if you beautify right you see the formatting is not good here okay but here you see you are getting a proper format you can copy this and paste into your eclipse id in the place of that uh, no no i don't know whether we can delete this or not i think we cannot delete this looks like okay no it's not deleting okay that's okay guys we can check here you can see what's came uh time stamp you see the test case which got passed okay scenario got passed login with valid credentials got passed login with uh, you see all for every scenario uh, which line and uh, you know all these details are coming it's not giving a it's not a good report you can say json no one will generate json report guys but we should have a knowledge of uh, how to generate json reports in cucumber okay just for knowledge purpose this is good guys it's better to prefer to go with uh, you know html reports only but uh, cucumber provides you a facility where you can even uh, generate the json reports and xml reports i'm just uh, explaining this as an additional topics only okay so fine and coming to the xml just double click on this xml and see what's happening with xml is it opening or not let's see double click it's it's opening this part actually so i'll go to the location where this uh, file is available it's better to go to the location guys okay sometimes not in eclipse side it's not uh, here also json right click 
Jason, I am opening first. Okay. Right click, uh, open with more apps and uh, select this uh, notepad actually. Okay. So, okay. Let's see what's happening. Are we getting the JSON content? You see the disturbed way we are getting. Control A, Control C, and you know, JSON beautiful, you can go and paste. Okay. Uh, how about XML? Right click, open with notepad. You see, this is this one is looking good anyhow uh, compared to that one. You see, here also we are getting, you see, uh, the steps are coming and you log in with valid credentials. The steps are coming, each and every step passing and everything is coming, but still HTML report looks good for me. Okay. But here, just for the sake, I am generating the other type of uh, reports. Okay. Fine. That's all. Okay. So, hope guys, you understood how to generate XML and JSON reports in this session. Uh, in the in one of the previous sessions, we generated Cucumber HTML reports, and we can also generate the Cucumber XML and JSON reports also. So, that is covered in this session. So, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 43 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate one of the exceptions that you may face while working with the Cucumber projects, that is class not found exception. So when does this kind of exception occur and what we have to do when this exception occurs, I'm going to cover in detail in this session. So let's get started. So when do we get this class not found exception in Cucumber projects and how to resolve it, okay? So we have to resolve this by updating the Maven project, okay? And it may come in different situations, guys, okay? So any situation when you are working with Cucumber projects, right? you may suddenly get this kind of uh, class not found exception, even though everything is fine. Okay. Even though the Cucumber project doesn't have any problem, you're getting this exception suddenly. Okay. And you will be surprised. I have not done anything still, you know, this kind of exception is coming. You will get surprised in such kind of situations. Guys, simply update your Maven project and this exception will be resolved. Okay. So for now, I'll switch to this Eclipse ID. So in the previous sessions also, we got this exception guys in the pre while I was recording the previous sessions of this series, we got this exception. You already have the idea about that, but let me show you that again. Okay. So guys, uh, here, let me run this. Okay. First, let me run this, uh, runner class. Okay. Which will generate these reports under the target. Uh, okay. Uh, one of the situation I will show you when you will get this class, uh, not found exception. You see all the scenarios in the, all the feature files got run. And I will refresh this project. Once I refresh this project, you see under the target folder, we got this Cucumber reports folder and under that we got this reports. Okay. I want to clear this uh, target folder. For that, I am doing one thing that is right click on this project and simply say run as and say Maven clean. Okay. I'll clean this project using Maven. The project got cleaned guys. Uh, it's still okay. It's building now. Uh, now it got clean. It has deleted the target folder. Okay. The things under the target folder, it has deleted. Now refresh this project once. And you see now under the target folder, there is nothing. Now, again, I want to run this runner class to run the feature files of this project. This time you will get that class not found exception guys. Okay. Immediately after cleaning this project with the help of Maven. Okay. If I'm trying to run this uh, project directly, you see, you are getting class not found exception. So how to overcome this class not found exception is we have to update this uh project with the help of maven right click on this project select maven and say update project with the help of maven and select okay guys the project will be updated guys once the project is updated okay the exception will be resolved guys when you try to run this runner class you will not get that exception you see um, the uh, the process got over updating process got over now i am running using jnit test now you are getting exception okay now you are not getting exception okay because we have updated the project with the help of Maven, we have updated the project. So we are not getting the exception. Okay. That's the thing. So hope guys you understood, uh, when do you get this class not found exception? One of the situation where you may get this class not of not found exception. I have shown you with an example. Okay. And how to resolve this exception. Also, I have shown you by updating the Maven project. Okay. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 44 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use dry run in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. Dry run is used in Cucumber as part of the runner class. 
okay in the runner class we have to specify this dry run under the cucumber options okay as one attribute of the cucumber options we have to mention dry run in the cucumber projects in the runner class so let me practically demonstrate this uh, runner class i mean uh, dry run in runner class for you so what exactly this dry run will do okay i'll show you practically then you will understand all these things okay when dry run is false what's happening when dry run is not specified what's happening when dry run is set to true what's happening i'm going to show you guys okay but uh, let me quickly switch to this eclipse id guys where you can see this project mm. so i'll open this runner class i'll open this runner class so here uh, here this is the runner class guys uh, and in this feature files all the steps got implemented okay in the step definition methods you see if i open this login dot feature you see nothing is getting highlighted i'll update the project also using maven maven update project so you can it will be confirmed for us like after updating the maven project it will be confirmed if any particular step is not implemented it will be highlighted in yellow color if you are getting this cucumber icon beside every step instead of the yellow color uh, background behind the steps that means every step is implemented for each and every step there is a uh, method implemented in this step definition classes okay so go to the restart dot feature and uh, confirm if there are any steps which are not implemented yes they are all implemented no violations in yellow color or any other background color you see all these steps are implemented you are getting a proper cucumber icon and without any violations that means all the steps in all these feature files got implemented already in that case there is no problem guys in that case there is no problem okay if i run this by default what's happening we'll see it will run all the uh scenarios in this feature files containing all the steps and all the steps will be invoking this particular step definition methods and you'll get the results like this okay you'll get the results like this guys okay you see each and every step got executed you see because of which we are getting the print statement this double grade than simple i provided in the print statement right this step has invoked this particular step definition method having this print statement and print statement got printed okay just for segregating the normal uh, steps uh, feature, uh, feature file steps from the step definition method uh, print statements have added uh, double greater than symbol in the okay in the methods as you already know from the previous sessions okay so you see every every step in the feature file has some method invoked and uh, in that method we have the print statement for no and they got executed okay they got executed and printed in the output okay for all the scenarios what if there is a particular uh, let's say i'll go to such dot feature and here i'll write down one extra step here which is not implemented yet in this project i have not implemented this step okay in this step definition uh, java files we don't have this particular step implemented guys i am freshly writing this step but you see here search for a valid product user enters valid product in search field user clicks on search button valid product should get displayed in the search results but invalid product invalid product should not be displayed in the search results you see till now we have not used the but keyword okay in getkin uh, apart from okay uh, this uh, then and all the stuff we have but keyword also given when then and but okay but means reverse okay this should not happen okay to construct that kind of statements okay opposite statements we generally use but keyword so but invalid product should not be displayed in the search results okay valid product should be displayed but invalid product should not be displayed okay for such kind of reasons we'll use but but here if i click on save all immediately you see this particular step is getting highlighted that means this step is not implemented okay the step that is provided in this particular scenario of the such dot feature file is not having any implemented method in this step definition classes so that's why it's highlighting in yellow and we have to implement that if you have to get rid of this okay what if the step is still not implemented and if i am running this okay the, that particular step in the such dot feature is not implemented i am running this what problem will face we'll see you see you will not face any problems guys okay all the steps will be all the scenarios in all the feature files will be running irrespective of that particular step you will see that only that particular step which is not implemented will be hi uh, highlighted in the output you see you see first scenario no problem because uh, the step is not uh, implemented in the first scenario of the search dot feature file okay till then you see all the scenarios got executed you see for every uh, step the implemented methods got executed and print statement got printed you see everything is getting uh, got executed guys and finally when we read the search functionality you see first in the first scenario of the search in the first scenario of the search dot feature file here there is a step which is not implemented since this particular step is not implemented it's coming in some other color okay it's not coming in green color okay putty uh, pretty plugin pretty plugin that we have used here as part of i explained as part of one of the previous sessions right that is coloring this one in some other color that is orange color kind of stuff okay 
So, and we are not getting any error guys, okay? But we are not getting any error here in the output console, okay? But this is highlighting and remaining all steps got executed guys, okay? Though this step is not executed, though this step is not implemented in the step definition files, still the remaining steps got executed. That's a, that's a thing, okay? So, what's happening in the background? You see, in, in the JNIT, it got failed because that particular step is not implemented. But in the Eclipse output console, there's no problem. Okay, remaining all steps got executed. You see all the print statements for each and every corresponding step got printed here. Here, by default, whether you provide or not, dry run is set to false. Okay, here, there are different attributes, guys. Okay, here I can add an attribute like this. Okay, uh, I'll say dry run, dry run is equal to false. Whether you provide dry run is equal to false or whether, whether you don't provide this dry run is equal to false, uh, dry run attribute at all, both uh, you'll get the same results, guys. Okay, when the dry run is false, Okay, it, even though there is a particular step in this one of these feature files is not implemented as part of the step definitions, still all the other steps will be executed when the dry run is false. Whether you provide this or not, all the steps in all the feature files which have the implementation will be executed, guys. Okay, and the one which is not implemented will be highlighted in yellow color. Okay, even this case also dry run is called false, also, same thing will happen. Right click, run as JNIT as you'll get the same result, guys. Okay, you'll get the same result. You'll see all the steps in all the uh, feature files, okay? All the scenarios, all the steps in all, all the scenarios of the feature files will get executed, you see? Every step got executed, the corresponding print statement got printed, okay? And but uh, this one, okay? This particular first scenario in the search dot feature file, the search dot feature file first scenario, this particular step is not implemented, so it's coming in some orange color rather than green color. The same result we got when we have not provided dry run is equal to false, right? But what if I provide, whether you don't provide the dry run or whether you provide dry run is called false, you'll get the same result, guys. Other steps will get executed. But if I provide dry run is called to true when a particular step in one of the uh, scenarios of the feature file is not implemented as part of the step definition methods, in that case, what will happen is none of the other steps in any of the feature files will not be executed. Here, if you say dry run is called true means what Cucumber is doing is it is trying to check if any particular steps in this feature file are not implemented or not. It's not going to run, it's it's not a real run, okay? If dry run is called true means it's not a real run. It is a dummy run where we are, with the help of Cucumber, we are checking if any particular step is not implemented, okay? That's what is dry run is, okay? If a particular, you see such functionality step is not implemented, so, and dry run is set to true means, other steps will not be executed. They will be checked whether implementation is there or not, okay? You will not see, the same Eclipse output. You see, for every step, you'll not see any output, guys. Okay, because dry, this is the dry run is called true. We are just run, uh, running to see if a particular step is implemented or not. If a particular step is implemented, it will kind of come in green color in the output. Okay, and if it's passing, it's, uh, it will come in green color. If not, it will come in orange color. Okay, but uh, this print statements will not be invoked in dry run is equal to true. You see, run this, right click run as a uh, JNIT test. None of the steps will be executed, guys. Okay, because this is just a dry run, it's not a real running of the test. You see, from the beginning, you see only the steps got uh, printed here. Okay, feature file steps got printed, but they have not invoked any of the step definition methods inside the step definition classes. The purpose of the dry run true is to, uh, with the help of Cucumber, to check whether all the steps in all the feature files got executed or not. If there is any, any particular step which is not executed, okay, this is a color, different color means it's not executed. Okay, this is the purpose of the dry run. So, what if I remove that particular uh, step which is not implemented and still set the dry run is equal to true okay so i have removed that uh, now all the all the steps in all the feature files got uh feature files got uh implemented step definition methods they have and they have the implementation so none of the steps are like left unimplemented okay so everything is implemented now still we can put dry run is equal to true to see if all the scenario uh, all the steps in all the scenarios of the feature files have the implementation or not here we are not running this feature files we are checking whether all the scenarios all the steps in all the scenarios of the feature have files have the implemented step definition methods or not, we are checking. That is what is dry run guys, okay? Hope you are able to understand now, okay? We can still run this and you will not see any executions happening, okay? You will not see any implemented methods being called, okay? Only the steps will be uh, printed in uh, defined color, okay? You see all the steps got uh, def uh, are printed in green color means every step is implemented. That's how we use dry run guys, okay? So only dry run will be used to check whether all the all the steps in all the scenarios of the feature files have the respective implementation in the step definition methods or not. That's the only purpose. And by default, if you don't provide dry run is equal to, it's nothing but dry run is equal to false. Okay, the steps will be executed. Okay. 
Fine. So hope guys you understood what exactly is dry run and how to use in Cucumber projects uh, and uh, for what purpose we have to use in Cucumber projects in this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 45 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use this publish attribute for generating Cucumber reports on the cloud that is internet. So let's get started. Till now, we have generated the Cucumber reports in our local projects. Okay, if you go to the Eclipse ID, under the target folder, we have generated this Cucumber reports in different formats like HTML, JSON, and XML because in the runner class, we mentioned these plugins. Related HTML Cucumber report plugin, JSON Cucumber report plugin, we have mentioned, J XML uh, Cucumber report plugin, we have mentioned, okay? Because of these plugins, these Cucumber reports in different formats like HTML, JSON, and H XML got generated under the target folder in your local project. But what if I have to generate this HTML Cucumber report on the cloud? That is cloud means internet. So internet means at this website URL, okay? So at this website, the Cucumber HTML report should be uploaded here, guys, okay? It should be available on the internet so that you see, what's the, what's the use, what's the advantage of uh, generating your H Cucumber HTML report on the cloud here at this URL thing, okay? The advantage here is for sharing this uh, reports which got generated in your local project, you have to again put an email to your uh, other people in your team, right? You have to send email to the required people in your team, okay? Who are working in your project or whatever it is, okay? Your seniors or managers, it can be your colleagues, whoever it is who are to which uh, this report has to be shared, you have to copy these files and uh, put them as an attachment in your email and send it. That's a way of sharing, right? But what if I want to uh, share a URL, okay? Share a URL to the team so that they can access it on the cloud, on the internet they can access. I don't have to manually copy them and put into email, attach them and send it. Rather, it should be available on the URL. For that, what we have to do, I'm going to practically demonstrate in this session, guys. We are going to use some of this publish attribute. One of the way, guys, I'm going to show you. We're going to use this publish attribute for doing so. So first of all, I'll I'll go very from very scratch, guys. You see, so I'll clean this uh, target folder. First of all, I'll clean this target folder and show you how the reports are generated under the target folder. This I already covered in the previous session, but I'll repeat. I'll say right click run as a Maven clean and it will build the cleaning process and uh, all these things from the target folder will be automatically deleted. You see, target folder got cleaned. Just refresh this project. Uh, after refreshing, if you try to expand this target, you see there is nothing under the target. Now, again, if I run this, right click run uh, again, before running this, I have to update this project, right? Otherwise, you'll get uh, no such uh, class exception. So to avoid that, we'll say Maven and update project and say, okay, the project will be updated using Maven. That's the second step. Before running, we have to do that. After cleaning, we have to update the project and run that project, okay? Run that run the class. Now, right click, freshly run this test, and this reports will be generated freshly, guys, under the target now, okay? You see they got generated, guys, just refresh here. Just uh, refresh here, and uh, under target folder, again, they got generated. But here, in the output console, Eclipse output console, in the bottom, you. Okay, in the bottom, in the Eclipse output console, here we got a very big box saying that share your Cucumber report with your team at this one, okay, at this URL, okay. You can generate or publish your Cucumber report at this particular URL location and thereafter you can share that URL. You don't have to go to these folders and copy paste the Cucumber reports to your uh, team or uh, the project members, okay. So what we can do? so that we can publish our Cucumber report instead of our local, okay? Along with that local, if you want to publish your Cucumber report on this cloud uh, internet URL, cloud internet URL like this, for that, you can follow any of these things. The easiest way is this uh, publish is equal to true, guys. Already we have this at the rate Cucumber options in our runner class. In that, we have to give this attribute as publish is equal to true. Okay, let's give that, okay? So let's give publish is equal to true. Uh, by default, publish is equal to false is equal to not mentioning that publish, okay? Publish is equal to true means now, as mentioned here, okay, in the Cucumber options, if you mention publish is equal to true, your Cucumber HTML report will also be, apart from the local, will also be reported to this URL, okay? At this URL, you can access. I'll show you practically, guys, okay? So, right-click, run as, JNITest. This time, again, I'll run this 
other time. This time the reports will not only be available under the target folder, but also will be published to the cloud. Okay, at that particular uh, URL. You see, this time you are getting a different box after running the test. Uh, view your Cucumber report at this URL. Okay, just copy it properly, guys. Okay, so uh, uh, till wherever it is required, and say, simply say copy and uh, go to the browser and select new tab and press enter and make sure that you are not getting any symbols before HTTPS. You should not get any invalid symbols. And here the URL is, uh, if you see this URL here, guys, okay, here in the output console, URL is ending with 44, but here in the, when I pasted it after 44, some uh, unwanted text came, symbols came, remove that text guys. Okay. So sometimes when you copy paste this URL, right, mostly it will happen that from Eclipse ID, when you copy paste, you'll get some symbols, guys, before HTTPS or after this URL and you'll get some symbols. Better to remove them and press enter. Okay. Now the report is loading. The report which is uh, available at uh, reports.cucumber.io is now available. Okay. This, you see it's got published to the cloud, guys. Okay. But this report will self-destruct in a day, guys. In 24 hours, it will be gone. It's not permanent uploading here, just it will be there. Okay, you can share this link and this link will be active. This report link at this URL will be active. Okay, for 24 hours once it is generated. Okay, if you want to immediately delete, you can delete from here also. Okay, immediately if you instantly if you want to delete, you can delete. But this is the report, guys, which will be there published on this cloud for 24 hours. Okay. Uh, that is for a day and after that it will get deleted automatically or uh, if you want to manually delete this report once the task is done you can click on the delete report it will be deleted from the cloud and it will be still there in your local machines okay from here under the target folder you still have these reports so guys this is how by using this public attribute publish attribute sorry publish attribute in cucumber options by mentioning it as true the value is true we can publish our cucumber html report onto the cloud url okay on the internet and can share that URL with any project members. Okay. So hope guys you understood how to use publish attribute for generating Cucumber reports on the cloud that is internet in this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 46 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to publish Cucumber reports to the cloud using properties files. So let's get started. In the previous session, I covered and practically demonstrated how to publish the Cucumber reports to the cloud using this publish attribute. We have to specify this publish attribute in the at the rate Cucumber options annotation of the runner class. Okay. I'll show you here guys. If you can see here, this is a runner class. Okay. In this runner class, in this runner class, on the top of the runner class, we have provided at the rate Cucumber options annotation. Here in this, one of the attribute earlier we have provided is publish is equal to true. If you specify publish is equal to true, okay, the report will be published onto the cloud. Okay, so I'll show you guys. Okay, here I will not show you. This I already have shown you in the previous session, but I'll run this without. Here you see in the Cucumber options, publish is equal to true is not mentioned. So if I run this, when publish is equal to true is not mentioned, it's nothing but publish is equal to false here. All the feature files will run with the help of runner class and we will get a kind of a box like this. It is saying that you have to activate publishing okay, of these reports onto the cloud. So publishing the Cucumber report onto the cloud is not activated. So if you want to activate, there are multiple options or multiple ways, guys. So one of the way using JNIT is that I already covered in the previous session. Okay, That is in the at the rate Cucumber options of the runner class here. I have to provide or specify an attribute known as publish is equal to true. If I specify that, the Cucumber reports will be published onto the cloud at this particular URL as, as explained in the previous session. But in this session, I'm not going to cover this because this is already covered as part of the previous session. But in this session, I'm going to show you the other ways uh, where we are going to use a properties file. Okay, Properties files we are going to create using which we'll be able to publish the same Cucumber reports onto the cloud. Okay, there are multiple ways of publishing the Cucumber reports uh, to the cloud. One way is that I showed you in the previous session. Uh, other way is like uh, by creating the properties file. Okay, in this session, I'm talking about publishing the Cucumber reports onto the cloud using properties files. Okay, for that, what we have to do, all the instructions are provided here, guys. Okay, so you have to create this properties file with properties file with this name Cucumber under SRC test resources. Okay. 
Here we have three source folders in this project so far. This project has been creating and updating and uh, creating the structure in the pre from the previous sessions, right? This we got from the previous sessions, okay? SRC main Java is there, SRC test Java is there, SRC test resources source folder is there. Here they are talking about SRC test resources source folder. Expand that SRC test resources source folder. Under that, you have to create a properties file with the name Cucumber case. How to create this properties file? Right click on this SRC test resources and select new and uh, say file and name this file as Cucumber dot properties. Okay, the same name you have to give guys. Cucumber name you have to give. Extension should be properties. Click on finish. The properties file will be created and as shown in this box in this cucumber.properties file you have to okay write this particular attribute cucumber.publish.enabled is equal to true okay cucumber.publish.enabled is equal to true okay so we'll cross check again cucumber.publish.enabled is equal to so we have created it properly click on save all now, once this is done, go to the runner class and run it, run it, guys. Even though publish is called true is not mentioned in this Cucumber options of the runner class, but since you created the Cucumber properties file under the SRC test resources and provided this attribute, this time the report should be published onto the cloud. Okay. Other way, guys. This is other, other, another way. Okay. Run as JNA test. So we got the output. Let's scroll from starting to the ending. And uh, here we can see that, okay, your, uh, you see Cucumber report has been published onto the cloud, okay, published onto the cloud. You can share, cloud means internet, guys, nothing but internet. You can share with your, all your team members and all, okay, using this URL rather than copy pasting this uh, uh, generated reports uh, under the target folder, okay. You can give this URL, right, that's very easy to share, but the problem here is the report will self-destruct in 24 hours, okay. Within a day, it will expire, okay. Uh, so I copied the URL guys, I paste it here. Uh, I'll just see if any symbols got added here. The last, uh, uh, let me cross it, 8BO is there, HTTPS. So before HTTPS, uh, there should not be any symbols here when copy pasting and after 8BO, there should not be any symbols. Now press enter, you see the, the Cucumber report which is published onto the cloud that is onto the internet is displayed here. And it's clearly saying that uh, this report will self-destruct in a day, okay? This report will self-destruct in a day. If you want to distract it immediately, you can say delete report, guys. So this URL will be active for 24 hours, guys, after it got generated. And you can immediately delete, guys. If you don't want the report to be available for 24 hours, you can click on delete and delete it, okay? That you already know. You see, this is the complete report we got, okay? Now what I will do is, uh, I'll close this point uh, thing, guys, and I'll go to the Eclipse ID, and uh, I'll remove this property and check this time. If I don't, uh, if I delete this properties file, what is happening, we'll see. Okay, I'll delete this cucumber.properties file. When that properties file is there and when we have provided the attribute, uh, the report got published into the uh, cloud, onto the cloud that is internet. Okay, now run it uh, without that uh, properties file. We'll see that uh, it should not be published onto the cloud, guys. You see, this time it has not been published onto the cloud. Again, it's saying you have to activate publishing onto the cloud. Now I'll show you another way of uh, creating the properties file under the same SRC test resources, okay, and providing the attribute, okay. This is the second way of the, using the properties file, okay. So under the same SRC test resources, you have to create JNIT hyphen platform. This is another alternative way, guys. Either you can say cucumber.properties or you can say JNIT hyphen platform.properties because we are using JNIT for now. So here I'll say, right click new, file, JNIT hyphen, what was that, guys? JNIT hyphen platform dot properties. Okay. Right click new file JNIT hyphen platform dot properties. File. Click that, uh, enter that. And uh, okay. what is the problem here? Okay. It got opened here. Okay. Let me drag this side so that I'll close this JNIT thing. Here in the properties file, I'll uh, I'll provide this same attribute and value guys. Cucumber dot publish dot enabled is equal to true. I'll provide. So, Goombar dot publish dot enabled is equal to true. I'll click on save and uh, now run this runner class using JNA test and see whether it got published or not. Okay. See whether the report, no, it got, didn't get published. Okay. It didn't get published due to some reasons. Publish dot any mistakes we have done. J unit hyphen platform dot properties. J un 
unit hyphen platform dot properties and also here under that properties file cucumber dot publish dot enabled is equal to everything is fine but it's not coming up okay so this properties is working but this one is not working cucumber dot publish dot enabled is equal to true i think everything is fine we can copy paste also we can cross check again we can copy paste and cross check again so so here okay some symbols are coming remove that symbols guys okay is equal to true you just mentioned that's enough okay now let me run again if any mistakes i have done maybe okay it may not happen oh no it's not happening i'll update the project also once uh maven update project last chance that cucumber dot properties is working but this uh, jnit hyphen platform dot properties is not working okay under the resources only right under the resources they mention jnit hyphen platform j unit hyphen plat form dot properties properties everything is fine okay uh, as per their instructions we are doing but it's not working out let's see this time if it is not coming we can ignore guys okay it's not working out guys this properties option is not working so you can use this one guys as per their information only we are doing that but it's this particular way is not working jnet hyphen platform dot properties is not working for now okay so cucumber dot properties is working okay so if you do the same thing in cucumber dot properties it is working but it has to work guys there may be a defect or something okay in the latest version of cucumber there may be a defect that's okay guys uh, you don't have to dig deep because one of the properties file is working but this this should also work but it's not working okay we, we cannot do anything there because that is out of our control right but as per their documentation and as per their whatever the information they are providing in the output console it should work now if i create a file like cucumber dot properties it's it, it will it is working okay uh, then here i'll say cucumber dot cucumber dot publish dot enabled is equal to true okay now run this right click run as jn test at least one properties file is working we are good okay no need to worry much okay. let's see you see, it's working for cucumber.properties, guys, but it's not working. You see, it, it got published onto the cloud, but it's not working. There may be a defect with this, guys, okay? Don't worry about this. Uh, there is a defect, maybe, okay? With that uh, jnit hyphen platform.properties, right? There is a defect. So let's ignore that, okay? So hope, guys, you understood. Uh, hope, guys, you understood how to publish, uh, how to publish Cucumber reports onto the cloud using the properties files in this session. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, before winding up this session, uh, I'll make sure that uh, I have removed the properties file and uh, right click run as JNA test. Uh, we should get the activate publishing option in the output console. Yeah, we are good now. Okay, I have reset the things. So that's all for this session, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 47 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to publish Cucumber reports to the cloud using environment variable. So let's get started. In the previous sessions, I showed you how to publish the Cucumber reports to the cloud using publish attribute in runner class. And also in one of the other session, I showed you how to publish the same Cucumber reports onto the cloud using properties files, different two types of properties files. Okay. I showed you. Now, in this session, I am going to show you how to publish a Cucumber reports under the cloud using environment variable. Okay, there's an environment variable guys that we have to set for publishing the Cucumber reports under the cloud. So, let me practically demonstrate how this is possible. Okay. For that, I'll quickly switch to Eclipse ID here. Okay. So, here in Eclipse ID, we have this project guys. We have created this uh, Cucumber BDD project uh, so far. Okay. Uh, so far, project is something like this. Fine. Okay, so guys, uh, what I'm going to do is, in order to publish the reports onto the cloud, okay, Cucumber BDD reports onto the cloud, what I have to do is, I have to open the command prompt, guys. You see here, it clearly mentioned, first we have to open the command prompt in administrator mode, okay? So for that, I'll click on the search and type CMD, guys. And in the search results, I'll get this command prompt. Just when you search CMD here, it's taking some time. Let me click on this and again, type it. Sometimes it will be slow. Yeah, let's see. Still, it is slow, guys. Okay, we got it. 
command prompt so right click on this command prompt and select run as administrator guys okay and the command prompt it will ask you whether you want to open it in uh, administrator mode or not user access control dialog will come select yes once you say yes guys the command prompt will launch like this here you have to type a command what is a command set x set x okay to set any environment variable in your machine you can use this command guys instead of using the graphical user interface from the command prompt itself we can use this command okay set x slash capital m space set x space forward slash capital m space here we have to give the name of the environment variable guys the name of the environment variable is cucumber underscore enabled enabled don't make any spelling mistakes cucumber e n a b l e d enabled underscore okay uh, before enabled we have to write publish guys okay publish underscore set x space slash m space cucumber space publish space enabled okay space in double quotes give some true like this okay this is a command guys i also provided this command here you can cross check here set x slash m cucumber underscore publish underscore enabled true okay the same command is also provided in the notes guys you can get it from here if you want okay fine now what you have to do next okay so here you have to run this command guys okay you have to run this here command prompt got opened in the administrator mode and we are writing this command and press enter you see success specified value was saved it is saying that means this environment variable got saved successfully it got set it's nothing but we have set the environment variable with this true value now okay now we have to restart the machine guys okay so while recording this video i cannot uh, restart the video right so what i'm doing is uh, i have already restarted the video guys i'm just showing you okay I have already restarted this machine, uh, but in your case, guys, since I cannot show you how to restart the machine because uh, the recording will stop, right? So I have already restarted my machine, guys. Okay, and this uh, environment variable that is Cucumber Publish enabled true is already set in my machine. Okay, after setting this, you have to restart your machine. Don't forget to do that. Otherwise, this environment variable will not be uh, applied. To your machine okay after restarting your machine come to the eclipse id and come to the runner class so here you see i'll run this runner class using jnit and you will see that the cucumber html report will be published onto the cloud at that uh, url okay website url after running you just scroll down here to see whether it got yeah you see we view your cucumber report at it got published guys at this particular cloud url it got published reports.cucumber.io at this website uh, on the cloud means internet Okay, we got this particular report published using the environment variables this time. Okay, and this report is going to self-destruct in 24 hours. Okay, for 24 hours, this report will be there. Otherwise, after 24 hours, it will not be there. So paste the URL, copy paste this URL, guys. This particular URL, copy paste uh, from the Eclipse ID onto the browser. If you get any symbols before HTTPS or after the 61, okay as provided in this uh, after 61 if you are getting any symbols uh, unnecessary symbols you can remove that and press enter you will get the report on the cloud this report is a cloud report internet report which can be shared to your team right this you can share with your team guys you see this report will self destruct in a day that is in 24 hours it will self destruct so if you want to keep your future reports you have to log into the github some options are coming that i'm going to show you in the upcoming sessions okay so for now how to publish the reports onto the cloud using the environment variable I'm showing you, but how to, you know, kind of uh, uh, keep them forever instead of uh, getting them, you say, destructed in 24 days. And if you want this report to be available for uh, forever time, then what we have to do that I'm going to show you later. Okay. So here you can also manually delete this report, guys. So immediately the report will get deleted, guys. Okay. From the cloud, that report will get deleted. Okay. You see, these are the reports we got. This is the report we got. And, uh, Click on delete report, you see it will, are you, uh, are you sure you want to delete this report? This action cannot be undone. Just click on delete, the report will be removed from the cloud immediately. Unexpected error, please try and pick a few minutes. Okay, it looks like the option is, yeah, it got deleted, you see. The report got deleted, guys. We, we will get some other report, guys. It's not our report. Some other has run the report, you see some Ruby and all. It's not our environment, okay. So this is what is about publishing Cucumber reports onto the cloud using environment variable and how to delete the reports from the cloud and all the stuff. Okay, I covered in this session. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, in the next session, I'll show you how to keep your report for, you know, uh, you, you don't want this particular report to be self-restricted in 24 hours and you still 
uh, you want to keep the report okay instead of getting it automatically deleted after 24 hours what to do that i'm going to cover in the next session okay so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 48 of cucumber bdd training series in this session i'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to publish cucumber reports to the cloud forever by using an environment variable or by setting an environment variable okay so as you already know guys from the previous sessions that the published cucumber reports on the cloud will stay only for 24 hours after that they will automatically get deleted but what if if you want to publish this cucumber reports onto the cloud forever what we have to do i am going to cover in this session now let me quickly switch to this eclipse ide and i'll run this okay i'll run this uh, uh this cucumber project with the help of this runner class using junit and you will see that in the report a, uh, a cucumber report okay will be published to the cloud but it will uh, it will mention that it will expire in 24 hours and you have to change some settings it will mention okay we'll see that right click on this and say run as jnit test so here i have done some settings where uh, the report is being published to the cloud guys without any problems okay just scroll down and you can see in the eclipse output console you will see that view your cucumber report at this url okay this is a this is a report which got generated on the cloud. You can see that report, guys. When you copy paste, if you get any additional symbols apart from whatever that are mentioned here, six C one is there, HTTPS is there, everything is fine. HTTPS yes, so no need to worry. If any additional symbols come, you have to remove. You see, this particular report is published onto the cloud, but here a message is coming saying that this report will self destruct in a day. Okay, using this URL, you can access this report for twenty four hours after its generation, but there's an option to keep your future reports forever. What is that option? What we have to do for keeping this uh, uh, this particular report stored in our uh, someplace forever in instead of uh, self-destructing in a day or getting deleted in 24 hours. Okay. So what we have to do for that? The solution is also there in the Eclipse Output Console, guys. Okay. After this line, you can see another line is that this report will self-destruct in 24 hours. But if you want to keep your reports forever, you have to access this URL. It is saying copy this URL, guys. Copy this URL. And again, open a new tab. You see some symbols are coming after profile. Delete that symbols, guys, and uh, you'll get that. Uh, okay. Now it's asking you to log in. Please log in to, in to access this page. Okay. So it's not allowing you directly to access the profile. You have to have a profile. Which profile? GitHub profile. Okay. So if you don't have an account with GitHub before this, you have to create an account for GitHub and come back here and log into GitHub, guys. Okay. It's very simple to log in, uh, you know, create an account with GitHub. Just go to GitHub.com and here uh, you'll have sign up option and all those stuff. Okay. GitHub.com. Just go to GitHub.com and sign up, guys. Okay. That's very simple. Now, after you have an account with the GitHub website, that is GitHub.com, then you can log in here. I'll click on login. It will automatically log me in, guys. For you, it may ask you username, password, but uh, since uh, this browser is uh, storing my credentials, it automatically got logged in here, okay? Now here, you need to create a collection, guys, okay? You need to create a collection where you want to... Collection is like a folder where you want to store all your reports, okay? Uh, and those reports are not going to be deleted in 24 hours. They are going to be there forever for you, okay? Under that collection, if a particular report is published, means it will be there forever, okay? So I'll just give some name here, guys, okay? CR. Okay, CR, uh, C report, okay, Cucumber reports, C reports, I'll say, create new collection. Here you see, I tried all this uh, earlier, multiple, but for you, uh, if you are new to this, uh, only one, uh, whatever the collection you are creating, right, that will be created, okay. So C reports, it's taken us to the C reports, guys, and uh, here you see, once I created a collection, you see, it's giving me some uh, name, environment variable name for setting, and other thing is a token, okay. So what we have to do? This particular token we have to copy, copy this and uh, here click on the search and type CMD guys and right click on this command prompt and say run as administrator, open the command prompt in administrator mode, just click on this on this user access control and you'll get this command prompt. At this command prompt, we just copy this, okay, environment variable name, copy this guys for now and here write a command set x space okay, uh, forward slash capital M space and copy paste this name of this variable 
right click here it will be copied after copying here right click it will be pasted okay give a space and put colon and now copy this part sorry i just went somewhere else just click back it will come back yeah copy this uh token id unique token id of this particular c report uh, collection for now paste it here after the double quote and add, end it with double quote okay and provide double quote here and press enter you will get a message like success specified value was saved okay then close the command prompt now what is the next thing that you have to do is you have to restart your machine okay so i'll restart my machine guys and then i'll continue okay so i'll restart my machine after restarting my machine i'll i'll pass this video and resume this video after restarting my machine okay so i have uh, restarted my machine guys after setting this environment variable i have restarted my machine okay so i am resuming the video now okay i have passed the video and uh, you know i have restarted my machine and again i have resumed the video now so so the mach my machine got restarted after setting this environment variable okay these steps are done let me quickly switch to eclipse id now now let me run this using jinit this time in the okay this time in the eclipse id output console we should get a uh, proper output guys uh, uh, it should not say that your report is going to uh, destruct in 24 hours that message we should not get okay we'll see that in action and in whatever the collection we have uh, created before before restarting my machine in the uh, i have configured some collection right uh, in that collection only C reports collection, if you remember, in that collection only our report will be there and uh, it will not be deleted, guys. Okay. So right click here and say run as this runner class, run as JNA test. All the cucumber tests will run in this particular project. And after running, we'll get this kind of report, uh, Eclipse ID output console. Sorry. Just scroll down to the end and you see, view your cucumber report at this location. And now it is saying that it's not saying your report is going to uh, expire. It's saying that this report was published in collection C reports. How to go there actually? So here guys, uh, we'll go to this location. Either you can access this report here. This report is not going to be uh, deleted guys, okay? It's not going to expire after 24 hours. It's going to be there. You see when I copy pasted that URL, right? Some symbols are coming be before HTTPS and some symbols are coming after this number two. You can see uh, in the URL is up to CA2. So you have to make sure that it's up to CA2 and press enter this. Okay. Now you see Cucumba reports. You see the report is available where under the C reports. You can see that you are not getting your, your report will be, you know, kind of uh, uh, deleted after automatically after 24 hours, you are not getting. This is a forever report guys. Whatever the report you are seeing is a forever report, but there's an option guys. you can delete this report if you don't want this to be there forever. They are providing a flexibility of this delete report button where you click on that and confirm that it will be deleted guys. Okay. Even from the, this collection also, you see, this is a collection. I, I still got logged in. Okay. So click on C reports. In this C report, uh, one report got published guys. You see, this is a report, a minute ago. Okay. Some report name is not coming, but, uh, you see, uh, status passed is coming. Okay. Just click on this, you'll get that report. Okay, you'll get that report. Just go back, refresh once. You can generate any number of uh, times you can run this, guys. And uh, every time you see, we'll get a report here. Again, let me run again. One more report will be stored into that uh, C report scene. Because we have set an environment variable to uh, publish our Cucumber reports on the cloud into that particular collection, okay, on the GitHub. So now it got generated again. The same thing, guys. Let's go back and refresh here. You'll get one more thing. You see a few seconds ago, one more report got generated here. Two minutes ago, this is the first report. And uh, a few seconds uh, sec uh, seconds ago, another report. This is the second report, okay? You see, you can delete the report if you want manually, okay? Done. So this is how, guys, this is how, this is a way to publish the Cucumba reports onto the cloud forever, okay? By setting up an environment variable of that particular collection, guys, as explained in this uh, session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all, welcome to part 49 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate a shortcut which can be used for commenting the steps or scenarios in the feature file. So let's get started. So what is that particular shortcut? 
we have to use in Windows machine for commenting the steps are seniors in the Cucumber feature files. The shortcut is nothing but control and forward slash together. Okay, you have to press this control key and forward slash keys on your keyboard together, guys. Let me practically demonstrate this for you by quickly switching to this Eclipse ID. Now I'll open a feature file. Any of the feature files you can open, guys. I'll open this login.feature file where you can see all the scenarios of this. Okay, whatever the lines you want to comment, just select those lines. For example, I'll select this uh, line 8 to line 18. Okay, and simply press control and forward slash together. These two keys you have to press together, guys. You can see on your keyboard, you'll have a control key and CTRL key. And another one is the forward slash symbol key. Okay, those two key, uh, keys you have to press together. The moment you press together, guys, you see hash is being added. These are converted into comments already. So this shortcut can also be used in Java, guys. Okay, for Java commenting also, we have to use the same, same shortcut, but there's small difference, guys. When you say control and forward slash, when you press control and forward slash keys together in feature file, you will get this hash symbol because in feature files, comments are specified in single line comments are mentioned with hash. Whereas in Java, guys, okay, if you go to this, uh, any of this method, let's say login.java, and if you want to comment this portion from line 10 to line 15, just press control forward slash. You see, the they are also commented, okay, uh, they are all, also got commented in Java, so it also got commented. This is a shortcut in Eclipse ID in simple words, appropriate uh, symbol for commenting in Java got added, okay. Again, if you want to uncomment in Java, control forward slash, they will get uncommented. Same thing, if you want to uncomment uh, this particular scenario uh, or these lines, which I selected in the feature file, again, control forward slash, it will get uncommented. Okay, done. So if I comment it, what will happen? You already know, guys, right? If you comment it, this scenario will not be executed. These steps which you got commented will not be executed, guys. Okay, they are nothing but comments. Okay. So this how guys we can use a shortcut for commenting. Okay. Again, when I say control forward slash, the comments will go off, turn on, turn off kind of thing. Okay. You can even comment a single line also. Control forward slash only single line. Okay. Selected line will get commented again. Control forward slash selected line will get decommented. Okay. The same shortcut for commenting and decommenting. Either in feature files or in the Java files in Eclipse ID, we can use that shortcut. So hope guys, uh, you understood how to use this shortcut. Uh, in Eclipse ID, that is control. Okay, what is shortcut? Practical. Okay, there is a spelling mistake here. The shortcut is nothing but CTRL plus forward slash. That's it. Okay, you have to press these two keys together for commenting and uncommenting. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 50 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate using monochrome in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. So what is this monochrome and how to use this monochrome in Cucumber projects? Let me explain this and practically demonstrate for you in this session. But first let's compare this monochrome with this pretty plugin. If you're already using pretty plugin, there's no need for you to go for monochrome. Why? Because pretty plugin is more better than monochrome. Okay. Pretty plugin is more better than monochrome, guys. There is no use. And also, guys, nowadays, there is no use of monochrome, okay? In the older versions of Cucumber, we have to use monochrome for some purpose. But now it's optional, guys, okay? It's not compulsory to use monochrome because there is no necessity of using it because in the latest versions of Cucumber and Cucumber Eclipse ID plugin or whatever it is, okay, uh, there is no need of monochrome, guys, okay? Earlier, we used to use monochrome. For what purpose we used to use monochrome? Let me quickly switch to Eclipse IDE and let me run this uh, uh, runner using, here you see pretty is mentioned, guys. okay, here pretty is mentioned, okay, what if I remove pretty for a while and run this, okay, right click, run as, jail. I have removed pretty guys from here in the plugin, so there is no pretty plugin available, but uh, without pretty plugin when I am running this particular uh, project with the help of runner class using J in it, right? You are getting this output case. Okay. You are getting this output. Output is coming properly, but uh, with pretty, the feature file steps will come with, uh, you know, feature file steps are not coming here, but with pretty, you will get feature file steps with uh, proper colors, green color, orange color, red color. If a, something, some step is failing, they will come in red color. Some step is skipped. It will come in uh, slightly orange color. Okay. So if a particular step is passing, it will come in, uh, green color and all those stuff right that's what 
So that's it. That's how the Pretty plugin will be there. But here we are not using any Pretty plugin, uh, nor we are using any uh, monochrome kind of thing. Okay, we are not using any monochrome in this runner class. Okay, as an attribute here, features attribute is there, glue is there, tax is there, plugin is plugin is there. But here we don't have any monochrome, or we are not using any Pretty plugin inside this plugin attribute value as a plugin attribute value. So still we are getting this kind of output, guys. A proper output is coming still. Okay, proper output is coming still. So pretty, pretty output will, output will be more better than this one, I know. Okay, but earlier what used to happen here is this section, this box, guys, especially this box, okay, especially this uh, square box, right? Uh, this lines uh, used to not come, okay? Earlier, this lines were, uh, used to not come, guys, in old, older versions of Cucumber, right? Uh, this kind of uh, lines uh, were coming in a distorted manner with uh, kind of symbols and all those stuff, okay? To overcome that symbols, guys, okay? To to get rid get, to get rid that uh, to get rid of that kind of symbols coming in the eclipse output console we used to use monochrome okay then the issue used to be resolved okay when you are getting some uh, inappropriate kind of symbols uh, in the eclipse output console to overcome that symbols uh, we used to use uh, that uh, monochrome okay we used to mention like this okay monochrome is equal to true kind of thing now also you can mention guys it's not deprecated it Okay, it's not deprecated it, but it's still there. You can use it, but you'll not feel or see any difference in the Eclipse output console. Okay, whether you are using monochrome or whether you are not using monochrome, you are going to get the same output without any problem. Same output you are going to get. Going to get. That's why it's optional. It's not compulsory for now to use. Okay, so click on JNA test. You see here, guys, the output is same. We got the similar output. With monochrome, without monochrome, we got the same output, guys. There is no difference yet, right? There's no difference, guys, in the output, okay? So in the older versions of Cucumber and Cucumber Eclipse ID plugins and all those stuff in these Cucumber projects, monochrome is called true was required to get rid of some kind of inappropriate symbols coming inside this uh, Eclipse output console here and there, okay? Some symbols used to come to get, uh, instead of the proper uh, text or proper, uh, things okay so some invalid symbols used to come and the output used to look like distorted and all to overcome that problem we used to use monochrome is called true but uh, that is not really required monochrome is equal to true is not re really required in the latest versions okay in the latest nowadays it's not required guys you can ignore that that's what i am saying here okay it's optional as in latest versions we are not getting any junk text in eclipse output console there is no need now okay but earlier it was needed but I am covering it just for the sake of knowledge, guys. Okay, so I am not uh, trying you to uh, use this monochrome is equal to true in the Cucumber projects. I'm just giving you some knowledge, guys, because uh, it's Cucumber is not about just implementation, guys. Sometimes if someone asks you what is monochrome, you should be in a position to explain all this. What is monochrome and all? Okay, that's the reason I am covering in this session. But it's not really required as per today. Okay, fine. But when I compare monochrome with Pretty plugin. Pretty plugin is more better. There's no use of monochrome. Okay. You see, if I put this pretty plugin back here, pretty and double quotes and plugin, okay, as one of the attribute value here, it's nothing but a pretty plugin. You will you'll get a proper output, guys. No need of going for monochrome and all those stuff. Okay, if I run this using JNIT, uh, you will understand that you'll get a proper output, guys. Okay. The beautiful output with feature file steps and all those things. You see, you see green colored things, everything is coming here. It's a proper output and also if any symbols are also coming, the pretty plugin will take care of that guys. Okay, no need to go for uh, monochrome actually. Okay, nowadays. You see, the steps and output and everything is coming properly. So pretty plugin is more useful than monochrome and monochrome is uh, optional. It's not valid for today. Okay, because it's not making any difference. Okay, without monochrome and with chrome monochrome, we are getting the same output. So what is the use of using monochrome? That's what is my point. Okay, remaining all is fine. So hope you understood what is monochrome and how to use that in Cucumber projects and why it is not required and why it's optional nowadays and uh, how Pretty Plugin is more better than the monochrome. All these things I covered in this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 51 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to integrate TestNG in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. Till the previous sessions, we have used JUnit as a unit testing framework along with Cucumber BDD, right? 
Now I am going to integrate test ng in place of J unit in this Cucumber project. So how to do that? So what will be the difference between uh, J unit unit testing with Cucumber and uh, when you are integrating test ng unit testing framework with Cucumber? What will happen? What will be the difference? And what are the changes you have to do? All these things I am going to cover in this session. So as part of your real time project, you may either use J unit as a unit testing framework with Cucumber projects, or you may use test ng as a unit testing framework with your Cucumber projects. So it, it depends on project to project guys. Okay. Whenever you are working with JUnit, you already have seen how to work with that. But what about test ng? I'm going to cover in this session guys with a practical demonstration. First thing we have to add test ng library and remove the JUnit library from our project. If you go to this Eclipse IDE and here, uh, let me, uh, from this project guys, from this project, let me open this pom.xml file where we have added all the dependency tags of the required libraries. Here you see JUnit library is there. I'll remove this JUnit library here, okay? I'll remove this JUnit library, guys, okay? So in place of this JUnit library that I have removed from the dependency stacks, I am going to add testng library. For that, I'll open new tab in the browser and say MVN repository and search for testng here. Whatever the latest version of testng that is available here, I'll click on this test ng and whatever the latest version we have so far as per today's date and all. Okay. In future, when you are watching this video, you may have a, another latest version. You can take that also. Okay. Copy this and paste it here. That's it. And organize it well so that it look, it looks good. Okay. So test ng library is added in place of j unit. j unit we have removed and test ng we have added. And click on save all. These libraries will be downloaded. And next thing. Here, Cucumber Java is fine because our programming language is Java. No need to change anything here. Next thing is here, instead of Cucumber J unit, we have to use Cucumber test ng. So J unit unit testing framework is removed. In place of that, we have added test ng unit testing framework. So here also Cucumber test ng we have to use instead of Cucumber J unit. For that, again, go to the MVN repository and here search for Cucumber test ng. Just give these two words, guys. You will get that in the output. IO Cucumber, Cucumber test ng. Okay. From IO Cucumber only, we have to take. And what is the version we have used for other things like Cucumber Core and Cucumber Java 7.9.0. So choose a version which is matching with this. Okay. That is 7.9.0 for now. And copy this. And uh, paste it here. Okay. Instead of Cucumber uh, J unit, you just add Cucumber test ng. Okay. That's another thing. Just organize it. And that's fine. Click on save all. And that's it guys. The library addition is over. Okay. We have added the test ng library to the project. Okay. And test ng library we added. Cucumber test ng library also we added. Now, now next is we have to close this and go to the test runner. Here already errors are coming because we have removed JUnit, right? Here import statements for JUnit are there. Remove all this stuff. Remove all these import statements which are giving the errors because they are using JUnit. But no more we are using JUnit. So we are using test ng. And in uh, people prefer test ng over j unit sometimes, guys. Okay. Sometimes people use j unit over test ng, and sometimes people use test ng over j unit. But test ng is more powerful than j unit, guys. Okay. Whatever the reasons may be, different combinations may work out. Sometimes people like j unit only because a lot of people are there in the market still use j unit. Okay. They are okay with that. They don't want to go with advanced options that are provided by test ng. That's fine. But there are some people who prefer to use test ng over j unit okay there are different kind of categories here okay so if you are you if you want to use test ng right j unit has to be removed so i have removed the import statements of the j unit there and this statement is also from j unit guys it's not required at all at the rate we can remove now this cucumber options okay now can be imported from cucumber test ng okay earlier io cucumber j unit was there okay now io cucumber test ng from that we are importing the cucumber options that is another one change the same options will remain same as this uh, attributes and values will remain same. No need to change anything. Okay. Here, but one here we have removed at the rate run with, okay, from J unit. But here beside the class, this class is test runner class, right? This is a test runner class. We have to say extends. Extends. We have to give a class name that is abstract test ng cucumber test. This is a predefined class from test ng guys. From test ng we will get this. Okay. Abstract. Abstract test ng, abstract test ng, cucumber, cucumber, test, cucumber test. Okay, hold the mouse on this uh, and import this from IO cucumber test ng, guys. Okay, from test ng library, you have to import it. Now, 
the test runner class is ready Ever errors are gone off you see we have converted the jnit project into the test engine okay the j uh, cucumber jnit project into cucumber test engine we have converted converted now with the help of the library then what next the next thing is uh, now let's uh, run this test runner okay earlier when I right click on this uh, and say run as we are, we used to get a J unit option, but J unit option is not coming because we have removed J unit from this project, right? So I was expecting test change option to come here, but it's not coming. What may be the reason? What may be the reason why I'm not getting the test change option here? When I say right click run as J unit option is not coming, but test change option also should come, right? We have, we have added the test change libraries. We have replaced all these things with the uh, test change stuff. This predefined class with test engine stuff and all the stuff, but still you are unable to run it because you are not getting an option to run. The reason behind that is there is one more thing that is required for test engine. That is in this Eclipse IDE we have to install a plugin. We have to install test engine Eclipse IDE plugin. Okay, in Eclipse IDE, how to do that? For doing that, guys, we have to go to one website. Okay, there the instructions will be provided like how to install test engine Eclipse IDE plugin in Eclipse IDE editor. Okay. For that, open this, close this part, guys, and go to the official website of TestNG. Simply say testng.org, which is the official website of TestNG. And here you will see Eclipse option. Click on that. Then under Eclipse, you will see this installation. Click on that installation. Under installation, install the plugin option will be there. Just click on that. You'll be taken to this page, guys, where you have to scroll down and go for Eclipse plugin. Okay. And here, install from update site. You have to select help and install new software. Okay. Help and uh, install new software. You have to select. The moment you get this dialogue, okay, what you have to do next is you have to copy this URL, guys. Okay. Copy this URL and paste it here. That's it. Okay. Once you paste it here, the loading will happen sometimes, or you have to click on add and give, you can give test ng and give this URL also. Everything is fine, guys. Anything is fine. Okay. Either you can. If it is detecting, that's okay. Or you have to click on add and give that test engine name or and give that URL and then select this test engine option and click on next. In a while, test engine will get installed in our machine. Okay. And in this Eclipse ID editor, okay, as a plugin. Without this test engine Eclipse ID plugin, we cannot run that particular runner class with test engine. Okay. So it's asking for us uh, to install the Test ng Eclipse IDE plugin. It won't take much time, guys. Okay, you'll get a dialog soon. Let's wait. Sooner you will get, get a dialog here. Uh, whether you want to kind of trust or something will come. Let's see. Our license agreements will come. Let's see. We got all these options, guys. Installation details. These are uh, as part of Test ng. These things are. These modules are getting installed. Click on finish, guys. That's it. In, you see. Trust all content. You have to select always trust all content. Yes, I accept the risk. Click on trust selected. These are the basic steps, guys. These are the basic steps, uh, okay, that anyone can understand. Here you see it's installing 83% almost. It will ask you to restart now, okay? Uh, restart the Eclipse ID, okay, so that the plugin will be configured properly in the Eclipse ID. In a while, Eclipse ID will restart. Once it is restarted, we can run that uh, test runner class without any problems, okay? We have completely converted the project into Cucumber JNet project into Cucumber TestNG project after installing the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin. You see, before doing that, if you are trying to run the runner class, you are not getting any option. But after installing the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin, and if you try to run the runner class, you'll get the options. Okay, we'll see that. Eclipse ID is launching. Let's wait for the Eclipse ID to launch. Almost there. So it has launched, guys. It has launched the Eclipse ID. And uh, now, what you have to do next? Right click, guys. Simply right click to see whether the test, if you are getting that run as option as test ng test, that means test ng Eclipse ID plugin is now installed. Select this option. You see, now all these feature files under this project will be invoked with the help of this runner class via test ng, not JUnit. Okay. Earlier, JUnit, now test ng. We got the output, guys. You see the same pretty output we got with pretty plugin, whatever the output we generally get, right? The same output this time. Test, using test engine, we have run the test, okay? Feature files and all runner class and all those stuff. Okay, the same output we got as we got with JNIT. 
Okay. And here we got this box. Additionally, we got all this stuff from test and guys. Earlier, jail would only this box we used to get, but uh, password, password, this kind of options uh, were not coming. You see, that's why I was saying that uh, test engine is an addition, advanced, okay? Test engine is an advanced unit testing framework when compared to JN. You see here, default suit contains 14 tests and 14 got passed, okay? Like that, you will get the results. And uh, earlier, when you are running the this particular run class with the help of JUnit, we, we got a JUnit tab under which we used to see the results. But here, we'll get the test, test engine tab, okay? Test engine runner, this is test engine results tab. This is okay. You can see that. So here all run scenario runs. It's not supporting much at this moment. Okay. So it's simply saying run scenario, login with valid credentials. So JNIT is more, uh, you know, right kind of attached with Cucumber. As you can see, it's giving some run scenario and uh, giving some details here. Okay. No feature files are mentioned. You see, it's not properly organized. As you can see, uh, the test engine is not properly organized with Cucumber, okay? That some problems are there with the uh, integration of test engine with Cucumber, guys. The I I like uh, I really like when using with Cucumber, right? JN it is uh, more preferable, I feel. But still, if for some people they want to use test engine with Cucumber, they can go with uh, with this one. But uh, there are some odds here. You see, some test runner is coming, some run scenario. We don't understand. You see, there are three feature files. Uh, they are not identified and not these scenarios are not identified properly under each and every individual uh, feature file kind of thing. The structure is not good, but uh, all the tests, 14 out of 14 tests are being shown here. That's the only thing. Apart from that, you will get that uh, reports and all those stuff, guys. There's nothing much. And uh, also, uh, you can do one more thing in the test engine, guys. This runner class, instead of running this runner class directly, what I can do is I can create a test engine XML file here. I can mention the name of this test runner in the test engine XML file. Using the test engine XML file, I can invoke this test runner and test runner will invoke the feature files. Feature files will invoke the uh, step definitions and uh, the steps will be running. Okay. So like that we can do guys. Okay. So here we are running the test runner directly, right? But in real time projects, what we generally do is uh, we invoke this test runner with the help of test engine guys. Okay. We invoke this test runner with the help of test dot XML file. Okay. How to generate the test engine dot XML file. Here, out of all these classes like my hooks, test runner, login, register search, only this test is containing the test keyword. Okay. So, right click on this project, guys, and uh, select uh, test ng and say convert to test ng. Okay. The moment you say convert to test ng, you'll get a dialog here. So, the dialog says that uh, generate test ng.xml file. Where exactly it is generating under the tutorial Sinja project, it is generating. Okay. Let it generate. Okay. No problem for now. Under the project, directly somewhere it is generating. That's okay. So you can generate it anywhere, there's no problem, but uh, this is the place for now. Okay. Uh, basically, generally, we generally generate this test engine .xml file directly under the project or under the SRC test resource sometimes. For now, let's not uh, go with the framework part. In framework, we have to take this as a strict thing, but for now, we can generate it anywhere just for demonstration purpose only, right? Of the Cucumber concepts, right? So I'm going to generate the test engine directly under the project. So you see here, hooks, my hooks is being identified here. But this is not the class we have to run. We have to run the test runner class. So we'll update it. Okay. After clicking on finish, after this uh, test engine.xml file got generated here, I'll open it. And uh, in this test engine.xml file, this kind of uh, design tab is selected. Just select the source tab so that you can see the XML content. And here, so instead of hooks, my hooks, just remove that and give runner dot under the runner package, test runner is there. Okay. Test runner, you have to give test runner you have to give. This is the best way. Okay. This is the best way is runner.testrunner is the best way. Now, right click on this testng.xml file and say run as testng suit. What will happen when you run this testng.xml file? It will invoke this test runner class from the runner package. That means this class will be run indirectly. Instead of directly running the test runner class here with the help of testng, we are running the testng.xml file, testng.xml file, which is referring to this uh, test runner is invoking this test runner and running it. And this is invoking the feature files, feature files are invoking the step definition methods and all those stuff. And we'll get the results, okay? So I'm not going to run the test runner class this time. I'm going to run the testng.xml file, you see? I'll right click on this testng.xml file and say run as testng suit. The same output will come because testng.xml file will indirectly invoke the test runner in the runner class. And uh, the test runner will invoke the feature files and you'll get the same output. 14 out of 14 will be passed. You say test engine results tab came, same thing you'll get. Okay, 14 out of 14 got passed. Okay, uh, let's see this uh, still run scenario is coming. That's okay. 
and you'll get the reports guys if you refresh this project if you refresh this project since you are running using test ng guys you will get test output folder in that we will get a report this is not a cucumber report or something this is a test ng report guys okay test ng uh, results report uh, under test output for after after running this after re uh, refreshing this project and then after you get the test output folder right uh, expand the test output folder and right click on index.html and say open with web browser you will get the test engine report. Okay. The problem is you see run scenario, run scenario is coming. That's the problem. Okay. By default problem is there. Okay. We can't do anything. Uh, any options to change it or do something will, we'll see in the framework guys. Okay. What is the best way? Uh, I'll explain in the frameworks, but as, uh, that framework part is not part of this series, but uh, it's part of another, uh, uh another, uh, series guys. Okay. So here we are only, I'm only covering the Kukumbar concepts. Okay. I'm not going to cover the frameworks and the real time stuff, but to some extent I'm covering. Okay. Fine. This is only for Kukumbar concepts. I'm covering this series. Okay. Fine. To understand each and every concept of Kukumbar that we use. Okay. In the projects I'm going to, I'm covering in these sessions. So most probably this is going to be the last session guys. Okay. Of this Kukumbar series. Uh, okay. So around 51 videos came up. This is going to be the last, uh, if you're watching the Kumbar series. Okay. As part of Kumbar concepts, you have to understand this series is for you. Fine. Anyhow, let's not, uh, dig deep into that. And here, apart from index.html, you will also get emailable report. Also, this is also test engine thing only test engine report only. So this is for emailing purpose. You see like this, you'll get, but uh, you see this, this problem is there. Run scenario problem is there guys. Okay. The scenario names are coming here, but uh, they are not organized according to the feature file and all. Instead, run scenario is coming. So that's the problem. We'll deal with that later. Okay, fine. Okay. Then what else? We can also run using Maven, guys. Uh, how to run using Maven? We all, uh, how to run this using Maven then? For running using Maven, we already know that uh, it will not pick the testng.xml file. It will directly pick the test runner because this runner class is mentioned with test keyword either at the beginning or at the end as I covered in the previous sessions. Okay, you can still right click and say, uh, run as Maven test, you can say, but it will not invoke this testing.xml file. Maven will invoke this test runner because this is a runner only Java file, which is having this test keyword. It will invoke this test. You know that Maven should be plugin also should be there by default. Uh, that is already there in the pom.xml file. I don't have to do much. You see, the things are working fine, but here testing.xml file is not invoked. Maven is directly invoke this, invoking this test runner and you are getting this results and all the stuff. Okay. Okay. Fine. Next, next, what is that? Next thing is, so I want to invoke the testng.xml file and test, uh, using Maven, I want to invoke the testng.xml file and testng.xml file has to invoke the test runner. Anyhow, it will invoke and test runner has to invoke the feature files and feature files have to invoke the step definition files. This is what should be the criteria. Here, Maven is directly invoking the test runner, but I want Maven to invoke the testng.xml file instead of test runner. What I have to do? Go to the pom.xml file, guys, where you have this Maven Surefire plugin. Okay. You see, this is the plugin. So I am going to replace this plugin with a more advanced version of the same plugin. Okay. How to do that? Just come here. Uh, Maven Surefire. Okay. Testng. Like this, okay. Maven Surefire let's test and you just search for these three keywords, guys. Okay. Maven Surefire test and you, okay. Using test and link will come, come, uh, go to that page and scroll down uh, till I see some section here. You see, this is the thing, okay. So from plugin to plugin, you copy it has a test and XML file provided. Copy that, guys. Copy that, copy this and come back here and replace this uh, default plugin thing with whatever I have copied, okay, from that file. I'll organize it. So that you can understand better. Tab. Yeah. Here you see in this Maven Surefire plugin, which file is mentioned now? Testng.xml file is mentioned, which is directly under the project. So it can, Testng.xml means directly under the project it will search. So here now, this Maven Surefire plugin, when you run the project with the help of Maven, right? Maven test. Maven test will go to this Maven Surefire plugin, but now Maven Surefire pl plugin is uh, directing you not to the test runner class. Rather, it is directing you to the testng.xml file. So with Maven, testng.xml file will be invoked. Testng.xml file, as you already know, contains test runner. So test runner will be invoked by the uh, testng.xml file and test runner will invoke the feature files and all the stuff. Okay. This is how the things will be there. 
Now, what I will do simply is I'll right click on this project similarly and say uh, run as Maven test. Now, Maven will invoke the testinger.xml file using the Maven Surefire plugin because in the Maven Surefire plugin, we have provided testinger.xml as the file to be invoked. And that testinger.xml file will inv invoke the test runner class, and test runner class will invoke the feature files, and then feature files will invoke the step definitions. There is the process. Let's see. You see, Maven has invoked the testinger.xml file, testinger.xml file has invoked the test runner, test runner is invoking the feature files, and now we got this output. Okay, this is how it happens. The same results, maybe. You see, the results are not coming this time. Okay, okay, the results are not coming this time. You see, uh, test ng results tab because we are running with the help of Maven, right? Maven is invoking test ng and test ng then. So we are not getting the test ng results. Okay, that's okay. Fine. Anyhow, we are not going to use any test ng reports in real time. We have to use extend reports or etc. Okay. So, but we are not going to use uh, test ng reports. We are not going to use test ng reports, guys. Don't worry about that. Whether you see some, you know, kind of a run uh, run scenario outputs and all that's not good way good way okay we'll be using a different reporting system guys okay in real time uh that is extent reports generally i covered already extent reports with uh i mean uh already covered right somewhere here or if not uh okay cucumber html report i have covered not extent report so I'll be covering that extent report as part of the frameworks, guys. But no, but for now, just ignore that uh, extent report with the uh, Cucumber. Uh, all the Cucumber concepts I covered in this session, guys. Okay, all the Cucumber concepts from the beginning to the end. That is what is Cucumber. Uh, what are the different BDD tools? What is BDD? Upshare website of Cucumber. BDD in Agile feature files, Erkin, and all those stuff. Lot of topics I covered as part of this series. Okay, so this will make you guys uh, comfortable with uh, you know Cucumber concepts. Tidy Gherkin plugin, multiple feature files, a lot of step by step we have come here. Okay, Cucumber HTML report, regular expression, using regular expressions in Cucumber, Cucumber expressions, pretty plugin, uh, this kind of exceptions, how to deal with comments, how to write comments in Cucumber feature file, tags, hooks, tagged hooks, before steps, a lot of hooks, concepts, data tables, then uh, tags, okay, generating different type of reports and uh, different options that we can provide in the runner class and different things about reports and additional stuff like a shortcut and monochrome and integrating test engine cucumber a lot of things i covered in this session okay this is a cucumber series guys hoping that you got a good knowledge out of cucumber from this series so thank you all uh that's all for this series uh bye everyone